Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 93 It was three minutes after they started running that those who escaped finally stopped. I don't think it's following us. The fact that the Firefox hadn't chased them is what made them stop. What do we do now? Let's wait for the next signal. So they waited for the next signal. If someone sent an SOS signal or another retreat signal, they were ready to respond. But not everyone was waiting. Some of those who were running away had noticed the strange situation sooner and stopped running, this allowed them to know the situation better than the others. Oh my god. They could see something that the others couldn't. Those are Isaac's skeletons. The sight of the skeleton soldiers locked in a fierce battle. Is it Isaac? Isaac Ivanov is making time for us. Naturally in their eyes it looked like Isaac Ivanov was sacrificing himself to give them the time to escape. At the sight, some of their eyes reddened. This was especially so for the members of the Messiah Guild. For our sake. Isaac Ivanov, who wasn't a member of the Messiah Guild but who had simply been invited to assist them was willingly sacrificing himself in this situation. He was immediately seen as a martyr by the members of the Messiah Guild. Keep retreating. So they retreated even more. Let's not make his sacrifice be in vain. They would never have thought that Isaac Ivanov was not sacrificing himself for them, but was instead hunting the Firefox. Don't go. What are you talking about? We need to help. Some of them tried to stop those who were retreating. Are you gonna waste Isaac's sacrifice in this way? That. Do you really think he wants our help? Damn it. In front of those words, those courageous players could only take a step back. So everyone began to move further from the Firefox. This caused Li Jina who was observing their reactions while healing, to laugh. That's so human-like. Kim Woo Jin had said that if he began fighting the Firefox then the Messiah Guild members and everyone else would escape. He's like a ghost. They'll think they were trying to be martyrs and were willing to make sacrifices in vain. They'd pray for them from afar. Honestly, when he first heard it, Li Jina didn't believe him. About five or six from the ninety-six people had wanted to help Kim Woo Jin. What he said came true. In the end however, Kim Woo Jin was correct. What he'd said had indeed become reality. Then the hunt should be over soon. Another thing Kim Woo Jin said was that he wouldn't need much time to hunt the Firefox. The Firefox has been slain. Gained the achievement Firefox Hunter. Cleared the second floor of a dungeon in one hour. Gained the achievement Speedster. The Emissary of the Underworld is amazed by your abilities. The Emissary of the Underworld has conveyed some of their power to you. The rank for the Skeleton Soldier skill has increased by one. On the fifteenth minute after they entered the second floor of the dungeon, it was cleared. Are you sure about this? At Oh Seichan's words, the subordinate in front simply nodded his head without saying a word. Like that, Oh Seichan stared at the note in his hands like he'd forgotten how to speak. Suddenly Oh Seichan ripped up the note. Ha! Huh. Then he said to his surprised subordinate. Don't tell anyone about this. Yes. We can't throw cold water on everyone's efforts to stop them from controlling the world. Oh Seichan, who was talking, tapped his head with the fist that was holding the pieces of paper. If the Messiah is truly this much then we can't do that no, we'll have to change the method we'll need to stop poison with another poison. At that time, the image of a man came to Oh Seichan's mind. Didn't he say Johann George? The name of the man who was now taking control of Europe's underworld at an astonishing rate. In terms of personality, he could become the demon king even more than the Messiah Guild and he's not the type who would join hands with the Messiah Guild. He remembered the inhumane things the man had done so far. I heard his level is already considerable, but if Pandora and I support him with all our might. Being the man he was and with his thoughts to resist the Messiah Guild, Oh Seichan's thoughts were gradually becoming firmer. It was at that moment. Talk talk talk. TL, knocking sound. A knock was heard on his office door and soon his subordinate entered the room. Kim Woo Jin has cleared the dungeon. What? 
It's been three days since they entered the dungeon hasn't it? How? I also don't know. At that moment Oh se -chan smiled. I don't need to ignore the monsters before me and find other ones. Well, as long as he's alive. At that moment, there was no longer the name Johann George in Oh se -chan's mind. Rather his thoughts were incomparably bright. That's right, today I'll treat everyone to Chinese food to celebrate their safe return everyone can order whatever they like. Oh Seichan was bursting with exuberance. Ah, I usually have Jijangmian one how about you guys? Chapter, 94 A rank dungeons were the prized property of the countries they formed in. Prime property that they dared not put a price to. Nevertheless there were two reasons why the Japanese government gave the Messiah Guild permission to attack the Firefox dungeon. One was that the Messiah Guild had made some promises that couldn't be revealed and the Messiah Guild held a few weaknesses of the Japanese government officials. When will the dungeon be cleared? What you should ask is when it would be failed rather than when it would be cleared. Failed? According to the experts, the probability of clearing the dungeon is less than 20%. The other thing was that even if it was the Messiah Guild, the probability of them being able to clear the dungeon was only 20%. Among those reasons, the latter was the deciding factor. It's only that much. It was the only reason the Japanese government gave the dungeon to the Messiah Guild. After all, the Japanese government officials weren't stupid or blind the moment such an important dungeon appeared, they first gave the chance to their country's guilds and players to clear it. Rather than give up this opportunity, the Japanese government stepped up and made preparations to attack the dungeon. However, even when they offered a large number of benefits, it wasn't easy for them to find 100 players willing to challenge the dungeon. It was because it was virtually impossible for the guilds in Japan to unite together like the Messiah Guild. This wasn't a problem unique to Japan. The Messiah Guild was the only place in the world where you could gather 100 of the best players. Then for the Messiah Guild would it instead be 50%? No, the 20% was based on the Messiah Guild other guilds are much less. 20%. However even the Messiah Guild wasn't likely to clear the dungeon. The Messiah Guild didn't have anything great over the other guilds. Just a different resolution. And yet the Messiah Guild still entered the dungeon. That's just the Messiah Guild style. Nevertheless, the Messiah Guild's plan of attack was aimed at leaving an advanced team. The probability of success decreases as other guilds continue to attack a dungeon, but for the Messiah Guild, the probability of success increases when the advanced team attacks, they will leave clues or items behind. The advanced team was willing to be stepping stones for those coming after them. It was for this reason that the Messiah Guild was respected it was an action that no other guild could or would do. It was only possible because it was the Messiah Guild and that was why the Messiah Guild was treated like a religion. Naturally, the atmosphere of those gathered around the Firefox dungeon was not very good. Most of the people there in fact, expected them to fail. They just didn't leave their seats as a sign of courtesy to the martyrs. They will probably focus on surviving as long as possible to leave a lot of information so roughly 10 days. Therefore when two players appeared from the dungeon gate everyone in the stadium was shocked. Everyone just stared at them blankly and the reporters forgot to baptize them in shutter clicks or even request for interviews. At that moment, someone appeared with another person on his back and rushed forward quickly. The place he headed toward was an ambulance that was stationed at the front of the stadium. The moment he boarded the ambulance, he shouted loudly. To the hospital. As the ambulance quickly left, only then did people come to their senses. Oh my god. They cleared the dungeon. A miracle had happened. Of course, it was only later that they would realize just how amazing that miracle really was. Another one. Inside an ambulance that was driving hurriedly down the road. Inside, intensive treatment was being performed on someone who was suffering from extreme burns. Another chocolate bar. Li Jina was eating chocolate bars like he was crazy. This caused Kim Wu Jin to have an absurd expression as he looked at him. Li Jina was reaching out to Kim Wu Jin like a doctor asking a nurse for a scalpel. Cola. Cola infusion. TL, he's referring to something like a saline infusion just being silly. At that, Kim Wu Jin took a can of coke from a box near him and threw it at Li Jina. 
As he received it, Li Jina shouted again. Not this, Petro. Kim Wu Jin gave a cool stare without replying and only then did Li Jin Ah stop playing doctor and instead said in a low voice. I fought with my life and I can't even play. As he asked that, Li Jin Ah stretched his hand and grabbed the box near to Kim Wu Jin and began to drink the soda in it. After that, of course it was time to burp. Gook. TL, think of burping sound, I just put it exactly as the author had it instead of burp. From Li Jin Ah's mouth, a sound that was hard to believe came from a human, appeared. However what was even harder to believe was the healing speed of Li Jina's wounds after he had gotten sufficient intake of water and sugar. The rank has gotten higher. This was the power of the blessing of river stick skill. At a higher rank it granted its user the resilience to stay alive even if their head was detached from their body. In fact when Kim Wu Jin had tried to deal with Li Jina, he'd appeared again shortly after getting his head cut off. Compared to that, the burns were like having a sore throat and were not threatening at all. It's more important that Oh Seichan was prepared for it. Of course, the recovery of the burns was largely attributed to the therapeutic skin suit that Oh Seichan had prepared rather than just his resilience. It's a really amazing item. Frankly, from Kim Wu Jin's perspective, the things prepared by Oh Seichan were much more surprising than Li Jin AHS resilience. Using items collected from dungeons to make better items was incredibly effective. It was on the same level of a national project. For example with dungeons with five or more floors, players often had to stay in it for more than a month and in order to increase their chances of survival. They filled their inventories with items that pursued efficiency more than anything else. In other words it was an era where the ability to create or receive more efficient and powerful items determined the life or death of the players. Unsurprisingly, the security of such technology was not something to take lightly. In other words, this sort of technology was not something that could just simply be stolen from somewhere. It could only be obtained because Oh Seichan's point of contact was someone who had a bit of power. At this point, as far as I know that only the Hansung Group and Pandora are the only ones who possess this level of technology was it Pandora? This was why Kim Woo Jin suspected the relationship between Oh Seichan and Pandora. Of course, there was nothing wrong with it. Pandora was one of Johann George's supporters. What struck him was that Pandora was one of the greatest supporters of the King of Undead. It's likely that by 2023, contact between them began in some way or the other. Moreover, it was likely around this time. However it was funny that Kim Woo Jin had appeared which caused Pandora to not make contact with the King of Undead through Oh Seichan. Before that, I have to do my best. In the end, Kim Woo Jin had no choice but to work hard. Therefore he confirmed once again. I should start out with income first. Kim Woo Jin looked at the new items that filled his inventory. The first thing that caught his eye was the third tail of the nine-tailed fox. Having it not only increased one's stats substantially, but there was also the incredible blinding effect, it was not an item that could simply be bought with money. I know where the first, fourth, eighth and ninth are. In addition, Kim Woo Jin knew the locations of four out of the eight remaining tales. Some of them were items that the Messiah Guild would obtain in the future. What was more important to Kim Woo Jin, however, was. I managed to prevent it from entering Lee Sejun's inventory. In Kim Woo Jin's eyes, it was already a good job to not let it fall into the hands of Lee Sejun. Then there's the Firefox's skin. The fox leather was really useful armor made from the firefox's leather would not only be at the unique grade, but would also have very high resistance to fire. With it, any cold dungeon could be cleared easily. Using its characteristic of generating heat, anyone would be able to complete dungeons with cold environments without suffering any penalties. Considering the fact that most of the dungeons that players avoided were due to their harsh environments rather than their monsters, it was obvious that the value of such an item could not be ignored. Other than those, there were still more rewards. Speedster. Skeleton Soldier. Chapter, 95. Speedster. Achievement Rank, Unique. Effect. 3% to all stats. Speedster. The Speedster achievement was an unexpected gain. I never thought I'd get it at this point. 
In a sense, it was an achievement that was harder to get than legendary achievements since it could only be obtained by clearing a dungeon floor within an hour. In fact, the achievement's 3% stat boost was greater than most legendary achievements. There was also another reward that was far more important than that of the achievement. Skeleton Soldier Rank, A Summon a skeleton soldier by sacrificing a corpse. Number of summons, 10. Skeleton soldier had become an A rank skill. Well, to be precise, it had become a B rank skill and had been elevated to a rank with the effect of the plus ring. But that detail wasn't really important to Kim Woo Jin. Two steps away. Only two steps remained for it to become an EX rank skill. If I raised it with the horned fox's horn. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin still had one horn of the horned fox in his hands. Though the possibility was low, in a situation where the skeleton soldier skill was at the A rank, there was a chance to increase the rank of the skill to EX using the horn fox's horn as well as the plus ring one. No, there's no reason to rely on probability. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't intend to entrust his fate to such an absurd probability. Anything would be fine. What Kim Woo Jin paid attention to wasn't such low probability luck, but the fact that he could use the horn of the horned fox in the first place. Among the skills that Kim Woo Jin possessed currently, there was nothing to lose regardless of which one he chose to rank up. I'm going to need everything to deal with the Messiah Guild in the future. The last gain I got was that Isaac Ivanov would now be recognized as irreplaceable by the Messiah Guild. Without any hunting dogs they will approach more earnestly. Since the Messiah Guild's hunting dog for the two-floor dungeons, Suzuki Eiji, had disappeared, they would be even more obsessed and interested in acquiring Isaac Ivanov. This meant that an opportunity would come again for Isaac Ivanov. With him they would be able to attack dungeons filled with powerful or valuable monsters that even the Messiah Guild didn't have the confidence to clear before. Of course, there was something that Kim Woo Jin didn't forget. They will try to deal with Park Yong Wan first. At the moment, the most important thing to the Messiah Guild wasn't the rookie Isaac Ivanov, but was instead Park Yong Wan who was already capable of biting them too. They will make a move sooner or later. Moreover, this time, the Messiah Guild would definitely reveal a powerful hand that they hadn't used in the past to deal with the giant Park Yong Wan. This was what Kim Woo Jin was aiming for. As long as he goes outside, they'll find a gap. Even if it was a powerful or protected enemy, as long as they went out, then you could find a gap somehow and somewhere and aim for it. At the very least, that's what a man like Kim Woo Jin would do. Even if it's a giant monster, there would be a weak point. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin was confident he wouldn't be surprised no matter how shocking the hand the Messiah Guild revealed was. With the help of Oh Se Chan and Lee Jina, it should be enough. In addition to that, Kim Woo Jin wasn't alone anymore. As he thought of that fact, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at Lee Jina who also turned to look at him with a smile. The smile was very bright to the point that his eyes seemed to be shining. A little while ago, I recalculated the time and it turned out to be 601 seconds so you should prepare your wallet. At those words, Kim Woo Jin refuted with a steady tone. It was 599 seconds. Hey, really? Bite me. Kim Woo Jin finally nodded. Fine, I'll treat you to some Japanese food. Huh? Really? When Kim Woo Jin said that, Lee Jina was very surprised and even a little afraid. Then I'll have ramen the smallest sized bowl. There's a big commotion outside something must have happened. In response to the words from the black woman with blonde hair, Park Yong Wan looked up from the document in his hands. Soon after, he placed the document on the desk and signed his name on it using an expensive fountain pen that was placed nearby. Then after turning the document around on the desk, he slid it toward the black woman. Seeing this, the woman smiled and took the document, placing it gently into the secure briefcase that she had prepared. Thank you from now on our Frontier Guild will provide our full support to the activities of Phoenix Guild as stated in the contract. Park Yong Wan simply looked her in the eyes, instead of responding. Chapter, 96 Firefox Dungeon Successfully Completed in Three Days When the attack on the Firefox Dungeon in Japan ended in three days, no one anticipated it. No one can understand the situation. 
the Japanese government is currently conducting an emergency investigation. What really happened in that dungeon? Moreover there was only information about the clear and no information was given about the process. Naturally, this confused those in Japan who were interested in the dungeon. The Messiah Guild says, we are currently investigating the situation and will notify you later on the date of the briefing. The Messiah Guild delays the schedule of the dungeon briefing. When the Messiah Guild postponed the briefing for the dungeon in such a situation, it was similar to if someone stabbed an inflated balloon with a needle. Is it a bug instead of a clearance? Were the survivors forced to return? Did the Messiah Guild find a bug in a dungeon? Some experts claim that monsters will begin to appear from the dungeon gate because of this situation. All sorts of opinions and rumors began to surface about the situation with the dungeon, many of which caused mass panic. The situation was confusing and people found it hard to stay calm even when the guild involved was none other than Messiah Guild. But the confusion wasn't hard to calm down. Isaac Ivanov, the man saved everyone. Isaac Ivanok, a new hero is born. The truth about what happened in the Firefox dungeon was revealed and it was shown that it wouldn't have been possible with Isaac Ivanov's performance. That was the truth about what happened. There were no shortage of stories about Isaac Ivanov's performance in the Firefox dungeon. The Mokash Guild says, Isaac Ivanov is currently recuperating from his injuries and there is no threat to his life, however, the injuries are quite severe so he will refrain from making an appearance for some time. Isaac Ivanov, the hero who created such a legendary story had been injured but was now recuperating, this caused the people of the world to no longer be confused, instead, the world was filled with cheers. Little by little, Isaac Ivanov's name became known to everyone around the world. Isaac Ivanov, an amazing guy has appeared. Even the office of Park Yongwan was filled with his name, what more explanation could one need? I think the Messiah Guild is spreading this story around deliberately. Park Yongwan's eyes when he heard this story was very different to when he had first heard the news of Isaac Ivanov. It was similar to the eyes of a great beast when he noticed the birth of a new predator near his territory. Isn't that how it is? However, Kim Woo Jin was different. I'm not really interested in who he is. He had no interest in talking about Isaac Ivanov. More importantly, are you really working with the Frontier Guild from now on? That's right. That was because the existence of the collaboration with the Frontier Guild was filling his mind instead. I expected the big guy to move, but... Park Yongwan had called for Kim Woo Jin just five hours after he'd completed the Firefox dungeon. He told him that he had something very important to discuss and asked him to come to the headquarters of the Phoenix Guild as soon as possible, so Kim Woo Jin had to go there immediately. Park Yongwan said to Kim Woo Jin. You know that we're in a situation we need a partner to stop the Skull Guild, right? The Frontier Guild isn't lacking anything, they will be our partner. He intended to join hands with the Frontier Guild to take on the Skull Guild there was nothing wrong with that. In a situation where the Skull Guild was backed by the Yamato Federation and even the Messiah Guild, Park Yongwan was pressured when facing them. Of course, Park Yongwan's aim wasn't just to get help. This time he's aiming to sell to the US instead of Japan. This was Park Yongwan who had sold his country to Japan for his own profit. It was natural for him to prepare to also sell his country to the US just in case. In order to sell the country, it was natural to complete sufficient consultation and preparation in advance. I thought that the Messiah Guild would aim for that point. Kim Woo Jin believed that the Messiah Guild would approach him at that point. And they had some pretty attractive conditions. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin knew something that was willing to give Park Yong Wan such an attractive offer might be a hidden hand of the Messiah Guild. They really want to get rid of Park Yong Wan this time. In addition to that, he believed that in order to remove Park Yong Wan the Messiah Guild would have no choice but to reveal a big hand. Removing Park Yong Wan wasn't something easy that any card could do. Firstly, he was one of Korea's top players and became a Korean hero when he cleared a six-floor dungeon. Assassinating in real life? TL, aka out of the dungeon. That was incredibly risky and had a low level of possibility. In order to kill players over level 200 in real life you'd need to at least use a few missiles from a fighter jet. In the end, in order to get rid of him without going back and forth, 
it would be best to enter a dungeon with Park Yongwan and eliminate him there. In order to enter a dungeon with a man like Park Yongwan they had to have a reputation on par with Park Yongwan and his firm trust. But this time the hidden hand should be the Frontier Guild. The only problem was that the Messiah Guild's hidden hand might be the Frontier Guild. No, in fact it wasn't really a problem, but it was very shocking. The Frontier Guild was one of the strongest guilds in America, it might even be considered by some as America's strongest guild, it was also one of the world's top five guilds. If they truly belonged to the Messiah Guild then it would mean that the Messiah Guild already controlled half of the world. For those who were the enemies of the Messiah Guild, this information was enough for them to sigh in despair. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't despair. I need to gather more information on the Frontier Guild. This wouldn't make Kim Woo Jin change his resolution or his plans. Therefore he said calmly. So we'll be moving with the Frontier Guild from now on. We're not moving together. Then? I told you, the Frontier Guild offered very attractive conditions. At the question, Park Yongwan shook his head. They'll take responsibility for you and nurture you you just need to accept their care. Is that so? I heard that the most talented person in the Frontier Guild was dispatched with the best item sets and more. Kim Woo Jin smiled. Then I'll have to thank you for that. It was a sincere smile. Chapter, 97 Uh, brother. What's with the Choco Pies one? As Li Jina walked into Oh Se Chan's office, he was in awe as he saw boxes of Choco Pies stacked like a tower. Can I eat them? Eat it or don't eat it. When Oh Se Chan said this as if he didn't care, Li Jina was overcome with fright. No, did brother finally go crazy? This was the first time ever that Oh Se Chan had been so kind when food was involved. But of course Li Jina did not think about it too deeply. I need to eat as much as possible before he changes his mind. He immediately began a Choco Pie Massacre. It was at that moment. Wu Wu. The smartphone on Oh Se Chan's desk began vibrating and Oh Se Chan immediately picked it up and began speaking. Oh, so did the conversation end well? You picked up faster than I expected. The caller was Kim Woo Jin. Actually, I was waiting because I thought you would call. As he spoke, Oh Se Chan's voice was calm and quiet, unlike his usual. Then I won't need to explain for a long time the Messiah Guild and the Frontier Group seem to be together. As Kim Woo Jin continued to speak, his tone became firm. So it seems like the plan will need to be completely revised. Even when he said those words, Oh Se Chan remained silent, without answering. Munch munch, the sound of Li Jina eating choco pies as if they were song pie and two could be heard quite clearly. I don't know what Kim Woo Jin thinks about this, but if it was known that the Messiah Guild and the Frontier Guild were together then the whole country would run away. Oh Se Chan believed that when Kim Woo Jin was called by Park Yong Wan, he would definitely hear about the negotiations between the Phoenix Guild and the Frontier Guild. And upon hearing that, Kim Woo Jin would, like him, be convinced that the Frontier Guild was actually working with the Messiah Guild. That was what Kim Woo Jin had been aiming for in the first place. Even Oh Se Chan wouldn't have known they were a team if it weren't for Kim Woo Jin. Anyway, knowing that, Kim Woo Jin would then be able to make the most reasonable choice. Yeah, we need to fix it completely so where do you want to go? China? Russia? I'll take you wherever you want to go. He was talking about running away. Kim Woo Jin finally opened his mouth after a period of silence. You're looking down on me. Ha. Huh. I never had any intention of running away. What are you talking about? You know that they are working together and they will use this chance to catch you but you want to stay? That doesn't make any sense. If I intended to act with common sense then we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. That's true. Moreover, we don't have a lot of time Oh Se Chan, I know you know there is no such thing as a second chance. Of course, I know it well. There are two things that I want one is information on the members that the Frontier Guild sent here, the other one will come after. Okay. As he said this, Oh Se Chan's voice returned to how it was normally. You can do whatever you want and I'll do my best to support you Oh, wait a minute. Suddenly Oh Se Chan moved the phone from his ear and covered it. Hey, 
You pig bastard. Stop eating. He shouted at Li Jina who had already destroyed ten boxes of choco pies. Why so suddenly? Stop eating, we were going to use those as snacks for the office this year. After saying that, he put the phone to his ear again. Sorry about that a very ugly bear is depriving our office of our precious food oh and about the list of members that the Frontier Guild sent here. I'm not sure, but I know that they are staying on the USFK base some among them are also working on a two-floor dungeon Sam Oliver do you know him? Kim Woojin answered without hesitation. I know him better than you'd expect. That's a reliable answer I'll send the correct information as soon as I can. Afterward, Oh Seichan closed the phone and looked up. Li Jina looked at him. What's wrong? You don't need to know. Isn't this Choco Pie a gift for that guy? What's with that bullshit? Isn't there a letter on this box of Choco Pies? Saying Dear Isaac Ivanov. As he asked this, Li Jina smiled brightly. Oh, do you think he'll be upset when he finds out? Do you think he's just gonna let this go? Oh Seichan simply looked at Li Jina and said. Yeah, but there seems to be a human who finished all of the ten boxes in the blink of an eye. Uh. At those words, Li Jina made a surprised expression that caused Oh Seichan to smile brightly. The next time I get pizza, if you touch it, I'll tell that guy what you did. It was at this moment that Oh Seichan really returned to normal. The USFK base in Payangtake. After the dungeon gate appeared, many troops and munitions were moved over and the border patrol became stricter. The men who appeared there did not look like soldiers. Nevertheless, no soldier detained them or stopped them to check their identities. There was no reason to ask. It's the Frontier Guild. The red cloth around their thighs proved that they were members of the world-renowned Frontier Guild. So the soldiers who confirmed their status saluted them. The United States military expressed their respect to those people who were willing to venture into unknown worlds for their great country. However, those people paid little attention to their surroundings. Everyone keep in mind the mission this time is very important. They weren't in Korea simply to visit. The deadline to hunt the bird's head is three months. They were here to catch the head of a bird, a bird that never dies. A young white man looked into his inventory and smiled. Don't worry. The name of the man who spoke was Sam Oliver. Percival Spear, if I have this, I could even hunt Isaac Ivanov. He was the Frontier Guild's hunting dog. I'm interested in trying Choco Pie but I'll have to ship it to my country. Chapter, 98 The trade terms between the Phoenix Guild and the Frontier Guild were simple. On the condition that the Phoenix Guild fully assisted the Frontier Guild's advance into Korea, the Frontier Guild would support and protect the members of the Phoenix Guild in dungeons. To be precise they were supposed to protect the members of Park Yongwon's guards as they completed dungeons. The contract did not show any real problems. However Kim Woo Jin knew the truth. I couldn't receive such VIP treatment from the Frontier Guild. The fact was that things never flowed smoothly in accordance with contracts. The difference in level is too large. First, the biggest problem was the difference in power between the Frontier Guild and the Phoenix Guild. The Phoenix Guild was clearly a guild that had been praised for its fame, power and potential to reach the world stage. No one denied that in the absence of the Messiah Guild, they would be the number one guild in Korea. However the Frontier Guild was one of the top five guilds in the world. There was no reason for the Frontier Guild to do this for Park Yongwon, who was lauded for clearing a six-floor dungeon even if the person was a member of the Phoenix Guild. And it would be no exaggeration to say that in terms of pride, the Frontier Guild is number one in the world. Moreover, the Frontier Guild was an incredibly proud guild. It was because of the characteristics of the guild. As seen by the name Frontier, the Pioneers, the Frontier Guild thought that they, unlike other guilds, pioneered dungeons, rather than attacked them. If Sam Oliver is the one in charge then he will be even more proud. Among the members of the Frontier Guild, Sam Oliver, who was sent to Korea to support the Phoenix Guild, was the worst. From the fact that Kim Woo Jin knew his name, meant that Sam Oliver was no ordinary person. Actually, he was more than just not ordinary. If you were the owner of the Spear of Percival then anyone would be just as proud. 
Sam Oliver was the owner of the Spear of Percival who was one of the Knights of the Round Table. All the more since he managed to keep the spear till he was over level 200 foot. He had managed to stay the owner of the item for more than 200 levels. That meant that no one was able to take the weapon from him for 200 levels. It was more difficult to protect and keep legendary weapons compared to other items. He hit it very well. It was only possible because it was Sam Oliver who was the owner of Percival's spear. He only ever used the spear at extremely dangerous moments. He only used it when necessary. In other words, he was strong enough to not have to rely on Percival's spear. And he would treat a player he'd never heard of like Kim Woo Jin, like a VIP. It was impossible. This is what caused Kim Woo Jin to be convinced. It will be a battle of wills soon. The meeting with the Frontier Guild members in a few minutes would not go smoothly. Kick. Nice to meet you I'm Jamie Kim from the Frontier Guild legal team. The person who entered was a black-haired foreigner. I'm here to give you a few notices. This was the will of the Frontier Guild. He looks pretty shallow. Kim Woo Jin kept a firm expression as he tried hard to hold back the expression of disdain that almost slipped out. Are there any Frontier Guild players? His voice and expression showed that he was upset. You will meet them after the notice. But Jamie Kim was adamant. No, it wasn't determination. Again, this is a notice whatever you want to do, you can do it after the notice is over. It was, in effect, a threat. As he noticed this, Kim Woo Jin nodded with a colder expression. Jamie Kim spoke with his arrogant tone. From now on, Kim Woo Jin, everything you do will be under the control of the Frontier Guild for transportation. You can only use the vehicles provided by the Frontier Guild if you have insurance for your car you should either cancel it or get rid of it. At the end of that, Kim Woo Jin's expression was frozen. But Jamie Kim didn't stop speaking. And from now on you can only stay where the Frontier Guild permits other locations are prohibited please use only the room in the hotel that will be provided to you naturally. You will only be able to eat what we offer it means you cannot even buy or eat gum outside. As he heard more and more shocking words, Kim Woo Jin no longer needed to pretend to have a cold expression. And in the dungeons. However that was all good when compared to the words that were said after. Don't do anything. Nothing. At the end Kim Woo Jin even responded for the first time. His surprise was genuine, and Jamie Kim pushed up his glasses before responding to him. Yes, don't move a finger. That. Once again words forced their way out of his mouth. Thud. At that moment, Jamie Kim had hit the desk with his fist. The content of the contract only said to protect you and help you to level up, there was no clause to respect your personality or freedom. Kim Woo Jin closed his mouth and Jamie Kim looked at him with ridicule. So you don't have to do anything in the dungeon, just take what the Frontier Guild gives you. At those words, Kim Woo Jin put on an odd expression and covered his mouth with his right hand. To provide all the vehicles, accommodation and food and make me sit and get free experience in a dungeon. Somehow he managed to endure it. Is there a hidden camera somewhere? A laugh came out of him unknowingly. Chapter, 99 When they heard of the Frontier Guild support of the Phoenix Guild, Park yong -wan's personal guards put their hands up and cheered. The fact that the Frontier Guild would be supporting their dungeon attacks was an incredible luxury. Of course, the Frontier Guild did everything that the contract said to help Park yong -wan's guards attack the dungeons. However, words like personality and freedom were completely excluded. The Frontier Guild treated Park yong -wan's guards like they were high school students who were 100 days away from their college entrance exam. I'm going crazy, we're not high school students. I didn't become a player to do this. I disposed of a Ferrari. Park yong -wan's guards had reached the limit of their patience. Originally, the players joined the Phoenix Guild to save the world, serve the world, and to live a good life. Enjoying wealth and fame were their goals in life, and Park yong -wan's guards were even more arrogant and snobbish. For them, a world where you could only target dungeons and all luxury and entertainment are forbidden was hell. Therefore everyone had already reached their limit and now couldn't help but grumble while wearing expressions of despair. It was the same for Kim Woo Jin. He also had a bit of struggle. I'm so tired. 
It was not easy to laze around and eat and pretend it's hard. It certainly wasn't easy to act like that for over a month. I never learned to do something like this. Moreover, for Kim Woo Jin, this was a first. Before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin used to attack dungeons much more fiercely than anyone else. And after returning to the past his dungeons were full of life and death battles that could no longer be considered just fierce. For Kim Woo Jin, it was much harder for him to attack a C-ranked dungeon than to attack an A-ranked dungeon alone. There were two reasons why Kim Woo Jin endured it. Truly the Frontier Guild, the charging speed is truly fast. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 49. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats. Health, 149255. Stamina, 2109. Magic Power, 3145. Achievements, 32. Extra Points, 0. It's slower than when in moving with Li Jina, but this is still great. One was that as one of the top five, the Frontier Guild's ability to attack dungeons was very impressive. And the other one was. Well this should be over soon. The Frontier Guild would soon reveal its true face. Since this result has been produced, Park Yongwan would definitely enter a dungeon with confidence. The main reason that Park Yongwan joined hands with the Frontier Guild was to ward off against any unexpected situations in the dungeon. So by this point, Park Yongwan should be satisfied with the Frontier Guild's performance. This meant that Park Yongwan would soon attack a six-floor dungeon. Because Park Yongwan knows what's truly important. In this era, the most important thing wasn't political power or bank accounts filled with money, but the power of physical violence and the only place to get that power was to attack stronger dungeons. This was what Kim Woo Jin expected. Did you hear that Master Park Yongwan is preparing to attack another six-floor dungeon? Really? There is no official announcement yet but I was told the news from another member. The news that Park Yongwan was planning to enter a six-floor dungeon soon entered Kim Woo Jin's ears. Your level has increased. You have reached level 50 inventory has increased by 10 spaces. Also, there was the notification that he had finally reached level 50. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your growth inventory increased by an additional 10 spaces. The Emissary of the Underworld sends you a catalog as a gift for your growth. The Emissary of the Underworld is encouraging your performance and transfers more power to you. It's finally time. It was the moment where everything changed. Park Yongwan once again challenges a six-floor dungeon. When Park Yongwan's attack on a six-floor dungeon was announced, it drew the attention of the world. Park Yongwan's shocking declaration. Will he target all the six-floor dungeons that appeared in Korea? Park Yongwan will go above and beyond and conquer another six-floor dungeon. It was clear that Park Yongwan's second attack on a six-floor dungeon would affect the balance and order of the world. Of course, the Frontier Guild would have no choice but to act on it. There will be a break for a week. It was for this reason that Kim Woo Jin was given a proper break for the first time. It was a half-baked vacation in the hotel provided by the Frontier Guild where they were still given food and were under guard. It's really hard. So naturally, Kim Woo Jin complained. It's even harder to break through the surveillance and sneak the cell phone in, as the person who had to analyze the hotel's design and then recruit the person to plant it was not easy for me at all. Of course, from Oh se -chan's perspective, it was absurd to hear. After hearing Oh se -chan's words, Kim Woo Jin let out a laugh and cut the end off a stick-like thing in his hand before putting it in his mouth and chewing on it. Meanwhile, the conversation continued. Well I don't think I need to explain the situation as soon as Park Yongwan enters that dungeon, those frontier guild bastards will reveal their true faces. Odok. Odok. TL, take it as the sounds of Kim Woo Jin eating. Their main goal should be to curb Park Yongwan they intend to finish it all at once if they intended to have a long term war then the frontier guild wouldn't have come forward in the first place. Odok. Odok. I think the time frame they set was three months, and now two months have passed already so for the rest of the month they might threaten you in some way. So be careful the Frontier Guild will try to capture you using the Phoenix Guild you can't trust anyone in the dungeon you need to think that everyone is a potential enemy so never. 
When talking on the phone with someone, can't you eat silently? Finally Oh se chan couldn't take it and spoke to Kim Woo Jin who had been eating during the call. Are you making fun of me because of the free room service now? Kim Woo Jin finally answered. Sorry I didn't know where else to eat the horn fox's horn can I just reveal myself openly and eat it? What? The horn fox's horn. Oh se chan was naturally surprised and while he had his surprised reaction, Kim Woo Jin put the last piece of the horned fox in his mouth. Then a notification appeared in front of him. The mysterious power of the horned fox's horn enhances your power. The horned fox's horn has enhanced the power of the skeleton soldier skill. Kim Woo Jin smiled at that notification. Chapter 100 The Frontier Guild As on the world's five strongest guilds, and with the full support of the United States government, it obviously had its hand in a few secret organizations. Like the Pathfinders. The role of the Pathfinders was, just like their name, to be the pioneers. They were the ones who would go ahead of the Frontier Guild and create a path for them. But this time, their pioneering target wasn't a dungeon, but a country. For political reasons, as well as many other reasons, the Frontier Guild couldn't reach their target. Now we'll be done by next week. I'm glad that Park Yongwon decided to enter the dungeon early I'd lose my mind if I had to stay here any longer. The players that had been sent to Park Yongwon by the Frontier Guild were actually Pathfinders. Unsurprisingly, they had no intentions of helping Park Yongwon as agreed in the contract. Their goal was to gain Park Yongwon's trust and then force him into a corner, to make him hand over everything, including the Phoenix Guild, to the Frontier Guild. Park Yongwon was also in a hurry that's the only reason he believed us and decided to enter the dungeon so fast. The Frontier Guild had succeeded in getting Park Yongwon's trust the evidence of this was in the fact that Park Yongwon had decided to enter a dungeon. Naturally, the Frontier Guild was ready to move on to the next level. Let's get this over with and head back it would be terrible to imagine if something happened and we had to stay here. As was stating before, they intended to push Park Yongwon into a corner. Ah, we worked so hard to help them grow and now we have to kill them I now understand the way cowboys feel toward their cows. They also intended to deal with the guards who could be called Park Yongwon's hands and feet. Of course, not all of them would be killed. I'd rather kill them I have to act like I was tricked. Right it's better to just kill all of them. They were going to let a few of the guards survive. That way, the survivors will cry and say that the opponents they faced were unusual and they could only run away. Sam, what about you? Huh? Disposal or acting? Disposal. Fortunately, Sam Oliver only had to deal with one player, Kim Woo Jin. So lucky. It's not just that he's only in charge of one person right? One person. He only needs to kill one. Damn, our team needs to kill seven. Sam has always been lucky why else would he be called Lucky Sam? He didn't need to pretend, he just needed to kill one person, he was the luckiest out of all his colleagues. But Sam Oliver's expression wasn't good when he heard his colleague's jealousy. Of course, it wasn't because he didn't want to hear that he was lucky. He also thought that he was the most fortunate among the players that had come on this operation. Why did team leader Naomi say that? Two hours before their team leader Naomi spell, a black woman with long straight hair, had given a personal mission to Sam Oliver. What did she mean to take a professional with me to get information? What's more, her mission was for him to take an expert into the dungeon to extract information from Kim Woo Jin. It suddenly became troublesome. Of course, it wasn't listed as an official mission from the Frontier Guild. If it was an official mission would there be a need for her to call him separately and make a personal request? This was why Sam Oliver's expression wasn't good. Of course, the answer was already out. Naomi Spell had a large influence in the Frontier Guild and she was one of the main points of contact between them and the CIA. I have to succeed somehow. Sam Oliver did not have the power to refuse the mission. Somehow. So Sam Oliver had to prepare. D-Day was near. A Cadillac Escalade. The vehicles, famous because the U.S. president rode in them, were moving in a line along a highway. It was an interesting sight for anyone to see and Kim Woo Jin was in the middle of it. 
Kim Woo Jin's appearance was more akin to a prisoner being transported. No one would consider sitting in the middle of the back seat between two mean looking men wielding guns, furthest away from the door, as VIP treatment. It was more like prisoner treatment. How much longer? Why do you want to know? The Frontier Guild members that filled his surroundings did not bother to give him any information that was the treatment that Kim Woo Jin received from them. The members of the Frontier Guild had never treated Kim Woo Jin as a player, colleague, or ally even once. Of course, Kim Woo Jin never thought of them like that either. There is more preparation today than usual, so as expected, it's D Day. He didn't have a habit of pretending to talk to people who had end up fighting and killing after. In the silence, the vehicle stopped moving. Get off. The place where the four cars had stopped was Dongtan's second new town. A few years ago, it was a place where apartment buildings shot up like bamboo shoots after a heavy rain, but in the advent of the appearance of the dungeon gates, it became ruins after suffering from the monster's attacks. Get ready everyone. We'll enter in one hour. The players there were making a fuss as they got ready. This should be the dungeon report. In the clutter, Kim Woo Jin saw something looking like the dungeon report and after looking it over, he confirmed it. Sawtooth Wolf's Den. Floors, 2. Difficulty, C rank. Maximum number of entries, 50. Requirements, level 60 and below. Conditions, defeat the leader of the Sawtooth Wolf on the second floor. Rewards, none. In fact it was meaningless. Getting the dungeon report one hour before entering the dungeon was the same as not seeing it all since there would be no time to prepare. In fact, Kim Woo Jin usually didn't do anything in the dungeon and just had to follow them around. But today was different. The eyes looking at Kim Woo Jin were different from the start. They intend to kill me. There was a difference between the eyes of someone looking at their livestock while feeding it and the eyes of someone looking at their livestock while preparing to slaughter it. And Kim Woo Jin was someone who knew that difference very well. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin would need to also move differently as well. I need to send a signal. Then Kim Woo Jin swung his hands and said lightly. It's strangely creepy. Woo Woo. At that moment Kim Woo Jin's cell phone began to vibrate and he took it out as if he was expecting it. Stop moving. Immediately one of the watchdogs nearby noticed. Where did you come from? The monitor asked Kim Woo Jin about the call and Kim Woo Jin showed him the caller ID on the phone screen. It's an urgent call ill put it on speaker, so please allow it. At the end, the monitor nodded and Kim Woo Jin answered before immediately shouting. What do you want? You need 5 billion. Chapter, 101. Yes, I'll keep that in mind yes. An hour before entering the dungeon, Sam Oliver received a call. The call was from Naomi Spell. I'll do as Captain says. The content of the call was only a reaffirmation of the plan in the dungeon. I'll make sure. Sam Oliver's facial expression at the end of the call was not good. Why is Kim Woo Jin so important to the team leader Naomi? It would be strange if the face of a general employee would be good after they were given a personal mission from their boss. I have to deal with this properly. Naturally, the burden of perfecting the task lay in Sam Oliver's heart. It was around that time. What? A subordinate brought him news. The piggy doesn't want to enter the dungeon. He received news that Kim Woo Jin refused to enter the dungeon. I don't know all the details, but it's something about needing five million dollars right now. The reason was that he needed five million dollars or five billion one one. So he's asking for one more day so he can borrow the money. Because he needed to find the money, Kim Woo Jin was requesting that they postpone the dungeon attack one day. Is that bastard crazy? It was absurd to Sam Oliver. From his point of view, the pig, who he was about to slaughter in an hour, suddenly had a problem in his house so he was asking for another day. If it was a normal situation, Sam Oliver would have thrown Kim Woo Jin into the dungeon after breaking both his legs. Is it not a lie? Isn't he trying to get away? We did a simple investigation of the sender's number and were sure that Kim Woo Jin owes a sum of five million dollars all the money in his bank account has already been withdrawn. Damn it! 
There was no way he could afford to delay a day when he had a task that needed to be completed perfectly. What if we just took him? He would resist he could just run away it seems to be an urgent situation and from his face, it seems as though he would not hesitate to run if we force him to stay. It was then. Hey, I'm here because of Kim Woo Jin. New information arrived. I think Kim Woo Jin will contact the Phoenix Guild. The information made Sam Oliver's forehead crease. What is that supposed to mean? That I think he intends to borrow money from the Phoenix Guild. Who will he contact in the Phoenix Guild? Park Yong Wan's secretary. When he heard those words, Sam Oliver clenched his teeth. I have to stop that from happening. Until now, it was because of Park Yong Wan's acceptance that the Frontier Guild could make use of his guards. If Park Yong Wan didn't accept it, then they would not have acted that way, even if they were the Frontier Guild. So if Park Yong Wan was around, the Frontier Guild would be able to do everything as usual. But now Park Yong Wan was in the dungeon, so his secretary was acting in his stead. It's even more of a hassle now. That's why the situation now was different from usual. Park Yong Wan's secretary would probably accept Kim Woo Jin's request the moment she heard it. For one, it was not unusual to postpone a dungeon attack by a day or two on occasion, and the secretary would definitely not refuse Kim Woo Jin's request. Honestly, weren't the Frontier Guild's actions a bit irrational? If she ignored it and then he went into a dungeon and died. Above all, the Frontier Guild intended to kill Kim Woo Jin. Things are becoming complicated. That was the most troubling part. Park Yong Wan's secretary could ignore the proposal to delay the dungeon attack. But what would happen if she ignored it and Kim Woo Jin entered the dungeon only to die? Would Park Yong Wan just sit still and watch? He would find a great deal of fault, and the result of that criticism would fall directly onto Sam Oliver. So Sam Oliver made a decision. Lend Kim Woo Jin five million dollars. Yes. We have that much money. Lend him. Since he wants to borrow it so much, he can get it from us. The man looked surprised. But that guy. Would it make sense to lend five million to someone who was going to die? That wasn't common sense. Messing up the work or losing five million dollars, which one is more important? However, Sam Oliver was adamant. I know. Then let's get ready to enter the dungeon. Of course, Sam Oliver made a commitment at that moment. I'll make him pay for that five million. He intended to make Kim Woo Jin pay somehow. About ten minutes later, he got a call. Kim Woo Jin will enter the dungeon. Survive for four days. Mother. As soon as the quest alert was heard, groans could be heard from all the people who entered the dungeon. However, the moment of groaning was short. It was because at this moment Sam Oliver looked at Kim Woo Jin with the eyes of a predator. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had already noticed it. This isn't a very good place to kill me and clean it up. The goal of the Frontier Guild in this dungeon was to get rid of Kim Woo Jin and in such a situation, a survival quest was not good. If Kim Woo Jin noticed and ran away, it would be very troublesome if he moved to the second floor after four days. In other words, it was the best stage for Kim Woo Jin instead. Don't lift a finger as usual, they'll break one of your legs if you mess with me. I'll keep that in mind. Even if he sat still they would still make a body out of Kim Woo Jin. From the situation, they probably intend to kill me on the fourth day and move on to the second floor. Kim Woo Jin's plan against them was simple. Prepare for the hunt and wait for the time to come. Sick. And so Kim Woo Jin made his preparations. As everyone finally looked away from him, he slipped a ring on his finger. The plus ring has been equipped. All skills increased by one rank. The rank of the blood poison skill has reached the transcendent rank. Then he heard a new notification. The rank of the skeleton soldier skill has reached the transcendent rank. And with that notification, a new skill window appeared before Kim Woo Jin's eyes. Skeleton Soldier Rank, EX Effect Can summon skeletons of all races Number of summons, 12 Looking at it, Kim Woo Jin sank into his thoughts. The Sawtooth Wolves' Eye have a bad memory. 
what came to his mind was when he had to deal with the skeleton monsters summoned by the King of Undead. USD to 1 is 1 colon 1 1 9 2 0 6. Chapter, 102. When the world became like a game, the number of players began to skyrocket and numerous guilds appeared one after another. Due to the increasing number of guilds, that large number of players suddenly seemed inadequate and so guilds began competing. It was not easy for the top five guilds who appeared during these competitions. The Frontier Guild was one of these guilds. Of course, some would say that the Frontier only managed to become one of the top five guilds in the world with the help of a superpower like the United States. If it wasn't for the United States, they would never have entered the top guild rankings. They were not wrong. But would a country like the United States give support to the Frontier Guild for absolutely no reason? That was impossible. The Frontier Guild was able to gain the complete support from the United States government because it proved that it was worthy of receiving such support. The level of the players in the Frontier Guild could not be compared to those outside of it. The Frontier Guild only accepted players who could successfully pass their many tests and trials. Even in the Phoenix Guild, it would be a great thing if they could receive just one such player. Their skills were certain to that extent. See ranked hunting grounds are the best for leveling. Kim Woo Jin, who had watched them closely for a month, was forced to acknowledge the skills of the Frontier Guild. In other words, Kim Woo Jin had a good understanding of just how good they were. Their skills, how they fight, how they move, their habits and their various personality-ish knew all of it. He also knew the best ways to hunt such prey. Because of this, they would not miss their intentions. They will move sooner or later. On the third day in the dungeon, he didn't miss the killing intent that they had toward him. He also didn't forget that a hunter should always make a move before his prey. Then I'll make a move too. So Kim Woo Jin started moving. A total of 40 players had entered the Sawtooth Wolf's dungeon, consisting of 14 from the Phoenix Guild, 12 from the Frontier Guild and 14 members from other guilds. The Frontier Guild and the Phoenix Guild were already partners and those from the other guilds were also prepared by the Frontier Guild from the start. Hey, Sam. What is it? Isn't it too much to bring 39 people to kill one? Naturally, the Frontier Guild's members thought it was overkill. It's too much. Sam Oliver had the same feeling. To be honest, he felt it was already quite ridiculous. It's already too much for me to catch some guy that has nothing but a little poison. I don't think Sam needs to go. A guy like Kim Woo Jin would never be a match for Sam Oliver alone, it was overkill. Considering what Kim Woo Jin had shown them so far, it was understandable for them to have such thoughts. The two of them naturally turned to look at Kim Woo Jin as they were having their conversation. He was sitting alone in a corner, watching their surroundings while munching on an energy which was all the Frontier Guild provided him. Of course the Frontier Guild didn't feel compassion or anything of the sort. Sam, when are you gonna do it? Would the slaughterer feel compassion for the slaughtered pigs? Let's finish it quickly. From their perspective, they just wanted to finish the job as soon as possible. Sam Oliver turned to his teammate. I have something else to add as well. What do you mean? I need to get information from that guy before I kill him. As he heard that, the teammate tilted his head. His mission had been to get rid of Kim Woo Jin and he didn't remember seeing anything about getting information anywhere. What do? Well that. Sam Oliver attempted to explain his situation to his questioning colleague. But at that moment. Kuluk. Kim Woo Jin began to cough loudly. Ha. Huh. What's going on? While everyone looked on in astonishment, Kim Woo Jin's cough became stronger and stronger as his face progressively became red. Kuluk. Kuluk. Blood. That's blood isn't it? Kim Woo Jin started bleeding. One of the healers tried to approach Kim Woo Jin to check the situation, but Sam Oliver shouted at them. Don't approach. That blood is poisonous. Ah. Blood poison. Kim Woo Jin's skill came to everyone's mind and they all did their best to distance themselves from him. Stay back. Don't get close. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin's cough became progressively worse until eventually he collapsed on the ground. 
Kim Woo Jin's body on the ground was as still as a corpse and this fact was immediately noticed by all those watching. Is he dead? I think he's dead. In the mess, the tension that everyone was feeling slowly dispersed. If that guy is dead then the mission is over right? Is it really ending like this? In the beginning, they were tightening the strings of their tension to kill Kim Woo Jin in other words, since Kim Woo Jin died then they will no longer be tense and their vigilance would be greatly reduced. This drives me crazy. Of course, Sam Oliver's situation was different. Naomi Spell's instructions were clear. She would send an expert to extract information from Kim Woo Jin so he had to pass Kim Woo Jin over to that expert. The expert, of course, was an expert on torture who could only get information from living people. In addition, the expert was under the protection of another group elsewhere. I need to get to him right now. At that moment, what came to Sam Oliver's mind was to get the expert as soon as possible and make an excuse. No, I'll need to get everyone together. Before anything else, they all needed to gather. As he was having crazy thoughts, Sam Oliver turned to his colleague. We need to get everyone here. Everyone. You go to the Phoenix Guild, I'll go to the other guilds. After that, Sam Oliver looked at the ten remaining men. You guys watch over Kim Woo Jin's condition. Will you treat him? Treatment? Even if you prepare for and identify the poison, will you treat it? Sam Oliver's head felt heavy after hearing the remarks of his colleague. The Frontier Guild's mission is to kill him and Naomi's personal request is to get information from him. The weight was lifted slightly. If he dies, then I'll only be slightly reprimanded, but if I do anything else and something happens then he'll really be in trouble. It wasn't a difficult calculation for him to determine which, between the Frontier Guild's mission and an executive's request, was heavier to bear. Don't treat it we don't know what the problem is so it's best if we avoid it remember our mission is to get rid of Kim Woo Jin if you think that he is going to die, then let him die. Ko look. At that time Kim Woo Jin let out another cough, showing that he wasn't yet dead. Sam Oliver frowned at that. Move, quickly. After saying that, Sam Oliver and his colleagues split up to complete their objectives. After they left, the other ten members surrounded Kim Woo Jin in case of emergency, but still kept their distance. Is he really dead? I think he's alive because he coughs from time to time. Well, isn't it better to just kill him? In his current state, we could just shoot an arrow and end it. Of course, proper surveillance was impossible. The string of tension had already been cut and their vigilance had already fallen. That was why. Seek. That was the reason why the first victim Kim Woo Jin, who had been previously laying on the floor like a corpse, attacked, could not even make a sound before his head was separated from his torso. What the? And it was also the reason why the Nine did not show a proper response at the sight of the first victim, and only watched on as a bloody smoke emanated from Kim Woo Jin's body. Let's not pay attention to the author's ever-changing numbers, it happens. Chapter, 103 are you serious? Kim Woo Jin coughed up blood and collapsed. Sam Oliver nervously answered the Asian man's question. Obviously, it wasn't my fault. This is such a headache I have to get the information from him somehow. It was then. A wolf appeared in front of them. The wolf was quite large as it was over two meters in length. When it discovered Sam Oliver and the Asian man, it stopped. Gur. It bared its fangs at them. Its teeth were rather startling as they were reminiscent of a shark's teeth. This was a sawtooth wolf. Its appearance made the body of the Asian man freeze he was only a torture expert who was only level 14 at best. But Sam Oliver was different. As soon as he saw the sawtooth wolf reveal its teeth, he threw a spear in his hands at it. Puchek. The spear shattered the head of the wolf before flying out of its tailbone. Awesome. The Asian man shouted in Japanese without realizing it. Japanese? Sam Oliver frowned slightly at the appearance of the unexpected language. The Asian man shut his mouth quickly as if realizing his mistake. The atmosphere quickly became awkward. Let's go quickly. Afterwards, Sam Oliver recovered his spear before speaking to the Asian man. As he heard this, the Asian man nodded silently. 
However, the awkward atmosphere stayed around them without any signs of disappearing. It was only when they arrived back at the main camp that the awkward atmosphere finally disappeared. Ah! It wasn't possible for the awkward atmosphere to stay when they were faced with ten dead bodies. In reality, the Messiah Guild was an untouchable area. A topic so sacred that even the world's most feared terrorist would not dare to lay their hands on the Messiah Guild. So the best place for those who had animosity and dissatisfaction toward the Messiah Guild were dungeons. One of the missions of the hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, was to deal with situations like those. Of course, in the course of that, sometimes there would be some unexpected situations. For example if you had to survive against 98 players with two or less players due to an unexpected betrayal. Since I already got rid of 10 people, only 29 remain. For Kim Woo Jin who had survived such an incident, this was pitiful. Moreover, this situation was not unexpected. They hunted a lot more than I expected. If there was anything that Kim Woo Jin didn't expect, it was that the members of the Frontier Guild and the others who had entered the dungeon to kill him, had killed quite a large number of monsters. It was a good thing for Kim Woo Jin. I can finish much faster than I expected. Kim Woo Jin, who stood in front of the corpses had this thought before immediately sacrificing them to summon skeletons. It was an orc that became the first offering to summon a skeleton, followed by a goblin. The familiar orc and goblin skeleton soldiers had glistening eyes as they awaited their battle instructions. At the same time, Kim Woo Jin noticed the body of a sawtooth wolf. I'm finally getting a new type of skeleton. Skeleton soldiers could be made out of whatever Kim Woo Jin hunted. However, not everything could be sacrificed. There were size and race limits TL, aren't the orcs like huge? In simpler terms, only monsters that could walk bipedally like humans could be sacrificed. Werewolves could be used as a sacrifice, but normal wolves couldn't be used one. Creating Sawtooth Wolf Skeleton Soldier The way to solve this limitation was for the skill to reach the transcendent rank. The moment the skill reached the EX rank, he became able to make anything into a skeleton soldier. Of course, for him to sacrifice a huge monster to create a skeleton soldier, it required an enormous amount of magic power and to maintain it required a similarly large amount of magic power. Even if it was a boss monster, there was no reason to turn it into a skeleton soldier if you considered the cost. Now I can use Pharaoh's power properly. The result of the combination of the transcendent ranked skeleton soldier skill and the Pharaoh's power skill was the king of the undead. This ability was now being demonstrated by Kim Woo Jin. In an instant, a group of 30 skeletons had appeared before Kim Woo Jin. Looking at his new group of soldiers on four legs instead of two, Kim Woo Jin pulled out the Grim Reaper's mask from his inventory. Let's get this over with quickly. The hunt had officially started. How did this happen? Wasn't it over? Who did it? Was it Kim Woo Jin? As they looked at the ten bodies before them, the other twenty-nine players discussed among themselves. The conversation didn't show any signs of stopping. So what should we do? We have to catch him. Do you even know where he is? That. It was only because he couldn't answer a question that silence fell. Eventually, as the conversation had ended, they all turned their eyes to Sam Oliver who was the leader of the operation. But Sam Oliver was just as confused. How did this happen? No, Sam Oliver was more confused than all the rest. How did ten people? The ten who died weren't ten ordinary players, but talents that were recognized by the Frontier Guild. Even Sam Oliver himself couldn't guarantee his chances of fleeing much less winning in front of these ten players. However, Kim Woo Jin had managed to kill these ten. The scene was also quite neat with no signs of a great struggle. He's dangerous. He made the best possible choice after repeated warnings from his instincts. Gather everyone together so they could take care of each other. Sam, I think you need to give some orders to everyone. Then under the reminder from his subordinate, Sam Oliver did not hesitate to pull an item out of his inventory. It was Percival's spear, an item that Sam Oliver only used in extremely dangerous situations. Everyone, prepare for battle be extremely careful. It was at that moment. Something is coming. Everyone turned once they heard the yell. 
Then thirty creatures entered their sights. Skeletons. Skeletons. When the skeleton soldiers arrived, the players became nervous and the atmosphere became a mess. In any case they didn't have to think about anything else when faced with something that had obvious hostility toward them. Sam Oliver also didn't worry too much anymore. Prepare for battle. From now on, all he had to focus on was crushing all the enemies that came. Tanks at the front. Healers in the middle. Mages you attack from the back. End this battle as soon as possible. That was why Sam Oliver gave the other players their orders. Heavily armored men formed a line at the front and behind them were healers that were also covered in some armor at the back of them all were the mages who were preparing to cast their spells. And at the forefront, stood Sam Oliver. While everyone was staring at the skeletons ahead of them, they completely forgot the ten bodies behind them. Pong. So naturally, when the bodies exploded, there was no way they could react properly to it. Kook. Ack. Screams came from the back. Clang. And from the front the sounds of weapons making contact with each could be heard. At that moment, everyone had a scary intuition. It's over. They couldn't win this battle. Only Sam Oliver had a different idea. He was completely confident that they would win this battle even if there were a couple sacrifices. With the spear of Percival these skeletons are nothing. The spear in his hands had him convinced. And Percival's spear indeed had what it took to give him that confidence. That was the reason. You want to go against the skeletons? Kim Woo Jin was the one standing in front of Sam Oliver, not a skeleton. This thing about the requirements for skeletons feels like it was conjured up by the author during this chapter and wasn't planned before because KWJ had many opportunities to get other bipedal monsters for example the black werewolves from Lee Jean AHS test or from the horned fox's dungeon it was really confusing for me and made me wonder if ID read wrongly. Even if there is a limit set so that if he reaches his max number of summons he can't swap one for another or something. He was still quite capable of saving a slot for another bipedal summon, especially when you consider the fact that he almost always knows what to find in the dungeons. Welp, that's been another long rant by Seven I really gotta learn to stop underscore. Chapter, 104 The situation just before the battle was filled with tension. Boom! Then the corpse explosion caused the entire situation to become distorted. Ack! Kook! The wizards at the back were basically powerless. Damn it. Hang on. The healers waiting in the second row turned to help the wizards and the tanks at the front were then forced into a scuffle without realizing that there were no healers paying attention to them at that point. Sam Oliver was the only one who wasn't shaken by the series of events. And Kim Woo Jin was the only one who moved to deal with Sam Oliver so the two rushed toward each other, weapons in hand. The eyes of the two rushing forward were different from normal. Sam Oliver's eyes were shining with a rarely seen determination and Kim Woo Jin's eyes behind the Grim Reaper's mask shined golden TL, ID just like to point out that no one shouted Isaac Ivanov yet. There was a difference between the two. Sam Oliver was already anticipating the difficulty of the coming fight, but Kim Woo Jin was using the brief period before the fight began, to instead analyze Sam Oliver's status by using the Eye of Horus. Percival's Spear. Percival's Spear. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 255. Required Level, Level 1 or Higher. Description, A spear used by the Knight Percival wounds caused by this spear are not easy to recover. Increased Physical Attack in proportion to the level of the user. Increased Base Damage by 30% when attacking. Increased Penetration. Naturally, an analysis of Percival's spear was also done. In fact, there wasn't much of a need for the analysis. This is my third time meeting it. Kim Woo Jin had had two experiences with the player who wielded Percival's spear before returning to the past. Of course, they weren't very good experiences. It was dangerous both times. Battles that were fierce enough to cross the line of being considered life and death would be hard to consider as good experiences. Regardless, he acknowledged that Percival's spear was a good weapon. A weapon that was powerful enough to give the legendary hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, bad memories. Because there's no way to stop this unique item. 
Firstly, the effect that increased its penetration power was a major problem. The explanation of the effect was simple, but in fact the power of that effect was unstoppable unless it was facing another legendary item. The moment it attacked it would leave a fatal wound. More importantly, it also had the ability to reduce one's resilience. As indicated in the description before, wounds caused by Percival's spear were not easy to recover from. This meant that even with a powerful recovery ability or healing factor, fast recovery was impossible and even with recovery skills or items it was impossible to treat. The synergy caused by the combination of those two seemingly simple effects, was much more powerful than one would initially expect. I should avoid face-to-face -face confrontations. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin had absolutely no intentions of matching the powerful Percival spear head-on. It must end in one exchange. What he wanted was only one exchange. And that exchange had begun. Hop. After taking a deep breath, Sam Oliver thrust his spear towards Kim Woo Jin's head at a fast pace. Wick. Kim Woo Jin avoided by turning his head to the side as if he'd expected such an attack from the beginning. He aimed for the head as expected. No, he'd already known. Because there was an 88% probability. Kim Woo Jin knew this because Sam Oliver preferred fast endings, whenever he intended to end a battle quickly. He would aim for the head 88% of the time and this information had been gained by Kim Woo Jin in the month that he'd been followed by the Frontier Guilds group in the dungeons. Naturally, as Sam Oliver had approached him like he'd expected, Kim Woo Jin carried out the plan had prepared. Pop. TL, literally. Kim Woo Jin bit his tongue and spat a mouthful of black blood in Sam Oliver's face. The blood entered through the holes in Sam Oliver's helmet and went into his eyes. You have been poisoned by black blood. The poison alert popped up for both Kim Woo Jin and Sam Oliver. You have been blinded. And another notification followed immediately. Ha! Huh. With that announcement, Sam Oliver's world became dyed black, causing him to be rather scared. He couldn't help but be surprised. The third tail of the nine-tailed fox is really convenient. He would have never imagined that Kim Woo Jin was in position of the third tail of the nine-tailed fox or that he was capable of blinding his opponent simply by spitting some blood. Kim Woo Jin, who'd achieved his goal, kicked the now distracted Sam Oliver. Bang! Sam Oliver quickly took a few steps backward before he caught himself and lowered his posture with the spear held in front of him, trying to monitor his surroundings with his other senses since he couldn't use his eyes. Fuck. English. He had an amazing sense of balance as well as an admirable ability to cope. Sam Oliver still had the will to fight. However, Kim Woo Jin no longer had any intentions of fighting Sam Oliver, so he naturally took a few steps back. Instead, Sam Oliver's new opponents appeared. Rattle. Three sawtooth wolf skeletons, they would be Sam Oliver's new opponents. Chapter, 105. Among dogs, beasts, and humans, of course it was the dog that had the best body for hunting or combat. The reason being that dogs and beasts had higher physical limits than humans. Of course, the humans' ability to use tools and their thinking capabilities were not things that could be compared to beasts. But what would happen if there was a dog with a human's thinking ability? What if that human was Kim Woo Jin? The answer was very obvious. Fuck. English. For Sam Oliver, who had been trapped in a pitch black world, it was virtually impossible for him to deal with the sawtooth wolf skeletons. From the start, the battle was not something that could be compared. The new sawtooth wolf skeletons showcased a level of mobility and ability that the bipedal skeleton soldiers just couldn't replicate. Moreover, the two wolf skeletons worked perfectly together. While one of them made noise and drew Sam Oliver's attention, the other would crouch sneakily to bite his ankle before leaping away swiftly. Kook. In front of the battle style of the wolf skeletons, there was nothing that Sam Oliver could do except get bitten. At that moment, Sam Oliver swung his spear towards a sound before the other skeleton wolf bit on the wrist of the hand holding the spear. Cack. Sam Oliver screamed out at the attack and dropped the spear that he was holding. Sick. And as if he was waiting for that moment, Kim Woo Jin caught the spear that had been dropped. Immediately after he collected the spear, 
Kim Woo Jin stabbed toward Sam Oliver's head. Quajic. Percival's spear pierced Sam Oliver's head with ease. That was the end. Kim Woo Jin turned to look at the remaining players that were fighting the skeleton soldiers while holding the spear that now belonged to him, without paying any attention to the body of Sam Oliver that now sported a new hole in its head. The battle had ended there. With the reputation of the hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin had reached its peak, people all around him had wondered. Which weapon does the hunting dog use the most? Everyone had a different answer. Wasn't it Bom on one? Doesn't he use a sword like a ghost? He is amazing with a bow imagine if Tristan, S2 bow, the Gandabana, was in his hands. Well, what about an axe or a hammer instead of a bow? Wouldn't it be better to die from a smashed head than to die from a blade or arrow? Since you'll die anyway, at least ITLL be quick. The debate was never ending, but everyone who managed to watch Kim Woo Jin in battle could only think one thing. Firstly, you should never give him a spear or anything with high penetration. So in a battle where Kim Woo Jin wielded Percival's spear. The word overwhelmingly was still not enough to express how truly horrific it was. It was like watching a little child play with a group of ants with a wooden skewer. Everyone died with only one attack. Kim Woo Jin was incredibly fast. In the time that he wandered around the battlefield, he killed more players than who died in the melee while he was fighting Sam Oliver. From the time of Sam Oliver's death, it only took two minutes before only one survivor remained. Oh oh oh. If the last survivor had participated in the battle then it would have been even faster. In other words, the last survivor had been hiding without participating in the battle and that was how a man named Hiroshi managed to be the last survivor. Hiroshi, who had survived, looked at Kim Woo Jin. SP- Spare me. At that moment, Hiroshi came to a decision and shouted out some information. I have information I, I was hired to get information out of you. At those words, Kim Woo Jin's eyes narrowed and Hiroshi began speaking as if his life depended on it. I will give you my employer's information if you spare me I will actively cooperate with you and Park Yongwon and Dash, no. I, if you kill me you won't get the information. I think it's better to keep me alive. As his words reached the end, Hiroshi's words became threats instead of requests. If you kill me, your boss Park Yongwon would never forgive you. That was the last straw, Kim Woo Jin didn't bother to respond to him. Instead his eyes became black. Eyes of Anubis activated. P.U.K. At that moment, Percival's spear pierced through Hiroshi's chest. Hiroshi became a corpse soon after and Kim Woo Jin's mind was filled with his memories. Why he came in, what he wanted and who his employer was. I see. At that moment Kim Woo Jin's mind became clear again. Not all of the Frontier Guild went over. He wasn't completely sure, but based on the information he had, it seems that not everyone in the higher up of the Frontier Guild knew of their relationship with the Messiah Guild. It was positive news compared to what he believed before. Oh Seichan's preparations can still be useful. The most important thing was that Oh Seichan's preparations might still be able to do a lot of damage to both the Frontier Guild and the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin smiled at that fact. Now I'm looking forward to leaving the dungeon. Six days after entering the dungeon. The Sawtooth Wolf boss has been slain. The boss of the second floor, the Sawtooth Wolf's leader, had been successfully hunted. It only took one wound to kill him. A spear stuck to its left flank was the only evidence of how it had died. Thanks to Percival's spear, it was very easy. Percival's spear had helped its newest owner Kim Woo Jin gain a very easy victory in the dungeon. The dungeon has been cleared. Immediately after, there was a notification notifying him that he'd completed the dungeon. Inventory Kim Woo Jin opened his inventory after he saw the notification. Now it's time to use the face that Oh Seichan prepared. And he took a mask out of it. Naomi Spell She was a confident woman who was one of the executives of the Frontier Guild and she was the second in charge of the Pathfinders, one of the Frontier Guild's secret organizations. She had never lost to anyone before. Even when meeting Park Shinhai, instead of being nervous, she was able to look Park Shinhai in the eyes confidently. That was also the case now. 
When Park Shin-hai had commissioned her to gain information from a man called Kim Woo-jin, Naomi had confidently agreed to the job. She believed that she could do the job even more perfectly than was expected. What the hell is going on here? However, her confident expression could not be found at the moment. Instead, she had a rather bad expression on her face. What caused the expression on her face was the video she'd just seen on her tablet. In the video, Sam Oliver, who had just come out of the dungeon with his team, removed the waiting personnel in the base camp. Then in the next video she saw a scene showing Sam Oliver and Kim Woo Jin who should have been removed. The meeting was short but the conversation was recorded. Kim if you're wrong, you're gonna pay for it with your life. That was enough to tell her what happened in the dungeon. Sam Oliver betrayed me. This was what made Naomi Spell's usually confident face sink. This is an emergency. Moreover, this was not an ordinary job. Sam Oliver knew my past and betrayed me I am finished. The things that Naomi Spell had done were enough to crush the world. She quickly came to a decision. She took the SD card out of the tablet and destroyed it. That was her decision. I have to deal with this before she finds out. She had the intention of covering this up before her real boss found out about it. Depending on the story and source material, Graham may have other names in the Nibelungen lead it is named Baumung. Tristan is a cavalry archer, able to make amazing shots with his Parthian Eurasian style reflex composite bow. Chapter 106 Under the dark night sky, a group of people slowly enter an old fashioned car one by one. The number of people that entered the car was quite high, as many as eleven of them however even though the car was filled, it didn't seem to be filled by people. Instead it seemed to lack any warmth, as it was filled by ghosts instead of people. This wasn't an illusion. The skeletons looked like real people with their faces covered I couldn't even tell if they were real or not. It wasn't people who had entered the car, it was skeletons wearing masks on their faces. It's really amazing how real they seem to be. The masks were truly sophisticated. They were so sophisticated that it was almost impossible to tell if the skeletons were people or not without touching. So weird. Li Jina who was sitting in the driver's seat, stretched out his hand to the man sitting beside him. He was trying to pinch their cheek. At that moment however, the man in the passenger seat turned to give Li Jina a piercing gaze instead of saying anything. That look was enough. Would you hit me if I pinched your cheek right now for fun? He wanted to prove that the man was Kim Woo Jin. Damn, you're too dangerous for me to mess around. As he stared at those eyes, Li Jin Ah moved his hand from beside Kim Woo Jin's face and placed it back on the steering wheel. So, how was your mission? It was great. As he responded briefly, Kim Woo Jin checked his face in the rearview mirror. Sam Oliver's face looked back at him. It's really sophisticated. As Isaac Ivanov he had already experienced the sophistication of the mask, but the feeling of wearing the mask as a fictional character and as someone you killed were very different. Now he just needs to handle the aftermath. This was all part of Oh Seichan's plan. Oh Seichan intended to make Sam Oliver a traitor after he'd been killed by Kim Woo Jin. It was the same as when Kim Woo Jin had killed Kim Jae Hoon in the past. However the difficulty and the scale this time was very different from the time with Kim Jae Hoon. Unlike then, Kim Woo Jin had gotten the masks for Sam Oliver and his men from Oh Se Chan since by using the Book of the Undead, he could summon the skeletons outside of the dungeon immediately. So Kim Woo Jin acted as if Sam Oliver and his men betrayed the Frontier Guild. I've done my part. Kim Woo Jin simply had to wait and rest while Oh Se Chan created, edited and distributed what he had to. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had no intentions of resting. It was done well so let's move on to the next step. Li Jina frowned at those words. What else? I've graduated from the two-floor dungeons. Graduated? Li Jina's expression changed when he heard that. You're going to enter a three-floor dungeon. Players had no choice but to start entering three-floor dungeons when they reached level 60. However it wasn't a requirement to reach level 60 before entering three-floor dungeons. Even level 50 players could enter dungeons that had three or more floors. 
It was just that players used their common sense and didn't do crazy things like entering three-floor dungeons before they reached level 60. Huh. Are you really going to enter a three-floor dungeon? The problem was that Kim Woo Jin didn't seem to have the common sense of ordinary human beings. Li Jina knew that if Kim Woo Jin intended to enter a three-floor dungeon, then he would also have to enter it. You don't need to go into three-floor dungeons until you reach level 60, so there is no need to hurry. The dash, that's right. Fortunately common sense finally came out of Kim Woo Jin's mouth, causing Li Jina to sigh in relief. So we're gonna go somewhere we can only go before level 60. Huh. Kim Woo Jin didn't bother to explain to the confused Li Jina. Before returning to the past no one could clear it but. He couldn't help but recall. But as I am now, I can clear it. A two-floor dungeon that no one could clear before he came to the past. Shortly after Kim Woo Jin left the dungeon, the Frontier Guild reported it to the Phoenix Guild. Kim Woo Jin and Sam Oliver attacked the dungeon and lied that they were staying at the designated place. It was a natural step. They couldn't say that there was a traitor from their guild that they were trying to capture to save their boss ass. From the Frontier Guild's perspective, even after lying, the best option available, was for them to quickly mobilize as many personnel as they could to secure Kim Woo Jin and the traitorous Sam Oliver. The Frontier Guild isn't moving. However the Frontier Guild's reaction was not the best one. Kim Woo Jin, as you said, Naomi Spell did not report it to the top and is instead trying to handle it on her own. Naomi Spell, who was in charge of this mission, wanted to handle this all on her own without reporting to the executives. It's strange. It didn't make sense. If it was simply Sam Oliver's betrayal, then Naomi Spell had no reason to handle it all on her own. On the contrary, Naomi Spell's decision to handle this alone without reporting it was something that would definitely be penalized. It's a strange thing for someone to do for no reason. In other words, there must be something unusual that made Naomi Spell act in that way. Maybe Naomi Spell is really a plant from the Messiah Guild as you expected. For example, Naomi Spell was the Messiah Guild's contact point within the Frontier Guild and secretly attempted to scratch the Messiah Guild's itch. We can't be sure. Of course, what was revealed so far wasn't enough to prove that Naomi Spell was truly the Messiah Guild's agent. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin and Oh Se Chan were well aware of how dangerous such accusations could be. Still, there wouldn't be smoke without fire. But it was clear that it was a possibility. It was possible that the Messiah Guild and the Frontier Guild weren't a group and that in fact the Messiah Guild was secretly using the Frontier Guild. Well, the Frontier Guild's plan has already been ruined. Even if it wasn't, the Frontier Guild would still need to revise their plan since Kim Woo Jin had left the dungeon. This won't die down until Park Yong Wan comes back alive. If Park Yong Wan survived and then made contact with Kim Woo Jin and Sam Oliver then that would put the Frontier Guild in a very painful position. In the meantime you can go to a proper dungeon and spend some time while I arrange for a ghost called Sam Oliver to play around with Naomi's spell. In other words, from now on they would win the fight as long as they bought time till Park Yong Wan came out from the dungeon. Splendid. It was always pleasurable to be able to toast early. However Oh Se Chan's voice was far from that of someone who was basking in their victory, and more like someone who was reporting news. If you hadn't mentioned that dungeon in Taiwan, I would have met with you and even bought you a double portion of Jajimayan. That's why Kim Woo Jin had no intentions of spending the time quietly. As mentioned above, he just needed to find a suitable place to lay low until Park Yong Wan came out of the dungeon. And Kim Woo Jin had chosen a two-floor dungeon in Taiwan as his place of seclusion. But why there? The A-rank dungeon, Frozen Forest of Violence. Why was it failed 23 times? Even the Messiah Guild failed it four times. The dungeon had been failed 23 times and even the Messiah Guild had to temporarily abandon it after they failed it four times. In fact it was a place that mankind had given up attacking and even the metaphor Hell was a match. That was why it was given another nickname, Gate of Hell. Didn't you know that? I know it well. Kim Woo Jin knew it better than anyone else. Even up to the point where Kim Woo Jin was betrayed and killed by Lee Se Jun, the frozen forest of violence had not been cleared. 
In addition the confirmed number of attacks by the Messiah Guild had reached 43. After that, Taiwan itself could not confirm the number of attacks because it had become a den of monsters. Anyway that was the characteristics of a dungeon. In front of the level limit, even the savior of the world Lee Sejun can do nothing. If I don't clear it now, then the dungeon will never be cleared in the future and there is no chance better than this after I become level 60 I won't be able to challenge it either. If Kim Woojin didn't clear it now then the dungeon would be left uncleared, just like in Kim Woojin's past life. We would never know what is in it. That was the reason. Kim Woojin had decided to make it his stage before graduating from two floor dungeons. There might be something that would help in our war against the Messiah Guild so we can't bypass it without knowing. The Messiah Guild is stronger than they realize I don't know for sure if I could be able to kill Lee Sejun. It was because there was not much hope from what Kim Woojin knew. Of course, this didn't mean that he was betting his life on a chance. Even if I stop you, you'd still go in. The basis for his decision was quite clear. So what are your odds? If you're being generous, then about 10%. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh Seichan let out a hearty laugh. This was because he knew what Kim Woojin's 10% meant. So it's a 10% chance of failing it. In response to that, Kim Woojin smiled. There is nothing that can face me in two floors as long as I have Percival's spear. Percival's spear was the item that gave Kim Woojin the confidence to clear the dungeon that no one had ever cleared before. All right, then I'll set the stage for you if you use Isaac Ivanov's name then ITLL be easy there's no way that the hero who saved the Messiah Guild would object to entering a dungeon that no one ever cleared. Eventually, Oh Se chan accepted Kim Woojin's determination. Is there anything you need? The answer was simple. We should send a letter to the Messiah Guild filled with sincerity. A letter? There's no reason to do something that even the Messiah Guild failed to do, for free. Chapter, 107 In September 2023, the scenery of the world entering autumn after summer didn't have much change. The number of dungeon gates have increased sharply. The number of monster appearances has increased sharply. The world economic growth rate is minus 6%. The despair that the world had to face continued to grow. Lee Sejun succeeds in his June 8th floor dungeon attack. The Messiah Guild announces the Seven Floor Dungeon Clear Project for 2024. The Messiah Guild, they are our only saviors. And as the world sank deeper into despair, the faith, praise and expectations placed upon the Messiah Guild also continued to increase. The Messiah Guild are the only ones who care no other guild does. If you are human, please support the Messiah Guild. You bastards aren't here without transferring donations to the Messiah Guild are you? Everyone in the world had a strong belief that only the Messiah Guild truly intended to save the world. It was around that time. Isaac Ivanov's injuries have healed. He will start doing dungeon attacks again. Isaac Ivanov, thank you everyone for all the support. Isaac Ivanov, the Korean choco pies were delicious. Isaac Ivanov, who had disappeared after the Firefox dungeon because of injuries, had reappeared. Naturally, the world's focus shifted to him. Isaac is back. The hero who saved the Messiah Guild. Of course he likes the choco pie. What are you all doing? Hurry and send more choco pie to him. The world praised and cheered for the hero who had saved the Messiah Guild. However that atmosphere didn't last long. Isaac Ivanov's next goal is Taiwan's two-floor A-ranked dungeon, Frozen Forest of Violence. Isaac Ivanov will enter the gates of hell. The reaction of the world changed when it was revealed that his target was a place that even the Messiah Guild had abandoned. Oh my god. Isn't it there? Why in the world? The world was concerned over the fact that Isaac Ivanov intended to attack a place that had never been cleared before and that even the great and amazing Messiah Guild had no choice but to give up. Humanity had completely abandoned it at this stage. Isaac Ivanov was aware of this so of course he asked for help. Isaac Ivanov sends a letter to the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov asks the Messiah Guild to support with legendary items. What will the Messiah Guild give to Isaac? Isaac Ivanov had asked the saviors for the fee to save the world. 
No one denied that the Messiah Guild was more committed than any other guild in the world however it was inconceivable to make such a request. Isaac Ivanov asks the Messiah Guild for support. Will the Messiah Guild respond to his requests? This could be the first time the Messiah Guild responds to a request for assistance. It was for this reason, that Isaac Ivanov's request startled the whole world and caused everyone's reactions to become a mess. What's this bullshit? Requesting assistance from the Messiah Guild? Is he crazy? The Messiah Guild is busy attacking dungeons. It's not worth hearing. In a normal case, such a thing would not be worth discussing. But isn't it Isaac Ivanov? Isaac Ivanov who saved the Messiah Guild. Isaac is different. Isaac said that he'd be targeting a dungeon that even the Messiah Guild gave up right. But the fact that the request came from Isaac Ivanov, not somebody else and because he intended to attack a dungeon that even the Messiah Guild abandoned, led to the discussion. No, the answer was already out. The Messiah Guild will support him would he dare to run away? It's saving the world the Messiah Guild would be happy to help. It's time for them to pay off their debt. Everyone doubted whether the Messiah Guild would support Isaac Ivanov. But wasn't the Messiah Guild already indebted to Isaac Ivanov? And with the heaviest debt of life at that. That's what matters how would the Messiah Guild support him? Would they lend him legendary items? Or give him legendary skills? What would the Messiah Guild give to the hero that saved them? The Messiah Guild soon answered the question. Hey, little bastards. TL, more of a sound at the greeting. As he checked the article on his smartphone, Li Jina began to eat choco pies nervously. He quickly ate three choco pies as if they were mini cakes but still showed the same expression on his face. The reason for that was the announcement made by the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild will give Isaac Ivanov their support. The Messiah Guild will support him with all the unique class equipment Isaac Ivanov needs. The Messiah Guild's choice was unique class items. No, what are unique class items anyway? Of course, it was a great thing. The value of their support amounted to billions of one. Shouldn't they at least give him a legendary? We're going to clear a dungeon that they couldn't even clear. However Li Jina, who had expected the support of a few legendary items, had no choice but to complain. Don't you think so? Of course, Li Jina expected Oh Seichan to be as Angrino even more angry than himself. Hmm. However Oh Seichan's expression was completely different from Li Jin Ahs expectations. He was calm. It's not bad. As he heard this, Li Jina couldn't help but be shocked. Hyung Won, are you crazy? What man? Is that how you talk to your Hyung? Oh Seichan frowned at the word crazy. Li Jina continued asking him questions. No, aren't you? If it's free, you would drink lie too and ask for refills but now suddenly, you're like this. Hey, I just don't like things because they're free, you think him some bastard. So it's not. So you don't like free things. Of course there's nothing wrong with getting things for free anyway the unique items are free aren't they? As he began to explain, Bo Seichan gave a bright smile. But the thing that's more attractive is that it's clear cut. Yes. You don't get it. When we ask for the Messiah Guild support to clear a two floor A rank dungeon that they weren't able to clear, the Messiah Guild supports us with unique class items, right? Yes. Oh Seichan smiles once again as Li Jina listens to his explanation. Then what happens with the three floor and four floor dungeons that the Messiah Guild can't clear? Huh? What would they do if we ask for support to clear them? Do you think they would support us or not? Ah. Only then did Li Jina shout in surprise as he understood. That's right so from now on, if we clear more difficult dungeons, would we get legendary items from the Messiah Guild? It may not be like that, but the Messiah Guild has their own pride so they will at least give a corresponding merit. Merit? In this world, items aren't everything. As he heard the explanation, Li Jina's disgruntled expression finally relaxed. That's great. Then he opened another box of choco pies nearby. Oh Seichan saw this and smiled. That's right oh, and Jina. Yeah. That's 10,001 per box. 
what are you talking about? I buy this from the mart at 4,001 a box. That's the mart, this is more expensive because of shipping cost even a bottle of water at the top of a mountain would be 2,000 wouldn't it? What delivery, why are you taking the fan's delivery as your own money? Then don't eat it. Li Jina suddenly realized as he heard Oh Se Chan's words. Oh Se Chan wouldn't drink lie if it's free, no he was a human who would instead sell the lie that he had received for free. Hey, really? It's so dirty that I don't even want to eat it. I'm done eating it. Right, stop eating and leave now. Leave. Oh Se Chan nodded his head. You are going to start the 24th attack. Chapter 108 the Messiah Guild support begins. As soon as the Messiah Guild announced their position, the situation began to proceed at a rapid pace. The Taiwanese government promises full support. A rush of applicants. A wave of cheering comes from all over the world. Along with Isaac Ivanov, many volunteers began appearing to attack the dungeon following the support of the Taiwanese government this caused a wave of cheers to spread throughout the world. If Isaac Ivanov had put his name on the application, it would have taken at least a month to be processed. But because the Messiah Guild was publicly supporting it, the process was shortened to only a week. Eighty members have been confirmed. Mission Impossible begins. Eighty players were selected to enter the dungeon, and they all began to arrive in Taiwan. That was why the Taoyuan International Airport was filled with pandemonium. The members of the EOS Guild who will be taking part in the Mission Impossible Challenge, have arrived. Save the world. Because the dungeon they were about to attack was thought to be impossible to clear, the airport was filled with the media and there were resounding cheers the moment the members arrived. It was as if a world-famous celebrity was visiting. Kim Woo-jin was in the crazy crowd. EOS Guild. His eyes became golden. Using the eyes of Horus, Kim Woo Jin inspected and analyzed all those who would be entering the dungeon with him. They sent seven people this time. It was inevitable. In fact, from Kim Woo Jin's perspective, the other applicants should be thanking him instead. After all at the dungeon gate he couldn't just stop someone from entering under the suspicion of them hiding their true identity to mess with the dungeon attack before asking for all ten of their fingerprints. An iris scan and a DNA test to verify their identity. It was only at this moment that Kim Woo Jin could verify them. Two are different from the names on the list. Of course, as he'd expected, some of the applicants manipulated their identities. Is that 15 people so far? And the number was substantial. But there was one thing that was peculiar about it. They were all using forged identities to hide their skills. The purpose of those who concealed their statuses was to hide their skills. In other words, they were strong people who were pretending to be weak. They are players from guilds who failed the dungeon already. In addition, the ones who falsified their information belonged to guilds that had already failed the dungeon before. This made Kim Woo Jin smile. If they failed it 23 times, they must have buried a few treasures there. It was because he could tell that their goal in the dungeon was probably to retrieve the items that they would have lost there rather than to clear the dungeon. It made sense. The dungeon Kim Woo Jin intended to attack had a maximum capacity of 80 players. Failing 23 times meant that 1,760 players had been buried there. Moreover, this was the fourth A ranked dungeon that had appeared in Asia. It first appeared in the middle of 2021 at that time, level 50 was considered high. With them responding like this, it means that there is at least one legendary item. So it wouldn't be surprising if among the players who entered the dungeon, there was one who carried a legendary item. The Messiah Guild obviously knew that. Maybe there's one from the Messiah Guild after all, the Messiah Guild's four attempts were probably not purely to clear the dungeon. The possibility that there was an item from the Messiah Guild was actually very high. The Messiah Guild must have been very upset. Nevertheless, the Messiah Guild could not bring out its best card that could have been used in this situation. The hunting dog they could have used in this situation is dead. The hunting dog that they usually used for two-floor dungeons, Suzuki Eiji had already been hunted. But that doesn't mean they'd give up. Of course, the Messiah Guild would not give up the retrieval of legendary items only for that reason. 
Their greed was greater than any group as they even dared to act as saviors to swallow the entire world. They would make a move somehow, and if they got into trouble for it, they would find a way to gain an advantage instead, using the name of the Messiah Guild. So Kim Woo Jin prepared. I'll have to draw the line before we go into the dungeon. September 3, 2023 The Donghua Golf Club in Taipei City, where the dungeon had appeared two years ago, had been closed ever since and had instead become a military base where only soldiers and tanks could be seen. How much longer? They'll be here soon. What they waited for was the sight of the 80 players entering the dungeon. This will be the 24th challenge. It's mission impossible. It would be the sight of the starting of a dungeon attack that no one ever thought possible. It was at that moment. Players who had made the final checks began to appear one after another. They're here. It's the players. At that moment, the gathered reporters began to press on their camera shutters and the onlookers began to cheer. They started looking around. Isaac? Where's Isaac? I need to find Isaac. Isaac Ivanov intended to do what even the Messiah Guild had given up, and make the impossible, possible. But Isaac Ivanov was nowhere to be seen within the crowd. The reporters, onlookers and players were all confused by that fact. What about Isaac? Where's Isaac? What's going on? A man finally appeared when all of them began to feel strange. It's Isaac. The new hero. The appearance of Isaac Ivanov, a handsome white man, sent everyone into a frenzied state. Ah. At that time, English began to come out of speakers that were installed nearby. Hello, I am Jackie Lee, an interpreter I'd like to say something on behalf of Isaac Ivanov who couldn't speak due to injuries received during the attack on the Firefox dungeon. After that, the same words were broadcasted again in Chinese. Only then did the disturbance at the side subside. The chaotic scene had suddenly become quiet. After the silence fell, Isaac Ivanov's spokesperson continued speaking. The words were brief. My belief is one thing. It didn't need to be long. We will save the world by ending this game. The short words were enough to make the left side of everyone's chest pound like it was about to explode. That's why I will use all my means and all the methods available to me, to end this game as soon as possible. At that moment, no one dared speak. There was not even a small sound as everyone held their breath for the last words. They waited for the new hero to declare that there was still hope for the world. Then Isaac Ivanov spoke his last words to them clearly. So don't get in my way. And at those words, Kim Woo Jin turned a cold gaze toward the players who were gathered. I've warned you. It was a warning. It was a warning to the hyenas who were aiming for him. A warning that he would take them as enemies if they crossed the line and got in his way. After the warning was given, Kim Woo Jin turned his back to them. He could see the dungeon gate before his eyes. This will be the end of my attacks on two floor dungeons. Kim Woo Jin's last two floor dungeon attack had begun. Chapter 109 Frozen Forest of Violence. Floors 2. Difficulty A. Maximum number of entries, 80. Requirements, level 60 and below. Conditions, defeat all the brawlers in the frozen forest. Reward, catalog. Oh Seichan's eyes which had been running over the latest dungeon report returned to the top of the document. There, the number 23 caught his eye. This was the sign that showed that the dungeon had been failed 23 times before, the fact was further emphasized by all of the failed dungeon reports that Oh Seichan had personally browsed over. But it was not strange. I didn't think it would go past 23. If as a dungeon broker he hadn't had any interest in the world's most famous two-floor dungeon, then that should be seen as forsaking his job. No, it wasn't about him being interested. There seemed to be something that no one knew that caused everyone, even the Messiah Guild, to fail this dungeon. It was because of this fact, that Oh Seichan wondered about the dangers of the dungeon. There was no official announcement, but even the Kunlun Guild had shown interest in the dungeon it's not going to be easy. He already knew all the players who went into the dungeon, the guilds they truly belonged to and the power they were hiding. So if he clears it, it will be awesome. So it was meaningful. 
it will make Isaac Ivanov's name stand out. If he could successfully clear such a place, there was no telling what sort of merit that would have. It would be the same as having a free pass to every valuable three-floor dungeon. He felt happy just thinking about it. He can do it. However what truly made Oh Seichan feel pleased was that he was more confident in this attack than ever before. He'll definitely clear it, he'll need to find out why the Kunlun Guild entered the dungeon. It was at that moment. Hey, there's a problem. One of his subordinates called out to him. What is it? That Kim Woojin made an unexpected move. Oh Seichan raised an eyebrow at the words unexpected move. Did he suddenly take his mask off, stretch his hands to the sky and shout woo? N dash, no. Then? I think it's better if you saw it yourself. Along with those words, his subordinate showed him a YouTube video. In the video, Kim Woojin was disguised as Isaac Ivanov. Don't get in my way. Oh Seichan couldn't help but smile at that. This guy is a real hunter. It was at that moment that his faith became conviction. Defeat 666 to advance to the next floor. The moment the 80th player entered the dungeon, they all received a notification informing them about the conditions to clear the first floor. It was more difficult than they'd expected. The quest would take at least a week even if the 80 players managed to hunt 100 monsters a day. Usually after entering a dungeon, the players would gain an instinctive level of tension as soon as they received the quest notification even if they had enough skill and even if they had experienced a rank dungeons before. However many of the players who entered the dungeon did not show any tension after they received the notification. What about Isaac? What did that mean? What was in their heads instead was Isaac Ivanov and his words that they had heard before they entered the dungeon gate. Don't get in his way. Yeah, he told us to not bother him. Isaac Ivanov had told them to not disturb him. So we are in the way. Damn it, what did he mean by interfering? We aren't here to get in his way. Depending on their interpretation, those words had hurt the pride of those who had risked their lives to help Isaac Ivanov. But not everyone was like that. Well, if it's Isaac then it makes sense. Right, with his style, we might end up becoming a hindrance. Some of them were embarrassed by Isaac Ivanov's words, but some people also accepted them. Especially those who had witnessed what happened in the Firefox dungeon and had come to pay for the life they owed Isaac Ivanov. What are you talking about? How would you know that? Those who had never witnessed Isaac Ivanov's skills before posed questions to the others, and the ones who had witnessed his abilities before simply replied to them with smiles spread across their faces. You'll know when you see it for yourself that guy, he's a real monster. Cook. A monster's scream could be heard from afar. It seemed the battle was about to begin. Kim Woo Jin was aware of the behavior of the players. They were never the kind of people who could be convinced or persuaded with only a couple of words. Even if they nod their heads at you when you talk, seemingly convinced, the players were cunning, determined and persistent enough to aim for a gap if they were to see one. In particular, the players who had come to retrieve items that the preceding players had brought were even worse. There was only one way to persuade these kinds of people. By showing off overwhelming power. Cool. Ten orcs ahead. It was for this reason, that Kim Woo Jin led his skeletons from the front as they massacred the oncoming monsters at an alarming rate. The battle commences. The pace with which Kim Woo Jin slaughtered the monsters was truly beyond description. Lee Jin Ah. I'm going, I'm going. The moment the monsters were discovered, Li Jina threw his huge body toward it, Kim Wu Jin and ten skeleton soldiers advancing swiftly behind him. They were like a tidal wave. Ku. Cool. Ku. Cool. Like a tidal wave, the orcs were submerged before they could even react. What was more surprising was that, like a tsunami, was gradually growing larger. You have summoned a skeleton. The effect of ruler of the battlefield has been stacked. As the battle continued, the number of skeletons grew and the effect of ruler of the battlefield continued to be enhanced. This scene, which seemed to grow even stronger as the battle progressed, was horrifying enough to make one's hair stand on end. No, does this bastard get stronger the more he fights? In the repeated battles, Kim Woojin's skills seemed to gradually rise continuously. 
Of course, Kim Woo Jin's skills didn't actually improve. It was simply that while he had been following the Frontier Guild, his skills had been suppressed while he was only playing and eating, yet they continued to rise. So this battle was really a sort of rehabilitation. This spurned Kim Woo Jin on even more. Li Jin Ah, how many days do you think it will take to clear the first floor? Ah well it's 666 and there are 80 players here, so if we kill 100 a day, wouldn't it take about a week, including rest days? Let's end it in three days. What? For three days, put your body up to 120%. Before heading to the second floor, he was already intended to warm himself up so he wouldn't need to do it then. Li Jina was shocked by his statement. That's impossible. To his surprise, Kim Wu Jin responded to him. Okay. And on the third day, since they entered the dungeon, the result came out. Ruler of the battlefield. Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld. Required level, level 15 or higher. Effect, all summons become as strong as the number of enemies the summons kill. Hope that clears up any confusion underscore. Chapter, 110. On the third day after they entered the dungeon, there was a notification informing everyone of their progress. There are 66 monsters remaining. There's a notification. We got a notification. It was a reminder that they would soon clear the first floor and also a reminder of the arduous battles they'd had. Now we can slow down and take a break. Let's make sure our number is still right. I just got a signal from Isaac's side too they'll take a break and then clean up the rest after 8 hours. It's 8 hours, so we can rest properly. Everyone began taking breaks in preparation for the second floor. During their break, the players who had been focused on hunting and had talked only about hunting, began to have real conversations for the first time. However the topic of their conversations were all the same. He's really a monster. I've heard the rumors about Isaac but I didn't think much about it. He's on a completely different level. Everyone was talking about Isaac Ivanov's skills. Ah, I should have gotten the Emissary of the Underworld Halo too. Arthur, if you had picked the Emissary of the Underworld Halo, you wouldn't be using Undead, you would be the one dead. He was tongue-tied by his friend's ridiculous statement. I know, but you didn't have to put it that way. I told you, our help is more of a hindrance to him. It was only now that many of them truly understood the words Isaac Ivanov said to them before entering the dungeon. Most of them understood, and admired him more because of it, but of course not everyone felt the same way. Especially the seven Chinese people who had separated from the group to sit by themselves wearing miserable expressions. This is driving me crazy how can we recover it with that monster around. The fact that their goal was not to help Isaac Ivanov clear the dungeon, but instead to retrieve items that were lost in the dungeon by previous players, was the cause of their sour expressions. If Isaac got the item and took it away it's horrible just imagining it. Honestly the best option was to give up at this point. No matter how they looked at it, it was impossible for them to defeat Isaac Ivanov with only seven people. But we can't give up. Nevertheless, the Chinese players could only bite the bullet and hope for the best. We have to recover Van Gogh's bracelet at all costs even if it means that we have to fight Isaac Ivanov. Van Gogh's bracelet. The moment those words were spoken, the expressions on the seven players' faces changed. Finally, the seven players looked each other in the eyes and said one last thing. For Kunlun. Their voices were buried by the noise coming from all around them. Rattle. And the sound of a skeleton moving away was also buried by the noise. Van Gogh's bracelet. Kim Woo Jin, who had been controlling the skeleton through the Grim Reaper's mask, narrowed his eyes slightly. He tried to jog his memory. It's not in my memory. However no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't remember ever hearing about an item called Van Gogh's bracelet. However it wasn't hard for him to recognize the unusual value of Van Gogh's bracelet. It can't be a small trifle if members of the Kunlun Guild were sent all the way here to retrieve it. In order to retrieve this seemingly extraordinary item, the Kunlun Guild, which was a guild supported by the Chinese government, and was among the top five guilds in the world, had sent one of its elite teams. Anyway, thanks to my surveillance, I managed to get some good information. In addition, 
Kim Woo Jin had already known what guild they had been dispatched from since the beginning. Once they entered the dungeon, they had hidden themselves deeply, but he was already aware that they were much stronger in all ways, including their level and items, compared to what had been submitted. After they entered the dungeon, he had waited for them to reveal whether they intended to help him, or hinder him. Naturally, after they hadn't revealed anything while on the first floor, he expected them to discuss their plans again before they headed to the second floor. So he had sent a skeleton over to them while he kept tabs using the Grim Reaper's mask. Among the skeletons that he had, the goblin skeletons were the best for scouting due to their small size especially when combined with equipment that muffled sounds. I definitely have to recover Van Gogh's bracelet. Anyway, the target was now clear. Kim Woo Jin did not intend to leave the dungeon until he got his hands on Van Gogh's bracelet. It won't be easy. That meant that he would have to waste a day doing nothing on the second floor. So Kim Woo Jin began to prepare for that. Li Jina. Kim Woo Jin called out to Li Jina. What's up? Before we head to the second floor, I'll explain some new tactics for our party. New tactics. Instead of responding to Li Jina's question, Kim Wu Jin used the Book of the Dead skill. The Book of the Dead appears. Then in front of Kim Wu Jin, a book made of stone slabs appeared. After taking out the first slab from the book, Kim Wu Jin broke it on the spot. Immediately, the slab became powder and that powder began to take the shape of the skeleton that had been sealed within the page. It was a skeleton soldier created using the bones of a sawtooth wolf that was five meters long. Wow! Li Jina shouted in surprise. Can I ride it? Ignoring his eccentric words, Kim Wu Jin reached into his inventory and threw an item from within it to Li Jina. Huh? A spear? Li Jina confirmed that the thing that Kim Wu Jin had thrown towards him was a spear, but he was still very confused. Is the new tactic for me to attack the boss with this spear while riding on the skeleton wolf? Kim Wu Jin finally gave him an answer. Now you understand. With the reminder of Vincent from the discuss comments, I found another description for the ruler of the battlefield skill. Ruler of the battlefield. Rank, E. Effect. Summons become stronger with every kill. 3% to all stats per kill, stacks up to 15 times. Chapter, 11. You have entered the second floor. A cold wind swept past them as they heard the familiar notification sound. That explains the title. Just as the title indicated, the second floor of the dungeon was an icy forest with trees as tall as an apartment complex. Since it was expected, no one was surprised by the terrain. However. It's much colder than I thought. Shit. It was much colder than they expected. Despite them preparing countermeasure for the cold, the sound of chattering teeth could still be heard from the group. Literally it was cold enough to make anyone shiver. The cold was driving them crazy, but no one suggested that they make a fire. We found few corpses on the first floor. It's not easy to kill 666 monsters, but it shouldn't be a problem for any of the players who entered here to clear the first floor. That means most of the players died here. By clearing the first floor of the dungeon, they realized that the second floor might be much more dangerous than they expected. Li Jina also had this thought. It's so cold even when I'm wearing this how nice it would be to have an actual Firefox in this situation eha, if my partner was a Pokemon master instead of a necromancer, I'd probably have been able to get a Firefox. Even though he was wearing Firefox leather armor which generated its own heat, Li Jina was still struggling from the cold. Even Kim Woo Jin felt the same. Kim Woo Jin's teeth clattered together and made a sound. This was enough evidence. There's evidence of fear. There were traces of none other than fear. Some monsters had the ability to terrorize their target and it seemed like the group of players were suffering from that effect now. This will be even harder than I expected. It wasn't good news. If there was no proper defense for fear, then the effect could be much more deadly than one would imagine. If you were prepared, you could free yourself from the effect of fear quickly, but in a life or death battle, that short moment could mean death. The only monsters that could use fear were monsters freaks. The main problem was that monsters that could induce fear were the monsters that were the true definition of the words monster. 
it shouldn't be a dragon. Monsters like dragons for example. It was then. Hey. Li Jina called out to Kim Wu Jin. Can you tell what a monster is by looking at its footprints? Kim Wu Jin turned his head to look at the spot where Li Jina was pointing. Not too far away from them was a single huge footprint. It's an ogre. Ogres. It was a monster that didn't need any introduction. It was one of the few monsters in a dungeon that were extremely difficult to hand. It should be the one that's violent. It was also the monster which fit the violent description more than any other monster. For an ogre, it was not satisfactory to just kill their target, they had cruel personalities and enjoyed tearing off limbs and smashing the body to the ground. Violent, but not smart. However Kim Wu Jin knew that in battle an ogre's instincts were better than most other monsters, despite its violent and foolish appearance. Its battle sense is much better than the fire fox or the horned fox. Its level was completely different from predators like the horned fox or even the fire fox that Kim Wu Jin had fought previously. Even players who were confident in their abilities would be hesitant to face off against an ogre. And of course, it has the experience of killing over 1-0-0 players it's a real player killer. Kim Wu Jin knew this better than anyone. After all, it was Kim Wu Jin who had been willing to take on such an infamous beast that everyone was reluctant to face, he had even earned the nickname Ogre Killer. But would it have such a powerful fear? Kim Wu Jin knew that ogres usually had a fear effect, but it shouldn't be as powerful as what he was feeling now. This level of fear is on a similar level as that of a dragon. Even an ogre at its peak would find it almost impossible to generate such fear that was comparable to a dragon. Of course, that could only mean one thing. It has an item that enhances the fear effect. This was an A dungeon after all. So since that was the case then there should be nothing strange about the ogre. As he reached that conclusion, Kim Wu Jin lifted his head. A sound could be heard from the forest. As he heard it, Li Jina smiled brightly. Those hyenas are making their move. Kim Wu Jin's mouth became a flat line. This won't be easy. The thoughts of humans were usually the same. When looking at a dungeon that had been failed 23 times, no one denied that it was hell, but on the other hand there were many who dreamt about becoming the inheritor of the legacies left here by the over 1-0-0 players who died. Those who were a part of the 24th challenge were the same. I'm sure there are items in here somewhere. The people who came before us should have similar thought some of them should have collected a few items and then died with them. Some of the 74 survivors looked at this place as a land of treasure. So of course, they moved quickly before the items were taken by someone else. That didn't mean they moved randomly. Let's go search. We should explore. Let's figure out our surroundings first. As many as six groups totaling up to 33 people left with that justification. In an instant, the group had been reduced to half. It wasn't as though the rest didn't know their intentions. It's not an exploration, they're going on a treasure hunt. Can they just leave just like that? Wouldn't it be better to unite our powers together? However those who remained could do nothing. Once they claimed to be a search party taking a huge risk, could they still complain? Most of all, everyone there were experienced players, so they knew themselves well. You can't force anyone to help anyway. It's better to exclude this type of people from the start. An awkward partnership was much more dangerous. Above all, most of them were hyenas who came to scavenge corpses anyway. No one would want someone who would treat your dead body as a treasure as a companion. The treasure hunt that began so unsurprisingly, achieved results much faster than anyone anticipated. There. It happened to be a party of five players. They had been searching for only a short while before they found something. It's a body. It was a victim. It was a player that had been frozen solid so his items were untouched. Excited, the party ran over to the body and became removing all the items they could find. As soon as they touched the corpse. P.U.K. As if it was a frozen meatball, the body crumbled and the items were removed. Oh. Unique. How much do you think it'll cost? If we take it all off, we could buy a building. They were delighted to have found a unique item and so they began to remove items earnestly. They broke the body to remove the armor, 
cut the ankles to remove the shoes, cut the fingers to get the rings. It wasn't long before the body was devastated. It was a cruel and horrible sight. That was why they were so absorbed in their work the more corrupt it was, the more addicted it was. Damn it, why won't this come off? Hurry up. Dull dull. The five players began to shiver as they were overwhelmed by fear. WH dash, WH dash, WH dash, what is that? Is it an earthquake? In such a situation, they had mistaken the tremors as an earthquake instead of one coming from their own bodies. An unknown fear has overwhelmed you. Then they heard a notification. Kwang. Following a roar, something fell from the sky. Quajik. The thing crashed into the head of one of the players who had been delighted by the items. Like an aluminium can that was crushed, his head was crushed into his body and then his body was also crushed. Pulhuk. At the same time, the fluids that filled the body shot out like an explosion. Blood covered everything, including the players. Huh. What? However the remaining four just kept trembling without understanding what was going on. In the meantime, another roar sounded and it was only after the second victim was crushed that the remaining three were able to move. So the first thing they did was check the identity of the shadow above their heads. Or. Standing there, was an ogre. Chapter, 112. Holy shit. The time it took for the players to encounter the ogre after they entered the second floor was similarly short. And the time it took for the players to be dominated by the ogre's powerful fear effect was even shorter. This is the worst. Damn it, this place really is hell. The ogre was a true monster. A monster that no one could imagine themselves being able to handle. What should we do? First wait for everyone to gather. Does anyone know how to deal with an ogre? In fact, there was no special way to deal with an ogre. A strategy? It's just a dogfight. We have to fight and die. Making sacrifices to deal constant damage, that was all there was to hunting an ogre. If we stick together like this, at least half of us will die. Half of the players who made it to the second floor would die if they tried to fight an all-out war with the ogre. Even though they knew what was best, it was still hard for the players to pick something like that. Was there anyone who would be willing to risk their lives for people who weren't even from the same guild, or that they had a close relationship with? Of course that wasn't the case. Only in rare cases, were strangers willing to sacrifice their lives for the sole purpose of clearing the dungeon. If it were the Messiah Guild. Those who had received the Messiah Guild's letter might be willing to. However the people here had not received letters from the Messiah Guild. The situations were similar, but still clearly different. And at this moment, that difference was growing bigger. This is crazy. What should we do? As the players wasted their time in confusion, it was the monsters that made the first move. And it wasn't the ogre this time. K.R.R. The monsters that stayed in the forest with the ogre were approaching the players. Of course, these monsters were not weak either. They couldn't be weak. Just by the fact that they could survive on the same floor as an ogre showcased their strength. Needless to say, these monsters also had experience. They had the experience of 23 dungeon attacks and the hunting of nearly 200 players. A wool. A wool. This included this white wolf pack. Twelve wolves attacked the group that had stayed behind after the 33 left to hunt for treasure. Damn, it's white wolves. Everyone prepare for battle. The number of players was gradually decreasing as battles sprung up the players only had one thought on their minds. I'm counting on you, Isaac Ivanov. Please create another miracle this time. They hoped that Isaac Ivanov, who was known for making the impossible possible, would once again create a miracle in this dungeon. But Isaac Ivanov was nowhere to be seen. The first thing Kim Woojin did after entering the second floor was explore. He spent two days exploring every corner of the frozen forest and he had made a few gains in the process. Like the others, Kim Woojin also found a few corpses he also found a few treasures. But this was unsurprising. In the first place, Kim Woojin had entered the floor hoping to get items and from the start he had only intended to clear the dungeon with Lee Jino. So no matter how many people died, 
Kim Woo Jin didn't care. Ack. The screams of those hyenas coming from who knows where, was the least of Kim Woo Jin's concerns. In fact, Kim Woo Jin did give the sound an ounce of his attention. Damn it. But Lee Jin Ah was different. They're all dying, they're all gonna die. He was a predator who wouldn't hesitate to kill people when it was necessary, but he was not a beast who could simply listen to the screams of others while he happily searched for dead bodies. Kim looked at him. It seems like you want to fight the ogre. I just think it's better than hunting for bodies. As he said this, Li Jina's voice carried a hint of disapproval towards Kim Woo Jin. At that, Kim Woo Jin smiled under the Grim Reaper's mask that was covering his face. It wasn't like he didn't understand what Li Jina meant it wasn't hard for anyone to tell. Moreover, Kim Wu Jin was also beginning to feel the same. I've gathered enough information. In truth, Kim Wu Jin hadn't just been moving around to scavenge items from corpses. In fact, the number of items that Kim Wu Jin actually removed from the bodies was much smaller than one would expect. He simply didn't have enough space in his inventory since it was filled with his own items as well as the items had received from the Messiah Guild before he entered the dungeon. Nevertheless he still had two reasons for exploring. One of them was to look for legendary items. I've collected all of his information. The other was to collect information on the appearance and combat style of the prey he intended to hunt. The Eye of Anubis Kim Woo Jin was using it to obtain information from the players who died from the ogre and now he had received all the information he thought he needed. Now I just need to know what items he's hidden. All that was left was to figure out what he was hiding. So now he was moving to grasp it. Rattle. A little goblin skeleton was on its way to the location from which the screams had sounded not long ago. Through the goblin skeleton's eyes, Kim Woo Jin was able to see. A four-meter-tall monster who only drank the blood of the prey he caught. Eye of Horus has opened. And what that monster was hiding. There's two. The moment he confirmed the information, Kim Woo Jin spoke. Li Jin Ah. What? Did you find another body? We're going with the plan. Kim Woo Jin's words surprised Li Jin Ah. I think it would be better to fight the ogre than search for bodies just like you said. Eyes of Anubis. Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld. Require level, level 1 or higher. Effect, you can view the memories of the dead. And for those who might have forgotten. The Eye of Horus. Requires, Emissary of the Underworld. Effect, able to view the information of target. A little vague but what can we do about it? Chapter, 113. Dungeons were very similar to video games. After a dungeon was attacked, the number of monsters in the dungeon would return to the original amount. However, the monsters that had survived would still remain. Of course, it was extremely rare for ordinary monsters to survive till the end. After a dungeon was attacked ten times, it would be extremely difficult to find a monster that had spawned during the first attack. The only exception was boss monsters. He is a monster that survived 23 attacks. So gathering information was important. It's almost impossible to compare him to a regular ogre. The experiences of the monster, the types of wounds that the preceding players had left on it, how it dealt with those wounds and how its personality shifted over time. He has already become a hunter. And how his personality changed his fighting style. This was the information that Kim Woo Jin wanted to get from the bodies. Thanks to that, Kim Wu Jin knew it well. He's a clever hunter. The ogre was clearly targeting the smaller group instead of a large group. In particular when it found a player's body, it knew that the new players would be interested in that body and so it would have a chance to ambush them. It also knew that after such a hunt, it had to take a break to quench its thirst. But its IQ isn't high. Based on the information he'd gotten, Kim Wu Jin looked for a weak point. Gulp. 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 As the ogre lifted the body of a player it had just killed and drank the hot blood that was squeezed out of the body as if it was drinking a canned beverage, Kim Woo Jin controlled the goblin skeleton to move. Rattle. The goblin skeleton soldier, which was wearing armor specially designed to remove the sounds it made, stealthily approached the ogre. It wasn't that close. It was about 10 meters away, 
but if it drew closer, the ogre would notice. When it reached this distance, Kim Woo Jin gave an order to the skeleton using the Grim Reaper's mask. Throw. Immediately, the skeleton threw a fist sized water balloon that it had been holding in its hand. The water balloon flew toward the ogre's face silently and quickly. Pang! Then it burst. Err. The attack was so ridiculous that the ogre began rubbing its face, which had already been smeared with blood, while making a sound of surprise instead of anger. It was at that moment. The ogre has been afflicted by black blood. It has been blinded. The notification that Kim Woo Jin had been waiting for sounded in his ear. Cool. Then he heard the ogre finally understand what was happening and let out a loud roar filled with anger. Ira, I didn't realize. That was the signal. Let's go. Rattle. Rattle. Li Jin Ah rushed towards the ogre with the skeletal wolf. The battle had begun. The leader of the Sawtooth Wolves, a skeleton wolf which had been summoned through the additional effect to summon giant monsters, sprinted through the frozen forest and narrowed its distance to the ogre. There was no hesitation in its movements. An unknown fear has overwhelmed you. It was as if an invisible wall appeared before them as they ran wildly. Fear. It was this wall that had left countless players in despair. Even those who had hardened themselves in the face of fear had died without being able to truly prove themselves. Great. However Li Jina was smiling as hard as he could even in the face of such fear. Lancelot's ring negates fear. It was because he had Lancelot's ring which negated all negative status conditions. The skeleton wolf was also unaffected by the effect of fear. Fear only affected living creatures and had absolutely no effect on those that had already died. The two of them quickly broke through the wall. And they came face to face with a wall that was much worse. Or. The ogre. Up close, the gigantic beast was even more horrifying. It had a height of 46 meters, an overwhelming physique that made anyone feel incredibly small and rough, thick skin which gave one the impression that it was as effective as the best leather armor. The most overwhelming thing was its injuries. The wounds that it had gotten over the course of 23 dungeon attacks were virtually battle scars that criss-crossed over its body. Even those who had mental protection abilities would feel frightened just by looking at it. But of course Li Jina was different. He stabbed the ogre's thigh with the spear in his hand without even a second of hesitation. P.U.K. Such a spear stab immediately left a deep wound on the ogre's body. Qua. The ogre was surprised by it and immediately swung the wooden club in its hand. Li Jina avoided the attack by laying flat on the body of the skeleton wolf while the wolf immediately made distance from the ogre. Wow! During the slight pause in the battle, a surprised cry escaped from Li Jina's mouth. Isn't it like piercing pudding? It was in admiration for the amazing penetration power of Percival's spear. The ogre's recovery ability has been greatly reduced. In addition, the wounds caused by Percival's spear could not be easily healed by the ogre's remarkable resilience. Thanks to that, blood began pouring from the wound. Go right away. Then the skeleton wolf spoke. Okay. This caused Li Jina to stop admiring the spear and instead begin preparing for the next attack. Once again, the sawtooth wolf skeleton soldier began running towards the ogre in the distance. But this time it wasn't as easy to hit the ogre unlike the players, the ogres weren't known to have a sharp drop in combat ability simply because they lost the ability to see. K.R. Instead, it accurately grasped the location of Li Jina and the skeleton wolf using sound and smell, and swung its club like a bolt of lightning. The skeleton soldier jumped sideways to avoid it. Qua. The wooden club smashed against the ground. Meanwhile Li Jina used the spear to leave another wound on the ogre's thigh. However this wound was not very deep. Although the entire blade of the spear entered, if you considered the enormous size of the ogre, it became only a scratch. There wasn't the destructive power that one would imagine from a cavalry attack. However Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin weren't dissatisfied by this. Next time I'll sidestep twice. Rather Kim Wu Jin used the skeleton's mouth to explain a new tactic. From the start the purpose of this combination wasn't in the creation of a strong destructive power. 
the purpose was to divide the roles. Kim Woo-jin became the bridge and all Lee Jin-a needed to focus on was the attack. The power of such tactics was actually considerable. Firstly, Kim Woo-jin was probably better at overlooking a battle and supporting from the back than any other player in the world. As long as he was holding the steering wheel, then there would be absolutely no accidents unless it was coincidental. And it didn't matter if there were accidents. Woo, I almost kicked the fucking bucket wasn't that too close. I'll show you what the word close really means. Lee Jin Ah, who had the blessing of the river sticks would be able to survive even if his limbs were ripped off, his ribcage crushed and his head chopped off. There was nothing better in the world than a pilot who cannot die or a race driver who wouldn't die in an accident during a race. Li Jin Ah and Kim Woo Jin proved this to the ogre. Of course, they didn't forget. When are the skeletons going to come out? After you make ten cuts. As should be expected, such a large stage needed an audience. The skeleton soldiers were prepared and waiting for their master's orders. After that we'll just have to put these in the wounds. With weapons made using Kim Woo Jin's blood poison in their hands. Chapter, 114 when the Poison King's notoriety had reached its peak, all guilds began developing their own ways to counter him. You must never get hurt when facing the Poison King. It seemed funny, but in fact this was the most obvious out of all the Poison King's strengths and weaknesses. Blood poison could also affect the target through the eye's respiratory system, but the effect was not as great. Additionally, after a certain level, players would have enough items that gave them a considerable resistance to poisons. This was the same for monsters. Even if it was a high-ranked blood poison skill, if the target was powerful enough then the best way to inflict them would be through wounds. In other words, it was game over if you let yourself get hurt. K.R.R. That was why it was game over for the ogre. The ogre's health has been greatly reduced. The ogre's resistance has been greatly reduced. The beast who had been victorious in countless battles, was now on its knees and breathing heavily. Its body was completely covered in cuts. There were many injuries from spears, swords, arrows and so on. Just as expected. This was the basis for Kim Woo Jin's confidence in clearing a dungeon that no one had defeated before. With the combination of Percival's spear and blood poison, there is practically nothing that can face it in a fair dungeon. With Percival's spear which not only had high penetration but also reduced resilience, the technique to deal with the Poison King had been made obsolete. But there's a limit. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't believe that such a tactic would work universally in every single dungeon. Ogres were beasts, but in the dungeons that he would face with three floors and more, there would be many more powerful monsters to which ogres would be compared to hyenas who had to pick their leftovers. Above all was the worst monster in Kim Woo Jin's mind who played the role of savior to perfectly devour the world, Lee Se Jun. I still need more. To deal with such a monster, he still needed to become much stronger. Therefore Kim Woo Jin didn't take his eyes off of the ogre. The eye of Horus has opened. He looked at the dying ogre once again with his golden eyes. Second Tale of the Nine-Tailed Fox Rating, Legendary Required level, level 1 or higher. Description, the second tail of the powerful nine-tailed fox it has a mysterious power by gathering all nine tails, the user would gain the nine-tailed fox's power. All stats 5%. All resistances 10%. When equipped all enemies will feel a powerful fear effect. Precisely, he looked at the second tail of the nine-tailed fox in its stomach. Van Gogh's bracelet, 1. Require level level 1 or higher. Description, a bracelet containing the mysterious power of Van Gogh it is said to contain the power of harmony. When equipped, all effects of rings worn on the hand wearing the bracelet can be applied. When equipped, rings on the hand wearing the bracelet cannot be removed. Then he looked at Van Gogh's bracelet, which he wore like a band around his arm. Looking at it, Kim Woo Jin had the same thought. It's still not enough. The ogre has been slain. Then came the notification which announced the end of the dungeon. Hey, what are you so happy about? Oh Seichan responded to his staff with a smile. I'm just happy that snacks are coming to us even when I do nothing. 
As he said this, Oh Se Chan's eyes were drawn to the boxes of choco pies that were stacked astonishingly high in the corner. His subordinate didn't know what to say. Aren't you sick of it? The subordinate asked this question, but Oh Se Chan didn't seem to hear it as he kept smiling brightly. This was a situation in which absolutely no amount of explanation or persuasion was likely to have an effect. As the subordinate knew Oh Se Chan's personality well, they decided to not pursue the matter any further. I would rather have ramen even Russian kids like ramen. He just mumbled in dissatisfaction. Oh Se Chan stood up and tapped his subordinate on the shoulder. What did you say just now? Yes. What did you just say? Surprised, the subordinate hurriedly responded. Ru dash, Russian kids like ramen the lunchbox thing, that. At that answer Oh Se Chan looked at him with bright eyes. You're a genius. Then the next moment. I found something there. The subordinate spoke even faster while looking at Oh Se Chan's bright smile. Choco pie. No not that. Then. The subordinate could only ask another question. The skeleton knight skillet finally appeared on the black market. Though I can't speak for the author and this is purely an opinion that anyone can debate on with me. I believe that what they are trying to say in the description of Van Gogh's bracelet's effects, is that all the effects of every ring on that hand can be applied, or stacked. However this is purely conjecture because the author has yet to introduce any manner of ranking or priority system for effects therefore it can only be assumed that items with similar effects for example the plus ring and a skeleton ring which increases the rank of skeleton soldier. Since we haven't found the MC collecting more items with such effects maybe it is a priority based on the item's rating? Or maybe by the difference in the level of the effect? We can't know until we're told. Therefore I can only make an assumption that there is such a priority and the bracelet would then negate that allowing similar effects to be stacked which will probably happen in the near future but I won't spoil it for us. Of course there's still the possibility that I am completely wrong and the effects mean something else entirely either way we will find out together as I along with you. If you manage to all of this then you can share your thoughts with me in the comments on Whoopcom, I them for every chapter. This has been another episode of Seven's Horrifically Long Notes genre. Ah PSO New Skill. Chapter, 115. The trust that the public had in the Messiah Guild was not something that could easily be explained. It was not enough to call it blind or fanatical, and it was extremely similar to how the believers of gods reacted to crusades. Of course, the Messiah Guild was committed to receiving such faith but they weren't the only ones dedicated. Across the globe, there were numerous people who were willing to give their lives in the fight to save the world. Nevertheless, the reason why all the faith and trust of the world was focused on the Messiah Guild was simple. They produced results. It's a player. A player has come out of the gate. It's clear. The dungeon was cleared. And at this moment a player who proved was to have the same amount of faith and trust as the Messiah Guild had appeared. Isaac Ivanov did it. Isaac Ivanov crossed the dungeon gate and reappeared in the real world. Isaac Ivanov has done it. The man who made the impossible possible. Isaac Ivanov hunts the ogre. When Isaac Ivanov left the dungeon gate, the world became flooded with news carrying his name. Has a new savior appeared? Can Isaac Ivanov save the world? Some began to compare Isaac Ivanov to the world's only savior. Of course, not everyone put Isaac Ivanov on the same level as Lee Sejun. Compared to the savior. What's that bullshit? Crazy bastards. They're just fishing for clicks don't think too much about it. Even those who wrote the articles in the first place didn't truly think so. Still, isn't Isaac Ivanov's recent move able to compare the savior? Say something that makes sense. He is a god. But isn't it true that he is unrivaled in two floor dungeons? Where could you find such a player? It's only the two floors the savior is about to start attacking seven floors. It's a two floor that was failed 23 times before. However what was apparent was that the names Isaac Ivanov and Lee Sejun began to be mentioned together more often, even if they were not compared. I feel like I'm getting closer to him now. It was proof that the distance between Lee Sejun and Kim Woo Jin was closer. However this didn't make Kim Woo Jin happy. There was no reason for him to like it. 
the closer we get, the more checks we get from the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild would be much more cautious of Isaac Ivanov from now on. Then, if Isaac Ivanov began to interfere with their affair, the Messiah Guild would make a move without hesitation. Right now it was difficult for Kim Woojin to handle a heavy offensive from the Messiah Guild. No, it was more than just difficult. I can see a path now thanks to Van Gogh's bracelet. In the midst of his lament, Kim Woojin's mind shifted to the bracelet that was lying in his inventory. It's the item that people risk their lives to recover. Van Gogh's bracelet it was an item that loosened some of the player's accessory constraints. Players could wear up to five accessory items. One necklace, two rings and two bracelets. It was possible to wear more, but any more than the specified number and the player would not receive the effects for the subsequent items. If you put more than two rings on your hand, only two rings would work. However some of those restrictions were removed by Van Gogh's bracelet. If you wore Van Gogh's ring on your right hand, you could then wear five rings on your right hand. The problem is I can't remove it. The downside was that a ring worn together with Van Gogh's bracelet couldn't be removed unless he died. It was a bigger drawback than one would think. First of all, players basically wore all kinds of rings. In particular, as the floors increased, they had no choice but to prepare as much in advance as they would not know what environment they would have to face. In the case of Lee Sejun, there were as many as 19 legendary rings in his inventory and Kim Woo Jin had also filled part of his inventory with rings although not as much as he had in the past future. Above all, a ring was the fastest piece of equipment that a player could replace. I can't wear it yet. However the most troublesome part was that he would be limited to the five rings that he picked until he died. For now there's only the plus ring. It was true that he could wear up to five rings, but there was no reason for him to wear it if the effect wasn't on the same level as the plus ring. This was the reason why Kim Woo Jin didn't wear the bracelet yet. After all, it was not too late to equip it after he managed to find a few more rings on the same level as the plus ring. The first three-floor dungeon I enter is decided. Additionally, Kim Woo Jin had information on dungeons that had legendary items that hadn't been discovered in this world yet. That was the reason. It's not enough yet. The reason why Kim Woo Jin still felt he was lacking. Tuck. Tuck. And now Kim Woo Jin was using the leather of the ogre he'd hunted, to make armor. It was then. Woo Woo. The phone in his pocket began vibrating. How are you? It was Oh Se Chan's voice. You're really popular nowadays, really popular ah, uh, how about we have a chat? Tell me if you have any special needs. Nothing immediately. Kim Woo Jin didn't ask for anything in particular. The things he wanted were not things he could ask for, but things he had to get on his own. I have a question. A question? What is it? I wonder why ramen or choco pie is always mentioned whenever there is an interview. Ah. Oh Seichan paused for a second before saying. Uh, that. That? It's for public opinion right, that's it it's to help build a connection and the Messiah Guild is based in Korea anyway isn't it? So isn't this a good way to connect with the Koreans? Huh? Aren't I right? In fact even foreigners like Choco Pai you like it too don't you? Oh Seichan's words changed. Ah, but that's not the point. He quickly changed the topic. There's good news and bad news I was calling to hear your opinion in advance. Let's hear the good news. The Skeleton Knight skill will be on sale. Skeleton Knight. The words made Kim Woo Jin remember the times when he'd fought against the King of Undead. The memory was that of three liches and five death knights protecting the King of Undead as well as an army of hundreds of skeleton soldiers standing in front of him. Skeleton knights were intermingled in that group of skeleton soldiers. At first glance, they were indistinguishable from normal skeleton soldiers. This was especially the case when the skeleton soldier skilled reached the EX rank then even an ogre skeleton could be made into a skeleton soldier and there would be no way to distinguish the two. But there was one different skeleton knights rode on the backs of skeleton beasts. That was the only obvious difference. It was a pain in the ass. It was also the difference that made the skeleton knights very troublesome. No long explanation was necessary. 
It was simple to just reimagine the case with Li Jina and the wolf skeleton. No, from the start, Kim Wu Jin came up with such a tactic after observing skeleton knights. At this time, it was a skill that would prove extremely helpful to Kim Wu Jin. This was the good news. The bad news is that it is not easy to get. So Kim Wu Jin could immediately tell what the bad news was. Right answer. What's the problem? Is it money? Most of the world's problems are because of money, which is why I'm so frugal, but this time it's different so it's more troublesome. What are the terms? Support and protection from the government. Normally conditions like these would make people ponder for a bit, but Kim Woo Jin was able to understand the situation immediately. So it's a wanted criminal. Right. Among the players, there were a lot of wanted people more than half of the players who went to Kaesong, North Korea were criminals. In all honesty, a lot of money was actually dangerous for that type of person. It was a different story for a bum to have 3 to 4 50 0, 0, 1 bills in his pocket and for him to have a 100 million one bond slip in his pocket. Moreover if something so valuable was found it could easily be used for other things instead of money. He's from Ukraine, but he murdered a high-ranked official in the government of course, he's saying he killed the man cause he humiliated his wife, he is also known for committing all sorts of other crimes. But he's applied for asylum because killing the man was a legitimate decision in the world today, which government would grant asylum to a player like that. He's been wandering round for a while but he managed to get something good this time. So his condition is asylum. From what Oh Seichan had just explained, one of the conditions could be for guaranteed stability. It was not a ridiculous request. Most well-known players had a close relationship with their governments. It was possible for those who want the skill to do so through those in power. Two wives, two daughters four in total. That's a lot of conditions for a unique skill and not a legendary. After all, it wasn't a legendary skill so it was basically overkill to ask for so many things. There's no compromise he's desperate I tried to get him into Russia but he refused well, looking at Russia he might not believe hell get protection. It was truly worth Oh Seichan saying it was bad news. In the end, Kim Woo Jin spoke again. Can we make the trade at any time? The contact point is still being maintained. Then I'll do it. You. Oh Seichan couldn't hide the surprise in his voice. You have contacts in the Korean government. In response to that, Kim Woo Jin responded briefly. No. Then how? I don't have, but I know someone who does. If you say that then Park Yong Won. You know it well. Kim Woo Jin smiled as he said this. Park Yong Won, I'll make you fight the world. In the wake of Isaac Ivanov, it was Park Yong Won who finally managed to change the focus of the world. Park Yong Won succeeds in his second challenge of a six floor dungeon. He had completed his second challenge of a six floor dungeon and returned to the real world, it was certainly a historical moment. This is now the era of Park Yong Won. The Phoenix Guild, 29th in the world rankings. It was a glorious moment. However, Park Yong Won's expression when he had just come back after completing his historical achievement was worse than ever. So the Frontier Guild tried to eat us. Kim Woo Jin, who was standing in front of him, answered simply. Yes. Kim Woo Jin had approached Park Yong Won when he came back and explained the situation to him. After barely surviving, I hid and waited for you to come back. He told him that a powerful group of pathfinders had been sent by the Frontier Guild. Park Yong Won had no choice but to harden his face. Of course, he already knew what the Frontier Guild was like. Fucking bastards. Nevertheless he had never expected them to pull such tricks on him. In fact, Park Yong Won could be considered a big shot. Nevertheless it was through Naomi Spell's suggestion that the Frontier Guild did this. It was because the Messiah Guild wanted to quickly remove Park Yong Won that they were forced to make her do it. But Naomi Spell and the Messiah Guild's plan had failed. Park Yong Won was able to escape from their trap. How are we going to deal with this? The problem that there was no way for Park Yong Won to vent his anger right now. Park Yong Won knew that currently, no matter how strong he seemed, he could never go against the Frontier Guild. If you have any thoughts, tell me. 
Therefore Park Yongwan asked Kim Woo Jin for his opinion. Kim Woo Jin thought for a bit before replying to Park Yongwan's question. Personally, I think defense would be better than attack right now there are too many enemies. Defense? Yes, I think it's best to focus on defense so that the other guilds, especially the Frontier Guild, will not rush to touch us. Defense if that's unexpected but how? Kim Woo Jin answered him easily. By using the Messiah Guild's method. The Messiah Guild? They're supported by the public isn't that why you can't touch the Messiah Guild? They have the support of the public all over the world. Park Yong Wan nodded at that. However his expression crumpled again. Kim Woo Jin's words were not wrong but. How? But it wasn't something he could say he wanted to do. Don't tell me I have to clear a seven-floor dungeon. Unless Park Yongwon attacked a seven-floor dungeon then it would be impossible for him to be treated like a savior like the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin made a suggestion to him. You don't need to take the risks yourself think of the Hansung group. The Hansung group. They invested in the Messiah Guild and enjoy the same reputation, the Phoenix Guild can do something similar. Something similar. As soon as he asked the question, Park Yongwon realized what the answer was as if he had found it on his own. Isaac Ivanov, you mean invest in him right? Kim Woo Jin nodded instead of answering. At that time, a smile stretched across Park Yong Wan's face. Chapter, 116 The most powerful thing about the Messiah Guild was that it received endless faith and support from the public. Through this never-ending support, the Messiah Guild steadily grew to become something that other guilds could not hope to compare to. Of course, like the Messiah Guild there were other guilds who wanted to benefit from playing the role of savior. No, in fact all guilds were forced to do so to some extent because of the Messiah Guild. The same was true for the Phoenix Guild. They also spent much more than they initially expected on marketing to make it seem like they were also working toward the benefit of the world. However the results were not good. Just as a politician who was known for all kinds of corruption could not change his image simply by engaging in a few volunteering activities. It was impossible for the Phoenix Guild to become like the Messiah Guild simply through marketing techniques after they had already built up a bad image. It was for this reason that Park Yongwon easily accepted Kim Woo Jin's proposal. If the image they had accumulated so far was the problem then maybe getting a new face was the best solution. Park Yongwan immediately began working on the idea. The Phoenix Guild promises its full support to Isaac Ivanov. Will the Phoenix Guild become Isaac Ivanov's supporter? Park Yongwan, Isaac Ivanov is a world treasure, it's natural to want to help him. He intended to borrow Isaac Ivanov's fame as Kim Woo Jin had suggested. Sir, Isaac Ivanov's side has contacted us. Isaac Ivanov responded immediately to Park Yongwan's proposal. They said he appreciates it deeply. Isaac Ivanov had directly refused Park Yongwan's support in a single stroke they had failed even before making the first step. However as he listened to his secretary's words, Park Yongwan did not show any disappointment or anger on his face. I'm glad he's not some guy who simply accepts anything that's given to him. Rather he welcomed it as if it was a response he had expected from the start. And he's good for not making a fuss out of it. Isaac Ivanov's move was a clear indication that his name was indeed quite valuable. Therefore, Park Yongwan began making more preparations. Then we'll need to take out a gift he can't refuse did you do the investigations. Even those with expensive tastes would have something that they drooled over. I received information that he is currently trying to get a skill called Skeleton Knight. Skeleton Knight? It's a unique level 50 class skill currently there is only one on the market. And thus the bait was spotted by the fish. Park Yongwon gave a bright smile as he heard this and seemed quite satisfied. That's good to hear how much is it. The seller is asking for asylum, not money if we go into more detail. Is it possible or not? It's possible. Then accept it. But it's likely to cost more than we expected, in more ways than we expected. I don't care. There was no hesitation at all in Park Yongwan's voice. We must accept it. He expressed his desires to obtain the skill at all costs. No, Park Yongwan intended to do more than just that. And the item on my list, prepare them. If it's that item. 
Osiris ring from the sixth floor dungeon. You are going to give him that too. Park Yongwan looked at his secretary who was staring at him with wide eyes. It's best to protect a portion, than to lose everything. Hyung, this is. Look at this Jina. A surprised Li Jina was looking at the thing that Oh Seichan was pointing at with his hand. How is it? What Oh Seichan was pointing at was what used to be an empty office about 20 pyong large which was now completely filled with packages of choco pies and ramen. The packages were in all different sizes that were wrapped as if they were gifts. In fact, they were actually gifts. Gifts from the Korean public to Isaac Ivanov. This means the end of this year's food and snack expenses I think we can even take out the coffee expenses if we sell the boxes for waste paper. For Oh Se Chan, this was a divine gift. Lee Jina couldn't help but ask in surprise. So you're only gonna have ramen for meals and choco pies as snacks? Of course, what else should I eat after getting all of this free food? If his subordinates heard that, they would have gotten dizzy immediately. No, the expression of the subordinate who had been following the two was already frozen solid. It wasn't difficult to imagine how horrible it would be to eat three meals of ramen every day with only choco pies for snacks. Well, that's the boss. What was even worse was that Oh Se Chan was a human being who could really do such a thing. Unless Jina says something. Because of this, the subordinate sincerely wished that Li Jina would be able to convince Oh Se Chan to give up this unreasonable dream. Hyung. As if the prayers of the subordinate were answered, Li Jina looked at Oh Se Chan with a hard look on his face. Does it make sense for a person to only eat ramen for three meals a day and choco pies for snacks? It doesn't. No, it's common sense that you get tired of eating the same thing isn't it? Li Jina's words made the subordinate's expression brighten. You'd need something like shapajeti japageti, or instant rice to give the meals more variety. Is that so? I think the free ramen wouldn't be a problem. I once tried to have ramen for three meals a day, but after a month I got a bit sick of it. What was it like during that month? It wasn't bad. However Li Jina's next words allowed the subordinate to remember something. Li Jina was also not someone you would call normal. Ah, uh, what happened with that thing? What? He told Park Yongwan what happened right. At that time the topic of the conversation switched to Park Yongwan. So why are they so quiet? After Park Yongwan returned to the real world, Kim Woo Jin had explained the entire incident to him. The Frontier Guild painted a big picture for Park Yongwan to eat him and he told him that some of his men had been killed already by the Frontier Guild. And if Park Yongwan wasn't a fool, then he had already done his own investigations and realized that what Kim Woo Jin told him was true. However Park Yongwan's behavior had not changed since then. Rather than exploding, he was acting as if he never heard the news in the first place. It's strange that that dirty guy is so quiet. No, that's what Park Yongwan is like. It is. His own interests are the priority his subordinate suffered so of course he is upset about it. But conversely he can use that as a way to get back something from the Frontier Guild he's probably tapping on a calculator right now I wonder how much he will try to rip the Frontier Guild off by using this. Wouldn't they tell him how his guards were killed? As he heard that Oh Seichan laughed briefly. From Naomi Spell's position and what has happened so far, she will try to persuade Park Yongwan with her abilities. The most difficult thing to overcome in the plan was Naomi's spell. If she can't, she'll die. If Park Yongwan decided to contact the Frontier Guild directly, they would then blame Naomi's spell, and if the Messiah Guild believed that it would lead to trouble, they would not hesitate to eliminate her. So the moment Park Yongwan shows the room for negotiation, she will go all out to persuade him. She would have to use all the cards she had. And she'd make similar approaches to Kim Woo Jin. At the same time, she would try to send a gift of reconciliation to Kim Woo Jin who had caused the incident. At this moment, to connect to Sam Oliver, she could only go through Kim Woo Jin. What an amazing guy! Oh Se Chan could not help his admiration. Sir, the skill page was traded. At the same time, another subordinate told him some breaking news and a smile stretched across his face. He's a really amazing guy. Chapter 117. Skeleton Knight. 
Li Jina brought the golden skill page to Kim Wu Jin who silently stared at it for quite a long time. What? Are you so moved that you're speechless? Kim Wu Jin shot a glance at Li Jina who had taken out a box of choco pies and began eating them after asking that question. I am touched. Huh? At the unexpected answer, Li Jina couldn't help but make a surprised expression. What surprised him even more was that Kim Wu Jin's face at that moment seemed to show that he actually meant what he said. It was justified. The effort that Park Yongwan put in for Isaac Ivanov would not have been so unusual. The price that Park Yongwan must have paid to obtain the skill page could not be in any way small. Moreover Park Yongwan got this amazing item and gave it away to Isaac Ivanov absolutely for free. I got a gift from the guy who sold his own country. There was no way that someone who was willing to sell their own country for their personal interests could have done something like this with a light heart. That's how urgent it is. On the other hand, this also meant that the situation that Park Yongwan was in was far from good. In fact it could be said to be downright bad. At the moment he was in the middle of a war with the Skull Guild, fighting and killing each other on the surface and behind the Skull Guild was the Yamato Federation which was actively supported by the Japanese government. In this situation, he brought in the Frontier Guild to try to deal with the Skull Guild and they tried to eat him alive. Though he'd managed to extricate himself from being eaten, Park Yongwan still found it difficult to actually do anything about what happened. The Messiah Guild won't give up. Most importantly, he didn't know it yet, but the Messiah Guild had already designated him as a target. At least, before Kim Wu Jin returned to the past, there had never been anyone who had survived being targeted by the Messiah Guild. They all ended up being hunted by the hunting dogs in the end. The longer he lives, the more helpful he'll be. At least for Kim Wu Jin, the longer Park Yongwan stayed alive, the better. After all, Park Yongwan was blocking many arrows for Kim Wu Jin. I can't waste any time. He knew that there would come a day when his meat shield would disappear and then all the arrows that he had been blocking would come to him. So what Kim Wu Jin needed to do, was to prepare for that day. Didn't Oh Seichan give you anything else? When he heard Kim Wu Jin's question, Li Jina nodded and immediately held the back with the choco pie that he was eating, in his mouth. Kim Wu Jin frowned a bit as he looked at him. Where do you get all these choco pies that you're constantly eating? A thought flashed in Li Jina's mind for a moment. Should I tell him that I'm eating his gift that Oh Seichan took or stay silent? Uh, that Ivy been on a diet these past few days. A diet? Uh, that's right I'm on a diet where I only eat this instead of rice. It was absurd, but Kim Wu Jin nodded as if he was satisfied with the explanation. Right. Li Jina wondered if he suspected anything. I thought that it might be a gift that was sent for me and were treating it like your own snacks instead of telling me about it. Th dash, that's not true would I really do that? A real man would never do something like that and I'm a real man. With an awkward laugh Li Jina hurriedly handed a document that he took out over to Kim Wu Jin. Look at this. As soon as Kim Wu Jin received it, Li Jina threw a question at him in a bid to change the topic. So what is that anyway? Kim Wu Jin responded briefly to his question. It's a dungeon report. A dungeon report? We're entering another dungeon. Kim Wu Jin didn't answer Li Jin AHS following questions because he felt like they weren't worth responding to. Clearing dungeons until they die was the duty of all players. So where is it this time? Kim Wu Jin just handed the report over to him instead of answering him. Li Jina who looked over the report couldn't help but ask more questions with a hard face. 7 Day Survival B Rank you have to kill monsters for seven days on the second floor instead of the first floor. Who would try to clear this crazy dungeon? Kim Wu Jin simply pointed his finger toward Li Jina instead of answering. Wa dash, wait. Li Jina saw the finger and became frightened. The maximum number of entries is 60 people. Li Jina began speaking with a sincere but anxious expression. Wouldn't it be too dangerous for just the two of us to do this? Seriously, that's common sense isn't it? Can we really handle the defense of 60 people with just us? Huh. It would be way too hard. His words weren't wrong. 
Dungeons with survival quests usually had many more monsters than normal dungeons. In a normal situation, a B dungeon that had a maximum capacity of 60 people could have as many as 10 0, 0 monsters. It would be unusual for anyone to deal with so many monsters with just two people. Kim Woo Jin finally answered Lee Jina's question. It won't be just the two of us. Ah, uh, really? Li Jina's facial expression brightened at those words. You must have a team for us to run it with okay, then that changes things so how many of them are there? There's 35 excluding us. What? 35? As he heard this number, Li Jina tilted his head in confusion before he suddenly realized something. Are you talking about the number of skeleton soldiers and golems? Kim Wu Jin ripped the skill page in his hands and responded. And one skeleton knight. At that moment, Li Jina gave up on the conversation and Kim Wu Jin no longer thought about it. There was only one thing on his mind. After this dungeon, we should use the big event happening on October 10th as the stage for our debut into three floor dungeons. Another a rank dungeon would appear in Korea on October 10th. As he thought of this, Kim Wu Jin's expression hardened slightly. It won't be easy, but. In Kim Woo Jin's memory, the maximum number of entries had been 250 and three of the five major guilds participated. Nevertheless, there was a reason why Kim Woo Jin intended to go there. I have to get Hercules' ring. The reason was very obvious. Chapter, 118. Hunt the Black Orc. As Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina entered the dungeon, they heard the notification with the clear conditions of the first floor. However Kim Woo Jin didn't pay attention to the notification. Instead he turned to Li Jina. We're going to start training for three floor dungeons from today. Li Jina laughed in response to that. I can enter three floor and even four floor right now I am a man who does not know the word impossible. Kim Woo Jin did not say anything at his empty boasting. He didn't have any reactions, he didn't laugh, he didn't say a word. Instead, he simply took the Grim Reaper's mask from his inventory and put it on his face in one smooth motion. Then with the mask on his face, he spoke in a cold tone. If you're so confident then you don't need any handicaps. The one who hunts the Black Orc first wins. What? Li Jina was frozen in surprise for a moment before he hurriedly spoke again. Wadash, wait. So I'm going against you. For who catches it first? Kim Woo Jin didn't answer him. I'll give you a bit of advice. Instead he gave him some advice. All you need to do is hunt it first, that doesn't mean you have to hunt it quickly in other words it's okay as long as you don't let the other person hunt it before you. As he gave this advice, Kim Woo Jin's eyes slowly became those of a hunting dog just before its hunt. In front of those eyes, Li Jin ah realized that Kim Woo Jin was not joking. What happens if I lose? If I find you lacking then I'll just give you intensive training to fill that gap that's it. As he said this, Kim Woo Jin seemed to recall something. I'll do my best not to kill you, don't worry. After saying those spooky words, Kim Woo Jin shouted at him. Start. At the moment, Li Jin ah began running away without looking back. The running Li Jin ah was as focused and serious as he could be. And Kim Woo Jin who was watching him run away, was also serious. The moment you enter the three floor dungeons, you're considered weak once again. Currently, Kim Woo Jin could be said to be the strongest in two floor dungeons it was impossible for anyone in a two floor dungeon to kill him. However that changed as soon as he entered three floor dungeons. If the level limit for the dungeon was level 80 and under then even Kim Woo Jin would struggle to survive in such a place. The limit for the dungeon with Hercules ring is level 80. Moreover the limit for the dungeon that Kim Woo Jin was aiming for was exactly level 80. Of course, if it was Kim Woo Jin, then he would be able to endure it to some extent. I might be able to, but it wouldn't be easy for Li Jin ah. The problem was that Li Jin ah was not yet ready to stand on that stage. This wasn't to degrade Li Jin Ahs abilities in fact Kim Woo Jin had a large appreciation for his ability. Three floor dungeons were simply that dangerous especially on the third floor. One of the most terrifying things about a three-floor dungeon was simply the fact that it had a third floor. 
This was easy to understand when one looked at the players who fell down in exhaustion soon after exiting a two-floor dungeon. Clearing the second floor in a dungeon in itself is not an easy task. But in a three-floor dungeon the players were forced to clear another floor after that this made the dungeon much more difficult than most people understood. Even experienced people like Li Jin Ah could not easily handle this seemingly insignificant difference. This was why Kim Wu Jin gave him this assignment. The best medicine for him is hard experience. Kim Wu Jin intended to simulate the same level of difficulty that Li Jin Ah would encounter in a three-floor dungeon. And I can also check the ability of the Skeleton Knight. At the same time he intended to test how well the Skeleton Knight could perform through fighting Li Jina. At that time, Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but recall some memories from his past. This reminds me of the past. There was once a time when he trained the players in the Messiah Guild who would fall under his command. Five out of the ten tried to kill me during the training. It was a very sad time. It's been eleven days since they entered and still no contact. Oh Seichan nodded without any reaction as his subordinate read this report to him. The subordinate could not help but ask carefully as he saw that. That place he it very dangerous. Considering the characteristics and difficulty of the dungeon, it was a natural question to ask. Not really. However Oh Seichan's thoughts seemed to be the exact opposite. There is practically no danger in fact, that dungeon could be considered pretty easy for those two. Easy. Ulha. Oh Seichan kindly explained to his subordinate who only seemed to get more confused. It would be over as long as you stay alive for seven days all you need to do is stay alive even if all your limbs are chopped off. Ah. Only then did the subordinate realize what Oh Seichan meant. Li Jina should be fine. In the first place, survival quests are like his food. Survival quests only required the players to survive for a specific amount of time. In other words it was the best solo stage for Li Jina who couldn't die easily. As for Kim Wu Jin. There was not even a need for them to mention Kim Wu Jin. I can't imagine that monster dying from the start he was probably going there only to train. For him, there was no longer any danger in a two-floor dungeon. Training. Yeah, training to enter three-floor dungeons. It was but a stepping stone for his new stage. Three floors. When Oh Seichan said those words, his expression became frozen. So did his subordinates. It won't be easy. That's right. The players who challenged three floor dungeons were almost all over level 60. It's completely different from two floors. It was correct to say that there would no longer be any pushover. There was no one who could be said to be lacking in skill combat ability, or monster hunting capabilities, although there were many interesting personalities and those with personality defects that the words quirky. Strange or psychopathic matched perfectly and even these people were still competent when it came to fighting monsters. The lower limit for the entries is 100 for three floor dungeons. Moreover, the number of entries went up significantly from two floor dungeons. The lower limit was 100 and it could even go above 300. It's usually impossible for one guild to handle. The problem was, as he had just mentioned, it was almost impossible for a guild to fill the numbers with people above level 60 who also had the required level of ability. There was no case of a dungeon being cleared by a single guild unless it was only of the top 5 guilds in the world or guilds that were on a similar level. Eventually, three floor dungeons became items that it was natural for multiple guilds to work together to make a joint bid for. That's why the necessity for politics is so severe. Of course it was not easy to unite several forces into one. No matter how many agreements were made at first, there was no telling what would truly happen inside the dungeon. This was why Kim Wu Jin had entered this dungeon. After all, power is best. In this world, the only thing that could truly be used was power, and the only way for one to gain power was through dungeons. It was then. Breaking news. We received a letter from the Messiah Guild. Oh Seichan's expression became firm. What does it say? An A3 floor dungeon has been discovered. Chapter, 119. A man appeared in front of a close school in Gangnang City, Kanwandu, where the huge footsteps of monsters could still be seen on the weed-covered playground. 
The man's body was large enough to be considered a monster and his appearance was more than harsh enough to match the word monster. If someone who didn't know him saw him, they might very well run away while thinking that a monster had escaped from a dungeon. They came out. Fortunately those nearby were colleagues and acquaintances who were used to his appearance. Li Jin Ah. Oh Se Chan's men began to approach him in order to welcome him back. But Li Jin Ah had an odd response to those who were approaching. Ugh. Li Jin Ah bent over and began vomiting everything that he had in his stomach. Ha. Huh. Hook. The footsteps of Oh Se Chan's men who had been hurrying over to greet him immediately came to a stop. I don't believe it. Li Jin Ah is vomiting. This is a serious problem we need to contact the boss right away. It was incredibly shocking for none other than Li Jin Ah to vomit what he had eaten, no matter what it was and no matter how much it was. At least for those who knew Li Jin Ah, this was in fact a very urgent matter. One of the subordinates immediately began contacting Oh Se Chan. It was at that moment. Mr. Kim Wu Jin. Following Li Jin Ah's appearance, Kim Wu Jin also appeared. After he looked around his surroundings for a bit, Kim Wu Jin immediately turned to look at Li Jin Ah who was collapsed on the ground. Li Jin Ah, who finally stopped puking, avoided his gaze. Kim Wu Jin smiled and walked away slowly. His short walk led him to the subordinate who had contacted Oh Se Chan. Kim Wu Jin stretched his hand toward him. I will no hand it to Mr. Kim Wu Jin. As soon as Kim Wu Jin put the phone to his ear, he heard Oh Se Chan's voice. What's going on? Li Jin Ah is vomiting. What happened in the dungeon? Oh Se Chan asked a flurry of questions, his tone filled with urgency. Ha! Huh. If something gets into his stomach he'd easily digest it, so why is he vomiting? It was clear that Oh Se Chan was also shocked by the fact that Li Jin Ah was vomiting something that he'd eaten. He's just overworked, there is no problem. Overworked. I pushed him a little harder than usual in order to properly prepare for our graduation from two floor dungeons. It was then. Fuck, that was a bit hard. I almost died. Hearing what Kim Wu Jin was saying on the call, Li Jin Ah couldn't help but shout in protest. Was that Li Jin Ah's voice? What's he saying? Unaware of the circumstances, Oh Se Chan couldn't help but have some doubts. Meanwhile, Li Jin Ah shouted again. The fucking skeleton knight. The skeleton knight. The new skill. Then what's the problem? Kim Wu Jin smiled lightly at the remark. My new skill was a bit stronger than I expected so I had a little problem controlling the power. You say it's a small problem, I almost got killed by that skeleton knight. Damn, if it was two monsters like that. Li Jin Ah who had just been shouting at Kim Wu Jin, suddenly shivered. I don't fully know what's going on, but it doesn't seem like it's a big deal anyway. It's just some research and data collection has anything special happened while we were gone. Something special did happen a big event has appeared. Kim Wu Jin was not surprised by Oh Se Chan's words. An A rank 3 floor dungeon has appeared in Yuido. He had expected that there would be a big event after all. Can I participate? The important thing was whether he could take part in the event or not. Oh Se Chan gave him a simple reply. Honestly, there was nothing that I could do three floors and completely different from the one floors and two floors maybe you understand. From Kim Wu Jin's perspective, this was already something that he had expected. It's natural. It is impossible for just anyone to participate in an A three floor dungeon. Especially the first attack. The competition for the bidding on the first attack is always the most fierce. This could be seen from the fact that the dungeons that Kim Wu Jin or Isaac Ivanov had access to were those that had been failed numerous times or that contained monsters that were difficult to defeat. There is time until the attack, so we can find a way to enter. Even so Kim Wu Jin didn't intend to give up. Because this dungeon was only attacked once. In his memory, there was no such thing as a second try for this dungeon. I need to get Hercules ring this time somehow. So I couldn't do anything, but a grateful person sent you a gift. He could hear the excitement in Oh Se Chan's voice. A gift? A big guy called the Messiah Guild sent a letter to Isaac Ivanov. 
Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but smile at those words. No more explanation was needed. It was worth it to help the Messiah Guild. It wasn't hard to guess that the Messiah Guild wanted to partner with Isaac Ivanov to clear the dungeon. So you're gonna go in. It's a great opportunity but in the end it's still a three-floor dungeon it's also level 80 and below your current level is. This time, it reached level 60. Yeah, so it will be difficult for you at level 60 it's like a level 10 player going into a level 30 and below dungeon most of all. The Messiah Guild invited you into the dungeon not to help you, but to take advantage of you so it will be much more dangerous itll be hard to interfere. No I'll be cautious till the end. Kim Woo Jin took Oh Se Chan's warning seriously. As he'd said before, no matter how amazing a treasure was, it was absolutely useless if he didn't have the power to use it. For this reason, Kim Woo Jin once again compared his current abilities to the abilities of the players he was likely to face in the dungeon. It won't be easy. Through this dungeon, he'd learned that the strength of the skeleton knight was much higher than he had anticipated. But that alone was not enough assurance. If I want to get what I want from a stage which has the best performers from each guild, then I'll need to get plus alpha. The opponents this time might be more powerful than Kim Woo Jin expected. What was the reward for level 60? You got a catalog didn't you? Ah. When Oh Se Chan asked this question, it caused Kim Woo Jin to realize that his mind had been so preoccupied that he'd completely forgotten about the reward for his level up. Catalog. At his command, the catalog awarded by his halo for reaching level 60 appeared before his eyes. It was giving off a golden glow. A rank 3 floor dungeon appears. The location is Yuido Park. The title of the dungeon is Golden Lion. The news of the appearance of an A3 floor dungeon in Korea quickly spread out of the country to the rest of the world. The maximum number of entries is 250. The admission level limit is 75. The Messiah Guild has made a declaration. The Phoenix Guild has made a declaration. Soon the guilds in Korea began expressing their strong will to attack and clear the dungeon. Other than that, countless news seemed to be pouring in. I heard a piece of news saying that the Korean government would allow the top five guilds to participate in the attack, is that true? No, why are they giving it to foreigners when it's in Korea? Did the government get paid again? You should look at the situation realistically it has space for 250 people, 250. Could you find 250 players in Korea who could clear an A3 floor dungeon? That's right it might be better for us to open our doors than force it and fail then we'll still benefit from it late there is no loss. Then all those famous guys will gather together, right? From news regarding the top 5 guilds discussing with the government regarding the attack, to news about which famous players would be participating in the attack. But the most intense news of all was. Breaking news. Isaac Ivanov is participating. What? Is this real? Except the news that he would be participating in the attack on the Golden Lion dungeon, there was practically no other news about Isaac Ivanov. Moreover, his participation wasn't simply participation. The Messiah Guild were the ones who sent Isaac Ivanov a letter. The one who requested his participation was not Isaac Ivanov, but the Messiah Guild. It was revealed that it was the Messiah Guild who had asked Isaac Ivanov to participate in the dungeon. It was the first time that the Messiah Guild had asked for another player's help in a dungeon that they had never attempted before. Isaac Ivanov's Three Floor Dungeon Debut is the Messiah Guild trying to raise Isaac Ivanov to be another savior? Moreover, the fact that this would be the first time that Isaac Ivanov had ever participated in a three-floor dungeon proved that the Messiah Guild held him in higher regard than any other player. This was terribly surprising to all of those who knew the Messiah Guild because the Messiah Guild was known for its cold treatment to any player who was not a member of their guild. Damn it! When Park Yongwon heard the news, he was understandably upset. How much did I spend on him? He couldn't feel good when the world was filled with news about Isaac Ivanov and the Messiah Guild when he was the one who had spent a lot of money to get Isaac Ivanov's name. Are the Messiah Guild bastards doing this because they know I'm reaching out to Isaac Ivanov? Park Yongwon could not help but wonder if the Messiah Guild was only acting this way to foil his plans. No way I don't think so. Of course, Park Yongwon knew that his doubts were not completely impossible. 
It's just that the timing isn't right I don't think that the Messiah Guild is trying to kill me yet and only Isaac Ivanov and I know of our deal. Park Yongwan felt that it was all a coincidence. Was Isaac Ivanov the one who spread the information himself? Chapter, 120 He is quite good at spreading information. While looking at the article on Isaac Ivanov, Kim Woojin smiled slightly. The moment the information spread about Park Yongwan contacting Isaac Ivanov, the Messiah Guild moved immediately. He recalled the conversation with Oh Se-chan in his mind. At that time Oh Se-chan had told Kim Woojin that he would leak the fact that Park Yongwan was contacting Isaac Ivanov to the Messiah Guild. The price for ransom always increases when there's a competitor. The reason of course, was to raise Isaac Ivanov's value. And as a result of that, the Skeleton Knight skill and an entry to the new Golden Lion dungeon had been obtained easily. Everything is perfect so far. Kim Woo Jin didn't think that the situation could get any better than it currently was. And now there was only one other task that he had to do. All that matters now is whether I can clear it or not. Would Kim Woo Jin be able to grab hold of the golden opportunity that had been placed right in front of him? In the face of that question, Kim Woo Jin looked at the skill window in front of his eyes. Berserker. Rank, F. Effect, transform a summoned undead monster into a berserker. When he saw it, Kim Woo Jin closed his eyes and began to think deeply. It wouldn't be easy to clear the dungeon. It won't be easy to stop myself from standing out too much. Players were often referred to as the chosen ones. In a way, this statement wasn't wrong. The fact that they had become a player was in itself the greatest benefit that a player could ever hope for. It was similar to winning the lottery. In the world, having a large sum of money wasn't extremely rare, but that didn't mean that just because you had a fortune you could have a large impact. It was the same for the players. Players who stayed in one-floor dungeons could be considered to have been lucky enough to win the lottery. In other words, their impact on the world was practically non-existent. However, from the moment they reached level 100, the status of the player would rise to an entirely new level. It was entirely possible to change the political map in a country depending on their will and capabilities. Players who challenged three-floor dungeons were those who were nearing that level of power and influence. Every one of them is so amazing there's the crazy dog Chun Daoming who has had five dungeon clears by himself, the Golden Eagles who are the next-gen ace party of the Great One Guild, and even the black members of the Amazon Guild. There were those with various names and nicknames, and those with reputations similar to famous celebrities. Of course, since it was an A-rank three-floor dungeon and not a regular three-floor dungeon, it was natural for the participants to be famous players. But this is a bit bad the best players here are only level 70 aren't they? However, even when considering that, the faces of those who were gathering to participate in the Golden Lion dungeon were quite diverse. And it's a Korean dungeon why are there so many foreigners? Moreover, there were many who had a hard time understanding why there was such a large proportion of foreigners. In this era where every a dungeon was seen as a major national asset, most countries would try to fill and clear a rank dungeons with members of their own nationality as much as possible. However, for this Golden Lion dungeon, 130 of the participants were foreigners. What's the Messiah Guild thinking? This was because the Messiah Guild who held virtually all the rights to the Golden Lion dungeon, had opened up the doors for this dungeon. When they opened the doors, it was natural for the talented guilds to stick together. Well, this would definitely increase our chances of clearing it. Of course, this was the best way to increase the success rate of the dungeon attack. Wasn't it more helpful and in the advantage of the national interest to challenge the dungeon with players who were skilled rather than simply deciding to use players from the same nationality? The public opinion was also very good. The main consensus was that the Messiah Guild had made a wise choice when looking at the situation from the grand scale. This isn't like those guys. However, Li Jina's thoughts were different. Hey, what do you think? They must be up to something. And it was the same for Kim Woo Jin. They are completely different members from my memory. The players who were participating in the Golden Lion Dungeon this time were completely different from Kim Woo Jin's memory. The top five guilds participated, but not to this extent. Compared to how many there were this time, the number from that time appeared quite pitiful. 
It was not an exaggeration. Even if they didn't belong to the top five guilds, most of the foreign members taking part in the dungeon were ones who had received the support of the government. Even if these people had murdered people, the government had stepped in to make it possible for them to enter. It's obviously because of me. There was no reason for him to look around for the reason it was clearly his presence that had completely changed the history that he remembered. Which means they definitely have something planned for me. There was a reason for everything, and the reason for this change was likely to be Isaac Ivanov. Therefore, Kim Woojin heightened his focus to the peak. Are they trying to kill us? Ha! Huh. They have the mind to remove the growing buds before they bloom. Li Jina posed a few questions to him. Something like that. Kim Wu Jin's answer brought another few questions to Li Jin Ahs mind. What if they really want to kill them? If so, can Kim Wu Jin really survive against them? It was an important concern. If Kim Wu Jin didn't think he could do it, he probably would have avoided the dungeon at all costs. Hmm. Soon after, a thought came to Kim Wu Jin's mind. If they intend to kill me, I hope they bring a good item chances like this don't come to players easily. It was then. We're here. The vehicle had arrived at their destination. There's an hour until it's time to start the attack. Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin both responded after that. The Svidaniya, goodbye. With those two words, they opened the car door and walked out. It's Isaac. It's Isaac Ivanov. At that moment cheers began erupting around Yudo Park. It was a sign that the dungeon attack was just around the corner. Even though it was October, Yudo Park was filled with people as though it was the time when the cherry blossom trees were in full bloom. Wow! It's filled with famous players that I've only seen on my smartphone. Look over there. The cars the players have in the parking lot are no joke. That time in Busan can't compare to this those aren't mass-produced cars, they were specially made by the car manufacturers. Now that I think about it, wasn't there a story that there was even a light car in the player parking lot when they attacked the A dungeon in Busan? Hey, that's ridiculous which player who could attack an A-ranked dungeon would drive a light car. That's probably just a rumor. No, I'm sure there was a post on the internet showing it parked among all the other expensive cars. It must be fake even if you didn't have a choice, no one would make a fool of themselves like that. It wasn't just a few people, there was a larger crowd who were there to catch a glimpse of the famous players. Of course, there was a player that they anticipated more than the others. Hey, isn't that the Russian embassy's car over there? Really? Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Isaac Ivanov Yudo Park which was filled with people began cheering the same way they cheered for the recognized heroes and players of the Messiah Guild. The cheering was intense. Isaac Ivanov. I sent you choco pies. I sent two. Me too. There were many different cheers that sounded loudly in Yudo Park, they even managed to pierce through the tent near the dungeon gate that had been built for the players. I think Isaac arrived. Thanks to that three players, two men and a woman, who were facing another man, learned of his arrival. Then let's wrap up this discussion it would be troublesome if it was heard by someone else so Isaac Ivanov has the item called Van Gogh's bracelet, right? Yes. So you suddenly came to us before the dungeon attack starts and told us information that has not even been released to the public to get us to kill him and take the bracelet? The Asian man who asked this question revealed creepy fangs in his mouth. I just gave you some information that might be helpful. The gentle-looking man in front of them just gave a smile before he continued speaking. But it's not rare for a rookie player entering a three-floor dungeon for the first time to not be able to handle it. The man got up from his seat, finishing his remark. Well then I wish you success in clearing the dungeon. After he left, the other three players also got up from their seats and headed in different directions. But the eyes of the three were the same. I can at least get a legendary item. They were the eyes of a treasure hunter who had just received a treasure map. Chapter, 121 250 players, gathered from all over the world, were greeted by the sight of a desert-like sand field that had trees growing above it, as soon as they entered the dungeon. A forest on a desert. It was an environment that was naturally impossible to see in reality. 
however none of the players there were very surprised by this unrealistic sight before them. This will be a pain in the ass. Because no matter what the environment was, this was still a dungeon. It won't be easy to fight. Right, and it would be even more troublesome if there are monsters who live in the trees. Instead, the players began looking around the environment, not to admire the scenery, but to figure out a way for them to fight in such an environment. It was at that moment. The moment the last person entered the dungeon gate, the expected notification sounded in their ears. Hunt the red-eyed orangutan to advance to the next level. Everyone made a face as they heard the conditions to clear the first floor from the notification. An orangutan. That's a headache. Hunt a monkey in this place, isn't that the worst scenario? We're going to have a hard time. Everyone expressed their thoughts as they saw the notification. Only one player, the last one to enter, didn't react to the notification. It wasn't because he couldn't understand the situation, but because he had noticed something. As expected. If one thought that this situation was enough to frustrate him, then it would be an insult to Kim Woo Jin. There are some people aiming for me. The moment he had entered the dungeon, Kim Woo Jin had noticed that there were a few gazes on him that were similar to hunters looking at their prey, this was why he paid no attention to the notification. According to my memories, the first floor wasn't really difficult. Also the fact that he already had a certain level of information about the dungeon meant that he really didn't need to pay much attention to the notifications. Without knowing his thoughts, Li Jina walked up to Kim Woo Jin and spoke carefully in Russian. What's the plan? As he said those words, Li Jina's voice was filled with the lust for battle. He had felt the gazes too. There were some people here who saw them as prey instead of players. It seems the training was well worth it. It was thanks to the training that Kim Woo Jin had given him that made Li Jina slightly upset at being treated like prey. Of course, if Li Jina had heard Kim Woo Jin's thought then he would have probably disagreed strongly. I don't know who they are but. Regardless, Kim Woo Jin had to make a decision. He had to decide what he would do about those who were aiming at him like prey. Kim Woo Jin didn't worry about it for long. I'll make them pay for treating me like prey. The best thing that the players could do in a dungeon was to unite together. There was no dungeon that couldn't be cleared if the players were given their roles and commands like a bee. However the players were unable to do that. After all, humans were not capable of committing to fulfilling the duties of their roles like bees. Under these circumstances, there was only one path they could take. It's only the first floor, so let's not make it too hard. Let's just do our best. They didn't need to create a command center and structure, they would all just use their own ability and tricks to clear the first floor. If there is a rescue signal, let's all try to help each other. It was much better for them to agree to help each other in emergency situations rather than cling together clumsily. At least the players who were experienced with three-floor dungeons knew that therefore the 250 people soon broke into their own smaller parties. Of course, Kim Woo Jin moved with Lee Jina. As they were moving away, Li Jina made a proposal to Kim Woo Jin. I think there are some guys aiming for us how about we strike first before they come. He wanted them to figure out those who were targeting them and then getting rid of them before they made a move. This was Li Jina's style. That's your style isn't it? And it was a style that suited Kim Woo Jin more than anyone else wasn't Kim Woo Jin the one who achieved his goals by eliminating all variables with overwhelming forces? Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but laugh at Lee Jin Ahs words. I guess I've been acting too hard. Kim Woo Jin's style had never been as violent and overwhelming as Lee Jina thought it was. If it had been, then Kim Woo Jin's nickname probably wouldn't have been Hunting Dog. He was called a hunting dog because his ability to hunt a prey was far greater than anyone else. I'll show you what my style is really like. Huh. Kim Woo Jin wanted to show Lee Jina his true ability. The hunting dog started tracking. Dungeons could only be cleared by completing quests, and there were three main types of quests. Quests to survive a certain amount of time, quests to hunt down and kill a certain number and or type of monsters, and quests which required the tracking and killing of a single specific monster. In carrying out these three types of quests, there was one factor that was commonly required was to have wide knowledge of monsters. Whether it was hunting or surviving, 
if you knew what kind of monster you were dealing with, wouldn't it be easier to handle? Guilds around the world spent a lot of money to buy information on monsters and then they would spend even more to hire professionals to use the information to show their players the information in the most realistic way, for example CG. Knowledge was after all, the best weapon and the guild that accumulated the most knowledge was the best guild. This was why the Messiah Guild was the best. The Messiah Guild was able to accumulate information by even attacking dungeons that had been abandoned by other guilds, based on that information, they were able to raise the best players. Eventually, using the great amount of accumulation that they had, they were able to create a monster named Kim Woo Jin. In other words, in Kim Woo Jin's head was the accumulated information on monsters that the Messiah Guild had gathered for many years. Red Eyed Orangutan it was no exaggeration to say that at this point there wasn't a monster that Kim Woo Jin didn't know about. It must have eaten its own kind. The same was true for the red-eyed orangutan. Kim Woo Jin used the knowledge in his head to figure out the characteristics of the monster. Orangutans live in groups of ten or more it's strong enough to eat its own kind but it will still hide in the shadows and ITLL be much more dangerous than normal when it encounters the players for the first time ITLL probably move from its territory so the most important thing would be to map out the area. As soon as he finished his characterization, he began making his move. Book of the Dead After Kim Woo Jin brought out the Book of the Dead, he took out the slab that was the first page and broke it. Pat. The crushed slab slowly turned into a small goblin skeleton. It was a goblin skeleton soldier which reminded one of an assassin as it was dressed in a tight fighting outfit that was a similar color to the sandy floor. Kim Woo Jin inspected the skeleton for a moment before he put the Grim Reaper's mask on his face. You have connected to the skeleton. Then after he connected to the skeleton, he began to see the world through the skeleton soldier's eyes. At the same time, the skeleton soldier began moving away silently. Chun Dao Ming China was the country that had the most players in the world and among the players who were under level 100, his fame could be counted in the top 10 easily which was a noteworthy achievement. There were two reasons why he was so famous. One was that he was not a member of any guild. The other was that even though he wasn't in a guild he was still hardworking and crazy enough to do whatever he wanted. In fact, even within all the players in China it was almost impossible to find any players who would behave in such a way without first being a member of an influential guild. Therefore he was given the nickname Crazy Dog. Does he really have something like that brother? And now he had found a target. Yeah it seems like it's the Kunlun Guild's Van Gogh bracelet and it's an item he picked up in the last dungeon. By last dungeon, you mean the one in Taiwan? Yeah, the Gates of Hell. He's a pretty amazing guy. The target was Isaac Ivanov. He's not that big of a deal, you're just grateful aren't you glad that he brought a treasure to us from where we couldn't get it? Isn't that all it is? The reason he was the target was simple. But this could be a trap right? It couldn't be that they just came and told us what items he has out of goodwill. A week ago, someone had requested to talk to Chun Daoming. On a normal occasion he would have ignored it, but even Chun Daoming didn't dare to ignore a call from the Chinese Ministry of Public Security. In that meeting he had learned that Isaac Ivanov had a valuable treasure known as Van Gogh's bracelet. Right, they want us to kill him and take it. Of course, no matter how you looked at it, it was obvious that they were trying to get rid of Isaac Ivanov using Chun Daoming's hands. You think I don't know that? Huh? Chun Daoming knew this as well. Nevertheless, he did not care. Isn't the important thing whether it's worth it or not to kill him and take it? And as far as I can see, Van Gogh's bracelet is the perfect thing to kill him and take you can use more than four ring effects. Instead he welcomed this situation. With four top tier rings no one, not even the Messiah Guild would be able to touch me in a dungeon. In his eyes, it was the perfect opportunity for him to become the best. So when will we make our move? It's not just you is it? Wouldn't it be better to handle it before those other guys make their move? I haven't even checked to confirm whether he's wearing the bracelet yet, what's the use in making a move? I'll make my move after I've confirmed that he has the bracelet on him. Ah. Therefore he was more careful. It'll take at least four days to hunt down the monkey anyway let's take the time to figure out the situation. He was prepared for a slow hunt. 
Slowly, with composure it's not like the dungeon will suddenly get cleared or something like that. TL, totally jinxed it. The moment his men nodded their heads in agreement. The red-eyed orangutan has been hunted. Proceed to the next floor. What the hell? Eight hours after entering the dungeon, the notification that the first floor had been cleared was heard by all the participants. Chapter, 122. Hunted the red-eyed orangutan. The emissary of the underworld is impressed by your actions. Li Jina looked at Kim Wu Jin who was looking down at the red-eyed orangutan which had a spear sticking from its heart, like he was looking at a monster. Oh my god. The moment he entered the dungeon, Kim Wu Jin summoned a skeleton soldier and began gathering information about the environment. After five hours, he was able to draw a map on the ground using a branch after which he began moving and three hours later, this was the scene that he witnessed. Is this even possible in eight hours? It was beyond common sense. However to Kim Wu Jin, this was nothing special. There's no reason to drag on a tracking quest. In fact, this strategy was standard for him. Blitzkrieg, whenever the Messiah Guild took part in a dungeon with other guilds, the best way to avoid the threat of getting attacked was to quickly clear the dungeon before the other party could act. Being able to clear dungeons faster than anyone else was one of the trademarks of the Messiah Guild. Proceed to the next floor. It was just shocking for players who didn't know the truth. What happened suddenly while I was eating? It happened during a battle. Ah. So one after another, the players were forced to move to the second floor, regardless of whether they were eating or fighting. Soon 241 players had made it to the second floor. Once there, they received another notification. Hunt 30 monsters to advance to the next floor. The faces of all the players who had advanced became frozen solid. What? Is there a mistake? It isn't 30 on the first floor, but the second isn't this too insane. There was no one there who didn't know how long it would take for them to hunt 30 monsters. This was the same even for Kim Woo Jin. 30 isn't small. He also knew how hard of a task it was to hunt 30 monsters. Of course this fact didn't make him lose focus. At this moment, Kim Woo Jin's head was filled with one thing. Since it's 30 then those who are targeting me will also focus on hunting since it will take a while, I have to finish before then. It would take a long time to hunt 30 monsters, but even then he didn't have time to waste. Kim Woo Jin immediately put his thoughts into action. Kara. Just in time, a group of red skin orcs appeared, growling menacingly at Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina. Rattle. Ten skeleton soldiers that had already been summoned, made their appearance to face off against the redskin orcs which were much stronger than the common orcs and showcased their will to fight. The situation was explosive. And in such a situation, Kim Woo Jin lit the fuse. Berserker. In that moment, he had activated the skill that he had gained after achieving level 60, Berserker. No matter who saw it, they would consider Kim Wu Jin's fighting style to be incredibly reckless. Even a huge battle which anyone would think is ridiculous, Kim Wu Jin would throw himself into it without hesitation. It was as if he couldn't wait to die. However the basis for all his actions were a strong conviction in his victory, or a solid plan for escape. This was the type of player that Kim Woo Jin was. A player who could rationally calculate even his own life. So what would happen if he lost all his reason and descended into madness? The skeleton soldiers whose capabilities were based off of Kim Woo Jin, were showing the answers to that question. Ten skeleton soldiers who were created from the skeletons of giant orangutans rushed toward the redskin orcs while flashing with yellow light. Kua. The eleven orcs roared loudly and charged forward. Soon the two groups collided. Literally. The skeleton soldiers who would usually aim for gaps in the offensive of the redskin orcs, instead clashed directly with them. Crack. In the process, parts of their bones were broken, but the skeletons didn't seem to care. P.U.K. While in the arms of the orcs, they dug their blades which were made of bone, between the ribs of the orcs where the muscles and skin was the thinnest, stabbing into the heart directly. In that moment they had given up their bones and taken the heart. Afflicted by blood poison. 
It was also the moment when the blood poison that had been stabbed into the strong hearts were pumped to the rest of the orcs' bodies. Pop! Each of the orcs vomited blood the battle was over. Even if the redskin orcs were known for their toughness, there was nothing they could do after their hearts were stabbed and poison spread to every part of their bodies. PSSHK. Even if they endured, all they could do was fall to the floor, tremble and wait for death. Whoa! As he watched this sight, Li Jina couldn't help but exclaim while putting his hand over his ribs on the left. Li Jina had fought against the skeletons in the last dungeon to the point where he'd almost died. Therefore Li Jina knew better than anyone. How can anyone stop that? It wasn't easy to stop the attacks from the skeleton soldiers in the first place. And what kind of berserker is that? If you're crazy then you should fight blindly, how does it make sense that they still aimed for weaknesses like that? Moreover the thing that really made Li Jina's spine cold was that they still managed to aim for a place to land a fatal blow despite being berserk. This was only possible because Kim Woojin's skeletons instinctively grasped and aimed for the weaknesses of all monsters. They directly gave up their bones to target the heart. It was also scary that the skeletons would not die even after their bones were broken. The damage that would have been fatal to a player was more or less just physical damage for the skeletons. Actually, among the skeletons, those that weren't severely damaged even began to recover to their previous state. Gulp. At that moment, Li Jina pushed some saliva passed down his dry throat. At the same time, Kim Wu Jin's image came to his mind. If he had fought according to his usual style. He compared the way the skeletons usually fought and the way they had just fought with the orcs. Li Jin Zero Ah couldn't help but ask. How about that new skill's effects? Kim Wu Jin answered after thinking for a moment. It's not bad. Not bad. I think it's awesome. In response to Li Jina's words, Kim Wu Jin began to gather the bodies of the redskin orcs nearby. I'll make a proper judgment after confirming everything. Confirmation. Summon Skeleton Knight. At Kim Wu Jin's words, the flesh and skin of the five bodies that had gathered began melting off, leaving only the bones. Immediately afterward, the bones began to reassemble into a new form. Unlike the skeleton soldiers, a bright red flame began to burn in the skull of the skeleton knight which had dense ribs that resembled armor and a frame that was twice as large as the other skeletons. Summoned a Skeleton Knight Kaya The summoned skeleton knight also made a bizarre sound unlike the other skeletons. At the moment, Kim Woo Jin spoke again. The red flame in the skeleton knight's blazing skull suddenly began to turn yellow. The power of the berserker has entered the spirit of the skeleton knight. All skeleton knight stats increased by 20%. At the same time, the cries of redskin orcs who smelled the blood of their comrades, came from the distance. The sound reminded Kim Wu Jin of a memory. Come to think of it, I'd lost my reason and had a crazy fight. He remembered a time when he had fought as crazily as the skeleton soldiers just a moment ago. It was when I was dealing with Johann George. It was a memory of him fighting against the King of Undead. Chapter, 123 What was the most important when hunting 30 monsters? There were many important things. Physical fitness was important, mental strength was important and proper rest as well as sufficient food supplies were also important. But if they were asked what the most important thing was, all players would respond in the same way. You must never get surrounded by monsters. And that was not being surrounded by monsters. In truth, there were not many cases of the players being surrounded by monsters in ordinary dungeons. If you were to take the player's personal abilities into account, then it was still possible for them to break through the perimeter if they were surrounded. Keep in mind there are at least 30 zero zero monsters here. However when the number reached as much as 30 zero zero, it can no longer be considered ordinary and as such the way of thinking also had to be changed. The moment you separated from other parties then it was possible that you would be practically surrounded by monsters. So it's important to stay with the other parties. So the most important thing when hunting 30 zero zero monsters, was to maintain a certain distance to the other parties. Even if it's slow it's best to move with the other parties if you go ahead on your own it's over. There was no player among those who entered the second floor of the Golden Lion dungeon who didn't know that. 
Naturally, as soon as they entered the dungeon, they had come together and made an agreement to do the aforementioned, so that there would be no hesitation. Of course, not everyone followed the agreement. The clearing of the first floor of the dungeon was so sudden, that the players were scattered all over the place, in some cases even their life and death was an uncertainty. I don't see Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov was one of them. The West group said that they don't see Isaac Ivanov, how about you? It's the same for the East group. If there are no words coming from the North group then he's probably not there either. Isaac Ivanov could not be found anywhere. If he was here, he'd definitely stand out. Moreover, because his style of combat was extremely noticeable, people's interest in him was naturally higher. Was he left on the first floor? Aye, that's not possible it's Isaac. Isaac Ivanov even cleared dungeons that no one was able to he couldn't possibly die on the first floor. Of course, no one thought he was dead. He might be isolated somewhere. The first floor clear was so sudden, so it's definitely possible. They simply thought that he was so far away that he couldn't join the group of players. In that case, he'll have a hard time. Then this is a proper hazing. Three-floor dungeons are very different from two-floor dungeons this will be a good lesson for him if he can survive at least. So everyone believed that Isaac Ivanov would have quite the spicy hazing as his initiation into attacking three-floor dungeons. Their thoughts were not completely wrong. As they thought, Isaac Ivanov's party was quite the distance away. The distance was that instead of going toward the group, they were instead moving farther away to where the monsters were most active. Cook. Quack. And they were advancing at an incredible pace. It was astonishing. Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah moved deeper into the monster infested area, slaughtering the monsters at a pace that seemed to exceed common sense. Rattle. What made this possible were the skeleton soldiers and skeleton knight which were buffed by berserker energy. The soldiers and the knight were killing all the monsters with one hit while disregarding any damage they received to their bodies. Kaya. Among them, the skills showcased by the skeleton knight were the most eye-catching. The skeleton knight, which had higher defense and stats than the other skeletons, was not easily damaged. This was because the skeleton knight had better combat abilities when compared to the other skeletons. If regular skeleton soldiers had about 30% of Kim Woo Jin's fighting sense, then the skeleton knight had 50% or more. Considering Kim Woo Jin's abilities, such a difference was actually quite noticeable. Unlike Kim Woo Jin, the skeleton knight was not afraid of death so it easily threw itself into battle. It would be strange if the hunting speed was slow. Their blitz-like hunting soon accumulated a large number of kills. The effect of ruler of the battlefield has been stacked to the maximum. And as the number of corpses piled up, the skeletons began to exert more and more frightening power. This must be how Johann George felt. It was the moment when the king of undead, the unstoppable monster, was recreated through Kim Woo Jin. It's not enough. But of course Kim Woo Jin wasn't satisfied with just this much. In the end, even the King of Undead couldn't kill Lee Sejun, so it was impossible for him to be satisfied with just a similarity. That's why Kim Woo Jin swung his whip TL, Bu Kinki. Lee Jin Ah. Ha. Huh. We're going deeper. Deeper. How? TL, after my joke this conversation became more. Instead of answering the surprised Lee Jin Ah, Kim Woo Jin instead brought out the Book of the Dead and summoned one of the sealed skeletons. The sawtooth wolf boss skeleton soon appeared. When he saw the skeleton wolf appear, Li Jina spoke with a tired expression. No, do you really need to go deeper? I think we can just hunt here, don't you? Kim Wu Jin replied in an even tone. You have to pay for all the choco pies that were gifted to me. H dash, how? When Kim Wu Jin said that, Li Jina's expression became one of fear instead. As soon as we entered Yudo Park I heard hundreds of screams about Choco Pies, it would be strange if I didn't realize it. Th dash, that. It was Oh Se Chan who took it. I didn't want to eat it, but he threatened to kill me if I didn't, so I had to hold my tears back and you know me don't you? I don't really like sweet say, fuck. Li Jina who was making excuses soon shut up. That was ridiculous. Even Li Jina knew that that excuse was ridiculous. 
Fine, I'll fight ill fight beside that skeleton knight, it's such a monster. After saying his excuses, Li Jina climbed onto the back of the skeleton wolf and shouted loudly. Let's go. At his cry, the skeleton wolf began sprinting toward the battlefield. It was at that moment. Your level has increased. Kim Wu Jin heard a notification in his ear telling him that his level had risen. However Kim Wu Jin ignored the notification he intended to follow Li Jina onto the battlefield. Therefore Kim Wu Jin did not show any change of expression when he received the good news of a level up. The Emissary of the Underworld is happy with your performance. The Emissary of the Underworld has bestowed more power unto you to encourage you to keep performing. The rank of the Skeleton Knight skill has increased by one. The rank of the Ruler of the Battlefield has increased by one. The rank of the Skeleton Warrior Mastery skill has increased by one. TL here the author only put Skeleton Mastery instead of Skeleton Warrior Master so I think they just omitted the Warrior part since there is no Skeleton Mastery skill in the whole novel I'll put the status for Skeleton Warrior Mastery below. However Kim Woo Jin's face was forced to change when he received the notifications that came after it. With a light smile, he turned to look behind him. I should prepare to meet the guests. Pack. Like firewood, the heads of all the monsters that were facing a player who wielded an axe, were split in two. There was no sign of struggle at all. HNG. The crazy dog, Chun Daoming showed the monsters exactly why he was famous. The eight men who entered the dungeon with him also showed their competence as they swiftly handled the monsters. Everyone played their part as they created a stage for Chun Daoming to go crazy without restraints. This was the reason. It feels like someone is pulling the strings. Chun Daoming had time to form other thoughts in his head. Pulling the strings. No matter how I think about it, the first floor was cleared too quickly. Weren't they just lucky? It couldn't be even if you were lucky enough to find the red-eyed orangutan, you would observe it for a while first before attacking it that's what I would do wouldn't you? Unlike the others who were focused on their fights, Chun Daoming had the time to think, and during that time he became convinced. Someone deliberately killed the red-eyed orangutan to make the situation more urgent. But why? Maybe it's because they don't want to lose their prey. As he said those words, Chun Daoming sat on the broken corpse of a monster and used his axe to tap on it. Pack. Pack. It was something he did when he was troubled. In his head, he remembered the conversation he'd had with that person before they entered the dungeon. There, Chun Daoming and two others were given information about Isaac Ivanov. There's at least three competitors. For this reason, Chun Daoming believed that there were at least three people who were targeting Isaac Ivanov. His calculations weren't wrong. There was always a fisherman at the other end of the bait and it was very likely that the person who gave them the information was the fisherman. Chun Daoming had the ability to figure out at least that much. No, competitors are fine if they don't pay attention, their heads might get smashed Isaac, let's see if I can hunt you or not. Of course there were differences. Hey, who do you think would win in a fight between Isaac Ivanov and me? Of course it would be you, boss this is his first time in a three floor it would be strange if he could compare to the boss. Right, then let's catch him first instead of worrying. Usually, people with such a mindset would proceed without hesitation compared to those who would carefully consider. We'll hunt him down and get the item and if those other bastards show up then we'll kill them as well. There was no sign of doubt in Chun Daoming's voice as he said those words but it was not arrogance. If I can't, they'll just take out the dragon sword. It was self-confidence that was based on hard evidence. Well, let's go help with the hazing ceremony we'll show them just how terrifying three-floor dungeons can be unlike the first floor, this floor can't be cleared suddenly. Chun Daoming's lips stretched into a smile. Skeleton Warrior Mastery. Rank, C. Effect. Enhance the abilities of summoned skeletons and increase the number of skeletons that can be summoned the effect increases as the skill rank increases. Skeleton Soldier stats increase by 20%. 14 Summonable Skeleton Soldiers. This was the last status for this skill that we were given but it is possible that it was ranked up one more time I can't exactly recall keep in mind this also doesn't factor in the effect of the plus ring. Kim Wu Jin is so lucky, people come all the way from the USA and China to give him weapons. 
Chapter, 124 In dungeons, players attacked other players much more often than normal people would think. The public would of course call such players crazy, psychopathic murderers. However, among the players who attacked other players, very few of them actually had any psychopathic tendencies or truly enjoyed killing. Rather, many players did so with reasonable judgment. And the reason was simple. What do you think would happen if there was an opponent in front of you who had an item that was very valuable in a world where there were no legal punishments and where the evidence disappeared the moment it was cleared? What if your value and survival rate in the future would dramatically increase if you obtained that item? It was worth it. Found you. Chun Dao Mind was a player who knew this fact better than anyone else, especially because he himself had done it many times before. Van Gogh's bracelet. Telling him about Van Gogh's bracelet and telling him that it was in Isaac Ivanov's hands were like telling a tiger who hadn't eaten for a month that there was a huge piece of meat down the mountain. His heart burned with the desire to hunt. Fuck, why is he so deep? Moreover the path that Isaac Ivanov too was not an ordinary one. If the other players were in America, then Isaac Ivanov was so far from the group that he was basically in Guam TL, this killed me. It was not a short distance to move and along the way Chun Daoming and his men had to continually fight off monsters. Even while doing that, Chun Daoming also had to struggle to stay as quiet as possible as they approached. It took two days to get here. Therefore it took two hours to reach the spot that he had even though it would only take twenty minutes to an hour if he were to run. One's patience would run out when the target was within one's reach. However Chun Daoming didn't rush forward to ruin all of his hard work because he was impatient. What's the situation? At Chun Daoming's words, a subordinate beside him held his hand to his left eye like a telescope, closed his right eye, and looked through it. One hundred li eye. He then immediately activated the silent hunter's skill, one hundred li eye. Then Isaac Ivanov's group, which was in the distance, became clearer to him. They seem to be resting. How many are around him? There are seven skeletons and one teammate. What about the bracelet? Sorry, I can't see it well he's wearing gloves. Chun Daoming, who had confirmed Isaac Ivanov's situation with the help of the skill, closed his eyes. After about ten minutes, there was some movement from Isaac Ivanov's side, and Chun Daoming who noticed this, asked his subordinate again. The subordinate grasped the situation the same way he had a few minutes before. It seems that they are preparing for battle law. Then the man exclaimed. It's a bracelet it looks like a bracelet. Chun Daoming gave a bright smile at those words. When he enters battle is when we'll strike. When was the best time to attack another player? Needless to say, it was when they were in a fight. There was no better opportunity that one could find since the player would be focused and filled with bloodlust as a result of the battle. Rattle. A wool. That's why Chun Daoming's men waited until the skeletons and the red wolves started fighting before making their move. Chun Daoming's men moved as stealthily as they could rather than arriving quickly, they were aiming for the moment when the fight was as congested and confusing as possible. It was a wise choice. We only need to kill one of them anyway. If Isaac Ivanov dies then the skeletons will go away. It would have been hard to accomplish their task if they had to struggle against the necromancer, Isaac Ivanov. What was it if not wise to covertly deal with such a target rather than head on? And of course, Chun Daoming could be considered as someone who was wise. That was why he was moving in a slightly different way to his subordinates. When my men draw his attention, my axe will smash his head. He intended to use his men as bait so that he could launch the true lethal attack. It was also a good strategy that was used by predatory beasts. I'm waiting for the chance to come. Furthermore Chun Daoming showcased his last bit of patience to achieve a more certain hunt. So time passed. It felt like the seconds lasted eternities as they slowly passed, Chun Daoming and his men slowly became more focused as they watched the fight between Isaac Ivanov's skeletons and the Red Wolves. Pack. At that moment, Isaac Ivanov clapped his hands. What is he doing? The next moment they were all shocked by a huge sound. Pyong. What followed the applause was a terrifying explosion. It was the corpse explosion. Ki Hung. Ugh. 
In front of such a sudden and unexpected situation, the monsters that were fighting and even Chun Daoming's subordinates who had been hiding, couldn't help but let out sounds of surprise. Only Chun Daoming remained silent and he was able to keep his focus on the battlefield. Damn it! Thanks to that, he was able to see Isaac Ivanov and his skeletons heading for his subordinates. He noticed. Someone he had noticed them and moved to counterattack. When he thought about this, Chun Daoming adjusted his position slightly. His plan of action wasn't much different from before. While he's attacking my men, they'll get him. He was using his men as bait to catch the fish. The moment Isaac Ivanov began fighting his subordinates and put his focus on defeating them. Fight. He was waiting for him to enter a bloody battle. Soon, Isaac Ivanov's group and Chun Daoming's men were a short distance from each other. Then, just like that, Isaac Ivanov's group ignored Chun Daoming's men and left the battlefield. Uh. At such an unexpected situation, even Chun Daoming let out a sound of surprise. However his surprise didn't last for very long. The Red Wolves had started attacking again. Ah. Instead now they were against Chun Daoming and his subordinates. Watch out for other players in a dungeon, Kim Wu Jin used to live by these words from the Messiah Guild. At the same time they were words that Kim Wu Jin himself took as his own. After all, he had faced more players in dungeons than anyone else. I knew someone was coming. So it was only natural that he would have plans in place for if someone truly came to attack. Chun Daoming's approach had been noticed from the start. Crazy dog. In all honesty, it wasn't a very threatening opponent. If he wanted to deal with him, he could at any time, but Kim Wu Jin didn't do so. I often used this as bait. This was because there was still a high chance that a third party was using Chun Daoming as bait to gain information on his abilities or weaknesses. In such a situation, why would he deliberately fight Chun Daoming? It couldn't have happened unless Kim Wu Jin had applied the berserker skill to himself which in itself was impossible. That was the reason he left Chun Daoming to fight the monsters. First off I need to check if there's really a fisherman. If there were any forces that used Chun Daoming as bait then they would also respond to the sudden situation and move away. This would leave a trace. At the same time, he would be able to buy some time. Tracking an ambush was not easy. Could one easily track someone else in a place that was filled with monsters and prepare an ambush easily? This was not something that could be done in an hour or two. And if they were forced to repeat these actions three to four times then the fishermen would grow tired of it and be forced to leave. And if there's no fishermen. And if, contrary to Kim Wu Jin's expectations, Chun Daoming and his group came here alone, then the solution would be even simpler. I'll just deal with them. He would just eat the delicious bait at the right time. Pack. Pack. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin clapped again. Kuang. Immediately after, the corpses that he had placed in the vicinity exploded, scattering blood and body parts which exuded a strong smell, everywhere. Ki Hung. Kuo. The monsters around began reacting to such loud sounds and bloody smell. It was at that moment that the war progress was reset once again. Your level has increased. This was a notification that players were usually happy to receive. Damn it! However at this sound, Chun Daoming became more furious. Isaac, you son of a bitch! The cause was Isaac Ivanov. How many times did he trick me? After failing the first time, Chun Daoming didn't give up and instead prepared to hunt again TL, Chun Daoming fighting. Of course, it took more time the second time. It wasn't easy to hunt a startled prey, and it was even harder to hunt a prey who ran away like that. The second try failed as well. It was the same. As soon as Chun Daoming and his men approached, Isaac Ivanov passed the monsters over to them and left the battlefield. Same for the third time and the fourth time. It was not wise for them to attack openly nor was it possible for them to catch them in a trap. The failures were repeated continuously, and the number of monsters that Isaac Ivanov left for them to deal with increased each time. His level up not so long ago was a result of these battles. I will cut off your head after I take off all your limbs. This was why Chun Daoming's eyes were filled with poison. It was then. There are 99 monsters remaining. 
There was a notification. Boss. One of his men shouted when they saw the notification and Chun Daoming waved his hand to tell them that there was no reason to say any more. There isn't much time left. Of 30 zero zero monsters, only 99 remained to be hunted. This meant that sooner rather than later, the second floor would be cleared. No, why is it so fast? It was surprisingly fast considering that it was only six days since they had entered the second floor. This meant that around five zero zero monsters were hunted every day. Even if there weren't any strong monsters, this. Even if there weren't any boss class monsters powerful enough to make them make sacrifices, this was still an abnormal speed. Is there really something going on? Of course, the first thing that came to Chun Daoming's mind, was the first floor which had been cleared in only eight hours. This is driving me crazy. Chun Daoming was convinced that there was a party that was overwhelmingly powerful. I must get Van Gogh's bracelet before they get it. And as that conviction grew, so did his anxiety. It'll be more troublesome after we reach the third floor. If they moved to the third floor then he would have to start hunting Isaac Ivanov again all the way from the start. Additionally, in the third floor there would be many more people aiming to obtain the bracelet that he had in his possession. However he didn't think it would be easy for him to catch Isaac Ivanov who escaped from battle like a rat. TCH. Eventually Chun Daoming clicked his tongue. It was at that moment. PUK. An arrow that flew from out of nowhere, pierced the eye of one of Chun Daoming's men. Ha! Huh. In the face of the sudden attack, Chun Daoming and his men were shocked. Ah! Uh. Apart from being shocked however, their bodies naturally began preparing for attacks from the direction in which the arrow flew. Their actions showed that they were instinctively prepared to do battle now. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin attacked from the other direction. Shwick. The moment they faced the direction of the arrows, Kim Woo Jin's skeletons appeared behind them. Kia. Leading the charge was a skeleton knight riding a sawtooth wolf skeleton. It was not just one, but two skeleton knights that charged toward Chun Daomin and his men. Their skulls blazed yellow with berserker's madness. Chun Daoming and his men noticed the knight's arrival after one of his subordinates was stabbed through the head with a spear, leaving a hole that one could look through. Fight! When he saw that, Chun Daoming announced the start of the battle, and when they heard it, his men began to take up their respective roles. The fighters rushed to meet the skeletons, the silent hunters quickly climbed trees and there were no healers. The healers had been shot in the eye with an arrow at the start or stabbed in the head by a skeleton knight. He wants to end it here. Chun Daoming, who grit his teeth as he realized this fact, approached one of the skeleton knights. Right, I will end it here. Chun Daoming rushed forward to destroy the knight's skull with the axe in his hand. There was no hesitation as Chun Daoming moved to attack. The skeleton knight, which was filled with madness, had no intentions to reject the incoming Chun Daoming. Before long, the two collided. Oh! Li Jina who was watching this scene from afar couldn't help but exclaim. The crazy dog has met his owner today. It was not something that ordinary people could ever understand. Wasn't the crazy dog Chun Daoming one of the top talents in three-floor dungeons that even the great Kunlun guild would be hesitant to touch in a dungeon? Wasn't it only a skeleton knight that Kim Woo Jin summoned that was dealing with him? But Li Jina was still convinced, although normal people of course wouldn't be able to understand the standards of players. He can't win unless he takes out those legendary items he probably has in his inventory for sure. The skeleton knight was stronger than Chun Daoming. This conviction became a reality. Clang. After exchanging more than ten blows between them, Chun Daoming took a few steps backward, his face hard. Wh dash, what is this? Chun Dao MNG who had faced many monsters could not understand. How could a summon skeleton fight like this? The combat capabilities of the skeleton knight were ridiculously high. This was a fact. It's reading all my attacks. The skeleton knight was reading all of Chun Daoming's attacks and aiming for the gaps. Reading them and picking the best spots. After reading the attack, it would move its body so that the attacks would land where it wanted them to. This way the areas that had less damage were put forward. It responded to the attacks perfectly. 
At the same time, it counterattacks immediately. And as it received the attack from him, it would immediately attack Chun Daoming using the gap that it had found. This was beyond the level of reading an equation, it was instead answering the equation correctly. This was a high level skill that should have been impossible to find in a monster. And that spear. Above all, the spear that the skeleton held in its hands was much more powerful than he had initially expected. This was evidenced by the few holes that were in Chun Daoming's armor after only a short engagement. It ended up being only holes in his armor because Chun Daoming had an innate sense of combat that helped him attack or retreat. It's not a normal spear. Unfortunately, Chun Daoming's reflections ended there. The Manic Skeleton Knight did not intend to give him a long time to recover. The same was true for the Skeleton Wolf that the Knight rode on. Pot. The Skeleton Wolf hit stomped on the ground and pounced forward as the Skeleton Knight aimed the spear toward Chun Daoming. As soon as he saw it approaching, Chun Daoming no longer hesitated. Inventory. He opened his inventory and retrieved a sword. A translucent sword was revealed. Dragon Abyss. The translucent sword began to be filled with white light following Chun Daoming's cry. Li Jina who was watching this couldn't help but exclaim. WH dash, what's that? On the other hand, Kim Wu Jin smiled. Heavenly Dragon Sword. The Heavenly Dragon Sword. So this is where we meet. Before he returned to the past it had been one of Kim Wu Jin's best companions. Chapter, 125. Among the players, of course it was the savior Li Seijun who owned the most legendary skill and items. To help him save the world, members of the Messiah Guild constantly risked their lives to help him find legendary skills and items. Then if you wanted to choose the player who came in second, of course it would have to be the king of undead Johann George. Being Li Seijun's only rival, he exploited that and made use of all those who came under him after being suppressed by the other side. So who was the third? Opinions would begin diverging at this point. There were many who boasted the number of legendaries that they had. And of course the hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin would never reveal just how many he had in his possession to others and would instead say he didn't have as many. But it was impossible to know exactly. I had a lot of items at that time but. Naturally, before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin had possessed so many legendary items that a normal player might not have seen so many in their lives. The Heavenly Dragon Sword was quite useful. The reason for this was because of a skill that the user of the Heavenly Dragon Sword had access to, Heavenly Dragon's Will. It was a powerful skill which used up stamina to gain additional damage. The downside is that you run out of stamina too quickly. The problem was that to use this skill, you needed to use almost all the stamina you had. The skill was powerful but calling it a powerful gun with only one bullet was very accurate. It wouldn't be very useful right now. But for the current Kim Woo Jin who didn't invest in stamina unlike before, it was pretty much useless. I'd have to borrow Li Jin AHS energy. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew of ways to use the Heavenly Dragon Sword even if his stamina levels were low. And of course he knew how to deal with the Heavenly Dragon Sword. The duration of Heavenly Dragon's will is about 30 seconds. As was mentioned before, the skill of the Heavenly Dragon Sword consumed a huge amount of stamina. The duration was also a short 30 seconds. There's no reason to fight. In other words he would just have to run away during that time. Retreat. And retreating running away, was one of the greatest strengths of the Skeleton Knight. The mobility it gained from having a Skeleton Wolf mount was best shown when none other than running away. Kia. Upon receiving the command from its owner, the Skeleton Knight immediately retreated from the spot where Chun Daoming was injecting his stamina into the Heavenly Dragon Sword. The speed of its exit was so fast that Chun Daoming was not able to respond in any way. And the other skeletons also began to retreat while fighting moderately. Ha! Huh. Putting all his stamina into the sword had caused a shadow to grow on Chun Daoming's face. And now a question mark was floating over the shadow. H- dash, How? It was a question aimed at Isaac Ivanov who had perfectly pinpointed the weakness of his heavenly dragon sword. B- dash, Boss. Th- dash, They're running away. Wh- dash, What do we do? 
the voices of his men were filled with fear as they requested further instructions. This was because they had realized just how frightening the skeleton soldiers that they had just battled were. However Chun Daoming did not say anything to them. After thirty seconds, a sound came to their ears. Rattle. It was the sound of fear. P.U.K. The battle ended with the spear from a skeleton soldier piercing Chun Daoming's chest. At the scene after the great battle was Kim Wu Jin who was inspecting the sword that had belonged to Chun Daoming. Heavenly Dragon Sword The Heavenly Dragon Sword Memories of the past naturally came to Kim Wu Jin's mind while he looked at a weapon that had been one of his favorites. Thanks to this guy there weren't many monsters I couldn't catch. Numerous achievements, legends and stories were achieved thanks to this weapon. And at the end of the story. He was the one who benefited the most. As he was thinking about the end of the story, Li Jina approached him and said. Sir, congrats on your great item. TL, it was funnier in Korean unfortunately can't transpose it. As he said that, he stretched out both hands. Won't you give alms? TL, Agonfunnier can transpose. Of course he didn't actually have any hopes of receiving it. It was at that moment. There are 100 monsters remaining. A notification came telling them that the hunting on the second floor was nearing its end. We don't have much time left. At the notification, Kim Wu Jin gave an order to Li Jina. Take your items. Okay. Li Jina quickly nodded and began to remove the items from Chun Daoming's men's corpses. The eye of Anubis has opened. Then Chun Daoming's memories appeared in his head. Yuido Park. He saw the conversation in Yuido Park. So it's the members of the Great One Guild and the members of the Amazon Guild the one that's talking I don't know who he is. From the identities of those who were given his information together with Chun Daoming to the one who gave it to them. Then he saw the memory from before Chun Daoming arrived. Director of Public Security. Kim Wu Jin frowned at the emergence of such a powerful fellow. Is it Kunlun? In fact he had already expected that guild to make moves. From the beginning Van Gogh's bracelet had belonged to their guild and Kim Wu Jin had noticed and intercepted their mission to retrieve it. In such a situation it would be weird if the guild left Isaac Ivanov alone. They're checking. Perhaps this was to see if Isaac Ivanov truly had the bracelet or not. Nothing in the world is free. And this was the price he had to pay for Van Gogh's bracelet. There are fifty monsters remaining. When they heard the notification, Li Jina shouted out. Are they planning to enter the third floor without taking a break? In the current situation, it would be better for the players to gather and rest before entering the new floor. We moved suddenly from the first floor. This was because they had experienced a sudden clear of the first floor. Now that they had experienced that however, it seemed that the others wanted to move to the third floor instead of resting. The Golden Eagles and the Amazons will aim for me in the third floor. In addition there were two groups other than Chun Daoming who were aiming to claim Van Gogh's bracelet. Unlike Chun Daoming who had no affiliations, both groups were from powerful guilds so if he dealt with them poorly then there may be problems. However Kim Wu Jin didn't care about that fact. It was then. All the monsters have been hunted. A notification came, signaling the end of the hunt. Ah. Uh, it's over. Li Jina began preparing after receiving the notification. Li Jina. HM. Alms. Then Kim Wu Jin threw the heavenly dragon sword to him. Hook. Li Jina was shocked as he caught the sword and shouted. Are you really giving this to me? If you ask, I'll lend it to you at any time. Li Jina's surprised expression suddenly hardened. No, really why does this feel like a trap? Every time you give me a powerful weapon, don't I have to suffer day and night? Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to his reaction. It's impossible for them to aim for me on the third floor anyway. Instead he prepared. Because I am the only one who can hunt the golden lion. To fight against the golden lion, a monster that left only 31 survivors. Chapter, 126. Entered the third floor. Following this notification, the site that greeted surviving players was a rocky mountain covered in yellowish boulders. It was completely barren with no vegetation in sight. 
who, who. The players, who had just entered the floor, stood there while panting, with sweat running down their bodies. We're finally on the third floor it wasn't as bad as I expected. Right. Most of the players who appeared were optimistic in fact the situation itself was optimistic. The time it took for them to clear the first floor was eight hours, without many of them even fighting. On the second floor of the dungeon it also only took them six days to hunt thirty zero zero monsters. We didn't lose as many people on the second floor as we thought. Moreover, the monster hunting on the second floor went much smoother than any of them could have expected. The monsters didn't flock as much as we thought. Attacking monsters in an area filled with at least 30 zero zero in the dungeon was similar to poking holes in a dam. If you poked a hole, you might end up with more water than you wanted, similarly, if you hunted a monster then you might end up attracting more monsters. However, the battle on the second floor was a little different from that. Even when battling monsters, the cases where more monsters were drawn over were actually quite rare. As if someone was slaughtering the monsters ahead. This was the decisive reason behind the speed of the dungeon clear. The distance that was traveled just by running as fast as you can was very different to the distance that was traveled by adjusting your pace properly. So if the pace of the monster hunting was also controlled, it was natural that the hunting speed would be faster. The problem was that they had entered the third floor from the second floor without any rest, but considering the easy time that they had before, it was still bearable. All right, let's figure out the situation then get some rest. We have plenty of food, there's no need to overdo it. If they needed a break, they could just take it now. However, not everyone was feeling as relaxed as the rest. Some of them had good senses. Dangerous. It's dangerous here. They felt that this floor might become a mass grave. And one of them was already convinced. It truly is a hell-like floor. This floor seemed to have the perfect conditions to become hell. That one was of course, Kim Woo Jin. Looking around at the rocky terrain, he immediately kneeled to the ground, scooped up some dirt and smelled it. There's only the smell of dirt. The dry scent of the dirt was the only thing that filled the air. Is there something wrong with this place? At that moment, Kim Woo Jin heard Lee Jin Ah's slightly worried voice it seemed that he also felt that this place was dangerous. Kim Woo Jin happily explained to him. Because there's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. As he said that, Lee Jin Ah looked around with confusion. Are you talking about locations? I'm talking about the smell. Smell. There is only one scent here. Together with those words, Kim Woo Jin rubbed the dirt in his hand. There is no better stage for a monster with a superb sense of smell. Is it similar to the desert? As Li Jina remembered the desert floor where they had faced the Firefox, Li Jina couldn't help but shiver. The desert is nothing compared to this the Golden Lion can't miss the player's appearance here. It was then. Kung. A huge roar from somewhere seemed to brush past Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina like a typhoon. At the sound, Li Jina immediately entered battled mode and looked over to the direction that the roar came from. Then, quite a distance away, he spotted a golden glow from atop a large boulder. It was that golden lion. A huge beast with a body at least 10 meters long with golden skin, three tails and a flowing mane, generously showcased his prowess to the creatures that had dared to enter his kingdom. Li Jina couldn't help but speak after seeing it. He's doing a good job advertising himself. That was exactly what it was. The golden lion wasn't giving them a warning it was instead a notification from a king telling those who entered his country to bow their heads. He doesn't have to hunt and kill the players, is that it? This meant that in the golden lion's eyes, they weren't even a threat. It was treatment that the players would definitely not tolerate. So what's the plan? Li Jina spat out those words and put his hand on the sword that rested at his waist. His eyes displayed a strong desire to poke a few holes through the golden lion's arrogance with his sword. Kim Wu Jin calmly responded to his question. We're not doing anything for now. We're not doing anything. Good. Then we won't do anything from now on what? To the surprise Li Jina, Kim Wu Jin simply took out an energy bar and began to munch on it comfortably. As he saw this, Li Jina couldn't help but ask. Are you really not going to do anything? 
then what if it gets hunted by those bastards? The goal of all the players was to hunt the golden lion. And naturally from now on everyone would be doing their best to hunt it down therefore, it wasn't strange that Li Jina was concerned that the golden lion might get hunted by someone else. However, Kim Wu Jin was different. He was convinced. It was true that the first attempt was successful, but in fact there were only 31 survivors because they got lucky however, the composition and capabilities of the team is different now this time there would not be any such good luck. Before he returned to the past, the Golden Lion dungeon had been cleared on the first try, but that was only possible because of luck. Now the situation was very different from that so the chances of such luck happening again was incredibly low. In other words, there was no reason for Kim Wu Jin to be anxious about when to attack. We're the only ones who can kill him anyway. Li Jin Ah didn't question this statement. Though Kim Wu Jin's words were groundless, Kim Wu Jin had never spoken nonsense about monsters before. Rather, Li Jin Ah paid more attention to something else. So we're going to make our move when the other players have died? If the only ones who could hunt the golden lion were him and Kim Wu Jin and if he did nothing, then the only result would be that all the other players would die. That question made Kim Wu Jin shake his head. That's not it then I wouldn't be able to set my price. Price? What price? The price of the lives of those who managed to survive because of us. As he said this, Kim Wu Jin looked toward the golden lion in the distance while thinking. Nothing is free in this world. It was only when Kim Wu Jin met a player in the Messiah Guild called Yung Ji Hoon that he truly learned about the golden lion. Do you know the golden lion dungeon? I'm one of the survivors. The golden lion dungeon where only 31 of 250 had survived he was one of the 31. You want me to tell you the story? There's nothing you can't do with alcohol and snacks. Then Kim Wu Jin asked him to tell the story and he told it at a low cost. To clear the first floor we had to catch a red-eyed orangutan in a forest above a desert I thought my feet would fall off chasing a monkey through trees after that horrific experience. We arrived at the second floor but there we were told to hunt 30 zero zero monsters to advance to the next level can you believe it? There was no stopping his story once it had started. As if telling a little boy his heroic tales, he told him what happened there mixed with a few exaggerated gestures and some actions. Then after we hunted the 30 zero zero monsters, we arrived on the third floor right away. But his actions and expression rapidly changed when he finished his story about the second floor. He had finally stopped talking and it was only after he took a few deep breaths and finished a can of beer that he continued. As soon as we arrived on the third floor, there was a golden lion roaring at us. After that, his storytelling remained unparalleled. However, it was no longer like he was telling his heroic story to a young child, but was instead it was like he was telling his nightmare to his therapist. At first. I didn't know what it meant we just did what we usually did without paying attention to how strange it was the group gathered by the Phoenix Guild was the first to challenge following the order that we had agreed to before and the rest of the players watched them from behind. He solemnly recited his terrible memories of the lion. It was a monster no magic attack, curse or poison even left a mark on his fur the only thing that seemed to work was blades but even that was almost impossible to use in exchange for the lives of over 50 players that the Phoenix Guild had organized. All they managed to get from the lion was a toe from his left foreleg. TL, monster as the description rather than the creature. He told him just how ruthless the strength of the lion was. The funniest thing was that after the battle he simply went to sleep on the spot just like a lion going to sleep in the grassland after a successful hunt he didn't even consider the entire group of players as a threat, let alone a few. At the same time he told him just how large the gap between them and the monster really was. The moment they saw it, no other players wanted to take their turn. In that situation, the players had been robbed of options and so they had to make new decisions. Everyone gathered together while that monster was sleeping with dead expressions on their faces. To put it into perspective, a male African lion is about 3 meters on average head to tail with tail being about 1 meter, with the largest recorded being around 35-36 MSO. Chapter, 127 the players gathered behind one of the larger boulders on the boulder-filled mountain the number of players there was 141. But none of them made a sound. K.R.R. 
The sound of the lion snoring from a distance was so loud that they suffocated. Most of the players were standing there in a daze. I didn't think the golden lion would be such a monster. The merciless violence that was showcased by the lion had left such an impression on them. He had completely crushed the will of even the players that had come prepared to die. It's impossible to kill him. It's over. Most of them gathered there were already convinced that it was impossible for them to hunt the golden lion. First. Then someone opened their mouth. The name of the speaker was Kim Hyun, leader of the players that the Messiah Guild had sent into the dungeon. No one is against the fact that everyone has to work together right? She addressed the crowd. Everyone had to work together this was something that was actually difficult to hear. The Messiah Guild was such a closed group that they basically considered anyone outside of their guild as an enemy. However now they were the ones who suggested that everyone work together as a group. The violence shown by the Golden Lion had completely destroyed their closed mentality. Right. Of course, no one voiced any opposition to the Messiah Guild suggestion. We have to work together. It's crazy to split up and take turns against a monster like that. Only one man among the group disagreed. I refuse. Isaac Ivanov expressed his rejection of the Messiah Guild suggestion in English. His words once again caused silence to fall over the group. K.R.R. The sound of the lion snoring could be heard once again. The silence lasted a long time this was because no one could truly understand the situation. Against it was Kim Hyun's job to break the silence. For what reason? Isaac Ivanov responded to her question quite calmly. Chun Daoming attacked me for the items in my possession. Isaac Ivanov, who was speaking, began looking around. And there are two more groups with the same intentions as Chun Daoming. The eyes of the group also followed the direction that Isaac Ivanov was looking. So everyone's eyes turned to look at the groups from the Great One Guild and the Amazon Guild TL, how convenient that they were together. The two groups stiffened because of the gazes. H dash, how did you KN dash, no. One of the group unwittingly exposed them. Hop. It was a mistake. Usually, mistakes like this could never occur, but because of the overwhelming fear and pressure that was placed upon them by the Golden Lion such a mistake had appeared at an unfortunate time. Of course, it was not a mistake that could be tolerated. Ah. W dash, wait. It was already too late for him to make any excuses for his slip-up. The gaze of those looking at them had already cooled down. Among them, Kim Hyun's gaze was beyond cold. Hush. Kim Hyun silenced the one who was trying to make excuses with a fierce gaze before looking back toward Isaac Ivanov. She gestured for him to say what else he wanted to say. Isaac calmly replied to the gesture. I have no intentions of being on a team with a group who are targeting me. It was a valid statement and everyone nodded. As expected. That's fair. It was relatively common for players to target others for their items, everyone knew that. More than a few of those who were nodding now would have done the same thing, given the chance. But there wasn't a single person who thought it was a good thing to do. So of course if such an intention was revealed, there would be consequences. That's why everyone agreed with Isaac Ivanov's opinion. That's why I don't have any intention to save their lives. Ha. Huh. But as Isaac Ivanov said those words, there was no one who dared to nod. Wa dash, what? W dash, wait. So Isaac, you have a way to hunt that monster. Kim Hyun once again moved to silence the group, this time because of the noise that they were making. Please be quiet. She pointed to the golden lion sleeping in the distance with one hand and put the index finger of her other hand to her lips. Everyone shut up. In the silence, Kim Hyun spoke again. Are you sure that you can hunt it? Isaac didn't answer her. There are two options firstly you hunt the golden lion without me. Instead he gave his conditions. The other is that I hunt the golden lion first in that case, those two groups will have to pay for their lives. At the proposal, Kim Hyun turned her head to look at the members of the Great One Guild and the Amazon Guild. Surprisingly, none of the two groups showed any expressions of worry or anger. There was actually no reason for them to be upset. 
If we can avoid facing a monster like that then we'd how much ever our lives cost. It was not too late to worry about him after they had survived this place. Rather, at that moment, in the eyes of the two groups, Isaac Ivanov was like a savior descended from heaven. Kim Hyun, who noticed their expressions, pondered the situation. I have no choice but to choose the second option does anyone have any other opinions? Of course there would not be any objections, so she continued immediately. So when are you going to fight it? Isaac Ivanov responded to her words in a calm voice. Right now. With those words, Isaac Ivanov turned and began walking toward the golden lion in the distance. As soon as Kim Woojin began to advance, the other players retreated. Now that they were alone, Li Jina approached Kim Woojin and asked. Are you sure it doesn't have any weaknesses? The question reminded Kim Woojin of the survivor of the dungeon in his past life, Yong Ji Hoon's story. He'd said. As if they were wet clothes, the players had stuck to the golden lion while attacking in every way they could and after a fierce and vicious battle in which they did not have any regard for their lives, they won. There were no fatal weaknesses that they could use to overturn the situation. At least as far as I can tell, it has no weaknesses the only way to kill him is to make him bleed. This was why Kim Woojin entered this dungeon without hesitation. It's not too difficult. When Kim Woojin turned his head after saying those words he saw a skeleton knight riding a skeleton wolf. Then he looked at Percival's spear that was held in the knight's hand. If it's Percival's spear then it shouldn't be hard to pierce its skin. In front of Percival's spear, even the golden lion which had high defense would be forced to bleed. We just need to set the stage for the skeleton knight to attack as many times as possible. In other words, what they needed to hunt the lion was to constantly draw its aggro so that the skeleton knight could concentrate on dealing damage. Li Jina let out a loud sigh at those words. In the end, you're telling me to go through a lot of trouble all right, fine I'll play with it should I take off my clothes and dance in front of the golden lion? While singing the Lion King theme song. It was a sigh lamenting the fact that he had to play a bad role again. Kim Woo Jin gave him an answer he wasn't expecting. You have a different role this time. Instead of answering the surprised Li Jina, Kim Woo Jin summoned the Book of the Dead, took out one of the slab-like pages and summoned the sealed skeleton. The seal has been released. And the skeleton that appeared this time was the skeleton of an ogre. Rattle. Kim Woo Jin had created a skeleton from the ogre that he had hunted in the dungeon in Taiwan. In addition, the aura of the fully armored ogre skeleton was not less than that of the golden lion. Whoa! Li Jina also voiced his admiration. Of course, Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina knew. How long do you think this guy would last? The ogre skeleton would only be able to distract the lion for a certain amount of time. But even that was an amazing feat. The players who had faced the golden lion before had even been able to tie him down for a long time before they were all annihilated. So Kim Woo Jin summoned one more thing. Summon Golem. The Golem. He summoned another sandbag that would be able to help them buy some more time against the golden lion. Li Jina grinned when the two giants appeared. It's worth a try. Along with those words, Li Jina patted the leg of the golem that had just been summoned. Lay me, Skelly, please take good care of me. TL, like the greeting you give to your co-workers on your first day of work. So what's my role? Am I supposed to make it bleed with the skeleton knight? Kim Wu Jin's eyes turned to look at the heavenly dragon sword that was hanging at Li Jin AHS waist. In fact getting the sword here was completely unexpected, but that didn't mean that he would exclude it from his plans. There was no reason for him to exclude a powerful that could harm the golden lion together with Percival's spear. Therefore he was willing to actively use the heavenly dragon sword. When I give the signal, use the heavenly dragon's will skill. Okay, and then? Then, I'll give you another signal. Right, then I can stab it. No, you don't have to. When I give the signal, pass the heavenly dragon sword to me. What? Kim Woo Jin seriously spoke to Li Jina, who still had a blank look on his face. I'm better at handling the sword. Only then did Li Jina realize. Fuck really. The reason why Kim Woo Jin gave him the heavenly dragon sword. Leaving him behind, 
Kim Woo Jin put on the Grim Reaper's mask. The battle will be over in ten minutes. And so the battle began. Chapter, 128 K.R.R. The golden lion that had been sleeping opened his eyes when the fully armored ogre skeleton was about twenty meters away from him. Even though the skeleton was so large, the lion hadn't woken up until it was that close. That wasn't all. The golden lion simply opened its eyes and observed the skeleton without roaring or preparing to fight even though it had noticed the threatening ogre skeleton in the distance. Its golden mane blew in a breeze that passed and seemed to enhance the sheer magnificence of its aura. Gulp. It's a monster. It doesn't even see them as threats. It was so majestic that the players watching in the distance couldn't help but gulp without realizing. It's not that vigilant. Of course, by Kim Woo Jin's standards, he saw it as nothing more than being careless. As expected. But it was a natural reaction. For the Golden Lion, the third floor of this dungeon was his territory, his kingdom. It was impossible for him to feel threatened here. And after battling with them once before, he realized that these players who had suddenly appeared weren't a threat either. If the Golden Lion showed a hasty, anxious and impatient appearance in his own kingdom then that would be disgraceful. This is why first challenges have high success rates. This was also why players have a relatively high chance of success when challenging a dungeon for the first time. If the Golden Lion faced five or six attacks from players in the future then it would definitely not act in this way. And this is the moment with the highest rate of success. Therefore, now was the perfect time to aim for the Golden Lion's flaw. If the rest of the players had chosen to launch their attack first, then in the battle, they would have done a fair amount of damage, which would have awakened the Golden Lion's cautious nature. However, at the moment the Golden Lion only had the experience of overwhelming one group of players with its might. Of course, Kim Woo Jin intended to take advantage of that fact. Kung. As the Golden Lion relaxedly observed the Ogre Skeleton Soldier, the other Skeleton Soldiers positioned themselves around the Golden Lion. When everything was ready, the battle began. Hung. The giant ogre skeleton swung a tree-sized club toward the golden lion and at the same time, the golden lion lunged toward the ogre skeleton, showing no intentions to avoid the oncoming club. Faced with the golden lion's lunge, the ogre skeleton chose to roll away and avoid it. K.R.R. When it landed the golden lion quickly spun around to face the skeleton that had deftly avoided its attack, before lunging again. What followed was just a replay of the previous scene. Whenever the golden lion lunged, the ogre skeleton soldier avoided the attack with all of its might. When such a scene was replayed four times, the golden lion stopped before its fifth lunge. Roar! Then it opened its mouth and let out a loud roar. The golden lion's rage spreads. Fear influences all directions. Abilities of those afflicted by fear reduced. The roar was an announcement that he was now angry. Kaya. It was also a signal which told the skeleton knight that was waiting, that it was its turn to join the battle. Rattle. The moment the golden lion let out its roar, a skeleton knight approached him, riding on a skeleton wolf. Kung. Kung. And this time, the ogre skeleton also began to rush toward the golden lion. When it saw the two figures rushing towards it, the one the golden lion chose to attack was of course the ogre skeleton. Clang! As the distance between them closed, the forelimb of the furious golden lion collided with the ogre skeleton's body, which was then sent rolling away as it could not withstand the power behind the attack. Kahung! At the same time, the golden lion let out another cry. Only this one was much different from all the ones that it had let out before. It wasn't a cry of arrogance or dignity, but it was instead a cry of pain. P.U.K. The reason for this cry was that the Percival spear, wielded by the skeleton knight, was now embedded deep into his side. Of course, the skeleton knight wasn't satisfied with just this. The skeleton knight commanded the skeleton wolf which then swiftly moved around again and allowed him to stab once again with his spear. Another hole was made in the golden lion's skin. The golden lion chased after the knight, but the skeleton wolf was too fast and they constantly evaded its attempts. Meanwhile, the ogre skeleton, which had taken the time to gather itself, had finally revealed itself to the lion once again. 
And at the same time, the golem appeared in front of the golden lion. Faced with this new enemy, the golden lion's eyes began glowing blue and at the same time, Kim Woo Jin used a skill. Berserker. Rattle. The skeletons that had been waiting at the side began moving after he used the skill. Their eyes were yellow with madness. Although it was hard to make a wound, it was easy to make one worse. Therefore, the most important factor when deciding whether to hunt a monster or not was whether it could be hurt or not. First class players were able to make any wound fatal. When it came to a hunting dog on the same level as Kim Woo Jin, even a wound the size of a needle prick could become fatal. Kim Woo Jin proved this against the Golden Lion. It was his skeleton soldiers who proved it. The moment the skeleton knight made a wound in the Golden Lion's skin with the Percival Spear, the other skeletons would then attack that wound. The already pierced skin would be easily torn further and cause the wound to be more open. Another wound was thus expanded by the skeletons. The whole process went incredibly quickly. In the eyes of those watching from far away, it was as though the Golden Lion's injuries were alive and moving. Kahung. Of course, the Golden Lion expressed its rage loudly without hesitation. However, the Golden Lion's offensive wasn't easy to handle either. It didn't give the skeleton soldiers a second chance. Crack. With just one attack, it would smash a skeleton to pieces. Twelve skeletons had already been smashed in such a way. The ogre skeleton was missing its right shoulder, and its rib cage had been crushed while the golem seemed to be about half its original size. But this still meant that the ogre skeleton and the golem were still alive to disturb the golden lion. Faced with these two, the golden lion had no choice but to grow more and more enraged. Oh my god! Is this Isaac's power? The players from afar were watching this sight in surprise. However, Kim Woo Jin's view of the situation was different. It wouldn't die so easily. People looking at it might think that the situation was advantageous, but only he felt that it was still unfavorable. In fact, the situation was not positive. Though the golden lion's body was covered in blood, there were no wounds on it that would really kill it. Poison wouldn't work. Most importantly, poison, one of Kim Woo Jin's strongest trump cards, couldn't be used. That meant he couldn't deal with it the way he dealt with most monsters. In fact, Kim Woo Jin had actually consumed quite a lot in this fight already. Over ten skeletons had been destroyed and the golem and ogre skeleton consumed a lot of magic power to use. His magic power had been raised using items and achievements, but as someone who had basically invested all of his attribute points into health, he was now forced to feel the limit of his magic power. But its physical strength and concentration has fallen a lot since the beginning. It wasn't that Kim Woo Jin didn't expect this situation. In fact, he had predicted this. It has completely forgotten the existence of me and Li Jina. Since he had expected it, that meant he had also made preparations. It's time to move. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin signaled to Li Jina who was waiting. Siba. Li Jina let out a shout and it was unclear whether he was cursing or just shouting, as he activated the skill of the Heavenly Dragon Sword in his hands. Heavenly Dragon's Will. The moment the skill was activated, the translucent sword began filling up with white light. All stamina has been consumed. Then he heard a notification. Without paying attention to it, he began rushing toward the Golden Lion. Kara. However, the Golden Lion did not even look at Li Jina. No, it hadn't noticed him. With the ogre skeleton and the golem charging back and forth in front of it, the skeleton knight riding the skeleton wolf. Hovered around it looking for an opportunity and the skeleton soldiers holding their weapons to ready to attack the moment it was injured, it couldn't afford to pay attention to a single human. KRR. This way, the Golden Lion didn't notice Li Jina until he was already very close to it. As soon as it noticed him, the golden lion swiped at Li Jina, expressing its hostility. Li Jina swung his arm. Puk. Then the golden lion's paw smashed into his body while the sword that Li Jina had just thrown, flew through the air. Sick. At that moment, using the golem as a stepping stone, Kim Wu Jin, who appeared above the golden lion's head, snatched the sword from the air before bringing it down on the golden lion's neck before it could realize what happened. 
the Golden Lion had not expected such an attack. It wasn't without reason. None of the attacks on its body had ever been made in such a way. Now the flaw is very clear. Naturally, this was Kim Wu Jin's intentions. Filled with the power of Li Jina, the heavenly dragon sword was chopped into the neck of the golden lion before it could understand the situation. The blade was so deep that it could not even be seen in its entirety. BR. The golden lion could barely react to the deadly attack. It's shallow. However, Kim Wu Jin was not satisfied. Pak. With one hit, the sword was embedded deeper. More. As if it still wasn't enough, Kim Wu Jin once again hit his fist to the sword. Even though the bones in his hand cracked, Kim Wu Jin didn't stop. In a short while the sword was already so deep that Kim Wu Jin's shoulder was also inside. Kihak. A bizarre cry burst from the golden lion's mouth. Soon after it began to stagger, its large golden body convulsing. Of course the skeleton knight would not miss this opportunity. And neither would the other skeletons. Once again, all the skeletons began to cling to the golden lion like ants that were clinging to the flesh of a dying animal. Eventually the golden lion fell. And immediately after the notification was heard. The golden lion has been slain. Your level has increased. Earned Achievement Golden Lion Hunter The Emissary of the Underworld praises your spectacular performance. The rank of Skeleton Warrior Mastery skill has increased by one. The Skeleton Warrior Mastery skill has transcended the ranks. It was a happy notification, but Kim Woo Jin wasn't exactly happy with the announcement. It wasn't what he really wanted. Kim Woo Jin, who had become all bloody, pulled the sword out of the lion's corpse and landed beside it. You got it. Li Jin Ah, who had been sent flying by the golden lion's blow asked as he approached. Kim Wu Jin glanced at him. Open it. Ha. Huh. Open its mouth. What? Kim Wu Jin pointed with his chin instead of using more words and Li Jin Ah, who finally understood what he meant, pulled on the lion's chin. And Kim Wu Jin walked into it. He's a real weirdo. While Li Jin Ah grumbled to himself, Kim Wu Jin kept moving forward. Hercules Ring. The distance is narrowed a lot this time. The distance to Horus Golden Ring. Slurp. Oh Se Chan, who just finished a cup of ramen, wiped the sweat off of his shiny bald head with a handkerchief. Burp. Not long after, under the tired gazes of his subordinates, he let out a loud burp to signify the end of his meal. He can really have ramen for three meals a day. He is really someone who can drink even petrol as long as it's free. The reason for their exasperation was that Oh Se Chan had stuck through to his words of having ramen as three meals a day. One of the subordinates couldn't help but exclaim. You're really amazing. Huh? Why? I didn't know you could really have ramen for every meal. Oh Se Chan looked at them with a sullen expression. You guys said you won't eat them, so I have to eat them all. They have expiration dates on them, don't they? The staff were again surprised at his words. So you're really going to eat all of them? Of course. It's free. What else do you expect me to do with them? At the question, his subordinate made a bit of an embarrassed expression. That, it hot that you would sell them. The subordinate's words surprised Oh Se Chan. It's ramen, so it can be sold at a reasonable price because the turnover is good. Would it sell well if I put it on a website? Why don't you just trade them for other ramen? Of course the subordinate didn't say those words seriously. No matter who heard it, it was obviously a joke. However, Oh Se Chan put on a shocked expression and covered his mouth with both hands. Oh my god, I missed such an amazing method. His staff couldn't even laugh as they saw him sighing and contemplating something that was supposed to be a joke. Eventually one of them changed the subject. What will happen to Kim Woo Jin and Li Jin Ah? They mentioned Kim Woo Jin and Li Jin Ah who had entered the dungeon. To that question, Oh Se Chan responded calmly. What do you mean, that man is probably showing off his skills to the fullest? Showing off his skills? Yeah, he'll have to show off very well. As he said that, Oh Se Chan gave a smile. To the point where he'll become a rising star. Rising star. 
If something were to happen to the world Savior Hell be the one who will then take up the mantle. Ah! This made the subordinate speechless. Oh Seichan continued smiling. It would be meaningless to end your debut without leaving an impression. He didn't simply intend to clear the three-floor dungeon as his debut. No, it was even more important because it was his debut. You need to do a hat trick on your debut to become a superstar. This debut stage was never going to come again, so Kim Woo Jin and Oh Se Chan planned to engrave this debut into the memories of the world. We'll take advantage of the Messiah Guild style this time. Isaac Ivanov would replace the savior, Lee Se Jun. Well, it still wouldn't be enough. Of course, this could be expected. Compared to Lee Se Jun's strength and presence, Kim Woo Jin was still lacking a bit. Damn it, at that time I should have recovered King Arthur's ring somehow now that it's with the Great One Guild it's virtually impossible to retrieve it. It was then. Yuido Dungeon has been cleared. Oh Seichan stopped worrying as he heard his subordinate's words. The attack is over. Then as if he had something else to worry about, his expression hardened once again. The atmosphere in the room also seemed tense because of his expression. I only have one question. In the serious atmosphere, Oh Seichan turned to look at his subordinate. If Russian people like Bulgogi, would people send that as a gift too? Chapter, 129 The current era was one where only the players could put an end to this game that the world had been changed into. In such an era, the ordinary people had no choice but to pay attention to the actions of the players, even if they might hate them. For those players who had excellent skills, the attention placed on them was more than just interest, it became expectation. And this expectation reached its peak when a talented, popular player, made their debut onto a higher floor dungeon. The same was true for Isaac Ivanov's three-floor dungeon debut. Isaac Ivanov finally enters three floors. Isaac Ivanov begins climbing the stairs of hope. Everyone in the world paid attention to his debut. And at the same time, they were concerned. Isn't it too dangerous? It's just a debut into three floor dungeons, wouldn't it have been enough to clear a D-rank dungeon? Isn't a rank too much? They were concerned by the fact that his debut stage was in a place that even veteran players might not be able to guarantee their life or death. A rank dungeons were so difficult that even those who had graduated from that stage might not be able to guarantee their survival. So they showed concern over this debut. Isaac Ivanov has done it. Isaac Ivanov announces the conquest of his three-floor dungeon debut. Isaac Ivanov hunts the golden lion alone. TL, they always conveniently forget Lee Jinarp. But it seemed that three-floor dungeons wouldn't be an obstacle in his path. Oh my god, he hunted the golden lion alone. He's seriously a monster. In doing so, he proved. Not a monster, a savior that he deserved to be the hope for the new generation. Everyone in the world began paying attention to Isaac Ivanov and began placing their expectations and hopes onto him. Isaac Ivanov, the support from the Phoenix Guild was incredibly helpful. Isaac Ivanov, thank you to the Korean government and the citizens for allowing me to participate in the attack. Isaac Ivanov, bulgogi is my favorite Korean dish. Of course, everything that Isaac Ivanov said was the focus of everyone in the world. Bulgogi ha, huh, Isaac really knows his stuff. I sent him Gwangyang Bulgogi. I'll send Ianyang Bulgogi. I'll send Osum Bulgogi. What he liked to eat had also become something that the people in the world were interested in. So the world began to change with the advent of Isaac Ivanov. Among those changing, was Park Shinhai and her. Naomi Spell. While looking at Naomi's spell in a dark room, she appeared to be very different from usual. The woman known to the world as the goddess was nowhere to be seen. Yes. I had high expectations for you and you've always exceeded my expectations. There was only a terrifyingly cold person. In front of this Park Shinhai, Naomi's spell couldn't even raise her head, let alone look her in the eyes, like she used to. That was why I entrusted this task to you. I dash, I'm sorry. It was then. Naomi's expression was remorseful and slightly afraid as droplets of sweat dripped down her face. That's why I will give you preferential treatment now. Ha. Huh. I will give you one more chance. 
At those words, Naomi Spell raised her head for the first time to look Park Shinhai in the eyes. However, Park Shinhai's expression was still the same. She said that she would give her a second chance, but Park Shinhai was still looking at her with a cold gaze. In the same tone, she continued. This is a privilege that you will not receive again, so I pray for your success. In front of her, Naomi Spell bowed her head again. The world was beginning to change. In the office tell one that was provided by the Phoenix Guild, Kim Woo Jin was finally checking. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 64. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats. Health, 19441. Stamina, 2166. Magic Power, 3235. Achievements, 49. Extra Points, 0. I gained a lot from this dungeon. Of course, he was checking his gains from the Golden Lion Dungeon. Skeleton Warrior Mastery. Rank, EX. Effect, enhances the ability of summoned skeleton soldiers and increases the number of skeletons that can be summoned. Skeleton Soldier Stats increased by 100%. Summonable Skeleton Soldiers 64. He'd leveled up and his skill had ranked up. The Heavenly Dragon Sword was also an unexpected gain. He had gotten two new legendary items. And even that wasn't the end. Then there's the cost of the lives of the members of the Amazon Guild and the Great Ones Guild. Of course Kim Woo Jin knew that claiming that debt would not be easy. But he wasn't worried at all. Kim Woo Jin was determined to get all the money he wanted in any way possible. Somehow. If they didn't give it to him willingly then he would have to take it away forcefully. They should give me at least one legendary for their lives. As Kim Woo Jin was planning how to get back his payment for the lives he saved, there was a sound. Woo Woo. Among Kim Woo Jin's cell phones, the one that had had the longest began vibrating. The caller was obvious. What's up? Because it was obvious, Kim Woo Jin didn't bother greeting the caller before asking. The Skull Guild is moving. Oh Seichan also got to the point immediately. Half of the legendary items held by the Skull Guild have been moved to Japan and funds are constantly flowing out the officials in the Skull Guild have all scattered. When he heard the explanation, Kim Woo Jin immediately understood what had happened. They disbanded. Right. The Skull Guild that had been planted in South Korea by the Yamato Federation in a bid to occupy the Korean Peninsula. It was a matter of significant importance. The Yamato Federation's desire for the Korean Peninsula was not something that could be understood using common sense, and it was through the Skull Guild that they intended to fulfill said desire. This was why it was unusual that the Skull Guild had disbanded. The Yamato Federation could not have moved because they wanted to. There was no reason for the Yamato Federation to dismantle the Skull Guild. Did the Messiah Guild make a move? Probably. The only likely explanation was that the Messiah Guild had made a move. It looks like they really want to kill Park Yongwon. In addition, it was highly likely that the reason was to kill Park Yongwon. The reason for that conclusion was simple. This division was because of the Skull Guild. From the Messiah Guild's perspective, the conflict between the Skull Guild and Park Yongwon were the start of this situation. Eventually it became bigger and the Frontier Guild got involved. The conflict had intensified which caused Park Yongwon to open his doors to the Frontier Guild, but now the Frontier Guild had become a problem. The problem is that the Frontier Guild is too big. The problem was that the Frontier Guild wasn't a guild that could be controlled easily, even for the Messiah Guild. In a sense, this was the right choice. In other words, in this situation, it was better to deal with the Skull Guild, which could be seen as the cause of the problem. After all it was impossible to catch anything with a tangled fishing line. In order for them to continue fishing, they had to organize the situation. Conversely, the Messiah Guild had no intentions of giving up their hunt. It will be quiet for a while but if the Messiah Guild decides to make a move against Park Yongwon again. I'm sure they will be even more prepared. The Messiah Guild will try to hunt Park Yongwon after they'd made better preparations. Yeah, maybe they are preparing for harpooning instead of fishing. They would make sure that they had prepared enough so that Park Yongwon could not even struggle. Sacrificing the Skull Guild now was part of it. 
what are you going to do? In any case, Kim Woo Jin's position was also bound to change when the situation shifted in this way. If the Skull Guild disappears then Park Yongwan will lose his reason to keep you. It was just as Oh Seichan said. So far, the only reason that Park Yongwan truly kept Kim Woo Jin around was because of his unexpected use in the situation with the Skull Guild. Moreover, the reason that Kim Woo Jin had been interested in Park Yongwan was also because of his revenge against the Skull Guild. The Skull Guild was actually the strongest connection between Park Yongwan and Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin was not worried about that. It's just a matter of creating a new attraction. Park Yongwan was even able to sell his own country for his benefit, it wasn't hard to maintain a relationship with such a person. Will you shout I am Isaac while wearing the skeleton mask? Since Isaac Ivanov is known for his skeleton army, Kim Woo Jin will be known for poison. Poison? Kim Woo Jin did not give an explanation after Oh Se Chan asked. Now it's time to become the poison king. He always thought it was better to show clear results than to give complex explanations. So is that the end of the story with the Skull Guild? We'll have to observe the situation for a little longer, but at least it won't be the Skull Guild that we know. The conversation naturally reached its end. Then I've told you everything I had to say I have to eat now. I almost forgot something. What? Are you going to give me a present? Kim Woo Jin added something to the conversation that was about to end. Send the ramen and choco pies to my house. H dash, huh? Oh Se Chan stuttered in fright at those sudden words. However, Kim Woo Jin continued in a calm voice. The gifts that were sent to Isaac Ivanov, send them to me in the meantime, the money for all the things you've eaten should be sent to my bank account. Th dash, that, what? If you eat someone else's gift, you have to pay the price for it. Silence followed Kim Woo Jin's resolute words. Brother. Are you not eating? It's all cooked already. If you don't come now, you'll eat all this bulgogi. Li Jina's voice could be heard from the other end, brimming with happiness. Oh Seichan shouted out as he heard that. W dash, wait. Li Jina. Hey. Stop. Stop eating the bulgogi. It's 10,001 per person keep it in mind. 10,001. W dash, wait. Hey Mr. Kim. It was a shout that sounded more like crying. In South Korea, an office tell Korean, a portmanteau of office and hotel, is a multi-purpose building with residential and commercial units this is a type of studio apartment or studio flat. The last part of this chapter was so funny OMG. Chapter, 130 Isaac Ivanov directly expresses his gratitude to the Phoenix Guild. In a room where the news was playing on a huge flat-screen TV that looked incredibly expensive, Park Yongwon handed a phone back to his secretary after he finished talking on it. The Frontier Guild has made another offer. As he did that, he briefly summarized the reason for the call to his secretary. They said that they will take care of the Skull Guild. The secretary looked surprised. Park Yongwan recalled the words that Naomi Spell had told him during the call a few moments ago. She sincerely apologized and said that the Frontier Guild would repay the Phoenix Guild for what they had done they would also take care of the Skull Guild, which was a thorn in the side of the Phoenix Guild. After bringing the Skull Guild's master to me and apologizing they would have repaid their debts and would immediately cease their activities in Korea. The terms were very clear. So did you accept the offer? The secretary's expression was a bit stiff as she continued. I'm sure that they're up to something. The Frontier Guild's conditions were so good that they were suspicious. Of course I know that. Park Yongwan was also aware of that. But the thing that's most important is the profits that I can gain immediately no matter how I look there is nowhere that I can lose of course, the Frontier Guild would probably use this as an excuse to do something later. It was impossible for the Frontier Guild to make such an offer purely out of goodwill, unless they had all become fools. But just because I don't accept their offer doesn't mean that the Frontier Guild wouldn't still try something. And it had to be known that Frontier Guild was a much more powerful force than Park Yongwan. That was the reason. It's better to take what they are offering so I agreed. The reason he had accepted Naomi's spell's offer. Then his secretary asked another question. 
Then what about Kim Woo Jin? Kim Woo Jin. Wasn't Kim Woo Jin one of the starting points of the war with the Skull Guild? I think he needs an explanation. Park Yong Wan shrugged at the mention of Kim Woo Jin's name. It's enough to explain it to him slowly, for example, that guy's over level 50. Yes. Right. Then this is what we'll do get him a good party to help him make his debut in a three floor dungeon that should take about half a month by then the Skull Guild should have already been taken care of and if we inform him of it after he gets out then it should be fine. Park Yong Wan, who was speaking, gave a smile. Then if we give him some items and give him a high position, he will be satisfied. Park Yong Wan's smile became brighter when he heard his secretary's words. I feel sorry for him, but his best value was playing the role as bait for the Skull Guild but in a situation where you no longer need bait, why would you continue to invest in it? If we want to make that kind of investment then we'd need someone who could shoulder our expectations like Isaac Ivanov right? With those words, Park Yong Wan beckoned to his secretary. Then take care of it right away let's call him in and make him debut in a three-floor dungeon as for the dungeon's rung ka C rank would do give him some good guys a C rank three-floor dungeon might be dangerous for him we should prevent him from dying on his debut as much as possible. Park Yong Wan's eyes shined with greed. For every player, challenging a dungeon with more floors was a very special milestone. But it was only special from their personal perspective and was not special to the rest of the world. Like Isaac Ivanov, he was able to attract some attention before his debut, but he was only able to truly prove his worth after his debut. Unlike Isaac Ivanov, the debuts that most normal players experienced was usually done under the guidance of other veteran players. In other words players sometimes use the word tour to describe their debuts. This guy must really have Mr. Park Yong Wan's favor to have him ask us to help him in his three-floor debut he dared to make us tour guides. Right. Zhang Yunhong. Despite her appearance which reminded one of a short-haired cat with her less than 150 centimeters height and dwarf physique, she was in fact at level 74 and the leader of the group. This type of mission was given to her, who was a renowned among the players in the Phoenix Guild who were at the three-floor dungeon stage. So what's his name? His name is Kim Woo Jin. The name of the subject was Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin even his name sounds weak. But I think he's pretty good the rumors say that he has cleared a few unresolved dungeons. That's funny if he had those skills then he would have attacked the dungeon with his own strength look at me I defeated the third floor's dungeon boss during my debut without any help. To be honest, she didn't like this task. It was obvious. I guess you don't like it. Would you like cleaning up after your boss pet dog? Being one of the best in the Phoenix Guild meant that she stood out even when compared to the entire Republic of Korea she didn't intend to play around with a player in a three-floor dungeon just for a few dollars. She was a skilled person who wanted to leave her mark on this world that had been transformed into a game. Anyway, since Park Yong Wan became the guild master, he has become too political we might as well go to the Messiah Guild. It would have been strange if such a talented person was satisfied with having to clean up after someone else. So what's his halo and ability? His halo is emissary of the underworld and his abilities are based on poison. Poison. He hunts based on his blood poison abilities so he has no teammates. Can't he summon skeletons like Isaac? I'm not sure but there was no record of him summoning skeleton soldiers. You mean he doesn't even have a skeleton summoning skill? I don't know. She had a strange expression as she heard this explanation. I can't believe that that's what he did with such a valuable halo anyway, so when is that guy coming? It was then. Virum TL, it should be a weaker sound but the author's SFX are like hieroglyphics. A light car entered the parking lot that was reserved for players. Everyone's attention was drawn to the vehicle as a man got off the vehicle that was now parked between two Mercedes-Benz Maybox that were obviously expensive. Ah, he's here. The guy who just got off the light car. Yes that's Kim Woo Jin. Zhang Yunhong's expression changed as her subordinate confirmed that it was indeed Kim Woo Jin after checking his face. A light car his attitude is good. The words she spoke stunned her men for a moment. Our boss is really cheap. Survive for six days. After reading the contents of the dungeon report, Kim Woo Jin only had one impression of the dungeon. This is a waste of time. 
It was a waste of time since this dungeon was too easy. If it's a C rank dungeon with 70 maximum entries then it's meaningless. It was only a C rank dungeon with a maximum number of entries that was incredibly small for a 3 floor dungeon. The players were actives. The key point here was the rank. There were two main types of players that took part in 3 floor dungeons. One paid more attention to their safety and most of these cases usually only took part in D rank dungeons and below. On the other hand, if they had confidence in their skills and ability to keep going up, they would mainly target C rank dungeons. They could maintain a high leveling speed and with C rank dungeons they were able to gain a sense of the atmosphere in higher ranked dungeons at the same time. It was routine for the active players in a guild to start at C ranked dungeons and then gradually move to B rank or a rank dungeons depending on the situation. Therefore, the guilds usually assigned players to C rank dungeons first. E rank dungeons were where the players who were afraid of danger would gather and C rank dungeons were where the players with skills gathered in preparation to target higher ranked dungeons after determining which one they could handle. I don't know what to do about Park Yongwan's consideration. Of course this was Park Yongwan's consideration to Kim Woojin. He had given him the best guide so that he could safely experience a three-floor dungeon. But from Kim Woojin's perspective, the problem was that it was not about the consideration. She's the one I dislike the most. The problem was that Kim Woojin did not like the player who was set to be his guardian this time. Hey, you. Jong Yunhong, Kim Woojin looked at her face while recalling memories from the past. I never thought we'd meet like this. Memories of the past when he trained her at the Messiah Guild to be a member of his team. In his memory, Jong Yunhong was a very talented player. With the Silent Hunter as her halo, her bow skills were good enough to impress even Kim Woo Jin. She's really cheap. Kim Woo Jin even recalled that she was a really cheap person. Of course, there was something that was even more impressive. Let me give you some advice before we enter the dungeon don't interfere if you interfere, it'll kill you. What was impressive was her personality. And she was one of the few who were trained by me that tried to kill me. Her personality was strong enough that even Kim Woo Jin would call it fierce. There were quite a few who couldn't handle it during the training and tried to kill me a few times, but she was the only one who tried it four times. When she was training under Kim Woo Jin, she couldn't take it and attacked him three times and even after getting beaten up three times, she tried again a fourth time. Considering that the other players could not even look Kim Woo Jin in the eye after being beat by him twice, it was easy to understand her character. Anyway, she was plainly advising Kim Woo Jin who was now under her protection. Unless you're Isaac Ivanov, there's nothing you can do in a three-floor dungeon understand? Kim Woo Jin simply nodded without responding. Prepare to enter the dungeon. And that is how Kim Woo Jin's three-floor dungeon debut began. Chapter, 131 Hunt 4, 44 monsters to move to the next floor. The quest notification was heard by all the players as they entered the first floor of the dungeon. It's monster hunting wasn't it monster hunting on the second floor of the Golden Lion dungeon too? When they heard the notification, the players began commenting. It's a bit similar though the numbers aren't similar. Isaac Ivanov had to hunt 30 0, 0 monsters right? That guy is a monster. Monsters like that pop up every now and then come to think of it, isn't there another monster rookie in Japan? That guy's skill with a bow is no joke I heard he has Wilhelm tells one bow. You know, if we had legendary items, we'd be just as good. Yeah and we can't completely believe those Japanese. Most of the players seem to have an acquaintance to talk to and that was usually the case. Due to the difficulty of three floor dungeons, it was hard for a single guild to attack a dungeon exclusively. Therefore, Players who were active in three-floor dungeons created gatherings of around 100 people from which they could then attack dungeons in groups. This was also one of the reasons why Park Yongwan had chosen Zhang Yunhong to take care of Kim Woo Jin as Kim Woo Jin would be able to join her group. Of course that was all Park Yongwan's idea as Zhang Yunhong did not even think about adding Kim Woo Jin to her group. And she had no intentions of concealing that. Let's test your skills. She suddenly asked to test his skills which was clearly an unreasonable demand. Usually such tests would be conducted before entering the dungeon in addition, this was Kim Woo Jin's debut in three-floor dungeons. 
He came here to gain experience, not to test his skills. Of course, if Zhang Yunhong truly intended to get Kim Wu Jin's help to clear the dungeon then it was necessary to test his skills, but it was clear to everyone what her attitude toward him was. She had no intention of getting Kim Wu Jin's help to clear the dungeon. Hunt some monsters. In other words, she didn't really mean to test Kim Wu Jin's skills. It was just a trick to keep Kim Wu Jin out of the way. How many should I hunt? Zhang Yunhong turned to look at him as if asking if he was talking to her. As much as you can. Is there a time limit? Why? Can you fight all day? Kim Wu Jin answered the sarcastic question. I need some time to prepare. In Kim Wu Jin's memory, there were two players among the top players who had the emissary of the underworld as their halo. The king of undead and the king of poison. The nickname King showed that they were both respected and feared by even their enemies. On one hand, their dispositions were different to the point of being to the extremes. This wasn't in regards to their personalities as humans. Instead it was referring to their method of hunting. The King of Undead was aggressive to the extreme rather than avoiding wars of attrition, his fighting style revolved around using extreme battles of attrition to wear down his enemies. On the other hand the scariest thing about the King of Poison was when he decided to be defensive. I still remember. This was what Kim Woo Jin remembered. Usually the King of Poison was also aggressive, but he wasn't the most fearsome when he was being aggressive. It was when he was besieged. When he set up a space and covered it with all sorts of traps while waiting for the enemy to come to him. That was when he was the scariest. Even he couldn't help but be a little scared. He would put them down from even the smallest scratch. As soon as one got a wound from a trap planted by the King of Poison, it was basically over. It was better to just give up the idea of attacking the King of Poison the moment he had set up his own territory. That was the reason. Compared to him, mine is still lacking a bit. The reason that Kim Wu Jin had covered his surroundings in traps. Just as the King of Poisons did, Kim Wu Jin had set up a trap in his own territory. It wasn't a very large trap, nor was it too complex. It was simply hiding arrowheads in the ground, inserting a blade between two trees or creating spike pits filled with sharp spears. They were all traps aimed at making the monsters bleed. But it should still be enough for the first floor in a dungeon. Of course the placement of the traps was on a different level. He was sure that it was impossible for anyone other than himself to come to where he was without a single scratch. It's time to start. Therefore, Kim Wu Jin didn't hesitate to put the whistle that he was holding in his hand, to his lips. Beep. Kim Wu Jin's skill test had begun. Let's go. Roar. The first floor of the dungeon, where the monster hunting had begun in earnest, was filled with the noise of battle. Beep. That's why few people paid any attention to the sound that flew into their ears through the noise of battle. What was that? Was it a rescue signal? Wasn't the sound different? If it's not the formal signal then ignore it. Even if it hurt it, everyone just disregarded it because it was not the previously agreed upon signal. Those who paid attention to it were those who had already finished their hunts and were cleaning up. Three players were like that. What is that noise? The three who had just finished hunting, turned their heads to the direction that the sound had come from. Shall we go check it out? One of them asked this question, but a man with a large build and a bow on his back shook his head. No, let's deal with this for now. With those words, the man threw a corpse into the pit he had dug. Cover it properly with the dirt it'll be difficult for us to get caught. The corpse was that of a player, not a monster. When the corpses were all buried, the three men gathered once again. Looking at his companions, the man spoke slowly. Our target this time is Kim Wu Jin. There was a fearsome glimmer in the man's eyes. Giving his companions a horrifying stare, the man continued. There can be no failure as this is a direct command from Noda Hijiro. The other two nodded. Kim Wu Jin always believed that a certain dungeon strategy was the best for clearing dungeons, therefore he could say it clearly every time. The best strategy in his opinion was to finish the hunt as fast as possible and move on to the next dungeon. This was why he could confidently say. This is perfect. That his hunting style now was perfect. 
and it was worth it for him to think so. The blood fog thickens. The fog began to spread among the trees in the forest as a result of the traps, Kim Wu Jin had virtually nothing to do. K.R. Kung. Kung. Even if he just stayed still, the monsters would deliver themselves on their own two feet. And on their own they would be poisoned by the blood fog. That was it. Kim Wu Jin didn't need to hold a hilt in his hand, nor did he need to aim a bow. All he had to do was clean up the bodies and replenish his blood using his vampiric skills. Your level has increased. The emissary of the underworld admires your actions. The rank of the blood fog skill has been increased by one. And savor the harvest that he gained in the process. Kim Wu Jin smiled while feeling a bit bored. He got another one with that it surpassed 500. I didn't think he meant using poison like fishes just sitting there and hunting monsters sit and catch. For those who were looking at Kim Wu Jin, it was truly a ridiculous scene. How the fuck is that bastard doing this? Zhang Yunhong finally let out a swear as she looked at what was happening before her. Even if you ask us. Of course there was no proper answer. Wasn't it your boss who wanted to test him? Above all the reason for the scene in front of them was none other than Zhang Yunhong. She was the one who started this test so it would be weird if her subordinates said anything when she was the only one who could end this. In the end, Zhang Yunhong made a decision. Go and tell him. What should I say? What else should you say? Will you tell him that he failed? A pass. That was Zhang Yunhong's answer to Kim Wu Jin. Chapter, 132 I apologize for belittling you. At this time, not too long after the dungeon attack had commenced, Zhang Yunhong's expression as she looked at Kim Wu Jin was very different from how it was before. You're really good. The expression she was looking at him now with was one filled with anticipation. She was sure that he would be a great help in this dungeon and in other dungeons in the future. There was nothing particularly strange about that. He's amazing. Those who knew how powerful Kim Wu Jin's poison was would be able to immediately tell just how big of a help he would be in future dungeons. Furthermore, poison was a rare ability that could not be obtained or replaced easily. With his poison and my bow skills we would be able to conquer three floor dungeons easily. In particular, Zhang Yunhong felt that the synergy between Kim Wu Jin's ability and hers was good enough to be called a match made in heaven. I have to get him on my side somehow. As such, her expectations were high and at the same time they were strong enough to not collapse easily it was to the point where it was practically impossible to break down the anticipation she felt. Yet Kim Wu Jin managed to break her expectations with a short word. 100 001. The crowd's reaction to his sudden mention of money was naturally filled with doubt. What is he talking about? 100 001. Only Zhang Yunhong had a different reaction. What? She frowned the moment that money was mentioned. She didn't really understand what he meant, but she reacted in such a way reflexively simply because money was involved. Then Kim Wu Jin explained it properly for her. It's the amount you need to pay for my poison if you want to use it. Only then did the group understand, and the moment they understood, they all turned to look at Zhang Yunhong with tense expressions. Ah, she's going to kick his ass. In fact, there was nothing strange about Kim Wu Jin's proposal. My poison is like a consumable if someone uses their personal consumable items in a dungeon, isn't it normal for the party or team to pay for it? As Kim Wu Jin had said, the poison he used was his own blood it was literally a consumable item that used his blood as collateral. If a consumable was used in a large variety of ways instead of just a single way, it was natural for it to cost a lot. Good I'm going to give you money to use your gold like blood. That was why Zhang Yunhong could not deny this fact. 30 001. However, she did not have any intentions of accepting the amount offered by Kim Wu Jin. Kim Wu Jin smiled at her words. As expected. Kim Wu Jin was probably the one person who knew more about her than she did. There was no way he didn't know that she would not readily accept the amount that he had requested. That's why Kim Wu Jin negotiated. The difference in the amounts is too large I'll reduce it to 99001. Kim Wu Jin made a concession and took off 1001. 
Zhang Yunhong also made a concession. 30,001. TL, I literally choked when I saw this. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin had a feeling. Crazy bitch. That Zhang Yunhong was much crazier than he originally thought. Even before the arrival of the King of Poison, players had understood the value of poison. Therefore, poison items always sold at a higher price when compared to other items on a similar level. And even before the advent of the game, throughout history mankind had made use of poison in various ways. This meant that long-term training or education was not necessary to actually use poison as a weapon. Zhang Yunhong and her team showcased this fact perfectly. It's a group of white kobolds. There's 23 of them. They are running over. Some of them have bows so be careful. While facing a group of white kobolds on the second floor of the dungeon, they efficiently made use of Kim Wujin's poison as if they had used it before. The kobold warrior's armor is broken. The only difference was that they were now focusing on disarming and breaking the equipment of the monsters. It's hurt. Prepare the poison weapon. After disarming the monsters, they would poison them and after poisoning them, it wasn't hard for them to finish off the weakened monsters. It was to the extent that Kim Wu Jin did not have to point out anything or direct them. They are well trained. They had a good standard. Zhang Yunhong trained them properly. It was at that moment that Zhang Yunhong's leadership ability truly shined. But Zhang Yunhong was still not satisfied. Hey you bastards, save the poison. That's 73,123 one. TL, she calls them bastards twice, but I don't want it to seem redundant tells her such a specific number. She repeatedly forced her subordinates to fight more efficiently. Kim Wu Jin clicked his tongue at this scene. Poisonous bitch. The process of going from 30,001 to 73,123 one in intervals of 1 1 was enough to get a reaction out of even Kim Wu Jin. Anyway, as a result of Kim Wu Jin's addition to the team, Zhang Yunhong and her subordinates were hunting the monsters at a far higher pace. This naturally increased the overall pace of the dungeon attack. Found it. It's the Black Troll. So on the fifth day after they entered the dungeon, they were able to find the Black Troll which was the condition to clear the second floor of the dungeon. The subsequent process was just as smooth. Don't grab it yet, send the signal. The party that found the black troll sent a signal and the other players began to gather around it. Now we can get some rest. Let's get some rest don't we have to survive for six days on the third floor. After they gathered, they did not immediately clear the second floor, instead they began preparing for the third floor. They looked like veterans with no flaws to be found. Kim Woo Jin also could not find any flaws in their actions. 56 people. Instead, Kim Woo Jin found a flaw in the number. Eleven people are missing. The maximum number of entries was seventy and sixty-seven people had entered the dungeon this time. But the number of people that had gathered now was only fifty-six. As Kim Woo Jin had noticed, eleven people had disappeared. If they didn't come to the clearing signal for the second floor then there is a high probability that they were dead. Moreover, most of the players in this dungeon knew each other so if they did not come when they saw the signal, there could only be a problem with that person. It was not possible for this dungeon to kill 11 people. It was a number that was difficult to understand after considering how smooth the attack on the dungeon was going. There were no threatening monsters. Moreover, although there were many monsters in this dungeon, there were none that were very threatening. If there was a threat, it could only be a player. This meant that there could only be threatening players. I didn't notice anything. The important thing was that Kim Woo Jin did not notice anything beforehand. The players were no fools. Whether it was an open attack or an ambush, if they were faced with a crisis, they would send a rescue request right away. And if they were actives in a three-floor dungeon then they were more likely to send a signal right away. In other words, the attackers were so good that they didn't even give the players a chance to do so. They should be among those who disappeared. At that moment, in Kim Woo Jin's mind, a list of all the players who entered the dungeon appeared and he quickly identified the 11 players who had disappeared. I'll have to handle it. Little by little, Kim Woo Jin's eyes began changing to that of a hunting dog. 
The black troll has been slain. Proceed to the next floor. Not long after slaying the black troll, the players appeared on the third floor of the dungeon. Survive for six days. As soon as they did, the notification for the conditions to clear the floor sounded in their ears. Of course, everyone had expected these conditions. This is the last one. We already checked the ration six days and this dungeon is over. In the first place, the players would have known that the third floor of the dungeon was a survival quest after seeing its name, so it would be strange if they started panicking now. Let's hunt some monsters and raise our levels. We only need to stay here for six days anyway this is the perfect opportunity to do some level grinding. No, rather this was the reason that players picked survival quests in the first place. Survival quest dungeons guaranteed more monsters to hunt than other quest dungeons for these players who sought progress, this was a sweet stage filled with milk and honey. This was the same for Zhang Yunhong. Let's pick from this mulberry dungeon. She too was burning with determination to get all the harvest that she could from the dungeon. But it didn't take long before those ideals began changing. Wait a minute. Hey, everyone, come here. Now was the time when everyone was deciding where to build up an area to begin hunting monsters, but around that time, a player suddenly called for the other players to gather once again. The players gathered and found what he wanted to show them. Does anyone know what kind of monster could make such a footprint? It was a footprint that was at least one meter and seemed to come from a giant monster. I don't know but I'm sure it's not a normal monster. As they looked at the footprint, a certain thought came to the minds of the players. Is it that this isn't a quest with a large number of monsters, but that we have to survive the hunt of a boss monster? It's survival. Survival. This referred to quests which required surviving against a small group of powerful entities rather than a large number of monsters. There was nothing strange about it. In any case, they only needed to survive for a certain period of time, there was no difference if they were the target instead. The quest itself only specified the duration and never specified whether it was against a large group of monsters or a few powerful monsters. Damn it, if it is. The problem was that this type of survival quest was much more difficult than the rank of the dungeon. This is dangerous this type of survival quest has a high clearance rate but low survival rate. And the death rates were very high. Everyone's expressions hardened as they made this conclusion. Of course, Kim Woojin was the exception. If it's a footprint of this size it's highly likely that it's a white troll it's a terrifying monster but nothing that can't be caught with the abilities of the ones here. He immediately identified the owner of the footprint and he didn't feel any threat from the monster. The problem is the disruptor. The problem was that there were people who would not allow the process to go smoothly. As he realized that fact, Kim Woojin's conclusion was simple. I have to deal with them first. The time had come for him to be a hunting dog. Kim Woojin couldn't help but smile slightly. I hope it's the Messiah Guild who are aiming for me. Chapter 133 The white troll which appeared on the third floor and above, had two nicknames. I never thought we'd encounter white gold here. One of them was white gold. The prices for them are no joke. If you managed to hunt one, you could buy three or four unique items. The value of its body could be understood by the word gold. Its blood did not differ from other trolls when it came to its uses it was its skin that people sought after. Gel made from its skin had the ability to regenerate skin and flesh. Of course, the value would not be so high if it was just for that potion. That was because there were potions made from troll's blood or players who had skills from the prayer statue Halo were just as good. It's not worth it to sell it even items that were about to get thrown away would be like new as long as you had it. The reason it was so expensive, was because the regenerative effects also worked for leather items as well. In other words, if an armor made by monster leather was torn or damaged severely, the armor could be completely restored by applying the gel made from the white troll's skin to it. Even dragon skin could be restored. Even if the item was created from the leather of a monster found on the sixth floor or higher, it was possible to be restored. It's the same for legendary items as well. The range even included legendary items. By this point, no one could ever dispute the incredibly high value of a white troll. The only problem was its second nickname. 
Damn, I can't believe we just have to watch a treasure like that go. I'm glad to see it go that's a monster that even players over level 100 don't want to face. Right that's why it's called the Veteran Killer. Veteran Killer. White trolls were beasts who literally treated skilled players as prey. And they're resistant to flames so fire doesn't work. That's not a troll that's something else covered in a troll's skin. This was because the intelligence that these creatures possessed, far surpassed that of ordinary trolls. The fearsome capabilities of an intelligent monster with the regeneration abilities and physique of a troll were beyond common sense. It is impossible to hunt him using any ordinary method. That's why veterans who were experienced in ordinary methods of hunting were treated as prey, even if they were powerful and equipped with powerful equipment. We can't take it on that's for sure. That was why everyone who came to the third floor, including Zhang Yanhong, immediately gave up the thought of hunting the moment they realized that the one they had to face was a white troll. We just need to do our best to survive six days while avoiding him somehow. They decided to survive while trying to avoid being prey, instead of actively going to hunt it. Do you understand Kim Woo Jin? And she warned Kim Woo Jin as well. This time it will be hard for us to help you, so you'll need to judge the situation and act accordingly don't panic. They wouldn't be able to act as guides, so he would need to protect himself. Kim Woo Jin answered her question easily. I'll take care of myself. And so began day one on the third floor. Day one on the third floor was quiet. Players prepared for survival while exploring their surroundings. Scatter the monster corpses. Let the white troll eat and fill its stomach. We need to use the monster's corpses to get rid of as much of our sense as we can. Secure the escape route and look out for any movements from the white troll. Don't forget to leave a signal for the other parties. They made a lot of preparations. And the white troll gladly responded to their arrangements. Crunch. Crunch. It happily ate the meal that the players had set out for it and later it took a rest as though it was satisfied. It was a very calm day. Roar. However, that calm was broken on the second day. God damn it, now of all times. Damn it, he purposefully accepted our meal. The white troll had purposely spent the first day quietly. He had used the day to search for all his new enemies. He'd learned what kind of prey had entered his territory and what state they were in and just when they had begun to relax the tension they felt, he had started hunting them down in earnest. It really is a veteran killer. It was truly an admirable and clever strategy. Of course that wasn't the exclamation that came out of the party members of the Phoenix Guild, led by Zhang Yunhong, who had become the first targets of the white troll. Fuck. Zhang Yunhong immediately gave an order to her subordinates after letting out that curse. Everybody scatter. Let's meet again alive. Like that, Zhang Yunhong's party all scattered and ran away. Someone might die as a result of this, but that outcome was still better than having everyone die. Of course, the world that they had to face after scattering was not much better. Being alone in a stage with all kinds of monsters besides the white troll was no different from holding your breath underwater. Doing it for one second was no problem, but one minute's was hard to bear. Moreover, the other parties could not feel at ease simply because another party was being hunted at that moment. We could be next. If Zhang Yunhan's party ended up being defeated, then of course another party would have to bear the horror of being hunted. Naturally the other parties were forced to desperately move away, increasing the tension they felt once again. Roa. And now the white troll began to show its true nature as it moved even more violently. It was hell. There was not one who seemed to be separated from this hell. The situation is getting more difficult. Yamazaki Takumi. He, who was holding a large crossbow in his hand, was the only one who remained calm in the turmoil caused by the white troll. In the situation where everyone was running away hurriedly, he remained where he was while pondering his problem. It's a white troll. Kara. Even when the distance between him and the white troll was no more than 10 meters, Yamazaki Takumi still maintained his composure. It won't be easy to deal with Kim Woo Jin with him around. Rather than thinking about the white troll, what he had in his mind was his own prey. It was thanks to his eraser skill and a cloak made from the leather of a desert chameleon that made it possible. 
It was virtually impossible to find him when he used his eraser skill which was able to erase the sounds and smells that he made, and the cloak of desert chameleon leather allowed him to camouflage with his surroundings. I'll still wait. Moreover, he was patient. He did not rush to hunt his prey, instead he had the patience to wait even for days until the prey entered the most optimal spot for him to hunt. One shot is all I need anyway. Additionally, he had Wilhelm Tell's crossbow in his possession. Wilhelm Tell's crossbow had the mysterious ability to track a target as long as he managed to hit them once. Then its mission accomplished. This was the reason that Yamazaki Takumi was chosen as the final trump card to get rid of Kim Woojin. In any case, his stealth was perfect. Rather than the white troll, even the hunting dog Kim Woojin before returning to the past would not have been able to find him easily. But things were different now. P.U.K. Kook. A spear appeared behind Yamazaki Takumi, who was holding his breath in a hidden spot, and pierced his heart. H. Dash, how? Surprised, Yamazaki Takumi turned his head to look behind him so that he could see who killed him. The last thing he saw was Kim Woojin glaring at him with golden eyes. Chapter, 134. What did you need to create a more powerful hunting dog? To answer that question, some people would say the sharp teeth and claws of a lion, the running speed of a cheetah or the hard shell of a turtle TL I would say none of those things. They weren't wrong. However, if you really want to create an even more powerful hound, there was something more effective than those. If you gave a hunting dog the excellent eyes of a hawk, the performance of that hunting dog would increase dramatically. No matter how good their sense of smell was, it was obviously less efficient for them to hunt using only that. Horus' eyes have closed. Giving Kim Woojin the eyes of Horus did exactly that. It was giving the eyes of a hawk to an already outstanding hunting dog. He was good, but he was unlucky. From Yamazaki Takumi's perspective, he was really unlucky since, if it wasn't for Horus' eyes, he would have been able to catch Kim Woojin. If he had been able to let off even one shot, then he would have had an overwhelming advantage against Kim Woojin. A desert chameleon cloak and Wilhelm tells crossbow dangerous. Kim Woojin was the first to admit that. I never thought I would get Wilhelm tells crossbow here Tilo knew the moment it was mentioned. Kim Woojin was very familiar with Wilhelm tells crossbow. There was no way he couldn't know about it. Wilhelm tells crossbow. Rating, legendary. Physical attack, 200. Required level, level 70 or higher. Description, the crossbow once used by renowned marksman Wilhelm Tell once a target has been hit once, no other arrow will miss. Penetration increased in proportion to the user's level. Attack power increased in proportion to the user's level. Activates chaser arrows after a direct hit. It's a useless weapon unless it's used by the god of bows. It was because this was one of the weapons of none other than the god of bows, Noda Hijiro. Because only the God of Bows could use it properly. The God of Bows himself rarely used Wilhelm Tell's crossbow, nevertheless, it was enough for the power of this weapon to be well known. Of course, this powerful bow was not what was important at that moment. Anyway, there is a high possibility that he was sent by the God of Bows. The important part was that the person who had sent Yamazaki to Kumi was likely to be the God of Bows himself. There are plenty of reasons to send him. Kim Woojin had already killed one of the God of Bo's students. So from his point of view, Kim Woojin deserved to die. The question was why he had chosen to hunt Kim Woojin at this time. The God of Bo's usually cares about his students so it is possible. If it was the God of Bo's that Kim Woojin remembered, then he would definitely do something like this to avenge his students. But Park Shinhai wouldn't do something like this. The problem was that there weren't many reasons for the Messiah Guild to do something like this at this point. They barely managed to fix the problem by cutting off the Skull Guild so there's no reason for them to do this. And Kim Woo Jin was sure that the Messiah Guild had cut off one of its tails, the Skull Guild, to deal with Park Yong Wan. The Messiah Guild's tails were certainly not few, but it would still be painful to cut one of them off. They had already endured the pain and cut off their tail, in that situation, would they still do something like this? It would be good if they succeed. It doesn't make a difference whether they kill me now or kill me in a few months. 
but the difference between killing Kim Woo Jin now and doing it later was not large. So why are they doing this? However, the risk of failure was also very high. If one considered the magnitude of risk that they would have to take into account in this current situation, then there was no reason for them to do it now. Was there internal conflict? In other words, there was a possibility that the god of bows was doing all of this on his own accord. Well, the god of bows is the representative from the Japanese side in the process of dismantling the Skull Guild. It is certain that the Yamato Federation will take some losses so from their perspective this could be a way of expressing their displeasure. And the current situation gave the god of bows the perfect opportunity to get his revenge. First of all, if the Skull Guild retreated from Korea. He might not be able to do it even if he wanted taught his is his last chance to display his dissatisfaction he probably thought that it would be impossible to fail after combining a cloak made from desert chameleon leather, the eraser skill and Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. When he thought of that, Kim Woo Jin let out a smile. Although I can't be sure from guessing. With a smile still on his face, Kim Woo Jin's eyes became black. Anubis' eyes have opened. It would be great if that was really the case. With that final thought, Kim Woo Jin began to browse Yamazaki Takumi's memories. And at the same time, the smile on his lips became bigger. Fuck. Oh fuck. Jong Yunhong's face was much worse than the words she just uttered. It was like watching the face of an angry cat it was twisted to the point where it looked quite terrifying. But there was no one who could say anything about how she looked. She was making such a horrific expression because her situation didn't give her any other options. Why did we have to be first damn it? After discovering the white troll, the players had made an agreement. Run away as soon as you become a target, that way if you die, you die alone. It was a method that was often used when being hunted by powerful monsters. If they moved in groups, when the monsters found them, didn't that mean that the entire group would be killed? However for Zhang Yunhong who had become one of the first victims, that didn't make her feel any better. How many were killed? We've confirmed that two people were caught by the troll and eight people were confirmed to be alive only four people have not been confirmed. At least two people had already been killed. That troll bastard, I'm gonna rip off all his skin. Her subordinates' deaths drove her mad wishing that she could get revenge. Nevertheless, no matter how angry she was, she would not act recklessly if she had been such an emotional person in the first place then no one would have risked their lives to follow her into the dungeons. What about Kim Woo Jin? Even in this situation, she was able to make clear calculations. What happened to him? She wanted to know whether he was alive or dead. The death of her subordinates was a tragedy, but in a sense, they had been prepared for such outcomes. However, Kim Woo Jin was different he didn't come here ready to die from the beginning. Zhang Yunhong and her party were responsible for saving Kim Woo Jin and helping him return to the outside. That. Of course, rational judgment doesn't always mean good results. I don't know. Is he among those unaccounted for? Yes. That's the worst outcome. Zhang Yunhong smacked her own head at the bad news. At that moment, a sense of regret flashed through her. If we had his poison, maybe we could hunt it. To be honest, when she'd first heard the news about the white troll, the first thing that popped through her mind was Kim Woo Jin's poison. Everyone knew for a fact that physical and magical damage had reduced effectiveness against the white troll. So they gave up the idea of hunting it. However, it was different with Kim Woo Jin's poison. White trolls had high resilience, but their defense was not that high. Nevertheless, it wouldn't be easy to hunt it. There was a chance that Kim Woo Jin's poison would be able to help them defeat the troll but as a leader it was best to avoid those situations where life and death were involved and the only chance to succeed was based on speculation. That's why she had put that option on the back burner. Please be alive. However, if Kim Woo Jin died, then the plan would go away forever. Therefore, in many ways, the best outcome for Zhang Yunhong was for Kim Woo Jin to return to them alive. It was at that moment. There are 96 hours left. When the second and third days in hell had passed. It's Kim Woo Jin he's back. Kim Woo Jin appeared in front of Zhang Yunhong and her party. I want all the rights to the white troll. And the moment he appeared, he made an offer. 
If you accept that, I'll give you the poison you need to hunt the white troll. Zhang Yunhong responded to his proposal with a smile. 301% shall we go up by 1%? Kim Wu Jin responded to her question with a smile. The rights of the troll add up to the cost of your lives 1 billion won per person. What? Hunting the white troll would be the same as removing the threat from the dungeon, you should pay for your lives shouldn't you? Ah, and I will raise it by 1 billion won every time, I don't have the patience to go by 1 1 like before now then, shall we negotiate? It was the moment the real poisonous bastard had appeared. Chapter, 135 Clever hunters never rushed. Whether they succeeded or failed, they would prepare for the next hunt without haste. And that's what the white troll did. The fact that it managed to catch two players in one hunt didn't mean much. Crunch. Crunch. It simply ate its prey while preparing for the next hunt. This behavior also stemmed from its confidence. Confidence in the fact that the prey in its territory did not pose any threat to it. It was the same confidence that a lion in the grasslands, who wasn't afraid that a deer would attack him, had. KRR. Therefore the white troll was confused when he saw his deer, the players, moving towards him instead of running away. Of course, his confusion didn't last long. KRR. Regardless of what they planned, the white troll never expected the players to be able to severely hurt him. Instead, this guy who had never encountered players before was interested in this prey that came to him on its own. Swish. It was an arrow which flew through the trees with an eerie sound that changed that thought. In a straight line instead of a parabola, the arrow flew the trees like a snake before digging deep into the troll's face, right below its eye. P.U.K. A bone-chilling sound could be heard as the arrow stuck into its flesh. But that was the only sound however, as the white troll did not scream or react in any way to the arrow. For the white troll, there was no reason for him to scream over such an attack which was the equivalent of a scratch. But then he realized the problem. The area where the arrow and stabbed him, which should have healed already, was instead turning black. It was a completely unexpected event. The players received a notification while the white troll in front of them was still unsure of what was happening. The white troll has been afflicted by blood poison. The notification was the sign that Kim Woo Jin's blood poison had taken effect. Immediately after the notification was heard, other sounds began to fill the soon to be battlefield. Charge. The battle began. Even if you are a very good player, your field of view is bound to narrow once you start fighting. Roar. This was especially true for the tanks who had to deal with the monsters up close. Damn it, it's enormous. Don't try to block it, dodge. If you try to block you will get sent flying. It's hard to even breathe right now. They were in situations where they had to give up their attention on everything else and focus on blocking or dodging the attacks from the monsters that they were facing. That was why it was important to have someone with the ability to command take part in such battles. The others wouldn't know, but the commander would have to pay attention to the monster's condition and the current situation before deciding what actions should be taken. His movements are getting faster. And that was why Zhang Yunhong was the leader of her group. And there are many obstacles around Zhang Su tell him to get out of there immediately. Yes. Even in the situation where she was constantly pulling the string of her bow, she paid attention to the white troll's status, assessed the situation of her teammates and commanded the group in real time. She's not bad. Even in the eyes of Kim Wu Jin, her commanding skills weren't bad. She deserves to be the leader. That was why there was no shortage of players who were willing to follow her even with her dirty personality. But it's still not enough. Of course, it was only better when looking at it from an average point of view, but when looking at it from Kim Woo Jin's standards, it was not satisfactory. It needs to be more natural. If her abilities were up to Kim Woo Jin's standards at this point then she would not have had to suffer under him to such an extent in the future to the point where she tried to kill and got beaten four times. If they keep going like this then at least four people will die. That was why Kim Woo Jin was convinced that although they would defeat the troll, they would still pay a heavy price to do so. Kim Woo Jin in the past would not have been concerned about it. But it was different now. It's time to stop pretending to be weak. 
Kim Woo Jin's purpose in this dungeon was to show Park Yong Won his abilities and value, and the current situation was the best way to do so. The more the poison accumulates, the less the troll's physical ability will be. That was why Kim Woo Jin stepped forward. Then he will speed up his movements. Speak clearly. It means that he will reveal his full power. Isn't this his full power now? He's a smart one he knows how to leave some gas to accelerate at any time remember the first time he attacked us how did he move? Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin extended his hand toward Zhang Yunhong. On his palm were arrowheads made using his blood weapon skill. In that position, Kim Woo Jin continued. The moment he slows down will be the most dangerous moment that is when you should retreat unconditionally in particular, Li Jin Su. Was injured in an attack from the troll two minutes ago, he just didn't notice it because of the adrenaline in his system you should get him off of the battlefield. When she heard his words, Zhang Yunhong stared at him for a moment before taking the arrowheads from his hand. You, bastard. After a short curse, Zhang Yunhong changed some of her arrowheads to the ones that she had just received. The lives of my team and me are very expensive, so you better take care of us. With that, she gave an order to her party. From now on, this guy is in charge. After she said that, Kim Woo Jin also spoke. Then I'll speak informally from now on. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin began to command the team with a cold but calm tone. Li Jin Su, get out of the battlefield, Lim Hai Sun, move to the front line and Zhou Ju Hyuk, shut up and focus on the battle. There were many abilities that a commander needed to have. Most importantly these abilities weren't things that you could develop or acquire just because you wanted to. It was only developed after you had the talent and was also lucky enough to survive tragic experiences. In that sense, Zhang Yunhong and her team were quite lucky. His pace has changed he's losing his balance so well retreat in a spiral. They were experiencing the best commanding that they could receive at this time. The poison has spread all over his body. So 49 minutes after the battle with the white troll had begun. Crash. The white troll, a monster with the terrifying nickname, Veteran Hunter, fell to the ground. You have earned the achievement White Troll Hunter. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your abilities. The Emissary of the Underworld has bestowed some power unto you. The rank of the blood weapon skill has increased by one. On the third day after entering the third floor of the dungeon, the terrifying monster had been defeated. It was very surprising. Wasn't it just three days ago that everyone thought running away was their best chance at survival? It was like a group of deer hunting down a lion in the wild. That was why. We got him. Did we really hunt a white troll? Even though the hunt was successful, the players were still in doubt instead of cheering their victory. There was one more thing that surprised them even more. No one died. Is this even possible? There were zero casualties. In front of this fact, Zhang Yunhong, who had experienced all sorts of hardships, could not help but be surprised. Does this make sense? This is his debut isn't it? Above all this should be Kim Woo Jin's first time attacking a three-floor dungeon. It was his first time entering the third floor and his first time facing a white troll. Yet he still saved everyone. Who are you? TL, or what are you? That was the only question that came to Zhang Yunhong's mind as she looked at Kim Woo Jin. We'll talk about that outside the dungeon in three days. Kim Woo Jin gave her a smile and a short response TL, Kim Woo Jin smiled at someone. Then I look forward to our kind cooperation. This was the moment that the name Kim Woo Jin would become known to the world. Ah, and as promised, divide the troll's corpse and store it in your inventory so that you can give it to me when we leave the dungeon ill weigh it accurately so please don't try to cheat me I would also like my 1 billion 1 per person the payment should be made within a week after we clear the dungeon. Any later and you will incur interest. What? And you have used my blood poison as a weapon 318 times that is 73,123 1 per use. And it was a very, very well known moment. Chapter, 136 Wu Wu Oh Se Chan's face stiffened as soon as the flip phone began vibrating. He knew what was coming Oh Se Chan picked up the flip phone, opened it and pressed the call button. How was the dungeon attack? 
The voice he used was much more serious than normal. It went well. That's good. It was beyond the level of serious, it was grave. Before that, we need to talk about something important. Oh se chans demeanor caused the subordinates who were working around him, to stop what they were doing and stare at him. What the hell is going on? Why is he so serious? Oh se chans subordinates knew that he was one of the boldest humans in the world. He was a man who could still smile and laugh while easily handling situations that would crush ordinary people. Did something special happen? What's the problem? That was why there was nothing more surprising than seeing him make such a serious expression. This caused Oh se chans subordinates to feel incredibly nervous. The atmosphere in the office naturally became filled with tension. Gulp. Someone, who couldn't handle how tense it was, gulped down some saliva. In such an atmosphere, Oh se chan spoke once again. Can't we just ignore the price of the bulgogi and take it that you bought me a meal? And just like that, the tension broke. Hey, really? I knew it. I'm an idiot for getting so nervous, an idiot. One of the subordinates sniffed in indignation. Without realizing any of this, Oh se chan continued. No, it isn't right, is it? I've been paying for your meals all this while but you never bought food for me did you? Huh. So let's just say that you bought some food for me this time and forget about it. Oh se chan who was talking to Kim Woo Jin on the phone was as serious as ever. And 10,001 per serving, isn't that too much since there aren't any side dishes? Of course, I'm only talking about my own meal I'm not going to tell you what to do concerning what Lee Jin A ate it's okay to even take 100,001 per serving from him. Right, let's do this I'll trick him into paying for 20 servings instead of 10 servings after that, you'll make 2 million just give me half of it what do you think? Isn't it a profitable business? Huh. What did you say? The atmosphere of the conversation switched in an instant. Wait a minute, Wilhelm tells Crossbow. Did the Messiah Guild send an assassin after you? That can't be right, can it? Park Shinhai just cleaned up the Skull Guild recently so why would Shido that hold on? Oh Seichan became one of interest instead of being troubled. Internal conflict broke out in the Messiah Guild. As he pondered this, Oh se chan signaled for one of his subordinates to come to him before giving them an instruction. Collect all the up-to-date information on Wilhelm Tell's crossbow, Yamazaki Takumi, the god of bows and the Yamato Federation. Yes. Uh, right once the information has been confirmed, I will compile it and send it to you is there anything else that you need? Huh. Oh se chans face stiffened once again, once he heard the words from the other side. What was that? You're going to sell Wilhelm Tell's crossbow to Park Yong Wan. What the hell is that supposed to mean? He once again became the center of attention after saying those words with his hardened expression. Soon after, Oh Se Chan ended the call and began tapping the flip phone against his shiny bald head. One of his subordinates couldn't help but ask him. What's wrong? At the question, Oh Se Chan turned his head and spoke. Spill information to Park Yongwon under the name of Isaac Ivanov. What information? That he's looking for legendary class ranged weapons. Oh se chan gave a large smile. That bastard Kim Woo Jin is a real son of a bitch. Personnel from the dungeon management teams as well as soldiers always waited outside of a dungeon that was in progress. However, from three floor dungeons and up there was another team that was added to the group. No, I need to wait for the players to come out of the dungeon, how can I write the article if they haven't come out? I will contact you when they come out. The other category was none other than reporters. There was nothing strange about it. Players who target three floor dungeons were at least level 60, this meant that their talent and the quality of their experiences were much higher than those of new players. In addition, their influence and power in society as well as the actual power they wielded was different from others. It was safe to say that they were superhuman and the interest that they garnered was obviously much higher than others. I finished discussing with the Phoenix Guild as soon as Zhang Yunhong comes out, we will get an exclusive interview yes, I'm hanging up. Moreover, if the person was a powerful, yet cute character like Zhang Yunhong then their popularity would be unmatched. Ah, uh, fuck you is there anyone who would want to stay here instead of going home? 
Of course, it wasn't a pleasant job for those journalists. It would be strange if there was anyone who actually enjoyed staying outside a dungeon gate and waiting for who knows how long for a dungeon to be cleared. Anyway, that's the problem with the bastards that only sit behind a desk and receive good treatment they would never understand such things. This was the case for Jang Wenhe who spent an unpromising day outside of the dungeon gate. For Zhang Yunhong's interview. Furthermore, Jang Wenhe knew what needed to be done. I'm gonna have to edit all of the interviews because of the swearing. Because Zhang Yunhong was known for being uncooperative in interviews after clearing a dungeon. Nevertheless, the fact that there were so many reporters here meant that the players who had entered this dungeon were pretty well known. Moreover, the reporters who were dedicated to following the stories of players knew. No matter what unexpected situations might occur, news on dungeon attacks was one of the most requested types in this current era. It's a player. It's been cleared. That's why Jang Wenhe's expression changed when he heard the shout. Okay. Unlike just a moment ago, he approached the dungeon with the eyes of a beast who had just found their prey. Take one, I'll pack it into a nice package and sell it. Thirty minutes later, a name appeared in the portal search rankings list. Chapter, 137 There is a certain phenomenon. People don't pay much attention when someone is exceptional from the start. However, when a person who was originally nothing does something exceptional, people pay a lot of attention to them. That was the case with Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin of the Phoenix Guild successfully hunts a white troll during his debut into three floor dungeons. Has the next generation ace of the Phoenix Guild appeared? Once he made his debut into three floor dungeons, he began to receive a lot of attention. There were even reporters who were announcing his activities in real time. In addition, the white troll that he faced was considered a disaster like monster by the players. Kim Woo Jin had shown something extraordinary when he had not done anything of the sort before. Kim Woo Jin's weapon is blood poison. Hunter's poison presents a new attack strategy. Blood poison. It wasn't just about the fact that he used poison which attracted the attention of the public, but the fact that he had used his own blood as poison. Is Kim Woo Jin the next generation talent fostered by Park Yong Wan? Is Kim Woo Jin Park Yong Wan's secret weapon? As soon as the information that he was a close confidant of Park Yongwan was revealed, the public interest in him immediately increased. In no time, Kim Woo Jin's name spread across Korea. Kim Woo Jin. How amazing is this guy? Did he really hunt a white troll during his debut? It's been a long time since such a good guy appeared. This is such a great debut. No, but didn't he become famous too suddenly? Are they playing the media? Of course, there were some who felt that someone was excessively playing the press, but no one was really interested in this fact. Regardless of whether something like that is happening behind the scenes, you can't deny that he's skilled. Poisoning with his blood, another weird guy has appeared. Regardless, everyone recognized that a remarkable player had appeared. It was the same with Park Yong Wan. However, he didn't pay much attention to the fact that Kim Woo Jin was receiving a lot more attention from the media than had expected. Are you certain that the contents of this dungeon report are correct? I've checked with a number of players who participated in the dungeon the content of the report is accurate. He met a white troll during his debut and hunted it successfully. Yes. And he took command as well. That's right. What was truly important to him was the things that Kim Woo Jin had really done in the dungeon. And that nasty bitch Zhang Yunhong actually followed his commands. Yes. And that cheapskate even paid him extra. It wasn't just about the hunt either. Looking at the report, it was as if Kim Woo Jin had done everything. It was a situation that could only be described with one word, carry. I knew Kim Woo Jin wasn't a normal guy, but I didn't expect it to be this unbelievable. That was the important part. No, that wasn't the important part. I didn't think blood poison could be so powerful. Whether he was able to clear the dungeons or not, it was the value of the player's existence and the significance of that existence that mattered. If I knew it would become like this, I would have raised him properly. Because of this, Park Yong Wan had no choice but to acknowledge Kim Woo Jin at this point. He was too good to just leave on the sidelines. I think we can make a deal with him now. 
Of course, Kim Woo Jin had already been placed on a leash by Park Yong Wan. Right, that's why it's such a headache. The problem was that he now wanted to bring home the dog he had raised in the field, with only a leash. If he made a request, he had to listen to it and if he asked for a deal then he had to accept it. That was why Park Yong Wan had no choice but to seriously consider the deal proposed by Kim Woo Jin. I want to trade Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. Kim Woo Jin told him about an incident. There was a group who attacked him in the dungeon, and one of them had the legendary weapon Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. He wanted to exchange the crossbow for a legendary item that Park Yong Wan had. The deal was not something to be worried about. If Park Yong Wan wanted to, he could have forcefully taken the legendary item from Kim Woo Jin. Will you accept Kim Woo Jin's deal? I've decided to get along with him but I can't give him what he wants easily can I? But the problem was, as said earlier, Park Yong Wan wanted to make a deal with Kim Woo Jin. So naturally, the deal had to be done normally. Legendary for legendary. In fact, the deal itself was not a loss for Park Yong Wan. He had many kinds of legendary items and if he was speaking frankly, some of them were longer useful at his level. That item Wilhelm tells crossbow is not easy to use. However, it was also too much to say that Wilhelm tells crossbow's utility value was high. The option of having arrows pursue the enemy was obviously great. However, most of the players who used bows as their main weapons or those who had the silent hunter as their halos usually had two or three pursuit skills in their repertoire. As the levels increased, Wilhelm Tell's crossbow had a higher probability of becoming someone's secondary weapon instead of a main weapon. The most important thing was that the item had once belonged to those who were targeting Kim Woo Jin. If you look at the situation, there is a high chance that the last attack was done by the Skull Guild. That should be the case. When looking at this situation, there was a high chance that the group who attacked Kim Woo Jin belonged to the Skull Guild. What would the Skull Guild do if they found that he was using their legendary items? Of course, it was the Skull Guild's fault. But if they had been able to accept their fault and accept the consequences in the first place then they would not have launched this attack on Kim Woo Jin. Either way, if Kim Woo Jin uses it then they will go crazy again. The Skull Guild would definitely not let it go. This was a troublesome situation for Park Yong Wan as well. I have to consider the big picture, but I don't want to think about that right now. If he considered the big picture, then he should not provoke the Skull Guild after the situation had already been cleared once. It was at that moment. Wait. Park Yong Wan felt like a light bulb had lit up in his head. Isn't Isaac Ivanov looking for a legendary item? A ranged weapon too. TL, the best way to manipulate someone is to make them believe it was their idea. Yes we found out that they were secretly searching for one. What if I gave Wilhelm Tell's crossbow to Isaac Ivanov? In contrast to his secretary's confused expression, Park Yong Wan's expression was pretty delighted. Wouldn't they think that there is a close connection between me and Isaac Ivanov? At least the Skull Guild would. That. Let's make sure to hit the nail firmly with this opportunity. Park Yong Wan spoke as he rose to his feet, not intending to listen to any more reports from his secretary at the moment. Call Kim Woo Jin let's make a deal. At the office tell where Kim Woo Jin was staying. Phew. You really get a lot of packages. Lee Jin Ah came into the room with a bunch of boxes stacked to form a tower. When he entered the room, the first thing that Lee Jin Ah saw was Kim Woo Jin, who was checking the items in another pile of boxes. Li Jin Ah couldn't help but click his tongue at this scene. Do you really intend to eat all of this? The items in the boxes were none other than the gifts sent to Isaac Ivanov Kim Woo Jin had taken back the things that Oh Se Chan had been keeping secretly. It's up to me to decide whether I should eat them or sell them. Li Jin Ah breathed a long sigh when he saw that Kim Woo Jin was counting the items so carefully TL, you wouldn't believe that Kim Woo Jin was a man with billions of won in assets lol. Why am I surrounded by nut jobs? Then Li Jina spoke as if he'd just remembered something. By the way, I heard that you were going to sell Wilhelm Tell's crossbow to Park Yong Wan or something like that. Kim Wu Jin simply nodded. And you intend to receive it as a gift in the name of Isaac Ivanov? Again Kim Wu Jin nodded instead of answering. Li Jina laughed as if he had just heard something ridiculous. 
In fact, it was truly absurd. I've really never seen a guy like you before. If Park Yongwan learned the truth, it wouldn't be strange for him to fall to the ground while holding his neck. But will it really work? There is no guarantee that Park Yongwan will give the gift to Isaac Ivanov. When he heard Li Jina's question, Kim Wu Jin simply explained to him in a calm voice. The plan is to make it work if we were just relying on luck then there would be no need for a plan. It was then. Wu Wu. Kim Wu Jin's smartphone vibrated and after he saw the caller ID on the screen, he gave Li Jina a look. Li Jina nodded, and immediately after that, Kim Wu Jin answered the phone. Yes, this is Kim Wu Jin. The person on the other end of the call was none other than Park Yongwan and the conversation between them was short. After all, there was no reason to speak longer. Kim had requested a deal and all that this was, was Park Yongwan calling to confirm it. When the call ended, Li Jina couldn't help but ask. What did he say? Just as planned. Oh. Really? Li Jina looked surprised. But there was a condition. Condition? He wants me to deliver the goods directly. Directly? What? To whom? At that question, Kim Wu Jin gave him a smile. They want me to meet Isaac Ivanov in person, deliver the item and leave evidence of it. What? Li Jina made a ridiculous expression when he heard those words. What the hell are you talking about? When Li Jina asked this question, Kim Wu Jin simply looked at him with a corner of his mouth raised instead of answering. He'd known that Park Yongwan would agree to the trade, but it was completely unexpected for him to offer to have him meet Isaac Ivanov. Although he was just giving a legendary item and not anything else he still wants to leave evidence of that transaction. Of course, it was obvious why Park Yongwan wanted to do this. For him, this was like putting his name tag in Isaac Ivanov. And since he wanted to do this, then it was better to engrave his name rather than simply placing a name tag. At the same time, this was a test. He expects me to negotiate with Isaac Ivanov to produce better results. It was a test to determine whether Kim Wu Jin was able to receive more from Isaac Ivanov. He also expects me to work together with Isaac Ivanov. Moreover, at the present time, both Isaac Ivanov and Kim Wu Jin had begun to attack three floor dungeons, so Park Yongwan had the expectation that they would be able to work together. This was the answer that Park Yongwan had come up with after thinking about it for a long time. In any case, it was not a problem that Kim Wu Jin had to worry about for long. So what did you decide to take from the deal? Kim Wu Jin gave Li Jina a simple answer. Boar's shield. TL, subject to change. Boar's shield. Is it good? It's not a bad item for a tank who fights on the front line against powerful monsters. Is that so? Sounds like a good item. Li Jina did not respond further to Kim Wu Jin's explanation as if he had lost all interest in the subject TL he already knows. Why does it feel cold all of a sudden? He rubbed his arms as he felt a sudden chill throughout his body. A smile was spread on Kim Woo Jin's face. In his head, he recalled Park Yong Wan's orders. He had told Kim Woo Jin to take the item to Isaac Ivanov directly and also to talk with him. I never would have thought that Osiris Ring is in his hands. He had Osiris Ring. Park Yongwan intended to throw an irresistible bait to Isaac Ivanov through Kim Wu Jin. From Kim Wu Jin's perspective, he couldn't help but smile. Now that I know where it is, all I need to do is take it. As long as one knew where an item was, then there would be many ways for them to get their hands on it. Therefore, Kim Wu Jin didn't need to worry about it too much at the moment. Now it's time to collect the next debt. Instead, there was something else that had his attention. Next debt. The Great Ones and the Amazons, we have to get the fee for their lives. Then. Kim Wu Jin gave him the response that he was asking for. I'm going to San Francisco, USA. Li Jina's expression became a bit stiff as he asked another question. It's not the dungeon that I think it is, is it? You'd be right. Li Jina's expression hardened even more as he heard that answer. Ah. Then at that moment, Kim Wu Jin exclaimed as if he had just remembered something. I made a mistake that wasn't it. 
R dash, right? Well, that dungeon is really too dangerous it's a place that even the Frontier Guild and the Great Ones Guild had to give up haha. -ha. You've got wit. Li Jina was immediately filled with relief. Then Kim Woo Jin said something else to him. No, that's not it, I meant my payment. Ha. Huh. The payment for the bulgogi, Oh Se Chan said you ate 19 servings on your own. Li Jina couldn't help but stare at Kim Woo Jin, who was stretching out his hand as he said those words, with a blank gaze. Chapter, 138. It was 2023, for years after the world had been transformed into a game. There were many changes in the world however, there wasn't a single person who thought that it had changed for the better TL, I think Lee Sejun would disagree. Instead, most of the news from around the world was bad news. The loss of government function caused by the arrival of monsters, the spike in crime rates, horrendous acts of terrorism. In all honesty, these pieces of news were not good at all. Park Yongwan, Kim Woo Jin will lead the next generation together with Isaac Ivanov. Kim Woo Jin becomes Korea's next generation ace. That's why the flames created by Kim Woo Jin weren't put out easily. People, especially Koreans, were using their interest in Kim Woo Jin to forcefully turn their attention away from the miserable reality. Kim Woo Jin isn't an ordinary guy, are those records real? Cool. He takes out criminals, I like it. I'll be this guy's fan from now on. Finally, Korea has a player who can compare to Isaac Ivanov. If you have choco pies for Isaac Ivanov, let's send them to Kim Woo Jin. TL, pft. Of course, the public's reactions were not all positive. No matter how good he is, isn't it too much to compare him to Isaac Ivanov? Right and it's not the Messiah Guild, it's the Phoenix Guild, right? You suckers, bow your heads and reflect. It's obvious that the Phoenix Guild is making a media bubble sooner or later, the bubble will burst. There were many negative reactions and this was to be expected. No matter how much effort the Phoenix Guild put in to fix their image now, in the eyes of Koreans, the Phoenix Guild to which Kim Woo Jin belonged, was seen unfavorably while Isaac Ivanov, who was now being compared to Kim Woo Jin was considered to be Lee Sejun's successor. No, if you're Korean, then you should root for Kim Woo Jin. Isn't Isaac Ivanov an honorary Korean? Crazy Isaac fanboys, so if you eat choco pie that makes you Korean? Hey, all you Kim Woo Jin fans, let's send him choco pies. Isaac likes bulgogi too. I'm sure Kim Woo Jin also likes bulgogi. Naturally, there were arguments and these arguments became the firewood that made Kim Woo Jin's fame burn hotter. Of course, it didn't last very long either. Isaac Ivanov's next stop is San Francisco. Is Isaac Ivanov going to challenge the Forest of the Dead? The news that Isaac Ivanov was headed to the US consumed the world. In 2018, following the advent of the Dungeon Gates, monsters rushed into the world and there was unprecedented chaos. Many feared that, were it to continue, the world might come to an end. Most of those people had similar thoughts. First, they thought that they had to go to America this was how the US was seen by the rest of the world. If the world comes to an end, it would be the last country to fall. In fact, when the world became a game, the US had cleared up the chaos so quickly that other countries couldn't hope to compare and so many people began heading toward it. The same was true for the players. A large number of talented players who appeared in unstable places like Africa, Eastern Europe, Central and South America, Southeast Asia, etc., found many ways to declare themselves as US citizens, and of course, they were readily accepted. It was at that moment, that no one could deny that the strongest nation had been born. So the world said. There's no need for the Messiah Guild in America. America had saved itself already, so they didn't need a savior. These were not just words, in reality, the Messiah Guild could not exert much influence in the United States. Because there is no dungeon that America can't clear. Even though there was no Messiah Guild, there were still many guilds in America that were capable of clearing dungeons. At least that's what the people in America believed and that was the pride of the American people. In fact, Great One and Frontier, these two guilds, have cleared many dungeons so far. The reason for that pride was the Great One Guild and Frontier Guild, the second and fifth largest guilds in the world. 
with the support of the U.S. government, they had targeted any dungeon that appeared on American soil. Until that dungeon appeared in San Francisco. However, in February 2023, an A-rank three-floor dungeon forest of the dead appeared in San Francisco, and problems arose when the two guilds failed to clear it. It was a painful failure. Of course, they were not discouraged by the failure to clear it. In the first place, their pride came from their spirit of challenge, and not fearing failure. Even though both guilds joined together to attack. The Great One Guild and the Frontier Guild tried to clear a dungeon while working together. It was a moment where the two guild masters, who had been fiercely competing behind the scenes, shook hands. But they still failed. The problem was that even though the guilds had improved their relationship, they still failed to clear the dungeon. Of course, even that didn't make the two guilds give up. As soon as they failed, they began preparing for another attempt. They risked their lives to protect America's pride. Then the US government shut it down. But the US government stopped them. This was a natural measure. It would be strange if they let the two guilds, who had become the main forces in the country, risk their lives just to clear a three-floor dungeon. It really hurt their pride. Anyway, this hurt America's pride. The Forest of the Dead was such a place. It was the dungeon that had wounded the great America's pride. Even if it wasn't explained like that, you'll know how damned that place is. This was the dungeon that Kim Woo Jin wanted to attack with Lee Jin Ah under the name of Isaac Ivanov. Damn, even if you wanted to pick dungeons, why did it have to be this one? That's why Lee Jin Ah complained after Kim Woo Jin's explanation. Of course, there were no results yet. The US government guys are funny would they let Russians clear the dungeon that hurt their pride? As Li Jina had said, the Forest of the Dead was the dungeon that had hurt America's pride. At the moment the US government was blocking the attack because they still intended to clear it themselves so it wasn't a dungeon that they were willing to give other countries a chance to attack. What if it was a Russian? Life is expensive. So Kim Woo Jin used the prices of lives. The Great One Guild members. In exchange for their lives, Kim Woo Jin had requested the help from the Great One Guild. He had requested them to help him attack the Forest of the Dead. Isaac Ivanov's name is also expensive. It was a deal that normally wouldn't work, but the situation changed when Isaac Ivanov's name was also included. Could America truly deny the next generation savior who wanted to challenge a dungeon that they had failed numerous times? Even when he said he was willing to buy the opportunity in exchange for what he deserves. And America is the country of heroes. How could a heroic country, not somewhere else, impose restrictions on heroes? At least, the United States that Kim Woo Jin knew would not be able to do this. That was why he was convinced. The doors will open. They would surely give them the chance to attack the dungeon. There was only one task left for Kim Woo Jin. Sure, let's say they open Can You Clear the Dungeon? It's a dungeon that two world-class guilds collaborated to attack and failed undead monsters would surely appear in the Forest of the Dead isn't that a bad match for you? Could Kim Woo Jin clear the dungeon or not? In the face of this question, Kim Woo Jin didn't need to think for long. So that's what you're worried about. Am I right? Will it be difficult? It won't be too difficult to deal with you wouldn't have to deal with undead monsters on the front line if it was anyway. What? If you die, I'll use you as a skeleton. Fuck really, I won't die. I'm not gonna die. At this point, there was number three floor dungeon that Kim Woo Jin couldn't clear. Woo Woo. The news that they were waiting for finally came. Uh, I just got a response from the Great One Guild. Oh Se Chan, who had handled the negotiations, brought the news. How did it go? It's okay, but there's a bit of a problem. Problem? Uh, so they want to bet a prize. Prize? We'd give the prize to whoever clears the dungeon it's also at the legendary level. Kim Woo Jin smiled at those words. It seems they're overflowing with confidence. Giving prizes to whoever cleared the dungeon, in other words, the Great One Guild were confident that they could clear the forest of the dead. They don't even care about me. Isaac Ivanov had been completely ignored. That was the reason that Kim Woo Jin was smiling. So what's the prize? That. 
Kim Woo Jin couldn't keep the mocking smile on his lips after hearing Oh Se Chan's words. Is it really that? Instead, he could only ask in surprise. Chapter 139 The two major guilds that were also considered America's pride, the Great One Guild and the Frontier Guild, were surprisingly different. Among their differences, the difference in the direction that they pursued was extreme. While the Frontier Guild focused on expanding their outward appearance through pioneering and conquest, the Great One Guild, as the name suggested, focused more on qualitative growth. The difference between the two guilds was clearly revealed when they failed to jointly clear the forest of the Dead Dungeon TL, I'll just call it Dead Forest Dungeon from now on, although it's not completely accurate. When they failed to clear it, the Frontier Guild immediately reduced the priority of the Dead Forest Dungeon. However, the Great One Guild was different. After their failure, the Great One Guild made the Dead Forest Dungeon their top priority and began making preparations to clear it. Isaac Ivanov wants to attack the Dead Forest. That was why the Guild Master of the Great One Guild, Kerry Roanna, paid attention to everything related to the Dead Forest Dungeon personally. Trinity, who was one of the few players who dealt with spirits and who was considered to be comparable to the savior Lee Sejun, was the one who managed all of the three floor dungeons. This was proof that the Great One Guild's interest in the Dead Forest was much greater than believed. As payment for our men's lives? So of course Isaac Ivanov's proposal went directly to her ears. And the moment she heard it, she smiled. Excellent. She knew that the time had finally come. Everything's coming together perfectly. As had been mentioned before, the Great One Guild had been constantly preparing to attack the Dead Forest Dungeon. No, their preparations had long been complete. The situation only required the go-ahead from the US government. If Isaac Ivanov wants to attack the dungeon with such a reason, then the president can't simply tell him no. In such a situation, there would need to be a very good reason to deny it. They will have to give Isaac Ivanov the permission to attack it and we will attack it together with him. She was planning to attack the dungeon together with Isaac Ivanov. Of course, the executives of the Great One Dungeon had different thoughts. Isaac Ivanov doesn't know, but the government wouldn't let us enter the dungeon so easily. That's right isn't it because the government doesn't want us and the Frontier Guild to lose resources? Under the assumption that we would be the only ones who would be affected, we'd never get permission. In the first place, the US government had stopped the attack on the Dead Forest Dungeon because they doubted their ability to clear it. The biggest reason for preventing the attack was because the consumption of resources was too high. In such circumstances, the odds that the US government would authorize Isaac Ivanov's attack on the dungeon was fairly high, but the odds of them authorizing the Great One Guild's attack was unknown. The government is probably also wishing for Isaac Ivanov's failure. No, instead it was highly probable that the US government would arrange for Isaac Ivanov to fail. If even the Russian hero failed the dungeon, then the wounded pride of the Americans would recover a little. The executives had all made good points. However, she didn't agonize for long on the proper decision to make. Then let's increase the players in this game well invite other guilds to take part as well let's call the Frontier Guild and the Messiah Guild, as well as all of those players who are at the three-floor stage well share all the risks. If the game gets that big then we would have to take part as well wouldn't we? After all our items are still in there we can't watch from the side and watch them get taken away. Would it be as easy as you're making it sound? Even if we do that, would the other guilds really be willing to risk it and challenge the dead forest? Unless there was great merit to obtain, would the other guilds dare to take the risk? Even when she heard that, she spoke with confidence. Then we'll make it a bet, for a prize then they would be willing to take the risk. A prize? We'll offer King Arthur's ring as the prize. Everyone in the room made startled expressions. The legendary item King Arthur's ring? How much would it cost to get it? Faced with such a question, she simply shrugged TL, Arthur Sama please tell us who she is. It doesn't matter because there would be no one there stronger than the ones we prepared for this dungeon. Still. First of all, I said that we would offer King Arthur's ring as the prize, but I didn't say that we wouldn't use it. Ah. At that moment, the executives nodded with realization. We will give Ellis the ring and put her in the dungeon so, that should be it right? Everyone nodded. 
then tell Isaac Ivanov. She had a slightly fierce expression on her face as she continued. If it's dangerous, well save you, but make sure that you have enough money to pay for your life. Glen Park, San Francisco. In a neighborhood lined with rural houses, a large, cube-shaped, concrete building stood proudly. In addition, a large amount of armed soldiers, who stood around the perimeter of the concrete building made it seem even more intense. Of course, the thing that made this structure truly stand out was the spatial distortion known as a dungeon gate that was housed inside of it. A man reached out to the dungeon gate. Soon after, a screen window, appeared before the man's eyes. Forest of the Dead. Floors, 3. Difficulty, A. Maximum number of entries, 199. Requirements, level 81 or lower. Conditions, defeat the master of the dead. Reward, skill stone A. The man who finished checking the information of the dungeon, immediately removed his hand and turned to speak to the person beside him. I checked the dungeon information, there are no problems. When he heard that, the person beside the man also stretched their hand to check the dungeon's information. All clear. These two men were none other than dungeon administrators. They were responsible for ensuring that there weren't any illegal intruders within the dungeon and if there were any changes to the dungeon status. It wasn't much. Players could view the dungeon's information by touching the dungeon gate, if there was an intruder, then you wouldn't be able to obtain any information by touching the gate and you could only enter the dungeon. It was as simple as checking whether water was hot or cold. Ugh. And frankly, it wasn't something that needed to be checked often. Once a day was enough for places like here where there were buildings and other forms of security measures were prepared. Why the hell do they want us to check every hour? Even temporary buildings were built to protect this place. This was the reason why Adam, a player who had given up the opportunity to attack dungeons and instead chose to manage them using his ability as a player, complained. Heath, his colleague, responded simply to his complaints. What can we do about it? The affair this time is too big. As they were having this conversation, an incident that recently became well known around the world, came to their minds. The Great One Dungeon had put out a prize for the completion of the Dead Forest Dungeon, that even the US had failed to clear. The prize is legendary. The prize was also a legendary item. It's not just any legendary item it's King Arthur's ring, isn't it? Moreover, it wasn't just any legendary item, but one of considerable value. It's unbelievable. It was a major event that had never happened before and the world was inevitably surprised by it. Sooner or later, players around the world who were active in three-floor dungeons would gather to attack this dungeon. Of course, there were people who were curious about the situation. But the Great One Guild isn't foolish, why would they set this sort of thing as a reward? Why did the Great One Guild do this? Was attacking the Dead Forest Dungeon worth using King Arthur's ring, which they already had in their hands, as a reward? Is it really to just attack the Dead Forest Dungeon as the Great One Guild said? To that question, the Great One Guild simply stated that they would do anything to clear the dungeon. Is that really the case? Of course, no one fully believed their words. There must be another reason. Some people still had questions. They wanted to know the true target of the Great One Guild. Chapter, 140 Provocation when Li Jina asked this instead of answering, Kim Wu Jin simply nodded his head without answering. You mean they're provoking us because they have a great purpose or plan something funny but because they think that they're amazing and that they'll win the prize they offered anyway? TL, this sentence was hell. Kim Wu Jin nodded again at Li Jina's repeated questioning. However, Li Jina kept going. So they're treating you like air. TL, the word he used was, but there is no good way to translate it while still capturing the meaning of the sentence and no, Google Translate won't get this one right. It was a straightforward remark that came out so suddenly that it would make the listener frown subconsciously. However, Kim Woo Jin just nodded his head without even changing his expression. This was because there was nothing wrong with what Lee Jina had said. It's not wrong to say that they're treating me as air. If the Great One Guild had considered Isaac Ivanov as a dangerous competitor then they would have never made such a bet. But they wouldn't underestimate me. However, 
Kim Woo Jin didn't believe that they thought he was a joke and underestimated him. He couldn't. There's no way they don't know my ability. During his debut, Isaac Ivanov had shown his skills when he faced off against the Golden Lion. And the Great One Guild had been present at that time, which could be considered the starting point of this situation. In such a situation, if the Great One Guild hadn't already compiled a full list of his skills then they would not be in their current position. Above all, the Great One Guild that Kim Woo Jin knew was a very meticulous guild. Rather they would evaluate Isaac Ivanov beyond what they'd seen. Rather than devaluing the qualifications and abilities that Isaac Ivanov had, the Great One Guild was a group that was meticulous enough to evaluate that there were probably things that he'd hidden. Nevertheless, if they had come out in such a way, then there could only be one reason. It means they have something great. They had a hand that could not lose. Well, the members sure are impressive Ellis was ranked third among the players below level 100 this year wasn't she? If she is also entering the dungeon then it would explain why they are so confident. One of those cards must be Ellis Hyden, who Lee Jina had just mentioned. Ellis Hyden, a player who was talented enough to become Trinity's successor. Even Kim Woo Jin would admit that she was a real talent. But I'm nervous. However, in Kim Woo Jin's eyes, her fighting ability was no more than that of Isaac Ivanov. In other words, it was almost impossible for them to bet King Arthur's ring with just their confidence in her. Even if they gave her King Arthur's ring. Even if the Great One Guild gave Ellis Hyten King Arthur's ring, Kim Woo Jin didn't believe that they would make such a bet. It would only be enough to surpass Isaac Ivanov. Of course, the combined power of the two would be enough to surpass Isaac Ivanov, but Isaac Ivanov wasn't the only other one that would be participating. It wouldn't be enough to overwhelm the other competitors, including the Messiah Guild. If those were all they prepared, then it would be insufficient if Isaac Ivanov joined hands with the Messiah Guild. But if they still made the bet after considering all of these things, then there should be something else. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew. There must be a more compelling reason for the Great One Guild to make such a bet. There must be something else. So Kim Woo Jin was anxious. This dungeon won't be easy. Like the Great One Guild, he would never underestimate an enemy. But what have you been staring at all this time? Therefore, Kim Woo Jin made preparations. I'm making a shopping list. Shopping list? I think we'll need to invest more to clear this dungeon the number of skeletons that need to be summoned will probably be doubled. Li Jina couldn't help but make a sound of surprise. Kia. You're finally spending money. However, Kim Woo Jin just tilted his head. Spending my money? Ha. Huh. In response to Kim Woo Jin's question, Li Jina also tilted his head. No, didn't you say you were going shopping? Then you'll have to spend money isn't that shopping? Kim Woo Jin gave a simple response to his question. I said I'm making a shopping list. What? At that moment, Li Jina shouted as he realized something. No way, Park Yong Wan. Kim Woo Jin didn't answer him, but Li Jina still stuck out his tongue as though he knew already. You're really gonna suck out even the marrow. For the first time, Li Jina felt pity for Park Yong Wan since he had met Kim Woo Jin who seemed to want to eat him down to his bones. Park Yong Wan is so pitiful he must have sold his country in his past life otherwise, there is no way that he could have met such a bastard. However, Kim Woo Jin still didn't respond to Li Jin Ahs words. If you're provoking me like this, I won't let it go. At this moment, there was only one thing in Kim Woo Jin's mind. I'll definitely trample you. He was determined to put them in their place. And so the day of the showdown arrived. November 19, 2023. The world which was filled with monsters, dungeon gates and the chaos caused by the players, had its attention focused on one place. It's finally the decisive day in San Francisco. The nightmare known as the Forest of the Dead will come to an end. Everyone was focused on San Francisco, where the Dead Forest dungeon was located. They were looking on with anticipation. The prize is King Arthur's ring, that's amazing. Who will clear it? I hope the Messiah Guild does it. What are you talking about? Of course, the Great One Guild will clear it. Who would become the owner of the legendary King Arthur's ring, 
whose name alone was enough to show its extraordinary value. With that anticipation, the press and public became more and more excited as the time drew near. However, the faces of the players who were going to participate in the Dead Forest Dungeon were the opposite. The 199 people who were going to participate for this ridiculous prize, who had been chosen and recognized by the world, had no excitement on their faces whatsoever. Who? Relax, relax. Rather the expressions of these players were all tense. And above these looks of tension, was an extra layer of vigilance. There was no conversation between them. Those who didn't know each other and even those who knew each other, they did not even look at each other. No, it could be said that the moment their eyes met, it became a battle of wills. There are signs of failure everywhere. Kim Woo Jin looked at this scene and couldn't help but laugh inwardly. Well, a prize is a prize after all. The players' reactions were naturally because of King Arthur's ring. The stats for King Arthur's ring weren't revealed, but the players were able to guess its value. Regardless, this is an opportunity to become the owner of a legendary item. After all, the most likely beneficiary of the dungeon would be the one who received King Arthur's ring. They would be able to put the ring on their finger directly, instead of having to give it to their guild. It was more than just that. It was hard to obtain a legendary item, but it was even harder to use it. There probably won't be any cooperation. So it was natural that harmony and cooperation between guilds would never be achieved under these circumstances. They'll also compete internally. Furthermore, even if they were members of the same guild, the chances of them competing between themselves were also very high. If they cooperated it would be the worst case scenario. Nevertheless, if some guilds decided to work together then it was possible to get rid of the most powerful competition. Dullahan is by no means a weak monster. Moreover, the identity of the boss monster, the master of the forest of the dead was none other than Dullahan. It was a terrifying monster. It's the fourth most difficult monster that you can encounter in a three-floor dungeon. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, there were only three monsters that were stronger than a Dullahan in three-floor dungeons. This was why the Frontier Guild and the Great One Guild had failed even when they worked together to clear the dungeon. Faced with such a monster, it was practically impossible to collaborate to defeat it. It's nothing bad from my point of view. Of course, this was nothing bad for Kim Woo Jin. In any case, the Great One Guild would be the ones who received the most focus in this dungeon which would naturally cause the attention placed on Isaac Ivanov to reduce dramatically. There was only one group who cared about him. Isaac, please give me an interview. Isaac, this is your second attack what is your goal? TL, this reporter needs to get fired. Are you after King Arthur's ring? Only the reporters were asking questions to Kim Woo Jin, who was away from the group. Of course, the reporters knew. It was virtually impossible to secure an interview with Isaac Ivanov and they might have a better chance talking to a wall. Instead, they knew that what they were doing now was basically attacking Isaac Ivanov. With less than an hour left till the attack on the dungeon, this time was more important than ever. How could they not know that asking the player questions while they were preparing their minds for the dungeon would have an effect on that player? So some expected. It would be great if Isaac yelled nervously. Isaac gets angry, not a bad title. That Isaac Ivanov would react anxiously to the reporter's stimuli. They hoped that they would cause a huge piece of news today. WH- dash, what? At that moment there were signs that that wish might come true. It's Isaac. Isaac Ivanov, who had been standing in the distance, began walking toward the reporters. As a result, camera shutters began to sound out incessantly and the reporters' voices steadily began to rise. Before long, Isaac Ivanov was standing before the reporters as if waiting for a photo and pointed to one of the reporters. Yes. The CNN reporter holding a microphone and their cameraman approached Isaac Ivanov without hesitation. Isaac Ivanov, you called us forward may I ask you a few questions? Then they started the interview right away. There isn't much time so I won't be answering any questions instead, I have something I would like to say personally is that possible? Of course. In front of them, Isaac Ivanov skillfully spoke English into the microphone. First of all, 
I'd like to express my gratitude to the United States government for allowing us to challenge this dungeon and I'd like to thank the Great One Guild for helping my proposal be approved. Furthermore, I'd like to express my respect and gratitude for their decision to gather so many talented individuals by betting King Arthur's ring. It was a stereotypical remark, and because of that, the crowd didn't really react to it much. Is that it? Did he come here just to say that? Some were unhappy with the situations that wouldn't even be able to make any headlines. As the dissatisfaction steadily grew, Isaac Ivanov began taking an item out of his inventory. Like magic, a large crossbow appeared from mid-air. Recently, Mr. Park Yongwan of the Phoenix Guild supported me with this valuable Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. Isaac Ivanov, who was holding the crossbow in his hand, addressed the crowd. I will bet this crossbow on this dungeon as a prize. At that moment, the shutter sounds which had been sounding out continuously, stopped. D- -dash, Do you mean that you're offering this legendary item as a prize? Only the CNN reporter instinctively asked a question, to which Isaac Ivanov answered. Shouldn't we give a prize to those who are risking their lives to attack this dungeon? Only then did turmoil begin spreading through the group of reporters. I dash, it's a scoop. B dash, breaking news. In the face of the uproar, Isaac Ivanov only gave a smile. It was at that moment one hour before their entry into the dungeon, that the situation became shaky. Chapter, 141 an hour before the start of the dungeon attack could be called the time when the player's tension had reached its peak. From this point on it was virtually impossible for them to give up their admission into the dungeon. Of course, if they were to crawl on their knees and beg with tears in their eyes and snot running down their face, they would be able to leave. But the players who were able to apply to enter an A-ranked dungeon would rather die in the dungeon than do something like that. It was at this critical moment that Kim Woo Jin had released a piece of news that was like a bomb. This was the time when the player's tension had reached the peak and they were beginning to sharpen their focus. Isaac Ivanov has offered a legendary item as a prize. The legendary item turns out to be Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. Therefore the power of Kim Woo Jin's explosive news was bound to have an even more destructive effect TL, tactical nuke. The media and public were immediately filled with turmoil. Isaac Ivanov set off a bomb. Is there any data on Wilhelm Tell's crossbow? I want an exclusive with Isaac Ivanov. What nonsense are you saying? There's less than an hour till the dungeon attack. The dungeon attack is the main thing. Faced with such an overwhelming situation, the media officials showed that they were unable to prioritize what was truly important. Isaac Ivanov called one. King Arthur's ring, Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. Then shouldn't the other guilds also take out their legendaries? They have to bring them out if they're scared then they can just roll away. Public opinion began to burn hotter because of this sudden situation. Of course, the ones who were feeling the worst were the nine guilds, including the Great One Guild who were participating in the attack. They were forced to panic for a moment in the face of this ridiculous situation. The shock of the situation even affected Oh se chans office. M- Mr. Kim Woo Jin just offered the legendary item. One employee who was monitoring the situation in real time, informed the rest with a trembling voice. Of course, everyone was shocked by the news. Only Oh Se Chan had a different reaction. Such an amazing guy. Instead, he nodded his head as if he had expected such a situation. You knew about this? Noticing this, a subordinate immediately asked him a question. MHM. Then why didn't he tell his staff when he knew about it from the start? His staff all had expressions saying that they thought this question, but no one decided to ask it in the end. What's the aim? The most important thing right now wasn't why he didn't tell them about something so shocking, instead it was to find out the reason for it. Oh se Chan calmly answered the question. The first goal is to increase the pot too. Pot. You don't get it. This is a game of poker where the Great One Guild made a bet and Kim Woo Jin called it do you think those other guys will be able to stay out of it? And that the public wouldn't have any reaction if they did? After saying that, Oh Se Chan let out a laugh. Naturally the players will notice that the stakes are getting higher as they're about to attack the dungeon. What will change when they notice? 
The players who are participating in the Forest of the Dead dungeon attack this time are all psychos. Psycho. That's right, by the standards of the public, they all already have a large amount of money and fame, yet they still chose to participate in this dangerous dungeon what would they do if the prize increased to two legendary items instead of one? They would somehow try to be the ones who managed to kill the final boss in the dungeon. Right, they would compete even more fiercely with their competitors so what would they do to win that competition? Race from the start. Oh Seichan nodded at the answer from his subordinate. The agreement stated that those who were the most active in the dungeon would be given priority to hunt the boss monster. Before the dungeon attack. The first thing that the nine participating guilds agreed on was the sequence to attack the boss monster they agreed to determine this sequence according to the level of activity during the first and second floors of the dungeon. What was important here was their activity was relative. If a person decided to suddenly sprint forward with all his strength, then the other would have no choice but to follow him. Everyone would have no choice but to reveal their hidden cards from the very first floor. In order to survive a competition that began like that, they would naturally have to take out what they had been hiding. The same is true for the Great One Guild. Among them, Kim Woo-jin was aiming to check the trump cards of the Great One Guild. Of course, there was one more important part to all of this. But if he's wrong wouldn't that mean he was just throwing away a legendary item? Would Kim Woo-jin be able to hunt the boss monster of this dungeon while facing off against so many strong competitors? Oh se chan laughed at his question. Well, it wouldn't be a problem if Isaac Ivanov summoned double the skeletons that the guilds knew he could would it? To move on to the next floor, slay 22, 22 monsters. In a grey forest filled with fog, a notification announced to the players the conditions to move on to the next floor. It was a distant objective. However, there were no signs of frustration or surprise in the eyes of the players who had just received such an arduous task. Rather it seemed like the eyes of those gathered became colder. Then move as we agreed before. In that coldness, a Frontier Guild member pointed in a direction as he said those words. We will go east. As soon as he said that, the 23 players from the Frontier Guild headed towards the east. We'll head west. Next was the Messiah Guild. 22 players from the Messiah Guild headed west without hesitation. Following that, the other players began moving in the directions that they had agreed to before entering the dungeon. That was all. There was no conversation. However, it wasn't hard for them to figure out what the others were thinking. Roar. Everyone became scattered in all directions, and before long, the sounds of fighting could be heard from all directions. It seems everyone is racing from the beginning. Hearing the sounds, Jackson, a player from the Great One Guild's team, turned to ask a question to a blonde woman with pure white skin. What should we do? He was instead given a bright smile and another question. What do you guys want to do? When the members of the Great One Guild heard this question, they also gave bright smiles. These smiles were the answers. They'd be happy to take part in this race where everyone was sprinting at full force from the start. Right, then we can't just sit here while the others around us are running. Ellis Hyten also had the same answer as her subordinates. Inventory. After she opened her inventory window, she put her hand, upon which was a golden ring, into it. Then she immediately pulled out a staff made from rough wood out of her inventory. It was a roughly hewn staff with a turquoise gem embedded in the top. As soon as the staff appeared, the color of her eyes began to change into a turquoise color that resembled the gem on the staff. Following such a change, a notification sounded in her ear. Merlin's staff has increased your magic power. King Arthur's ring makes the effects of round table items stronger. Your magic power is filled and overflowing. Merlin's staff and King Arthur's ring. This was the source of the Great One Guild's confidence. It was a well-deserved source. We don't need to wait for the second floor, let's show them the difference between us here on the first floor. The halo of Ellis Hyden, the woman who was currently wielding two powerful legendary items, was the listener of all creation which made her a spiritualist this meant that as long as her magic power was enough. She would be able to display destructive power that those mages who had the keeper of the knowledge fountain as their halo could never hope to compare to. Moreover, she was not just a spiritualist, 
but also the successor of Trinity who was known for using spirits of fire and ice in harmony. This is the strongest combination in this dungeon. Giving her never-ending magic power would be the equivalent to installing a cheat in the eyes of the other players. Then should we hunt only 10 0, 0. So she didn't care about any of the others. And the same was true for the other members of the Great One Guild's team. Yes. We should just hunt 20 0, 0. There was no reason for them to care about their competition when they were supercars in different weight classes. Of course, there was something they didn't know. Near to them was something covered in a desert chameleon cloak and looking at them with golden eyes. Merlin's staff. Kim Woo Jin who saw the scene through the Grim Reaper's mask narrowed his golden eyes slightly. Horus's eyes have closed. When he opened his eyes again, their color had returned to normal. However, his eyes were a bit colder than normal. Well, their confidence is warranted. They were bound to be cold. Because Merlin's staff and King Arthur's ring are it's hard for even players on the sixth floor to handle. These were two of the top ten items among the round table series in Kim Woo Jin's memory. Furthermore, the two items had a synergistic effect on each other. To be precise, one of the effects of King Arthur's ring was to enhance the weapons in the Knights of Round Table series. But how does Ellis have Merlin's staff? But the thing that made Kim Woo Jin's gaze so cold was the fact that Ellis Hyten had Merlin's staff in the first place. Didn't Park Shin Hai own it from the start? In Kim Woo Jin's memory, Merlin's staff had always been an item owned by Park Shin Hai. No, it was because she had Merlin's staff that she had such influence on the Knights of Round Table. It seems she's reached out to the Great One Guild. In other words, there was a point of contact between the Messiah Guild and the Great One Guild that could not be ignored. It seemed that the Messiah Guild also had some influence in this situation. Not bad. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, this was actually an unexpected opportunity. This was not strange nonsense. If I take Merlin's staff here then there will be no way for Park Shin Hai to influence the Knights of Round Table members in the future. As was mentioned earlier, Park Shin Hai was a member of the Knights of Round Table group and supported the group with Merlin's staff. So what would happen if Merlin's staff ended up in Kim Woo Jin's hands? It meant that it would be impossible for the Messiah Guild to control the Knights of the Round Table. If I only got a tail last time, then this time I will cut off a finger. The resulting blow would be much more powerful than any of the other attacks that Kim Woo Jin had launched against the Messiah Guild. I'll need to get it in this dungeon somehow. Then Li Jina walked up to him and said. What do you want to do? The other guys are hunting monsters without looking back do we need to make a plan? The remark reminded Kim Woo Jin of his original plan. Originally, Kim Woo Jin was intending to watch the situation on the first floor. His goal was to figure out where the confidence of the Great One Guild and the other guilds came from while hunting the monsters in moderation. He had no intention of sprinting. Furthermore, he felt that although the Great One Guild was so confident that there was no chance that they would be able to defeat the Dullahan so he'd felt that he would be able to kill it even without having priority over hunting the boss monster. Merlin's staff and King Arthur's ring are enough to defeat Dullahan. But now, from what Kim Woo Jin had seen, the Great One Guild had enough power to defeat the boss monster. I'll need to get the priority. In other words, Kim Woo Jin needed to grab the priority to hunt the Dullahan first. We're changing the plan. Therefore he had no choice but to change the plan. Change. Let's sweep all the monsters on the first floor. Kim Woo Jin was also prepared to sprint. Lee Jina clenched his fist when he heard this. Right, that's how a man should be. Li Jina, who was always complaining did not want to lose. The legend of the immortal king Li Jina, starts today. Kim Wu Jin turned to Li Jina who was drawing his grand plan and said. We'll hunt 10 0, 0 monsters on the first floor. Right, we'll hunt 10 0, 0, huh? Li Jina, who felt that he'd said something strange, suddenly stopped. The quest is to hunt 2200 and you want to hunt 1000. Didn't you calculate something wrong? We'll hunt 1000 on the first floor and bet against the Great One Guild on the second floor. Faced with the question, Kim Woo Jin explained his plan instead of answering. 
bed on the second floor. What the hell do you mean? Only then did Kim Woo Jin answer. We'll bet on an item. W dash, wait will they agree to that? That's why we have to provoke them. Provoke. Kim Woo Jin answered Lee Jin Ah's question. What the most annoying situation for a guy who's driving a supercar car down the road? Being overtake now. Only then did Lee Jina understand Kim Woo Jin's intentions. I kinda understand but is that even possible? He understood, which was why he questioned it. No matter how good Kim Woo Jin was, it didn't easy for him to overtake the Great One Guild by himself. Kim Woo Jin only had one thing to say to that. If it doesn't work, well make it work. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin took a wooden shield from his inventory and threw it to Lee Jin Ah. It was the Boar's Shield, a legendary item that Kim Woo Jin had gotten from Park Yong Wan. This? Isn't this the Boar's Shield? Why are you giving this to me? Lee Jin Ah, who received the shield and asked that question, frowned when he realized something. You're not telling me to lure all the monsters are you? Only. Kim Woo Jin nodded as though he was satisfied by his understanding. Now you're getting it. Fuck. Before I was just using standard game terms like board, but the author specifically used poker terms this time so I switched to those as well. Another note, the Halo names are still tentative, meaning that I might tweak them or even completely change them should I find a better interpretation. Chapter, 142 Until they enter the dungeon gate, players don't know exactly what's inside a dungeon. Therefore, players make various kinds of agreements before hitting the dungeon. The same was true for the Forest of the Dead dungeon the players who were participating in the dungeon had made agreements beforehand. If the first floor of the dungeon had a monster hunting quest, then let's choose our directions in advance so that their movements wouldn't overlap. So when the quest to hunt 22, 22 monsters appeared, the players simply moved in their previously agreed directions without any disagreements. But the agreements ended there. There were specific agreements after that. All they had to do was hunt as many monsters as they could before the quest ended, but there was no agreement on the method or process with which to hunt the monsters or any detailed movements. It was impossible to agree in advance. Ah. Uh, what's that? Therefore the members of the Great One Guild weren't too surprised when they found a pile of monster corpses in front of them. Skeleton Soldiers and the Great One Guild's members weren't too surprised when they found a skeleton soldier standing among the corpses. Isaac Ivanov? It's Isaac. They shouted out the name of the skeleton soldier's master. It's Isaac. The cries drew Ellis Hyten's attention. Ellis stepped out of the thick fog, her turquoise eyes seeming to pierce through it. Behind her, hounds made up of spirits of fire and ice appeared one after the other. K.R.R. The creatures growled eerily as they came from all directions out of the thick fog. Rattle. At the same time, a large number of skeletons began appearing with flames burning in their eyes. Then from among the skeletons, a person wearing a skeleton mask also appeared. Isaac Ivanov. Ellis Hyten repeated the name of her opponent. After she said the name, there was a deep silence. The atmosphere was tense. But there was no conflict. It looks like our paths managed to overlap. Looks like it. The two only had a simple conversation without any hint of competitiveness. As mentioned before, the only thing that they had agreed on, was the directions they were heading there were no agreements about their process or subsequent movements since there was no way for them to agree on that. In the first place, when hunting it was possible to change your direction while chasing a monster. Instead, it was quite normal for the movement paths to overlap while tracking down monsters. I didn't notice you because of the heavy fog I would have said something if I'd seen you earlier. Furthermore, the first floor of the dungeon was covered in thick fog which reduced visibility considerably. Therefore the situation where two parties met each other was inevitable. Well, it can't be helped. After that small conversation, they went their separate ways. Of course, the short conversation didn't mean that they had no thoughts toward each other. This was evidenced by the fact that Ellis kept staring at Isaac Ivanov's back as he disappeared with his skeleton soldiers. No matter how one looked at it, her eyes were like a beast whose territory had been invaded. 
It was this moment that the fierce battle for territory began. Spiritualist. This was an expression that was conveniently used to classify players who had the listener of all things as their halo and their ability to communicate with spirits was literally in the name. However, among the players, the evaluation of spiritualists wasn't very good. There were several reasons for that. Most spiritualists could only make a contract with one type of spirit they have excellent fighting abilities, but the consumption of their magic power to maintain that fighting ability was too high. Apart from skill rank they also needed to be born with a high spirit affinity and they needed the ability to materialize their imagination. In other words, there were too many conditions. However, the combat ability of a spiritualist who was able to satisfy all of these conditions was so high that they were practically equal to five or six players who had the Keeper of the Knowledge Fountain as their halo. It was Trinity, the Guild Master of the Great One Guild, who proved that fact. With her own hands, she proved how terrifying a spiritualist could be when they perfectly utilized three different types of spirits. Hence the power of Ellis Hyden who was called Trinity's successor was already far above most players at the same level. Go. And now she was showing that to the group of orcs that she was facing. Kara. The spirits, who received her orders, rushed forward to have a fierce battle with the orcs, together with the tanks. Roar. The orcs were confused by the appearance of these creatures and tried to attack them. However, the orcs' attack on the creatures made of fire spirits was the same as hitting fire with a stick. Whoosh! It was just like striking air. However, the hounds bit the orcs, slashed their arms, burned their skin and froze their souls. This caused even the orcs with strong wills to cry out in pain. The Ellis shouted once more. Sacrifice! Boom! After her shout, one of the spirit creatures exploded, creating a very chaotic battlefield. It was as if a grenade had exploded. But that was only the beginning. Afterwards, she detonated more of the spirit creatures that she'd created, including the ones that were still attached to the orcs. Naturally, that was the end of the battle. Stand back. Run away. The other members of her team quickly escaped this ridiculous display of firepower TL, and reckless. When the battle was over, the members of the Great One Guild were greeted with the sight of a battlefield where not even a single complete corpse could be found. No matter how many times I see it, it scares me. It was as that person said, this level of destruction was beyond frightening. With this much firepower, not to mention three floors, but even four floor dungeons would not be a problem. It's not the best class, but it truly is overwhelming. This was why the faces of all the members present were stiff. Of course, Ellis' reaction was different. She gave a bright smile when faced with the destruction she'd caused TL, Artisan Explosion. With the combination of King Arthur's ring and Merlin's staff, I could definitely challenge four floor dungeons. In a world where strength was the ultimate truth and goal, there was no reason for her to be upset. The only one who managed to clear a four floor before level 100 was the savior Lee Sejun. Furthermore, her control of herself enabled her to still keep the world's strongest in mind. After all, it was the strength she wanted to gain. Get ready to continue hunting. Naturally, she urged her team to prepare for the next hunt. She was trying to find victims to unleash an overflow of violence. It was then. A roar from a monster in the distance sounded in the ears of all the members from the Great One Guild. A battle. There's a battle ahead. There was no one there who couldn't understand what those sounds meant. Furthermore, the team had a good idea of who it might be. They could guess it even in their sleep. I can't believe Isaac Ivanov. It was Isaac Ivanov because there were no other groups who managed to cross paths with them. Furthermore, it wasn't the first time that they'd heard these sounds. Wasn't he hunting somewhere else a while ago? Is he hunting in front of us now? You're saying he's ahead of us. This is already the third. It was the third time, not the first or the second. In other words, this was the third time that Isaac Ivanov had overtaken the Great One Guild. When their thoughts had reached to that point, the eyes of every member on the team turned to Ellis and they could see. Get ready for the next hunt. The Gaze of a Fierce Beast. Chapter, 143. Day 2 of the Dungeon Attack. 
Six, 66 monsters have been hunted so far. The players, who were all hunting monsters, heard the notification which alerted them to their progress. It's over 6-0-0 already. And their first reaction was surprise. This hunting speed is no joke. 199 players from 9 different guilds. While this was not a small number, it was still surprising that they'd be able to hunt over 6-0-0 monsters by the second day. Of course, it wasn't just that they were surprised. This number. Instead, when they heard the notification, the leaders from the various guilds began doing calculations in their heads. I'm afraid we're lagging behind. At our speed getting to the top ranks will be difficult. They were trying to see where they were positioned among the groups. The competition might be stiff but there is no reason for us to run ourselves ragged. Well, I guess we'll just give up on the first floor. After finishing their calculations, some of them decided to give up on the competition. It was a smart choice. Was there a need for them to take risks to catch up to the leading teams when they were already so far ahead? There's still the second floor. Right now, the most important thing would be to conserve our power. This is a place that has failed more than once the most important thing would be to conserve our power. Moreover, this was an A-rank dungeon that had been failed multiple times before. No matter how valuable the rewards were, they couldn't be greater than the cost of their lives. Of course, not everyone thought that way. Boss, Isaac Ivanov is taking a break after hunting. Crick. However, instead of responding to her subordinate's report, Ellis Hyten simply grit her teeth. The sound caused the entire party to shut their mouths. After meeting Isaac Ivanov, the Great One Guild's team did not change their course rather, they even adjusted it a bit so that they were hunting monsters in the same direction as Isaac Ivanov. They intended to overtake him and make him see only the corpses of the monsters that they left behind. However, from the beginning, the Great One Guild's team had never overtaken Isaac Ivanov. Instead, they were the ones who were constantly being overtaken. This will be the sixth time. Not once, not twice, but six times. How the hell? In truth, it was hard for them to understand. His power is at the level that we expected. The Great One Guild had done full investigations to estimate Isaac Ivanov's level of strength. And the true ability that Isaac Ivanov showed coincided with what they had estimated. No, he's even weaker than we expected. If you wanted to be accurate, then from what they had seen, Isaac Ivanov's true power was actually lower than the estimation made by the guild. Usually, when measuring someone's strength, it was better to overestimate them to some extent. We're much stronger. Combined with the destructive powers of a monster like Ellis Hyten, the Great One Guild's team of elites were much more powerful than Isaac Ivanov. But somehow it seemed like the longer they hunted, the wider the gap between the two groups. Of course, it could just be a coincidence. He must be really lucky they're only meeting weak monsters. For example, if Isaac Ivanov's group only met with weak or small groups of monsters, then it was no wonder why they were so far ahead. In the first place, the Great One Guild's team wasn't moving the exact same route as Isaac Ivanov. They were only going in similar directions. So. However, in the eyes of the Great One Guild's team, even if that was really the case, they would not simply allow it to continue. Are we going to let him stay in front of us just because he's lucky? Sorry. It was still an unacceptable situation. You said he's resting ahead of us right? Yes. Good, then we'll take a break too. Although they could have chosen to hunt more monsters while Isaac Ivanov was resting and widening the distance between them, Ellis did not choose to do this. Instead, at that moment, she made up her mind. It would be better to rest while he is resting let's go say hello again. She was getting ready to have a proper race with Isaac Ivanov. You're hunting quite diligently. Kim Woo Jin was not surprised when the members of the Great One Guild walked out of the thick fog. A bite. There was no reason for him to be surprised when the fish started biting the baited hook. It was intentional. From the beginning, Kim Woo Jin had been hunting monsters in front of them with the intention of catching their attention. You're as amazing as the rumors say what's your secret. I was just lucky. In fact, the power of the skeleton soldiers that Kim Woo Jin had summoned was indeed behind that of the Great One Guild's team. 
The Great One Guild's judgment was correct. It's all thanks to Li Jino. However, Kim Wu Jin was able to maintain the lead because of the plan he had made with Li Jina beforehand. To put it simply, Kim Wu Jin was eating at a table prepared by Li Jina while the Great One Guild's team was still setting up their table. Even if the Great One Guild ate fast, they would still be unable to catch up to Kim Wu Jin. Li Jina is the only tank who can lure monsters in such a way. Of course, this wasn't a method that ordinary players would dare to try. No, they would specifically list it as a method that they would never try. No matter how good a tank is, they could not stand up to dozens of monsters. Therefore, the Great One Guild's team didn't even dare to imagine such a method. It must be nice to be lucky. However, they were still wondering if there was something else that Isaac Ivanov did not tell them about. That's why the members of the team were staring at Kim Woo Jin and his skeleton soldiers with wide eyes. There's definitely something else. Is it an item? No, it must be something else. Therefore, they stared at Isaac Ivanov, hoping to find a clue to what it might be. They were so blatant that Kim Woo Jin was able to figure out their intentions without even having to think about it. If I'm in the way, they'll go hunt somewhere else. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin gave them an offer. What? Ellis Hyten, who was subtly inspecting Kim Woo Jin's items, frowned at his words. If you're having issues hunting monsters because of me then it'll go to another place. It was said in a very polite tone. This bastard. However, his words were enough to cut deeply into the pride of the Great One Guild's team members. After all, wasn't Isaac Ivanov saying that he would basically pander to them? That won't be necessary. Of course, there were no signs of these thoughts on Ellis Hyten's face as she responded naturally. We need to hunt monsters anyway, so if you manage to hunt a lot of them then it's better for all of us. Furthermore, Ellis Hyten struggled to act like it was okay. She's taking it better than I expected. Kim Woo Jin laughed inwardly at her mixed expression. This was because Ellis Hyten did not have a patient personality this was a fact that was not just known to Kim Woo Jin. At this point, almost everyone knew that she had an extremely high level of competitiveness. In fact, it was one of the most basic conditions to become one of the best players. They all desired to be stronger than everyone else and they hated losing. Well, she should be at her limit now. What's more, for Ellis Hyten, this dungeon was like a birthday party a party where everything was organized just for her. Maybe I can make her explode now. Isaac Ivanov, the main culprit for ruining her party, then spoke. The ring that you're wearing, is that King Arthur's ring? What? If that is it, could you show me the properties of the item? Ellis Hyten's expression changed at those words. It was like her face had been cooled with ice. Her voice was the same. You're full of confidence. There was no emotion mixed into her voice when she said these words, so they sounded rather chilling. The members of her team flinched subconsciously. Of course, from Kim Woo Jin's perspective, it wasn't a big deal. Rather, because it was the reaction that he'd expected, Kim Woo Jin continued to speak the lines head prepared. My goal is to target as many uncleared three-floor dungeons as possible before heading to four-floor dungeons I'll do anything for that. So you need items to help you clear the uncleared dungeons. Ellis Hyten finally exploded at his words. Then why don't you give me an item instead huh? Give me that Van Gogh bracelet or whatever, and I'll go clear all those unconquerable dungeons. She fell for Kim Woo Jin's provocations, which caused the faces of the members of her team to stiffen. Oh my god. Van Gogh's bracelet is. In truth, one of the Great One Guild's objectives had been to retrieve the bracelet that Isaac Ivanov had in his possession and in such a situation, Ellis Hyten herself had mentioned the item. It would not be strange if the quarrel suddenly became a real fight. Isaac Ivanov is by no means a good person. Moreover, everyone knew that Isaac Ivanov had never claimed to have a good personality. This made the members of the Great One Guild's team very nervous. There might be a surprise attack. They began preparing for a battle that might occur at any moment. Just when the tension had reached its peak, Kim Woo Jin who seemed to be considering something, finally spoke. Well, it's not like I can't. Giving better items to better players, isn't that the surest way to increase our chances of clearing dungeons? 
That's right. Only. Ellis Hyten was surprised at his sudden acceptance. At that moment Kim Woo Jin continued. All right I will give Van Gogh's bracelet to whoever kills the boss monster in this dungeon. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin turned his eyes to look at Ellis Hyten again. If you agree with the phrase better players should get better items. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin's eyes turned to look at Merlin's staff that Ellis Hyten was holding in her hand. After a moment, Ellis responded. I agree. Chapter, 144. All players are the same. Famous players all had a very competitive spirit. It was only with this competitive spirit, combined with the possibility of obtaining legendary items, that allowed those players to challenge this a ranked dungeon, which had a much greater risk. Of course, those who had a high competitive spirit but no skill or good luck are mostly eaten by one and two floor dungeons. In other words, those renowned players who were active in three floor dungeons not only had the competitive spirit, but also the skills and the luck to go along with it. But some are different. Naturally, there were some players who considered themselves special. They believed that they were special enough to win whenever they sat at the poker table like the main character in a gambling movie. That's what they think, so they're willing to gamble. Kim Woo Jin knew exactly how to deal with these types of players and he knew it well. All it took was a soft push. Before returning to the past, the thing that he'd been best at before he joined the Messiah Guild was to dig into players' minds to get what he wanted from them. This time it was the same. From the moment that he'd targeted Ellis Hyten, Kim Woo Jin had come up with a plan to eat her and then executed it. First, he provoked her then he got her to take a seat at the table and make a bet. Even more so if they already made a bet. His plan went even more smoothly because of the fact that King Arthur's ring had already been placed as a bet. Because if a large bet had already been placed then one's judgment would already have changed when making other bets. In other words, it wasn't difficult for Kim Woo Jin to get Ellis Hyten to sit at his poker table. Of course, this was based on Kim Woo Jin's standards. Whoa. Li Jin Ah, who had heard these plans in advance, only had one thought at that moment. Kim Woo Jin, I shouldn't even play rock, paper with this bastard. Never gamble against Kim Woo Jin. After Ellis Hyten sat at the poker table, everything else would follow. Let's notarize it. Kim Woo Jin immediately called for other players and explained the situation to them. So the two of them made a bet. The better one will take Van Gogh's bracelet and Merlin's staff. The opinions of the guild members who heard this agreement were of course the same. Amazing they are true examples of players. I'll happily cheer you on. Of course, no one objected to the fact that the stakes had increased when they didn't have to bet. Rather, they encouraged it. Why don't we do that and set the priorities right here? Let's see who's better at hunting monsters. To see who hunts the monsters faster, this should be good. It would be better to compete on the first floor than the second floor don't you think? If necessary, we all will make the judgment. The Great One Guild and Isaac Ivanov would be fighting over the remaining 16, 00 monsters that must be hunted to clear the first floor. Naturally, their intentions weren't pure. I don't know just how powerful these two are, but looking at the situation it would be impossible to catch up with their hunting speed with just the power of our team. If we continue like this there's a high chance that these two will get first and second priority to attack the boss monsters if so it was better to let them have their chicken race since one of them would fall as a result. If they overdo it on the first floor then they'll have to pay the price on the second floor or third floor if they pay for it on the third floor then we have a chance. The intentions of those who were encouraging them were to have these two parties struggle on the first floor and then be forced to retire after. Both Kim Woo Jin and Ellis Hyten knew the intentions of these people nevertheless, they both willingly agreed. Good. Once you placed your bet, you couldn't come out of the game till the round was over. Alright, let's do this you will have 5 zero, zero each and you will compete to see who can hunt them all first. Hunting 5 zero, zero monsters. Of course, it was nonsense. How long will it take a party of about 20 to hunt 5 zero, zero monsters? Because there aren't any threatening monsters on the first floor shouldn't it be possible to kill one zero zero monsters a day? Then it would take five days. It was a difficult job to hunt five zero zero monsters with only twenty people. 
Well if they just had to hunt 500 monsters then it wouldn't be a problem but don't forget that this is a race. Moreover, hunting 500 monsters competitively was on a completely different level than at their own pace. It was the difference between completing a marathon race and being first in a marathon race. In Isaac Ivanov's case, it would be hard because it's only two of them. 2. Wasn't Isaac Ivanov alone? There's that big guy who always follows him around he is also a player. TL, finally someone noticed Argino. That's not a zombie or ghoul monster that Isaac summoned. Really? That's a player. What's his name? I think it's Bathsheba. His name is Thank You. Even then, Isaac Ivanov had a two-person group against a team of 20. Well, regardless of who wins, one side will be out. The competition was bound to be bloody. This was the reason that everyone was being so cooperative with this bet. If both of them fall, then it would be even better for us. It was a two-step plan, there was no reason for them to be generous when the strongest groups could fall at the same time, otherwise, they wouldn't be here. No, in the first place, Ellis Hyten and the members of the Great One Guild already knew all of this. Hunt 500 monsters quickly it is honestly a number that is impossible for other parties. It was obvious how ridiculous it was for 20 or so players to hunt 500 monsters in a short time frame. Nevertheless, none of them complained. Four ordinary guys. Instead, the members of the Great One Guild simply smiled when faced with such an objective. Right, let's show them the differences in power. It was a confident smile, and they immediately proved that confidence. In a dense forest covered with fog so thick that one would not even be able to see where they were walking, about 170 players gathered. The faces of these gathered players were all gorgeous. Most of them were as beautiful as celebrities and there were even some who surpassed celebrities so much that even famous Hollywood actors would approach them and ask for a selfie. However, the expressions on these beautiful faces were not good. Instead, everyone had the same stiff expression as though they were copying each other. No way, how does this make sense? One of them who could not hold the feeling in his heart for much longer, unknowingly voiced everyone's thoughts. As if it was a fuse, his words caused others to also begin letting out the thoughts that they hid inside. The Great One Guild created a monster. It was none other than the Great One Guild's team that made them have these expressions. Until six hours ago, the atmosphere had been quite lively. This was because the two most prominent candidates had decided to have a race with each other. The only issues they'd had at that time was that they could not see the self-destructive race properly because of the fog and that they didn't have any popcorn to eat while enjoying the show. However, that atmosphere had disappeared quite quickly after the Great One Guild's team began hunting in earnest. The team began hunting at a speed that far surpassed everyone's expectations. They literally began to massacre the monsters. I never thought spiritualists could be this strong. And at its center was Ellis Hyten. On a stage without any obstacles, she began to exert 120% of her ability. Using the enormous amount of mana that she got from the Merlin Staff and King Arthur's Ring combination, she generously began to summon a large number of spirits then she sacrificed these spirits just as generously. It's not just strong that firepower is on a whole new level. The firepower she showed was similar to that of a large army equipped with modern weapons. No monster group was able to last more than 10 minutes in front of the spirits that she summoned. The tanks and healers are also using tactics and strategies to maximize the power of Ella's firepower. This is impossible with just a day or two of training they must have been training for months. In addition, Ella's subordinates used the tactics that matched with her actions perfectly, maximizing her firepower as well as maintaining their combat efficiency. All this showed that they had been preparing for a very long time. She is on a completely different level from us. When this dungeon is over, this will change history. In front of the Great One Guild's team's combat power, the other players began to lower their heads. Everyone admitted that she and her team were on a completely different level compared to them. Our era will be Ellis' era. We can only be her sidekicks. Those who had been filled with confidence while thinking they were the best slowly began to feel their confidence getting crushed. Now I understand why the Great One Guild used King Arthur's ring as the prize. 
Of course, no one had any desire for King Arthur's ring anymore. I feel sorry for Isaac. Instead, they could only express their condolences to Isaac Ivanov who would be the sacrifice who helped her to get to level 100 with more praise and a higher evaluation than any other player. Three players emerged from the thick fog. It's Isaac's side. They were among those who had gone to count the monsters that Isaac Ivanov hunted. Only a few people showed interest in their arrival. Instead, everyone's attention was focused on the Great One Guild's team and Ellis Hyten. How is it on Isaac's side? The few that were interested asked for a report. How many? The three who appeared answered the question at the same time as though they had practiced beforehand. Only. This answer caused the others to tilt their heads in confusion. What? That's all he hunted. Did you make a mistake while counting? To this question, the three players still responded in one voice. There are sixty skeletons. Only then could the players see the expressions of the ones who had been counting on Isaac Ivanov's side. It was sheer astonishment at a sight that had transcended even their wildest imaginations. Chapter 145 When Kim Woo-jin had planned to challenge the Forest of the Dead Dungeon, he had not anticipated a situation where some of the most talented players below level 100 would come to attack the dungeon as well. The situation he had imagined was one where the US government filled the dungeon with nothing but strange players in a bid to make Isaac Ivanov fail his challenge. Because of this, Kim Woo-jin and Lee Jina's attack plans for the dungeon were as if they were the only ones there. In other words, Kim Woo-jin was confident. Even without the other 197 players, himself and Lee Jina, just two players, would be enough to clear the forest of the dead dungeon. Rattle. The source of this confidence was the sixty skeletons before his eyes right now. The most that I can summon with my current magic power is sixty even then it's practically impossible to maintain. It was confidence that stemmed from his skeleton warrior mastery skill, which had reached the transcendent rank. Moreover, it wasn't just the skeleton soldiers. Most of the skeleton soldiers had decent weapons in their hands, some of them were even fully armored. It was also not just a lot of low-grade weapons as that's were even a considerable amount of unique items. Among the players in the dungeon at that time, it would be hard to find a player with better equipment than one of the fully armored skeleton soldiers. It was a sight that was impossible to see anywhere else. This reminds me of the past. On the other hand, for Kim Woo-jin, this was a sight that he was actually quite familiar with. This was how it looked whenever I fought Johann George. Whenever he fought against the King of Undead, he would be faced with a similar scene to what he was seeing now. Of course, it was different from then. The scene itself was familiar, but at that time, Kim Woo-jin had been facing off against the skeletons, but this time, the skeletons had their backs to him. This is how it feels. The scene that Kim Woo-jin was seeing now was the very scene that the King of Undead saw. It was the first time that Kim Woo-jin had been able to understand the King of Undead a little. His arrogance was warranted. Why he behaved so arrogantly. If you could still remain humble after seeing this then there must be something wrong with you. He had to admit that the King of Undead's arrogance was natural when he had an army of undead at his command. It was then. The thick fog began to quiver. Do do do. And within that quivering fog, a multitude of footsteps could be heard speedily approaching. Spasiba. Then Li Jina's voice was heard. The sound came from the footsteps of the group of around 200 orcs that were chasing after Li Jina. At the sound, Kim Wu Jin smiled and gave his skeletons their orders. The slaughter began. In an era where everyone was interested in dungeon attacks, the attack on an A dungeon was bound to attract a lot of attention. Of course, that interest only lasted until the players entered the dungeon gate. After the players entered the dungeon, the interest diminished greatly. This was natural. When watching a three-hour movie, it was normal to do other things or turn your head when it was at a boring part instead of watching it, especially when you didn't know how long it would take. However, the attack on the Dead Forest dungeon was different. On the fourth day after the players had entered the dungeon, the world was still full of news about the dead forest. Two legendary items up for grabs. What will the other guilds bet? The reason for that was the pot that had been started for the dead forest dungeon. This was understandable. 
An hour before the dungeon attack had started, Isaac Ivanov had bet Wilhelm Tell's crossbow as a prize and when the players had entered the dungeon, the public began asking the other participating guilds. The Great One Guild bet King Arthur's ring and Isaac Ivanov bet Wilhelm Tell's crossbow, what are you going to bet? At first, these guilds tried to avoid answering. Honestly, you can't eat for free. That's right, they should at least pay an entrance fee. You pay then you eat, so they should pay. Absolutely, even if it's not a legendary item, they should still bet some money. However as time passed, the public opinion created an atmosphere which forced the other participating guilds to also bet. From the public standpoint, they were not losing anything anyway so they encouraged the guilds even more tl, sound familiar? And of course, there were those who encouraged the public opinion behind the scenes. Oh Seichan was one of these people. An article appeared the Frontier Guild has offered 10 million in prize money. Million dollars? Yes it seems they cracked under the pressure in particular, it seems the article in the New York Times had the biggest effect I was worth lobbying for. He made use of all his power in order to create an atmosphere that would make the others have no choice but to also make bets. It was worth it the Frontier Guild intends to wash their mouth with just 10 million dollars. That's not good enough hey, bring my keyboard. Why do you suddenly want the keyboard? I have to go post on SNS1. Post. MHM I'm going to write Frontier Guild Bastards, if you're gonna bet then bet 100 million dollars when you want to write, you gotta do it fast. In fact, Oh Seichan was enjoying this atmosphere quite a bit. This is why scammers love soft pokes we are going to win anyway, it would be better to force the stakes. Wasn't this a situation where they were using the public opinion to force the other guilds to make bets when they were already assured of Kim Woo Jin's victory? As long as it was free, it would be strange for Oh Seichan to eat fugu too, raw and not enjoy it. What's the payout on Kim Woo Jin at now? It's 328. Three times. Oh Seichan was even betting on Kim Woo Jin on a UK gambling site that was hosting bets on the Dead Forest's clearance. If I manage to get this payout, I'll shoot once properly yeah, it'll treat you guys at a Chinese restaurant once we'll have Tang Suyuk 3. Are you serious? Tang Suyuk. Oh my god, are you really shooting Tang Suyuk? He was so caught up in the atmosphere that he even made promises that everyone would be surprised to see him fulfill. Right, Tang Suyuk, we'll have it sweeter too. He could not stop saying surprising things without hesitation. It's really worth it to believe in Kim Woo Jin Bahaha. It was around that time. Th Dash, the The Great One Guild's guild master made an announcement on a talk show. Sudden news came in. Guild Master Trinity. What did she say? She released Ellis Hyten's item setting. Item setting. Ellis Hyten has a set of King Arthur's ring and Merlin's staff. The moment he heard their names, the information about those two items appeared in Oh Seichan's head. Before long, his eyes widened in astonishment. No, doesn't this mean that even players attacking six-floor dungeons might not have items as good as Ellis Hyten now? Wait, she has these two items together. Then. After finishing his calculations, Oh Seichan turned to his subordinate. Hey, can the money that was bet on that site be refunded halfway? I don't think so. Oh Seichan shouted in frustration at those words. Those dirty little bastards in the Great One Guild don't know how to play fair. After his useless outburst, Oh Seichan let out a long sigh. Kim Woo Jin will do well, won't he? Fugu can be lethally poisonous due to its tetrodotoxin, meaning it must be carefully prepared to remove toxic parts and to avoid contaminating the meat. The restaurant preparation of fugu is strictly controlled by law in Japan and several other countries. And only chefs who have qualified after three or more years of rigorous training are allowed to prepare the fish domestic preparation occasionally leads to accidental death. Chapter, 146 Isaac Ivanov has completed his 5-0-0. Kane Young, a player from the Messiah Guild who confirmed the fallen monster's death, looked at the scene in front of him. In fact, there wasn't much to see because of the thick fog. However, there were hundreds of monster corpses strewn on the ground. What could be seen, was the blazing eyes of the skeletons who stood among these monster corpses. More than 100 such eyes turned to stare at Kane. 
At that moment, Kane Young couldn't help but recall the battle that had just taken place. The memories of the monsters giving up the fight, try to flee, and eventually being annihilated flashed by. Gulp. Kane Young swallowed down his saliva unconsciously. It was because of what he'd seen from the skeleton soldiers. In fact, it was enough to make everyone in the three floor dungeon, including those from the Messiah Guild, swallow their saliva. No, he had stopped at the level of swallowing saliva only because he was a pretty talented player and a member of the Messiah Guild who had partaken in many fierce battles. To finish hunting five zero zero monsters in three days. If he was an ordinary player then he would have already peed himself after witnessing just what these skeletons were capable of for three days. I never thought that it would end so perfectly. The skeleton soldiers were completely overwhelming in the fights that he was unable to find any flaws. The numbers, tactics and strategies are all perfect they're better than us. In Kane Young's eyes, the battles that had witnessed with Isaac Ivanov controlling his skeletons wasn't a sprint like speed skating, instead, it was like a figure skating routine that received a perfect score. Of course, this was all subjective and because of the dense fog, there was a possibility that it was exaggerated. Isaac could probably clear a low rank three floor dungeon single handedly. But even while taking that into account, Isaac Ivanov was already overwhelming enough on his own to be completely incomparable to other players of the same level. This fact was proved by none other than Ellis Hyten. After receiving and confirming the results, she simply said one thing. I recognize you as number one. Even she, who was filled with self-confidence and pride, had no choice but to bow her head toward the results shown by Isaac Ivanov. Then Isaac Ivanov will be the first to challenge. Well, if he shows this level of skill, there's no reason for us to disagree. No one was dissatisfied by Isaac Ivanov taking the first spot when even she had been forced to agree. Of course, no one would have any complaints. Isaac Ivanov is first so we should change our plans. It's an unexpected situation but we can't just let him have it now that four legendary items are up for grabs. It's still the first floor there will be plenty of opportunities. The players still looked on with their hyena-like eyes, waiting for an opportunity to come to them. And so the dungeon attack continued. Hunt the earth turtle to move on to the next floor. After clearing the first floor and heading to the second, the first things that greeted the players were a notification and an even thicker fog than on the first floor. This fog is even thicker than on the first floor. Damn we can't see anything like this. Noticing this, the players immediately began to complain. This dissatisfaction was actually proof that they were all talented and experienced. Hunt an earth turtle in a place like this. Let's all do this right we might get stuck here for a ridiculous amount of time. The fog was so dense that they were unable to easily see even the person in front of them. Rather than searching for a turtle, it was hard for the players to even find each other. Even if players secretly contacted each other to plot something, there was no way of knowing. Not bad. We can contact each other here without need to pay too much attention to our surroundings. Naturally, the players made use of that fact. Then let's split up and find the earth turtle. The earth turtle will hide deep into the ground when it feels threatened, so if you find it, send the signal to everyone. Don't forget to gather once a day in the designated spot. As the players agreed in advance, they scattered to find the earth turtle. And conversations immediately began everywhere. They started plotting. Jay Jackson, a member of the Frontier Guild, was the same. Ellis. On the second day after entering the second floor of the dungeon, Jay Jackson, who was short and dark-skinned, came to the Great One Guild's team by himself. When he appeared, Ellis heightened beckoned to her team, who immediately moved to secure the perimeter. Only after they were alone, did Ellis Heighton open her mouth. I'm in a very bad mood right now so you better not be here to talk about some random bullshit. Ellis Heighton's sharp glare was quite intimidating. If a normal player saw it, they would probably get cold sweat. Right, I'm here alone because I know how you're feeling if I wanted to tickle your temper then I would have put a note on an arrow and shot it at you. But Jay Jackson was also an above average player. He was one of the top five players in the Frontier Guild below level 100. This was proved by the fact that he had come to discuss on his own. He also had the experience of clearing several dungeons with Ellis Hyten. 
So what do you want to say? That's why the conversation wasn't prolonged. I will help you clear this dungeon. Ellis lifted her chin, signaling him to continue talking. I don't want to see some Russian guy take away the precious legendary items from the United States. Jay Jackson continued explaining at the signal. First if he really manages to clear this dungeon then you are not the only ones who will be cursed I'm sure that it'll be called by those at the top and blamed the worst will be the public opinion the forest of the dead is not just an A-ranked dungeon. What's your plan? Jay Jackson shrugged at Ellis Hyten's words. Is there any other way? If Isaac fails, then you're next. You're going to interfere with his hunt. Jay Jackson waved at those words. That's such a stretch to call it interference, why don't you call it an inevitable accident instead? You know. How is it interference if Isaac Ivanov is fighting the boss monster on the third floor and a roaming monster suddenly appears? It's an inevitable accident. After hearing Jay Jackson's words, Ellis Hyten let out a short sigh before deciding what to do. Fuck it. Honestly, it was not a very pleasant offer for her. Since the very first time she entered a dungeon, she had never lost. When it came to poker, it was like she received a straight flush every time. That was why she was not afraid of betting. But what could she do when her opponent had a royal flush in their hand? I didn't think it would come to this. The bigger problem was that she didn't know that and made even more bets. If even Merlin's staff is lost then it won't end in just an interrogation. It was a situation where they might not be able to survive if they truly lost that item because of bets. Of course, all of this was dependent on Isaac Ivanov's successful clearance of the dungeon. What do you want? That was why she couldn't dare to reject Jay Jackson's offer. Wilhelm tells Crossbow. Jay Jackson also knew that, so without any hesitation, he asked for a legendary item. The conversation ended with Ellis Hyten reaching out to grab Jay Jackson's hand. It was at that moment. The earth turtle has been hunted. Move on to the next floor. Huh. What? Suddenly the situation became shaky. Earth turtle. Its body was about three meters long and it was almost impossible to distinguish from a large boulder. They were also known to excel in digging, being able to bury their large bodies, which were never small, deep into the grounds. They were even turtles who were able to run at 40 km per hour. Such running ability was normally used to run away. At the same time, it was effective for crushing their enemies. That was why earth turtles were fairly difficult to hunt among monsters around the same level. Therefore, there was a rule to avoid approaching it unless you have a reason to. Q. Such a turtle was now groaning while covered in wounds. Cool. And Li Jina, who was in front of it, was also covered in wounds. Li Jina's injuries were quite severe. His entire body was covered in wounds and even his right rib was cracked. Are you okay? Kim Wu Jin, who usually wouldn't waste his saliva to ask, came up to him and about his condition. Of course, his wounds were severe but the situation was not serious. My rib is broken, could I be okay? Damn, if it wasn't for the blessing of river sticks, I would have died a hundred times. In front of the blessing of the river sticks, the skill that gave near immortality, these wounds could not be considered fatal. Of course, although the wounds weren't fatal, the pain wouldn't disappear. Ugh. After Li Jina groaned and took out a chocolate bar from his inventory and started eating it. Since I've known you, blessing of river sticks has gone up by three ranks three ranks. While eating, he complained to Kim Wu Jin. And before I reach level 100, Blessing of the River Styx will probably reach the transcendent rank. He was dissatisfied with Kim Wu Jin's performance. However, Kim Wu Jin smiled at the complaint. You're laughing now. Following Li Jina's question, Kim Wu Jin's smile came off of his face. No. No, what no? I saw you smile. Instead of answering, Kim Wu Jin simply covered his face with the Grim Reaper's mask. You didn't treat me like this to purposely raise the rank of the blessing of the river sticks did you? After a moment of silence, Kim Wu Jin finally responded. Of course not. No. Then why were you so happy? You're mistaken. I don't think I'm mistaken. 
That was the end of the conversation for him. Is it fine that we caught it this fast? In fact, what was important now was that they'd hunted the turtle. Won't those other guilds complain? Without notifying the other guilds. It was a violation of what they'd agreed to before. Of course, there was a reason why Kim Woo Jin hunted the turtle without notifying them. There's no reason to give time and space to those who try to screw us over. Kim Woo Jin knew that the other guilds were plotting to hinder him. It was impossible for him to not know. This was because if Kim Woo Jin had not gotten first place, he would have conspired to get an opportunity by interfering with the first place. In any case, Kim Woo Jin needed to move on to the third floor of the dungeon as soon as possible. Then what will we do on the third floor? Of course, the only thing that Kim Woo Jin could do was reduce the amount of time for those who wanted to interfere. They'll obviously bother us anyway, right? It was impossible to block their intentions. They would use any means available to hinder Kim Woo Jin's hunt. Kim Woo Jin's response to that was simple. They will bother us, but they still have to follow at least one rule. Rule. It's that we have the first priority the others can't attack the boss until we die or officially give up the hunt. What does that mean? In other words, as long as we stay alive and don't officially give up the hunt, they can't do anything, the boss monster. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin remembered the information he learned about the Forest of the Dead dungeon before he returned to the past. And on the third floor of the dungeon, there will be black fog which consumes stamina. As soon as he recalled that bit of information, Kim Woo Jin smiled. They will beg us to hunt the Dullahan. Chapter, 147 Every living creature has a survival instinct which gives them a sign whenever they encounter a crisis. Moving on to the next floor. The first time the players received a signal was when the second floor of the dungeon was suddenly cleared. Someone caught the earth turtle. Was there a signal? Players couldn't help but be shocked at the sudden appearance of the floor clearance notification. And it was in such a state that they arrived on the third floor where all they could see was black fog. The black fog is consuming your vitality. Black fog. The player's survival instincts sent them an even stronger signal when they entered this black fog that was slowly consuming their vitality. This black fog is dangerous. Did we prepare enough for poison? If we make the wrong move then we might die before we even get a chance to fight. The players moved in response to the repeated signals from the survival instincts telling them to get out of these as fast as possible. First we'll need to search for the boss monster. In order to get out of there as quickly as possible, they started looking for the boss monster on the third floor. So they could know. Dullahan. The monster that had wounded America's pride. Dullahan. This monster, who was only around two meters tall, wore black armor and carried its head around did not give off a strong sense of intimidation from its appearance. It might sound ridiculous to the general public, but for the players who had to face giant monsters like the golden lion or ogres, this two meter tall monster did not seem that threatening. Nevertheless, the Dullahan was recognized by the players as an object of fear from the moment its presence was revealed. There were several reasons for this. The biggest advantage that undead monsters had was that they didn't have any known weaknesses. When a Dullahan killed a player, they would become a zombie that would be under the Dullahan's direct control. Moreover, when exposed to the baleful aura exuded by the Dullahan's head for too long, the player's skin would begin to rot and come apart. However it wasn't just the fact that it was a horrific monster to fight, it was also because of the words left behind by the very first player to successfully slay a Dullahan. It wasn't easy. The Dullahan had become a monster that the players never wanted to face after the first Dullahan hunter and guild master of the Messiah Guild, Lee Sejun, said those words in an interview. Rattle. And it was a Dullahan that was now wandering around the dead forest dungeon's third floor atop a skeleton horse. Ah. Gah. Followed by a horde of zombies made from the players he had killed before. This is the worst. This was why no one refuted Jay Jackson's words. A Dullahan is a Dullahan, but the zombies are just as troublesome. The Dullahan itself was already incredibly difficult to hunt but the 300 or so zombies that trailed behind it were just as big of a problem. Zombies weren't exactly difficult monsters to hunt. It wasn't that their attack was much higher than the average monster or their defense was better. 
Instead, it was the fact that, like other undead type monsters, there were no obvious weaknesses. It would still be alive even if you cut off all its limbs, it didn't feel pain and it couldn't die from excessive bleeding or poison. It would take a lot of time to hunt them all. In other words, the zombies weren't particularly difficult to kill, they just took a lot of time and stamina. There are faces that I recognize. Moreover, among the faces of the zombies, the players noticed other players who had entered the dungeon before them. Naturally, these zombies were properly armored. They couldn't be compared to ordinary zombies as they had items and armor that were at least of the rare quality. Of course, there was nothing that couldn't be hunted if necessary if given enough time, these players were confident in their ability to successfully hunt these zombies without receiving much damage. But now the black fog had made it clear to the players. The problem is, we don't have much time. They didn't have much time at their disposal. How long can you hold on? When she heard Jay Jackson's question, Ellis Heighton replied immediately as though she had already completed the calculations. Up to a week after that, we'll have to reduce stamina consumption what about you? We are in a similar situation we have plenty of food but there isn't enough cure for this poison our healer's cure skills are also limited. It was then. Isaac Ivanov has made a move. At the words of the scouting team, Jay Jackson and Ellis Heighton looked at each other. In that state, Jay asked a single question. What do you want to do? He asked Ellis Heighton if she was ready to throw the dice, to which Ellis calmly replied. We don't have much time, so we need to make him fail as quickly as possible. When he heard that, Jay nodded. Then let's lure the monsters. They threw the die. When Isaac Ivanov began his battle with the Dullahan, the other players had the same expectations. Isaac Ivanov started hunting. He'll probably work to reduce the number of zombies first. That Isaac Ivanov's primary goal was to reduce the zombie population. As they expected, Isaac Ivanov and his skeletons launched their attacks against the group of zombies instead of directly at the Dullahan. But it will be much more difficult if he just leaves the Dullahan alone, so he'll probably do something to buy time. Will it be his teammate Siba who takes on the job? It could be a skeleton knight. In addition, they predicted that Isaac would distract the Dullahan so that he could hunt the zombies more easily. Isaac Ivanov behaved just as they expected. The skeleton knight and Li Jina alternatively faced off against the Dullahan to buy some time while the skeleton soldiers slowly and steadily whittled down the number of zombies in the group. So the players who were watching the battle were able to commentate easily. It will take a long time. Time is time, but there can't be any mistakes even the smallest gap will make it all collapse. What weaknesses could be found in Isaac Ivanov's battle and what moments were the most dangerous? The worst part is that it takes time to get rid of all the zombies and then it takes even more time to handle the Dullahan, which might cause variables to appear. For example, if a group of roaming monsters heard the battle and showed up. They predicted the worst situations that Isaac Ivanov could encounter. In fact, they expected it. There's no way the Great One Guild wouldn't know that. For the Great One Guild who has the most to lose, they will definitely do something. Someone would deliberately organize the worst possible scenario. Of course, they didn't utter these predictions out loud. If Isaac Ivanov fails, we will have a chance too. Therefore they hoped for the worst outcome. And their wishes soon became a reality. Over 200 monsters have entered the battlefield. The worst situation unfolded and everyone turned their eyes to Isaac Ivanov. They wanted to see how Isaac Ivanov, who was faced with the worst possible situation, would react and what choices he would make. Faced with such a situation, Isaac Ivanov acted without hesitation. He's retreating. The skeletons are falling back. Isaac Ivanov retreated. Chapter, 148. They're retreating. A player from the Great One Guild who was monitoring the situation within the Black Fog with a skill announced to everyone. The skeleton soldiers are retreating. Ellis Hyten, who had been waiting for the information, lifted the corner of her mouth slightly. He's a smart guy. Jay Jackson, who was standing beside her, made a comment of his own. It's smarter to make a safe decision than to die no matter how valuable legendary items are, they aren't worth your life. That was the end of their conversation about him. Get ready for battle it's our turn. 
Ellis immediately ordered her men to prepare for the battle and the members of the Great One Guild sprung into action. The same was true for Jay Jackson. Support the Great One Guild. Everyone showcased their determination to win the upcoming battle. This caused the atmosphere in the clearing to become incredibly tense and heavy. It was then. The fight hasn't ended. Words seemed to come out of nowhere. What the hell are you talking about? Ellis Hyten reacted strongly to those words and immediately turned her head to look at the speaker. This isn't the time for Joe Isaac. Isaac Ivanov, the man who wore the skeleton mask, appeared before her eyes. H- How are you here? Kim Woo Jin's appearance surprised her. In fact, she wasn't the only one surprised. When did he get here? Is it possible to approach us without anyone noticing like this? All of the players from the Great One Guild and the Frontier Guild were staring at Kim Woo Jin, who had suddenly appeared, with horrified gazes. Impossible. It was the same for Jay Jackson, who had unsheathed his sword and pointed it toward Kim Woo Jin the moment he noticed him. This showed that he felt threatened by Kim Woo Jin's presence. It wasn't without reason. They had just set a trap for Isaac Ivanov, so from his perspective, killing them could be considered self-defense. And Isaac Ivanov had now penetrated their group without even the slightest trace. What would have happened if Isaac Ivanov had chosen to attack Ellis Hyten just now instead of speaking? Gulp. Those who imagined it couldn't help but swallow their saliva. Still standing among them, Isaac Ivanov spoke. The fight hasn't ended so please wait your turn. It was said in a polite tone, but no one thought the words were polite. Don't be ridiculous you have already given up the battle. After a while, Ellis Hyten was the one who broke the silence. That's right battle isn't like a wine bar there's no such thing as leaving behind a drink for later. Immediately afterward, Jay Jackson lowered his sword and backed up Ellis with his words. There was an accident, but you still gave up fighting and withdrew all of your troops that's usually called defeat. Kim Woo Jin didn't respond to their words. Instead, he simply lifted his index finger to his mask-covered lips. Shu, everyone went silent at the gesture. As the surrounding sound subsided, sounds began to drift over from the distance. Clang. It was the sound of fighting. At the sound, Ellis Hyten turned her head towards the direction, which happened to be where the Dullahan was located. Naturally, all she could see was the black fog. The player who used their skill to look through the black fog on her behalf quickly informed her of the situation. The, the fight hasn't ended. What? Skell Dash, a skeleton knight is attacking the Dullahan with a crossbow. When they heard these words, one name came to everyone's minds. Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. A legendary item whose bolts chased after a target following one successful hit. It was enough. Really? To understand just what Isaac Ivanov was thinking at that moment. We're still in battle the skeleton soldier's retreat is to make tactical changes according to the current circumstances. It was also why Ellis Hyten and Jay Jackson could not refute Isaac Ivanov's words. In any case, as he'd said, he was still fighting. So wasn't this still a situation where his priority to attack the Dullahan was still in effect? I'll summon additional skeletons, and once I've properly equipped all my troops, I will try to attack again. Furthermore, he expressed his willingness to continue fighting. It might take some time, but there are no time limits so I will not listen to any objections regarding that. Regardless of how many horse know, even if it took a few days, he was still willing to fight. You crazy bastard! This place is filled with black fog. At that moment, Ellis could no longer hold back her anger and shouted. There is only a limited amount of time to fight. But you are here wasting it like this. Are you kidding me? Isaac Ivanov responded simply. That's your problem I can stay here for at least a month. A month in this poison mist. That's impossible ah. At that time, Isaac Ivanov's personal information began to run through Ellis Hyten's head and in the process, she remembered his very first nickname. The First Needle Snake Hunter Isaac Ivanov had been able to hunt the needle snake which had an incredibly ferocious poison mist. When he noticed her worry, Kim Woo Jin assured her. Don't worry, if there aren't any special accidents or interruptions then I won't need to fight for a month. TL, Mike Drop 
And with those words, Kim Woo Jin once again disappeared into the black fog. In dungeons, the laws and morals that governed the outside world were not used at all. The only things that had any sway were the rules that the players had created themselves. Therefore, it was incredibly important that these rules were adhered to by everyone otherwise, in the event that the rules were ignored, the dungeons would become lawless zones which were always incredibly chaotic. Among these rules, the order and priority for dealing with boss monsters were the most important. The act of ignoring the order was considered an act of hostility against the rightful placeholder, toward the guild that they belonged to and even toward their country. Such actions were taken as provocation. Therefore, there was a clear standard for the transfer of priority. If a party or player with priority dies. If they give up their priority voluntarily. If they are being one-sidedly destroyed and it can no longer be seen as a valid battle. And if the priority holder loses control of the monster and it attacks another party. In the last case, it was deemed that the priority had been lost and would be transferred to the next in line. So what about Isaac Ivanov's current situation? What's the status of Isaac's party? No casualties. First of all, there were no casualties. What about their will to fight? Unwavering. Second, it did not seem like he was going to voluntarily declare his surrender. What about the strength that they have left? Most of their power is still available. In addition, thanks to the timely retreat of the skeletons, he was able to maintain his power almost at his peak. What about their control over the boss? They're controlling the aggro so much that the Dullahan looks pitiful. Finally, they were controlling the Dullahan's aggro so perfectly that the other guilds could not even try to steal it. Then we'll have to admit their priority. For these reasons, everyone was forced to accept Isaac Ivanov's priority. Only one, Ellis Hyten was different. What ridiculous bullshit. She could not accept this fact at all. This way, Isaac Ivanov can hunt the boss for a whole month. And she wasn't exactly wrong. If they were to accept that Isaac Ivanov's current fighting was valid then, as she said, it was likely that he would monopolize the boss monster. This is beyond controversy. The other guilds also admitted that it was quite controversial. That's why it might not be smart to take action. Which caused the situation to be even more of a problem. I'm sure Isaac Ivanov would be able to resist. The controversial point was that it wasn't just Ellis Hyten, but also Isaac Ivanov, who might have something to say. This meant that if they imposed restrictions on Isaac Ivanov or deprived him of his priority, then he would fight against it. He's insane. And Isaac Ivanov was the type of man who would express his displeasure using action instead of words. He's a ridiculously monstrous psycho. More importantly, Isaac Ivanov was on a completely different level from them. Everyone had already felt this on the first floor. To make him an enemy here. Besides, was it smart to fight Isaac Ivanov there in dead forest with the black fog as well as the dreadful Dullahan and its group of zombies? There's no reason to do that unless you're crazy. In all honesty, no player wanted to make that choice. And even if we did it, that doesn't mean that we'd get a reward anyway. The second priority goes to the Great One Guild and the Frontier Guild has already decided to support them in the end, won't they be able to hunt the Dullahan if it's their turn? We don't have a chance anyway. Those below the third group had almost no chance of even being able to fight, and even if they did, it was impossible to tell exactly when that would happen. And it was impossible to estimate just how much damage they would have taken from the Black Fog. Well, even if we don't get a chance here, it doesn't mean that we lost anything. The most important point was that the other guilds weren't suffering a big loss if Isaac Ivanov was the one to slay the Dullahan. The only one who bet a legendary item was the Great One Guild and the other guilds didn't bet anything. Then the discussions ended. I would rather get nothing than come to blows with Isaac Ivanov. No need to step onto a sinking ship. At that time, the scales in everyone's minds were already shifted irreversibly. Only. Of course, this was what Kim Woo Jin expected. They should be done with their calculations. Before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin had dealt with even more jackals than these few. In the end, they need to choose to take whatever action benefits them the most. So there was no way he couldn't know how to handle this group. Now, I can hunt without interruption. 
That was why Kim Woo-jin didn't hesitate any longer. I'm going to start hunting the Dullahan. Chapter 149 When dealing with a boss monster, the most important thing was to have control over that boss monster. One needed to manage what was commonly called aggro. Failing to control this was the same as a beast master failing to control his beast in a cage. So what happened if they failed to control it properly? Well, in that case, they'd have to run away immediately. Of course, the opposite was also true. A good trainer was able to control any beast. Furthermore, they were able to train them to do whatever they wanted. In the same sense, a good hunter could control any boss monster. The skeleton knight is perfectly controlling the Dullahan's aggro. And at that moment, the skeleton knight was showing a textbook example of how it was done. Kyaha. While riding on a skeleton wolf, the skeleton knight continued to attack the Dullahan with Wilhelm Tell's crossbow, causing it to be unable to focus on anything else. At the same time, it maintained the perfect distance while giving the impression that it was easy to attack. From the Dullahan's perspective, it couldn't help but chase after it. It was the perfect example of control. Now we just have to lure it away. Then, as stated earlier, it was time to train it to do exactly what they wanted. It was not difficult. Let's split them up. One of the reasons that the Dullahan was hard to fight was because of the large zombie army following it. In other words, if the Dullahan could be separated from its zombie army, then the chance of success would be much higher. And the gap was already visible. Ah! Unlike the Dullahan who was on a horse, the zombies following him had a hard time chasing after the skeleton knight. To an extent, the Dullahan was already moving outside of the range of the zombie army. Of course, this was done intentionally. And naturally, Kim Woo Jin knew the best card to play at this moment. Summon Golem. A Golem has been summoned. Golem. The moment the earthen giant appeared, it blocked the group of zombies who were chasing after the Dullahan. Ah! With the appearance of this golem, the zombie's target naturally changed. Ah! And the Dullahan, which had been chasing after the skeleton knight all this while also switched its attention to the golem. As soon as the skeleton knight lost control over the Dullahan, a new card appeared to capture the Dullahan's attention. A white light fluttered in the black fog. Siba. Li Jina appeared with the heavenly dragon sword in his hand. The Dullahan didn't budge after noticing Li Jin AHS arrival there were no signs of any intention to run away. Instead, it turned its steed to face Li Jin A and lifted its sword into the air. Hong. He struck toward Li Jin A who was rushing toward him. Neither of them seemed to have defense in mind. Shiba. With a shout filled with determination, Li Jin A swung the heavenly dragon sword at the Dullahan's body while seeming to ignore the Dullahan's sword which seemed to want to cut him in half. Before long, the two blades struck their targets. Crack! Dullahan's sword smashed Li Jin Ahs left shoulder armor and crushed his shoulder blade. Li Jin A's heavenly dragon sword also penetrated into the chest of the Dullahan. Clang! It was in this state that Li Jin A's body slammed into the horse that the Dullahan was riding. Nay. The force of the blow caused the horse to stagger a bit as it lost its balance. Thud. At that moment, Li Jina once again attempted to tackle the Dullahan's horse. Li Jina's voice was filled with pain due to the fact that he already had an injured shoulder. However, he did not intend to stop. Over and over again, he shook the Dullahan's body by continuously colliding with the horse. Faced with such an offensive, the Dullahan was finally forced to make use of its head. Juck! The Dullahan's head, which had been held on its left side, opened its previously closed mouth and began to make bizarre sounds. Kaya ha 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 ha! Following the grotesque sound that could only be described as a ghostly wail, an unspeakably cold air began to flow from the Dullahan's body. You have been paralyzed by the energy of the dead. The energy of the dead which were able to free not only the body of the living but also their intellect. This was why the Dullahan was a monster that surpassed the golden lion. The moment one was exposed to the cold air, their bodies would become paralyzed and their minds would go still. Moreover, the chill that this Dullahan was exuding was much stronger than that of ordinary Dullahans. 
the energy of the dead has been strengthened by an unknown force. Even those who wore items in preparation to face the Dullahan would be frozen. However, when facing this chill, Li Jina did nothing but laugh. Lancelot's ring negates the energy of the dead. This item is really amazing. Lancelot's ring. In front of this ring, only direct attacks would work. Kaya ha ha ha. Upon seeing this, the Dullahan's head opened its mouth wider and screamed even louder. There was no such thing as running away to the fearless Dullahan instead, he intended to crush his opponent with even greater force. As such, the Dullahan opened its mouth as wide as it could and began building its power. Kook. At that moment, a spear appeared from within the black fog and pierced the Dullahan's open mouth. At the same time, a glimmer appeared within the mist. Kim Wu Jin, wearing the cloak made from the desert chameleon's leather and wielding Percival's spear, appeared. The moment the Dullahan's head opened its mouth all the way, is the best time to attack. After a moment, Kim Wu Jin pulled the spear back, bringing the Dullahan's head with it. Kahak, hahak, hahak. As the Dullahan's head began to make a series of bizarre sounds after being pierced by the spear, Kim Wu Jin quickly retreated. Li Jina also retreated after retrieving the heavenly dragon sword that had been stuck in Dullahan's chest. At the same time, the zombies, who had successfully destroyed the golem, rushed over to protect the Dullahan. Those who used their skills to observe from a distance could only watch on in admiration. The timing was perfect. What's the situation? Isaac Ivanov stole the Dullahan's head. It had taken less than a minute for the golem to be defeated by the zombie army they couldn't help but feel admiration for Kim Woo Jin's ability to design and carry out an operation which took away the Dullahan's head. Which was one of the most troublesome elements, in such a short time frame. Of course, the Dullahan had no intention of letting Kim Woo Jin simply run away with its head. Seeming to understand its master's wishes, the Dullahan's horse let out a shrill sound and prepared to chase after Kim Woo Jin. It was then. P.U.K. An arrow flew in from the distance and stuck into Dullahan's chest. It seemed that the skeleton knight was ready to perform its perfect control once again. Damn, I did all of that just to get this weird sounding head. Hearing Li Jina's complaining, Kim Woo Jin pulled the Dullahan's head off of the spear instead of responding. P.U.K. P.U.K. He then smashed the head using Percival's spear. The Dullahan's head shattered like a piece of ice and a ball of hair appeared from inside of it. Ninth Tale of the Nine-Tailed Fox Rating, Legendary Required Level, Level 1 or Higher Description, The Ninth Tale of the Powerful Nine-Tailed Fox It has a mysterious power by gathering all nine tails, the user would gain the Nine-Tailed Fox's power. All stats 5%. All resistances 10%. When equipped the user will emit a cold air, freezing all enemies. This makes three foot. He had gotten his hands on another one of the nine-tailed fox's tails. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin immediately placed this item into his inventory. When he saw this, Li Jin Ah couldn't help but ask. What's that? Something good. I know it's good, but what is it? Kim Woo Jin brushed off the question. You did a good job a while ago now that we've got the head, let's go get the arms and legs. Li Jin Ah was shocked at his words. Huh? You want me to do the same thing four more times? Other players would have died a long time ago. Kim Woo Jin smiled and said. I'm glad you steadily raised the rank of your blessing of river sticks skill it is coming in handy. OMG 1 his words were so ridiculous that Li Jina forgot how to speak for a moment. Suddenly, Kim Wu Jin gestured toward Li Jina. At the gesture to shut up, Li Jina just stared at him with a dumb expression on his face. Only. After a while, a voice came from within the black fog. Isaac Ivanov. Ellis Hyten called out to Kim Wu Jin from afar. Let's make a deal I'll give you Merlin's wand and King Arthur's ring right now. Kim Woo Jin laughed at those words. It seems Ellis Hyten has also done some calculations. Chapter, 150 It was impossible to determine just how many legendary items there were in the world. 
For that reason, all guilds and players put great effort into securing legendary items, and on the other hand, they concealed or manipulated the existence or information of their own legendary items. The transaction process of legendary items was also very cloudy. It was so cloudy that one would not be able to see or understand anything unless they were already a broker. Ah! This was why O oh Seichan chose to take on the title of broker thanks to that, he had more information on legendary items than anyone else. That damn Merlin's staff. This meant that he was well aware of what level of item Merlin's staff was. That was the reason. Damn it. The reason that he was repeatedly swearing with a gloomy expression on his face while looking at the Jijangmian in front of him. It started when the Great One Guild revealed the existence of Merlin's staff. Trinity, the guild master of the Great One Guild had revealed this item to the world via a talk show no less. She revealed what the Merlin's wand was and what it meant for Ellis Hyten to have such a weapon. Shortly after the news was released, public opinion changed rapidly. The fierce debate on who would be the ones to conquer the dead forest dungeon disappeared like snow in a desert. Instead, the entire world believed that Ellis Hyten would, without a doubt, be the one to conquer the dead forest dungeon. At the same time, as if they were waiting for this moment, the media began to portray Ellis Hyten as a hero. She wasn't just a hero, but the great hero who had mended the wounded pride of the United States. I can't believe they would give such an item to a player under level 100 that's so dirty. Merlin's staff and King Arthur's ring were both high-level items. Ugh, so annoying. Just owning one of these items was enough to be considered a hero. And it wasn't just Oh Seichan who thought so. There's definitely some trick. It was basically giving unlimited mana to a spiritualist who could be said to have the highest firepower. According to our investigations, the Great One Guild has been preparing for this dungeon attack for a long time. The Great One Guild's preparations up to this point are basically perfect to the point that they were even confident to bet King Arthur's ring. Oh Seichan's subordinates were also forced to agree with him. They were all talents that had been personally chosen and trained by Oh Seichan so they were also able to run simulations in their heads. They calculated the probability of Kim Woo Jin succeeding in the dungeon over Ellis Hyten and her team. And currently, the rate of failure was inevitably high because they had no information about the dungeon. Ellis Hyten's dividend has been at 12 times since the announcement. Kim Woo Jin's dividend has jumped up to 5 times. Furthermore, most people in the world shared their thoughts. Ah, this is not good I can't eat it. Eventually Oh Seichan put down his chopsticks and left half of the bowl of the Jijangmian that he'd bought with his own money. Hook. I don't believe it. In front of such a ridiculous sight, his subordinates were all astonished. It was at that moment. The dungeon attack was successful. Oh Seichan closed his eyes. He looked like a prisoner on death row who was waiting in his cell for the guards to come and take him to the gallows. This was not an exaggeration. At this moment, Oh Seichan even shed tears. He was convinced at that moment. This is the end. The conqueror of the forest of the dead would be Ellis Hyten. And all the money that he'd bet on Kim Woo Jin would fly away just like that. Right, so who cleared it? Oh Seichan, who had come to accept his situation, calmly asked his subordinate this question with the expression of a sage, detached from worldly desires. Kim Woo no, Isaac Ivanov will be the one to deliver the dungeon report. What? At that moment, Oh Seichan looked incredibly surprised for a moment before he seemed to understand the situation and clenched his fists. As I expected, it was Kim Woo Jin. I told you, didn't I? He would do it. After all, trust and faith are very important the heavens have finally rewarded my faith. Ahahaha. Oh Seichan shouted out these words happily. Bring my phone. Yes. Oh, and bring the instant rice that we didn't tell Kim Woo Jin about. Yes. Why instant rice? What do you mean? I'm going to mix it with the rest of my Jijangmian. Or do you expect me to throw it away? Ha. Huh. It seemed that Oh Se Chan had returned to his normal form. Now, let's talk to the new hero. And it was at this moment that history was made. San Francisco, the historic location where the pride of the great America was severely wounded. 
And now, another historic event had taken place there the clearance of the forest of the dead dungeon. I'd like to express my gratitude to this great country for giving me this chance. Such an event came to an end following the words of Isaac Ivanov, the conqueror of the forest of the dead dungeon. A new historical record had been written. And now the aftermath of that historical moment had begun to devour the world. Isaac Ivanov conquers the forest of the dead. Isaac Ivanov creates a new legend. Everyone was shocked by the unexpected performance given by Isaac Ivanov. So they made another bet. With Merlin's staff. Give the items to the one who has the qualifications ka, I think I need to go change my underwear. Isaac Ivanov is the only successor to Lee Sejun you can't compare him to ordinary players. And the world was even more shocked after learning of what happened in the dungeon. At the same time, people applauded. Oh my god, he managed to step over Ellis Hyten and beat the Dullahan. Hunting the Dullahan alone. How the hell is that possible? TL, they always forget Gina. You can't say he hunted it on his own if it wasn't for Ellis Hyten's big choice at the end, the result might have been different. It was applause of Ellis Hyten's decision. This was understandable. It was all because Ellis Hyten decided to hand over Merlin's staff and King Arthur's ring. Even if Isaac Ivanov had an advantage over the Dullahan, making such a decision must not have been easy. Ellis Hyten had made the decision to hand Merlin's staff and King Arthur's ring to Isaac Ivanov before he had finished hunting the Dullahan. The Great One Guild might have lost their legendary items, but they didn't lose their pride and dignity. It may be a loss for the Great One Guild, but it is a gain for humanity what a great saying. This fact made the world consider Ellis Hyten to be a great loser. She made the most out of the loss. Kim Woo Jin thought the same. I didn't expect her to give me the items in advance. Right after he had attacked the Dullahan and taken its head, Ellis Hyten had appeared and given the two items to him. It wasn't without a cost. Moreover, in the process, she did not state any conditions. She simply accepted her defeat and handed those items over to Kim Woo Jin. That was the part that Kim Woo Jin appreciated the most. It left room. If Ellis Hyden had tried to give Kim Woo Jin the items while stating conditions then Kim Woo Jin would not have even glanced in her direction. Even if they were to make a deal, if the transaction was exposed to the public then everyone would know that they'd made a deal. However, she had quickly handed over the items without stating any price. For the players who were looking on from afar, it was as though the middle part of a movie had suddenly been removed and they no longer understood what was going on. Of course, the other players would observe this with some suspicion and some would even feel that Ellis Hyten and Isaac Ivanov had some kind of deal. However, Ellis had been able to create a situation where there was still room to maneuver. So they'll try to use that room to do some trick. In other words, this meant that neither Ellis Hyten nor the Great One Guild had any intentions of letting Isaac Ivanov off. That's to be expected. But Kim Woo Jin didn't pay too much attention to that fact. In the first place, he had never expected the road to be smooth after he successfully acquired the two items. This has made Isaac Ivanov into a hero. Instead, the thing that was most important to Kim Woo Jin at that moment, was the fact that Isaac Ivanov had become a person whose results always exceeded expectations. A hero who goes beyond imagination. It was different from just being a very good player. The difference was the ability to give hope and create miracles. I wonder what kind of expression Lee Sejun is wearing right now. It was the same as the way Lee Sejun was different from the average player. In other words, at this moment, in the eyes of the public, Isaac Ivanov had become a similar entity to Lee Sejun. The size of the flame was much smaller than that of the savior, Lee Sejun, but the light they were emitting was the same. A person who could replace the savior if they encountered any problems. It shouldn't be a pleasant expression. This was not a good thing for Lee Sejun who always shined more because he was unique. This was why Kim Woo Jin considered the increase in reputation to be his biggest gain from the Forest of the Dead Dungeon. It's unfortunate that I can't see his face. Thanks to Isaac Ivanov, the Messiah Guild would once again be forced to make major changes to its plans. Of course, the gains he got from completing the dungeon were quite large. Come to think of it, Park Shinhai's expression should be rather unpleasant as well Merlin's staff has fallen into my hands. 
he had both Merlin's staff A.A.D. King Arthur's ring. For Kim Woo Jin, the lack of magic power had always been a constraint so the value of these two items which could make his magic power almost unlimited didn't need to be expressly stated. I'm more curious about the Dullahan's body. In addition, this time, Kim Woo Jin had managed to obtain the Dullahan's body. Following the Golden Lion and the Ogre, a new skeleton had taken a space in the Book of the Dead. Only. The Dullahan has the ability to use a mount so it should be similar to a skeleton knight. His increase in power was indescribable. This was why he was confident. There is no problem with joining the attack on the Hatchling Dungeon which will appear in January next year. He had the confidence to hunt the Hatchling which was the strongest monster that could appear in three floor dungeons. I have to reach level 80 by then. That's why Kim Woo Jin began to prepare. And I should thank my benefactor. Chapter, 151 The biggest beneficiary of the attack on the Forest of the Dead Dungeon was, of course, Isaac Ivanov. What else did Isaac Ivanov gain in this dungeon? Isaac Ivanov hits the jackpot. The value of the things Isaac Ivanov gained in this dungeon might be comparable to the gains from a six-floor dungeon. Some people estimated his gains to be even more than those from a six-floor dungeon. Considering the fact that there had yet to be a successful attack on a seven-floor dungeon, it could be said that he had gained the greatest reward possible in this dungeon. Unsurprisingly, those who invested in Isaac Ivanov also gained some benefits from his achievement. Isaac Ivanov thanks Park Yom Wan. Isaac Ivanov, this was only possible with the help of many people, including Park Yom Wan. Especially Park Yom Wan. Isaac Ivanov mentions Park Yom Wan by name. Moreover, until now, the only sponsor that Isaac Ivanov had mentioned by name was Park Yom Wan. This gave the world no choice but to reevaluate Park Yom Wan, who had been generously sponsoring Isaac Ivanov. Park Yom Wan discovers a savior who can save the world. Does the Phoenix Guild intend to walk the same path as the Messiah Guild? Park Yom Wan, truly the Dark Knight. Park Yom Wan's reputation improved to an extreme level, and the Phoenix Guild, which had been considered the root of all evil in Korea, had become a guild that strived to follow the footsteps of the Messiah Guild. It's full of news about Isaac Ivanov. From Park Yom Wan's point of view, this made him so happy that he could not stop smiling. The perception, which had not changed even after they used a lot of money and effort, had started to change just because of his investment in one player. It was worth it to follow your words and invest in him we hit the jackpot this time. Therefore, Park Yong Wan didn't forget to thank Kim Woo Jin, who had advised him to make the investment. Thanks. Kim Woo Jin responded calmly to Park Yong Wan's gratitude. I'm happy to help. You didn't just help if I'm honest, I'd have loved to give you a legendary item if I could afford it. Of course, that was only his gratitude. Why did you want to see me? Kim Woo Jin knew that Park Yong Wan was not the type of person who'd call him just to express gratitude. Park Yong Wan also knew this. Therefore, he didn't try to pretend in front of Kim Woo Jin, who had already grasped his intentions. I called you here because I have a request. A request? First of all, you have to accept it you can't refuse. Kim Woo Jin's expression stiffened as he heard this condition. It was clearly unusual to not give him the choice to refuse. Of course, a great reward will be given. Park Yong Wan knew that, so he emphasized the compensation part. What reward? It depends on your performance, but I can guarantee that you will get at least a unique rank skill page. At least unique? Park Yong Wan continued explaining to the surprised Kim Woo Jin. A player has requested you be their partner in a dungeon it seems they want to see your skills this works because I also want to plant someone near to that person it's like you were tailor made for this role. TL, cough. At those words, Kim Woo Jin's expression once again became stiff and serious. Who is the person that requested me? Park Yong Wan's expression also became serious as he responded. The person who requested you is Isaac Ivanov. As a player's level increased, so did their value. At the same time, the risk that the player had to shoulder in the dungeon was comparatively higher. That was why all players and guilds did everything within their means to increase their success rate in a dungeon, even if it was only a little. 
Of course, there were certain ways to increase the success rate that worked better than others. One of them was to attack the dungeon with skilled players. No matter how well prepared they were, if the skill level of the players participating in the dungeon attack was low, then the probability of success would also be low. What's the next scheduled three-floor dungeon for the Great One Guild? Contact the Frontier Guild ask them if they have any more slots for their next four-floor dungeon attack. Orochi, is there still no news of the three-floor dungeon attack? That was why players and guilds paid keen attention to the dungeon attack schedule of talented players. It was the same for the press. It was not possible for them to interview the players in the dungeon, so they used any means necessary to contact well-known players before their dungeon attacks. This period was commonly referred to as the storm. However, if the target was not just a common player, but the main character in a historical event, then it could no longer be called a storm, instead, it became a typhoon. And the typhoon caused by Isaac Ivanov had begun. What is Isaac Ivanov's next target? What will Isaac Ivanov do next? Are the rumors about Isaac Ivanov's guild transfer true? Is the rumor that Isaac Ivanov is recruiting party members true? The media paid enough attention to his every move to even create a category of news called Isaac Ivanov. Isaac is changing guilds. There's a rumor that he's joining the Messiah Guild. Wasn't there a rumor that he was going to join the Great One Guild? Isn't the Merlin staff his transfer fee? There are rumors that Isaac Ivanov is ending his solo play and recruiting party members. TL, Li Jin Ah is invisible confirmed. Didn't Isaac already have a teammate? I don't think so. He doesn't. And public opinion became more fuel for the typhoon, scattering new suspicions and rumors upon the stage created by the media. Of course, it was the guilds who were affected the most by the typhoon. In particular, those players who were active in three-floor dungeons whose very fates could change depending on Isaac Ivanov's moves, were desperate. Find out what Isaac Ivanov's next move is. What happened when you contacted Isaac Ivanov's side? Can you join him in his next dungeon attack? If you stick with Isaac Ivanov, you can clear the dungeon. Above all, the fact that Isaac Ivanov cleared all of the dungeons he participated in with results far surpassing common sense made the reactions of the players and guilds even more sensitive. It's okay to lose some money after all, there's nothing safer than attacking a dungeon with him. If you failed to clear a dungeon then you would die, this was why there was nothing more sought after than a player who could eliminate the risk of failure. In other words, players at the same level as Isaac Ivanov no longer considered him as a competitor. They simply looked to him as a being who could keep them alive. The entire world was swept into Isaac Ivanov's typhoon. Of course, there were some who enjoyed the ride. Park Yongwan was one of them. Many people asked him questions about Isaac Ivanov since he was the only sponsor who had been called by name so far. I'll talk to him for you when I see him later. They wanted to know if he could help them build bridges with Isaac Ivanov, what they could do to sponsor Isaac Ivanov, and if he was his secret weapon. Everyone's asking me about Isaac Ivanov now. He would receive call after call about Isaac Ivanov to the point where he had to get a new phone. This is the first time since I became a player that I've been asked questions like this. This was a strange experience for Park Yongwan, who was one of the strongest players in Korea, who had successfully cleared two six-floor dungeons, and was considered to be one of the guild masters of the Phoenix Guild. It isn't so bad. He quite liked the experience. It would be weird if he wasn't happy in a situation where his own value rose while he simply sat in a room especially in an era where a person's value could only be raised by creating results with their own hands. And it wasn't just his value that was increasing. There were also many people who promised him great rewards on the condition that he helped them form a connection with Isaac Ivanov. I didn't expect even the Messiah Guild to come to me. Even the Messiah Guild had contacted Park Yongwan to find out information about Isaac Ivanov. Still, they were too embarrassed to use their own name so they only contacted me through a different route. Of course, it wasn't the official route. The Messiah Guild had approached him using a different name. However, Park Yongwan had the ability and intelligence network to find out the source of that route. It seems that Isaac Ivanov has very few contacts. In other words, there were very few people in the world who could contact Isaac Ivanov the way Park Yongwan could. 
Right, I was lucky. From a certain standpoint, Park Yongwan could be considered lucky to even have a way to contact Isaac Ivanov. If we hadn't learned that he wanted the skeleton knight skill, then we never would have gotten this opportunity. As he recalled that incident, Park Yongwan smiled. So today is the day that Kim Woojin meets Isaac Ivanov? It was said that it is only a meeting with Isaac Ivanov's partner. You mean the guy called Spashiba? His correct name is. That was the reason. I don't need to know his name they'll be targeting a dungeon right after the meeting right? Yes that's what the schedule they gave us states. The reason he had spared no investment for this interview. It was then. Beep. A text message came to Park Yongwan's secretary's phone and after reading it, her face became a bit stiff. The signal for the tracking device attached to Kim Woo Jin has disappeared it seems the meeting has begun. Park Yongwan smiled at those words. Their security is quite thorough I like it. Chapter 152 Beep When the tracking device on Kim Woo Jin deactivated with a beeping sound, Oh se -chan's subordinate made an OK sign with his fingers. Lee Jin Ah, who had appeared without any disguise was dumbstruck. You're a real scumbag to come to a private meeting with a tracking device and a wire one, if I were Isaac Ivanov, then you would have been killed already. Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin changed his clothes and headed to a parked van. The van, which had half-open doors, was filled with electronic equipment like in a spy movie. Get in. Kim Woo Jin got into the van and the doors were closed the second that Lee Jin Ah got on as well. K.R. Following the loud sound of the engine, the van began to move. The conversation began when the muted sounds of other vehicle engines could be heard as the truck started driving on a highway. Before we start this meeting. It was Lee Jina who started talking. Would it have killed you to tell me about it earlier? Ha. Huh. I only found out about it this morning. It turned out that Lee Jina had only been briefed on the day's schedule that very morning. Damn it, I still remember. Oh Se-chan had called Lee Jin Ah in the morning and told him that he had to get up because he had to meet Kim Woo Jin at the meeting location. When I woke up and heard that, I told Se-chan to not mess with me and he cursed me but tell me honestly, anyone would have said the same thing wouldn't they? It was natural for Lee Jin Ah to not believe it because it was not something that one would expect. From the standpoint of someone who knew the truth, it was strange for Isaac Ivanov to send his teammate to interview Kim Woo Jin to join their party. Isn't it riskier this way? After all, there was a risk. Isn't it? You're Isaac Ivanov aren't you? Kim Woo Jin and Isaac Ivanov were the same person, but if they were to attack a dungeon together, then naturally they would need to be seen together. This was a new flaw that could be exposed. I've prepared in advance. That is why Kim Woo Jin had made his own preparations. There's a call from the boss he'll put him on speaker. In addition, it wasn't just Kim Woo Jin who'd prepared. I didn't get a chance to say congratulations back then because I was too busy so congratulations on clearing the dungeon and also acquiring Merlin's wand while you did it. Let's do the greetings later are your preparations complete? Oh se -chan was also preparing for when Isaac Ivanov moved together with Oh se -chan. You mean the doppelganger? It needs a couple more improvements they should be done by the start of next year. A doppelganger. The masks that Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah used, had been improved to the extent that they could now cover the entire body instead of just the face. Can it be completed by January? You could even use it now as long as you weren't too rough with it all I'm talking about are the improvements the unit price will go down a little bit more if we can improve it although we can still use it if necessary, it is a bit too expensive. Of course, it was expensive. It was made from the body parts of a doppelganger, monster that was incredibly difficult to encounter. Even the unit price of the masks that Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah used all the time was quite high. If they made it so that they had to cover the entire body, then the price would be dozens of times higher. Thank you. Knowing that, Kim Woo Jin expressed his gratitude. Anyway, it's pretty expensive. And Oh Se Chan kept emphasizing that part. I'm forever grateful. It's expensive it costs money and you're the one who's going to use it. Kim Woo Jin responded to him after a long sigh. I'm sure that it'll successfully clear the next dungeon, so you can bet on me again like you did last time. 
those words made Oh Se-chan shout immediately. Hey, Li Jina you bastard. You're there aren't you? Why did you tell him? You little shit. Oh Se-chan's shout shocked Li Jina who had been listening to the conversation from the side. Hyung, I didn't tell him anything. Huh? Then Kim Woo Jin said. I was just talking, I didn't think it was actually true. H dash, huh? Only then did Oh Se Chan, who realized that Kim Woo Jin had tricked the truth out of him, change the subject with an awkward laugh. Huh, right anyway, our relationship is based on trust and faith so we should continue believing in it ah, so what's your schedule for today? Are you going straight to the dungeon? We'll have a meal before we start the dungeon. A meal? The money I spend today will be covered by the Phoenix Guild in a way, it is an entertainment expense and there's no way that Park Yongwan would hesitate to give it. Oh Se-chan was dumbstruck at his words. You really intend to suck him dry not even a real dog would suck on a bone so much did he have bad luck in his past life? Or did he sell his country in the future? When he heard this, Kim Woo Jin simply smiled slightly without answering beside him, Li Jin Ah spoke hesitantly. So what you're saying is that I can eat as much as I want today right? That's right. Can I have beef? As much as you like. Can I have Korean beef? That's not a bad idea. At that moment Li Jin Ah shouted to the driver. Take us to the most expensive Korean beef restaurant nearby. Kim Woo Jin smiled slightly as he saw him acting more excited than ever. Hey, Jin Ah. Don't forget to pack up the leftover meat alright? At least ten servings should be packed away. Ah, of course I'll also bring some Samjang one. Right, I trust you Jina. Trust me. I really believe you make sure to bring the expensive parts. Naturally. And you can't forget the lettuce and other side dishes. Kim Woo Jin stopped paying attention as the conversation between the two became much deeper and more serious. Please give me the dungeon report. Instead, he asked Oh Se Chan's subordinate for the report of the dungeon that would be the location for the test. Yes, here it is. The subordinate immediately handed over the report. That's a good attitude as your interviewer, it'll give you a pass. From now on, you will be our new teammate. Then Li Jin Ah, who had finished discussing his plans with Oh Se Chan, spoke to Kim Woo Jin. However, Kim Woo Jin shook his head. I won't pass. Ha! Huh. I failed this test. What bullshit is that? Don't you have to pass this time to join the party? At Li Jin Ah's words, Kim Woo Jin looked at him like he was the one who was talking nonsense. If I fail this time then Park Yong Wan will invest more in me. What? It's better to spend money on someone retaking an exam than train someone else. That was when Li Jin Ah realized what he was talking about. If Kim Woo Jin died, even hell might refuse to accept him. Li Jin Ah sincerely felt that Kim Woo Jin, who was calmly reading the dungeon report in front of him, was a truly vicious person. Of course, Li Jin Ah didn't know. Survive the Black Orcs for six days. Floors, three. Difficulty, B dash. Maximum number of entries, 60. Requirements, level 80 or below. Conditions, Survive the Black Orc Chiefs and their horde for six days. Reward, none. I need to reach level 80 in this dungeon and Li Jin Ah Blessing of the River Stick skill needs to go up by another rank I'll raise it somehow. That Kim Woo Jin, who was reading the dungeon report in front of him at that moment, was much more vicious than he thought. If Li Jin Ah's Blessing of River Sticks is too low, then even he would not be able to survive against the hatchling. And that Kim Woo Jin was preparing to take him to a place that was even worse than hell. But I need to check again can I really eat as much meat as I want today? Sure. Cool. So it turns out that you're a good guy after all. Kim Woo Jin gave Lee Jin a smile. Ignorance was truly bliss. Chapter, 153 There are two reasons why players enter dungeons. One is to clear it. The other is for training. It wasn't unusual to use a dungeon for training. They were the perfect places to train as there were many targets and the security was high. Kim Woo Jin also trained in dungeons. 
And of course, the mindset when clearing a dungeon and training was very different. When clearing a dungeon, Kim Woo Jin did his best to not feel a sense of achievement, but to instead feel a sense of dejection. However, it was different when training. In the case of training, Kim Woo Jin's goal when training was simply to survive, even if it might be easy to die. This is the worst. That was why Kim Woo Jin looked at the staff in his hand with a frown. Merlin's staff. Rating, legendary. Required level, level 1 or higher. Description, the staff used by the great wizard Merlin it contains a large amount of magic power. Attack power 20% when equipped. Magic power 20% when equipped. Magic power recovery speed 30% when equipped. Magic power increases in proportion to the user's level. He was looking at Merlin's staff. King Arthur's ring. Description, a token that represents the great king of the round table it contains the king's qualifications. All stats 15%. Attack power 15%. Increases the effects of other items related to the round table by 100%. Excalibur can be used. Then he looked at King Arthur's ring which was on one of the fingers of the hand holding the staff. Then Kim Woo Jin turned his eyes to the scene that had been created by the combination of these two items. Rattle. It was a scene of a group of 80 skeletons completely destroying a group of 30 kobolds. Naturally, there was no struggle for survival or feeling of training with the presence of 80 skeletons. To put it simply, this scene was similar to that of a child playfully squashing ants between their fingers. This was the reason for Kim Woo Jin's frown. I didn't think that it would be this bad. In all honesty, Kim Woo Jin hadn't expected such a scene. While he was hunting the Dullahan, he had received the Merlin staff and King Arthur's ring because of Ella's careful calculations but he had not used them properly at that time. After all, since the hunt of the Dullahan was progressing as planned, there was no reason for him to modify it. And there was no reason for him to show off even more strength to his competitors. In other words, this was the first time that he truly made use of the Merlin staff and King Arthur's ring. Of course, the training wasn't done properly. Instead, he only had one thought. There is still magic power left over. At this point, Kim Woo Jin had enough magic power to summon anything that he wanted to summon. There's still Van Gogh's bracelet. What was more surprising, was the fact that Kim Woo Jin had still not exerted his full strength. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin was wearing two rings, the plus ring and King Arthur's ring. If he wore Hercules' ring after equipping Van Gogh's bracelet then his power would increase by another 20%. And he still had space for three more rings after that. It was a great deal and Kim Woo Jin had no intentions of belittling this tremendous amount of power. I can't train. On the contrary, Kim Woo Jin didn't forget that one of the reasons he came to this dungeon, was to measure his strength. I need to figure out what my limits are. Above all, the limit of strength that Kim Woo Jin knew now, was only his speculation. He knew he had become stronger, but he did not know how much stronger. The most dangerous thing would be to overestimate or underestimate myself. That was the worst thing that Kim Woo Jin could think of. Your level has increased. The emissary of the underworld smiles at your overwhelming dignity. The emissary of the underworld has bestowed some power to you. The rank of the ruler of the battlefield skill has increased by one. Of course, his halo, who didn't know the thoughts that were running through Kim Woo Jin's head at that moment, was quite impressed with the sight he witnessed. Wow, thanks to the skeletons, my level just keeps going up just breathe and level up kook. And Lee Jin Ah, who was munching on a chocolate bar that he got from his inventory, was also enjoying the results of the skeleton soldiers. I still haven't finished digesting the beef that I ate before we entered the dungeon. And it seemed that the beef that he'd eaten before they entered the dungeon was indigestible. Kim Woo Jin shot a cold glance at Lee Jin Ah. When he saw the glance, Li Jina hurriedly continued. What can I do anyway? Wouldn't it be strange for me to go forward when the skeleton soldiers are already handling everything? If there was something to fight, I'd fight it but I can't fight the skeletons can I? The moment he said those words, Li Jina's expression became crumpled. Fuck my stupid mouth I should cut out my tongue or something. This showed that he'd realized exactly what had just done. 
Of course, Kim Woo-jin also knew what Lee Jina was so mad about. So the skeletons began turning to look at their new target and there was only one thing that Lee Jina could say at the sight. Fuck. Damn it. With an annoyed shout, Oh Se-chan stopped eating his bowl of ramen and wiped the sweat from his scalp. I'm still pissed off. His anger was clearly visible as he continued. In fact, his anger caused the atmosphere around him to become tense. However this time, Oh Se-chan's subordinates didn't pay much attention to his actions. It's starting again. This was because they knew the target of Oh Se-chan's rage. In addition, they knew how petty his anger was. Li Jina you little pig wasn't he supposed to send things for us to eat? How could we wrap anything when he ate all the meat in the restaurant? Hey, really? The reason for his anger was none other than the fact that he couldn't have a free meal because Li Jina had eaten all the meat in the restaurant. This is why you don't raise a black-haired beast sooner or later I'm gonna shave off that black hair I'm gonna shave it all off. This was the fourth time that Oh Se-chan had vented his anger because he didn't get the chance to eat beef. Woo woo. Then the feature foam one, in his pocket vibrated. Oh Se-chan's expression immediately changed after he took out the feature phone and read the text that he had received. Crunch. After he read the text, he crushed the phone in his fist. Incinerate this. It was an order. It was also an order to destroy an information network that had cost an enormous amount to create. It could only be one of two reasons why such orders would be given. What's going on? It was either to cut off a finger with tears in your eyes because something bad happened, or to pleasantly give it up after achieving your goal. The Messiah Guild has postponed their attack on the seventh floor dungeon. This time, it was the latter. Looks like their project is finally starting to crack. I'd previously called this a flip phone because I wasn't exactly sure what it was, when I suddenly remembered that Google existed. Chapter, 154 It was an era where there were numerous guilds, and new guilds were created and disbanded every day. Yet, even in such an era, there were five guilds who remained from the beginning. They had an invariably overwhelming presence and their influence was absolute. At the top position of these five guilds was always occupied by the Messiah Guild. Of course, this was because of Lee Sejun. The world willingly considered him to be their savior, who unflinchingly walked along a path that no one had threaded before in an effort to save the world. In other words, even if they were willing to sacrifice their lives to save the world, they would not be treated in such a special way if they did not walk a path that no one had walked before. On January 24th, we were going to target the C-rank 7th floor dungeon. Therefore, for the Messiah Guild, attacking the 7th floor dungeon was a crucial decision that would determine the value of their existence. But now that plan has been postponed. But now Park Shinhai was announcing the fact that the Messiah Guild's biggest project, the 7th floor dungeon, had been delayed in front of seven people who were sitting at a table in holographic form. God of Bows, this is because of you. After giving her announcement, she turned to look at the god of bows, Noda Hijiro, who was represented by a green hologram. Naturally, the other holograms all turned to look at the god of bows as well. However, even when faced with their questioning gazes, Noda Hijiro did not say anything. He showed his stubbornness by sitting there with his eyes and mouth closed. When Park Shinhai saw that, there was a flash in her beautiful eyes. I think you are mistaking my politeness to you for something else. Her eyes were fierce enough to overshadow her beautiful appearance. As the leader of the world's largest conglomerate that served the Savior, many people saw her as a fairy, but if they were to see her at that moment then it would make their hearts stop. However, this was her true appearance. She shared a long history with the Savior Lee Sejun to the point that they would even die for each other. So if you want to make any excuses, now is your chance. And as she spoke to the god of bows before her, her voice was filled with a promise of violence that would make even the world's top players shiver. Of course, the god of bows was also no ordinary person. He didn't even try to make any excuses when faced with Park Shinhai's threats. Three of my students have been killed my pride will not allow me to let him live in this situation and until that is resolved, we will not participate in the seventh floor dungeon attack. Instead, he insisted on making his own self-assertion. 
When she saw the attitude displayed by the god of bows, Park Shinhai grit her teeth. So does this mean that you are threatening our attack on the seven floor dungeon? It was a volatile situation. No one in the meeting wanted to speak up in such a tense atmosphere. It was then. Talk talk. The sound of a microphone being tapped was heard from the only seat that was not filled by a hologram, but instead had speakers placed in front of it. As everyone's eyes turned to look at the speakers before the empty seat, a calm voice could be heard from them. We can put off the attack on the seven-floor dungeon for a month god of bows, you will have to take your revenge during that time. It was Lee Sejun's. Park Shinhai looked surprised at the words of the man referred to as the savior of the world, while the god of bows nodded. However, this is your last chance at revenge if this fails, then the Yamato Federation, including you, god of bows, will have to unconditionally cooperate with the Messiah Guild. The god of bows replied with a bitter smile. If I fail this time, then my life will be yours, Lee Sejun, to use as you please. Then this meeting is adjourned we will attack the seven-floor dungeon after a one-month delay. That ended the meeting and the holograms immediately began to disappear one after another. Lee Sejun, thanks for your help. The moment the last hologram disappeared, Park Shinhai spoke to the direction of Lee Sejun's seat. I made you do something you shouldn't have had to do. The Park Shinhai who was saying these words was completely different from the fierce Park Shinhai just a moment ago. I'm sure that the god of bows will fail then naturally, he will become cooperative again it would be better to draw a clear line this time even if he succeeds, we'll still have to be happy with it. She began speaking in a gentle and polite tone. If the god of bows fails again, recruit him. Ha! Huh. Park Shinhai was surprised at Lee Sejun's sudden words. That Kim Woojin is no ordinary person I especially like the fact that he uses poison if we raise him well, I'm sure had become the perfect hunting dog. In response to Lee Sejun's words, Park Shinhai simply nodded without answering. That was her relationship with Lee Sejun. They were not colleagues. It was a relationship between a head and its limbs, and when one gave an order, the other followed it without question. What do you plan to do about Isaac Ivanov? Only when a question was asked did Park Shinhai open her mouth to answer. It's not easy to personally get rid of Isaac Ivanov right now, the risk is too high that's why I'm thinking about giving him a rival. A rival? I found a good player in Europe. It's been a long time since I heard you call someone good. Yes, he's pretty good most importantly, his main weapons are summon monsters, just like Isaac Ivanov. What's his name? Johann George the signing is almost complete. I have a good feeling. Results are more important than feelings I'll definitely give you the results you like. I look forward to it. These words caused a smile to stretch across Park Shinhai's face. Before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin was one of the most loyal members of the Messiah Guild. At that time, Kim Woo Jin had two roles in the Messiah Guild. One, of course, was to play an active role as a hunting dog. The other was to train new ones. Of course, this wasn't just Kim Woo Jin's job. Within the Messiah Guild, which preferred to carry out dungeon attacks with their internal personnel rather than collaborate with other guilds, it was naturally for skilled players to act as instructors. Of course, the players who Kim Woo Jin were in charge of were different from the ordinary guild members. The players who Kim Woo Jin were in charge of, were those who were considered the bad seeds in the Messiah Guild. It was not an easy task. The players in the Messiah Guild, who basically risked their lives to save the world, could be considered fanatics. And even in the Messiah Guild, there were many of those who could be called bad seeds. Most of them did not take it seriously when they were made to undergo his hellish training. When they met Kim Woo Jin, there were some who scoffed because they did not think it could be anything much, those who downright ignored it when Kim Woo Jin gave an order, and those who basically acted like he didn't exist. However, after finishing Kim Woo Jin's training, all of them had the same reaction the moment they exited the dungeons. Blurg. As soon as they left the dungeon and were relieved of the tension they had built up, they vomited all the contents of their stomachs. That fucking psychopath I won't let that bastard get away with this. And they would stare at Kim Woo Jin as if they wanted nothing better than to skin him alive. 
Of course, most of them lost that resolve the moment they made eye contact with Kim Woo Jin, but there were some special ones. Those who did not become afraid, but instead acted however they liked after. I'll let you go this time because you bought beef you are lucky. Of course, Li Jin Ah was the latter which made Kim Woo Jin give him a light smile. He's a pretty amazing guy. Meanwhile, Oh Se Chan's men who had been waiting outside the dungeon began to move hurriedly to clean up. I want something to eat. Rice. Meat. Li Jin Ah asked them for something to eat and Oh Se Chan's subordinates brought over food as though they'd expected it. As all of this was happening, Kim Woo Jin took a look at his status window. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 78. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats, Health 236490. Stamina 2209. Magic Power 3399. Achievements, 61. Extra Points, 0. Level 78 Foot. Kim Woo Jin's expression as he looked at the status window was not good. What he was looking at was the harvest he'd gained from the dungeon, but he wasn't satisfied. I still couldn't figure out my limits. Even till the end, Kim Woo Jin had not been able to accomplish one of his goals, which was to find his limit. I need to attack more dungeons. This meant that he needed to test it again. Here. Oh Seichan's subordinate approached Kim Woo Jin, who was planning which dungeon to attack next. There was no need for a long conversation. As soon as he received the feature phone from the subordinate, it began to ring. How was the dungeon? Not too good. Really? Then Kim Woo Jin will be rejected? Kim Woo Jin smiled at Oh Se Chan's words. He must have expected it. It seemed that Oh Se Chan had had a similar thought concerning Kim Woo Jin's addition to the team. So what's up? There was no special anticipation in Kim Woo Jin's voice when he asked this. There's nothing special about this December. The current date was December 10th, 2023. The real big event starts in January. The December that Kim Woo Jin remembered was like the calm before the storm that would take place in January. The Messiah Guild postponed their attack on the seven floor dungeon they didn't announce the exact length, but the delay should only be a month or a month and a half. However, the following information made Kim Woo Jin's expression change. They're going to act. Kim Woo Jin even asked for confirmation because he was so surprised by those words. He asked again. Is that information reliable? Positive. When he heard this answer, Kim Woo Jin tapped his cheek with his finger instead of answering. Unlike his usual appearance, he appeared slightly agitated. The Messiah Guild postponed their attack on the Seven Floor Dungeon. This was how shocking Oh Se Chan's news was to him. And the reason for that was simple. For the Messiah Guild, attacking the Seven Floor Dungeon was in essence, proving the necessity of their existence. Li Sejun made a move. Furthermore, it was based around Li Sejun who was called the Savior. However, changing their schedule meant that there was a very big movement within the Messiah Guild. As far as I can remember, the core group who attacked the Seven Floor Dungeon was made up of nine players among those, who would make a move now. At that moment, a man's image appeared in Kim Woo Jin's mind. The God of Bows. The God of Bows, Noda Hijiro. Only after thinking this name did Kim Woo Jin put down his hand as he spoke. It's possible that the God of Bows revolted. I had the same thought the God of Bows would definitely find the things that happened recently unpleasant. When he heard that, Oh Se Chan also shared his thoughts. And it's because of someone who can't even join Isaac Ivanov's party since it's a seven-floor dungeon. It would be difficult for even the god of bows to guarantee his safety during the attack so he probably wants to handle all his issues before then he probably has some misgivings about Kim Woo Jin's progress. And Oh Se Chan had reached the same conclusion as Kim Woo Jin. Which means the god of bows is. He'll send the best member that he can find to kill me or he will try to assassinate me himself in the real world. The God of Bows would definitely do all he can to kill Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin and Oh Se Chan became silent for a moment as they had this thought. So what do you want to do? After a short moment of silence, Oh Se Chan asked a question, to which Kim Woo Jin replied. 
I'll do what I have to do step by step we'll start by having a proper meal on my way home. A meal. The beef back then was delicious. At that moment, Li Jin Ah, who was eating a choco pie, shouted. Did you just call me? Following which, Bo Se Chan also shouted. Take out the ten servings in advance this time no, just don't give any to that bastard, Li Jin Ah. Kim Wu Jin laughed at his words. Ah, sorry I just had a bad memory so what's next? To that question, Kim Wu Jin answered in a calm tone as though it was nothing special. I have to meet Park Yong Wan. Chapter, 155 The top floor of the Phoenix Guild headquarters was originally an ordinary office, but it had been decorated so much that it now looked more like a penthouse. It was so enchanting, that fantasizing that it could be their home was one of the guilty pleasures of all those who managed to enter it. However, the expression on the face of the owner of said penthouse was anything but happy. So you failed. As he said this, Park Yongwan stared at Kim Woo Jin who was standing in front of him. His eyes, colder than ever. Any ordinary person would be terrified by the sight. This player, Park Yongwan, was already a monster that could not be dealt with using modern weapons. Didn't I order you to pass somehow? Sorry. So it was only natural for Kim Woo Jin to bow his head to him. However, Park Yong Wan frowned when he saw this. If it weren't for the fact that you were the one who advised me to invest in Isaac Ivanov, I would not have even bothered to see your face. I don't want your apologies, let me hear your excuses you didn't even prepare an excuse, did you? Only then did Kim Woo Jin lift his head and start speaking. He recognized the power of my poison but he criticized my lack of versatility. Is that your only excuse? I was asked if I could help when I was needed. When he heard those words, Park Yong Wan relaxed a little. So that means he's keeping you as an option? Yes. Park Yong Wan's expression also softened a bit. So it's not that he's not interested. To be honest, when Park Yong Wan first heard that Kim Woo Jin had failed to join Isaac Ivanov's party, had wondered what to do with him. Whether to throw him away, give him to someone else, or sell his services. Hmm. However, now that he'd heard the whole situation, it seemed that Isaac Ivanov did not completely give up on Kim Woo Jin. A sub. As he'd said before, Isaac Ivanov was willing to take Kim Woo Jin if it was necessary. This meant that although he wasn't in the first group, he was still treated as though he was in the second group. In other words, this meant that if he could show something more, it was possible for him to join the first group. What should I do? Of course, Park Yong Wan did not intend to start investing more in Kim Woo Jin for just that reason. Park Yong Wan was the type of person who would not hesitate to get rid of something or someone after they had become useless. At least, that was what the type of person that the Park Yong Wan, that Kim Woo Jin knew, was. A human being who made decisions based only on his own interests without hesitation. It was for this very same reason that he had been able to sell his country without hesitation. It seems that Isaac Ivanov is likely to. So Kim Woo Jin pulled out another card that he'd prepared. Leave his current guild. What? And Park Yong Wan's expression changed completely due to how shocking this card was. What are you talking about? I heard him mention the addition of tanks and wizards during conversations he had with his teammate in Russian their conversation was about needing a new tank and about needing more firepower. They want to recruit more party members. As far as I can tell, they don't intend to get any support from the Mokosh guild that they're a part of that's no different from leaving the guild isn't it? At that moment, Park Yong Wan began doing calculations in his head. This. Isaac Ivanov's value had grown beyond description, so many guilds were coveting him at this point. No, it was more than simply coveting, they were willing to pay a tremendous price just to get the name Isaac Ivanov associated with their guilds. How much would it be worth if they got a chance to recruit Isaac Ivanov? But Park Yong Wan soon shook his head. No, Isaac Ivanov is unlikely to move to another guild otherwise, he would have done so by now. When you look at his past actions and the progress that he'd made, the chances of Isaac Ivanov joining another guild were extremely low. He won't leave his guild instead, after forming his own party, it's highly likely that he'll keep acting the same way. It was highly likely that Isaac Ivanov would continue attacking dungeons as a party together with other guilds. 
At least, that's what Park Yongwon thought. That's why he tested Kim Woo Jin. Furthermore, he could now understand why Isaac Ivanov was interested in Kim Woo Jin. Right, he's preparing to enter four floor dungeons in four floor dungeons, there are a lot of monsters who can't be handled with just physical force. When he reached this conclusion, Kim Woo Jin's value in Park Yong Won's mind increased a little. If you have one more chance, are you confident that you can pass? Kim Woo Jin responded to his question without hesitation. It is absolutely impossible for me right now. And when you level up? It's not something that kind of problem Isaac Ivanov's strength is on a different level compared to mine it's not something I can reach simply by leveling up. What if you had better items? If you have such items then it would be better to just give them to Isaac Ivanov. TL, hee hee. Park yong nodded at the cold yet rational answer. He understands the situation well. If Kim Woo-jin had declared that he could do it with poor determination, then Park yong would have abandoned him immediately. However, even at such a time, Kim Woo-jin was able to make a cool calculation. He had tried to figure out just why he failed to pass the qualification test. Then what do you think? This meant that he must know how to pass. It's true that my poison adds to Isaac Ivanov's ability but he wants more than that he doesn't want 1 plus 1 to equal 2 he wants a synergy that makes it become 3. Park yong smiled at his words. It seems that I am quite lucky, TL, you forgot the un. With that smile on his face, Park yong picked up an envelope from the desk in front of him. This was supposed to be your reward when you passed. From it, he pulled out a golden skill page. Corpse Poison. Condition, Emissary of the Underworld. Required level, level 70 or above. Effect, quickly decompose a corpse to create poison the higher the skill rank, the stronger the corpse poison, and the faster it's created. It was a unique skill, corpse poison. This is an advanced payment. Park yong handed the page to Kim Woo Jin as he said. You must pass there is no other option. However, Kim Woo Jin did not take the skill page but instead asked a question. But how are you going to get a chance from Isaac Ivanov? That's what I need to worry about, you just focus on what you need to do. These words were basically the last notice. Only then did Kim Woo Jin stop asking questions. I will change Isaac Ivanov's mind somehow. He then accepted the skill page with overflowing determination. Chapter, 156 On January 1, 2020, mankind realized that the world had transformed into a game overnight and that anything could happen in the upcoming years. This was why people haven't gathered in the streets of Manhattan to shout Happy New Year since 2020. By the end of December, governments in every country had to make tremendous efforts to prevent their citizens from hoarding supplies. In spite of that, the citizens still held on to the supplies that they collected while wishing that the new year would pass without incident. Guilds and players also ceased all dungeon attacks at the end of December in order to prepare for whatever might happen in the new year. The same was true for the Messiah Guild. On December 31st, there was only one official activity that was conducted by the Messiah Guild. 2023, a long year, is passing. The Savior Lee Sejun. His speech at the Gwangwaman Square in Seoul, about 10 minutes before the new year, was the only activity that they did. It was the moment when the Messiah Guild, which was busy attacking dungeons around the world, was at its calmest. But on the contrary, it was also the moment when the Messiah Guild's presence reached its highest point in the year. For most people in the world who were afraid of the new year, Lee Se-jun was the only one that they could rely on. Unsurprisingly, only very special people were able to witness Lee Se-jun's New Year's speech in person. Even Korean celebrities who always received VIP treatment whenever there was an event in Korea, could only get seats on plastic chairs in a corner, and even then, only the truly special ones were allowed to attend. Of course, regardless of this, countless people flocked the Gwangwaman Square to spot Lee Se-jun from a distance. It was the same for Kim Woo-jin. Before he returned to the past, he, who was a loyal member of the Messiah Guild, happily came out to Gwangwaman Square to listen to Lee Sejun's New Year's speech from a distance. We've made a lot of progress and we've made many sacrifices. He'd made up his mind after listening to the speech. He would listen to it closer next time. Even now, after returning to the past, 
Kim Woo Jin was listening to Lee Se Joon's New Year's speech from a distance. But I won't stop here. And his determination was the same as it was before. Next time, he wanted to listen to it from a closer distance. The day this space narrows, I will chop off your head. That way he could take his life. Save the world with me let's put an end to this game. As soon as Lee Sejun finished his speech, the clock behind him struck twelve, signaling the start of the new year. And at that moment, the world became silent. Only after realizing that they hadn't received any notifications, did people began to smile, clap and cheer. Ah! Savior! Lee Sejun, save us! They began to cheer for the world's only savior. In all the commotion, Kim Woo Jin took out his cell phone and sent a text message. I passed Isaac Ivanov's test. After sending that message, Kim Woo Jin turned around and left. 2024, the new year, had begun. If you block a flowing river, after you unblock it, the force of the water would be much stronger. The moment the new year started after December, where they stopped all activities, and the moment when they confirmed that nothing else had happened that year, the world looked very similar. Lightning Emperor, Guild Transfer The Messiah Guild gains a new sponsor. The Frontier Guild acquires three UK guilds. As if they were waiting, huge pieces of news began to pop out and make headlines in each media outlet. The Great One Guild commences six-floor dungeon attack. The Kunlun Guild is attacking two six-floor dungeons at the same time. The Phoenix Guild challenges its third six-floor dungeon. At the same time, the large guilds began announcing six-floor dungeon attacks one after the other. Naturally, Oh se -chan and his subordinates were also extremely busy. What happened in Europe? Checking. Where is the Lightning Emperor now? Last seen in Australia. Is the information that the Messiah Guild is being sponsored by both Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola at the same time correct? Yes. Damn, they get to drink cola every day I'm jealous. Yes. They didn't even have enough time to eat. This was why. Ding. Ah, that's it. Oh Seichan's cold gaze was locked onto Lee Jina who was taking a pile of steamed buns from the microwave. Ah, hot. Who, who? TL, I suppose that's the sound of him blowing. Ah, fuck. And the reason the Oh Seichan began to shout angrily at Li Jina who was happily eating his steamed buns. Li Jina, what the hell are you doing you bastard? Li Jina, who sat at the table in the center of the office, responded when he heard Oh Seichan's words. What do you mean what am I doing? I'm eating steamed buns steamed buns are the best during winter. When he heard such a bright reply, Oh Seichan put his hands on his bald head which had become red from his increased blood pressure. You. It was then. Hyung you should eat some too I bought a lot on purpose. Oh Seichan's eyes widened at Lee Jin Ahs words before saying. You know how much I care about you, don't you? Along with those words, Oh Seichan quickly sat across from Lee Jin Ah and picked up a steamed bun. Ah, uh, hot who, who? Lee Jin Ah, who'd already eaten three buns, started talking to Oh Seichan, who was mumbling while blowing on his first. How's your work going? Everything is going as I expected. You know how much I suffered last year right? It was all thanks to my hard work so you should be grateful. Oh se -chan gave a big smile. If it was outside of my expectations, that would mean that the world was turning in the right direction. Ha! Huh. Li Ji Na opened his mouth in shock at Oh se -chan's statement before promptly shoving three steamed buns into a TL. All this talk about steamed buns is making me crave some. Oh Seichan answered with a slight frown on his face. I'm sure that something shocking is going to happen this year. A shocking event? It's a major event that will cause more than five OECD1 members to become virtually infamous by next year. Li Jina showed a surprised expression at the words that were even more shocking than he expected, and stuffed two buns in his mouth before asking. Would that really happen? Even if a monster escapes from a six-floor dungeon, there would be ways to escape from it even if we can't handle it right. In response to Li Jina's question, Oh Seichan picked up a steamed bun before continuing. That's true, but people are much more terrifying than monsters. People. 
You know that Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, and Latin America are protesting for their lives right? Yes. But has their protest caused anything to change? It hasn't. So what would you do in a situation where there is no change even after you've been protesting till you rip your throat? They will protest harder. That's right, Bin Laden sent a plane into the Twin Towers with that in mind. Then, as if he'd grasped the severity of the situation, Li Jina picked up a steamed bun. Oh se -chan also picked one up while thinking. There are already signs. Oh se -chan invested a countless amount of money in order to understand the situation around the world. It wouldn't be strange if the situation escalates soon. So it would be strange if he didn't know that the world had a warehouse full of gunpowder that was primed to explode at any moment. In fact, there was already some movement. In Eastern Europe and the Middle East, some radical groups began preparing for and planning to implement acts of terrorism. We've only been lucky so far. Until recently, they'd managed to stop any plans in advance, but no matter how big an umbrella was, it could not stop the rain perpetually. At some point, there would be a moment when you were splashed by rainwater. This is the best stage for the Messiah Guild. And it would be the moment when the Messiah Guild practically ruled the world. The Messiah Guild is the only place to lean on in a world filled by the terror of monsters where even governments had lost their function. So before that, we need something to fight against the Messiah Guild somehow. At the moment, regardless of what Oh Se Chan wanted to do, he had no way to stop the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin should grow quickly. This was the reason that Oh Se Chan wanted Kim Woo Jin to grow faster so that he could have more influence. So when's the next dungeon? Don't know. You don't know. From now on, you can't just attack any dungeon. Of course, Oh Se Chan did not forget that they needed to be even more cautious at times like these. You and Kim Woo Jin can only attack three floor dungeons three more times or so after that comes four floor dungeons as you know, four floor dungeons are completely different from three floor dungeons. The number of floors is one thing, but also four and five floor dungeons are the main stages for mid-sized guilds and it's not guild members, it would be their guild master taking part in the dungeons. Hey, boss. A subordinate walked over to Oh Se Chan. Ah. Would you like to have a steamed bun? Oh Se Chan handed a steamed bun to his subordinate. No, that's not it. However, the subordinate refused the bun before saying, I think you should check this out. What is it? An A rank dungeon was found. A rank? The subordinate nodded at the question. Yes, and it appears to be a three floor dungeon. Oh Se Chan smiled at those words. Kim Woo Jin has a lot of luck with dungeons A rank dungeons, which would be hard for others to attack even if they wanted to, are just lined up for him. Someone would think that he knew an A rank dungeon was coming which is why he increased his level. But the smile didn't last long. But this information came from the Dragon Slayer channels. What? Only. Oh Se Chan was surprised. Wait, so you got information about this A rank 3 floor dungeon from the Dragon Slayer? No way. The subordinate then confirmed what Oh Se Chan was thinking. The dungeon boss of this dungeon is expected to be a hatchling. Chapter 157 An A rank dungeon appears. A rank. These rare dungeons, where legendary items could be found, were always the focus of the world. It was the same this time as well. The dungeon has three floors. The news of the discovery of a three-floor A rank dungeon immediately put the world in a festive mood. Whoa, a three-floor A rank. More legendary items will appear. Who will become the owner of the new legendary? The reason for this was the fact that three-floor dungeons no longer posed a major threat to the world. However, this atmosphere didn't last long. The dungeon's boss monster is a hatchling. The moment that they learned that the dungeon boss would be a hatchling through its title, the festive atmosphere cooled down. Oh my god, a dragon. It's a monster with the highest magical and physical defense. The hatchling was such a monster. First of all its physical defense, magical defense and its resistances were all overwhelming to the point where other monsters could not even begin to compare. That's not all all dragons have guardians. 
there might also be boss monsters among the guardians. What was even more troublesome, was the fact that every dragon also had a guardian under their command. These were not ordinary monsters, instead, every one of them was a powerful monster and there was a chance that they could be boss monsters as well. Although the hatchling was only a baby, a dragon was still a dragon. It can also fly. Most crucially, dragons could fly. Therefore, it was possible for it to create the worst situations that players would want to face any time it wanted. Plus even the Messiah Guild gave up on them. Right even Lee Sejun. Because of this, even the Messiah Guild and Lee Sejun had given it up when a hatchling dungeon had appeared in 2020. The only one who dared to hunt it was the Dragon Slayer. That was the setting from which the Dragon Slayer was born. The world happily gave the title of Dragon Slayer to the man who had managed to hunt a dragon that even Lee Sejun couldn't. Because of this, when the Dragon Slayer was named as the Dungeon Advisor instead of the Messiah Guild, there were no objections. Since everyone was eagerly waiting for the Dragon Slayer's advice, he gave it to them willingly. I checked the first list of applicants, and all I can say is that if they enter that dungeon, they will all be wiped out. At the level of those first applicants, no matter how hard they tried, they would never be able to defeat the hatchling. So the world asked him. How could we clear this dungeon? And the dragon slayer gave a response without any hesitation. First of all, if you want to clear this dungeon, then Isaac Ivanov must participate. Only one person, Isaac Ivanov had obtained the recognition of the dragon slayer. Of course, this caused the public's attention to turn toward Isaac Ivanov and everyone asked him. So what are you gonna do? What was he going to do? Kim Woo Jin gave a simple answer to this question. I have to set up an admission fee first. It was the moment that Kim Woo Jin had been given the casting vote one. In 2020, after the world was transformed into a game, people began adapting to this changed world. This was especially true for the players. Those who awakened the qualifications to become players began to enthusiastically attack dungeons. Unlike the present, in that time, there were a lot of people who were willing to die, and entered dungeons without caring for their lives. Moreover, at that time, even items obtained from one-floor dungeons could be traded for an extraordinarily high price. It was a time where even a one-floor dungeon was worth risking your life to clear. Therefore, in this situation where the value of the dungeons was clear for everyone to see, there were many instances where players and guilds fought for the right to attack dungeons. Following this, there were many cases of bloodshed and murder. This was when the bidding system came into being. It became possible to obtain the right to attack dungeons by bidding for them rather than through violence. But even this system wasn't perfect. People who began abusing the bidding system began to appear. After bidding for a valuable dungeon and winning it at a high price, there were cases where the other guilds were asked for admission fees, or the dungeon's attack right was sold for an even higher price. These practices were especially severe in the case of a ranked dungeons where there was a definite chance to obtain legendary items. There were many cases where players or guilds who did not have the capability to clear the dungeon, would still attempt to bid on the dungeon. It was better if they just bid. In the event that their bids were rejected, there were even cases of administrative lawsuits or constitutional petitions. This was why every country joined together and created a new exception. In the case of dungeons at a rank and above, only those who are determined to be able to attack the dungeon would be given the right to decide. The Casting Vote Treaty At Oh Seichan's explanation of how the casting vote came into being, Li Jina simply stared at him blankly. Oh Seichan clicked his tongue at Li Jina, who was just blinking his eyes stupidly. To put it simply, only guilds who have the ability to attack a rank and above dungeons can decide who can participate. Ah! Only then did Li Jina, who had finally understood what the casting vote meant, nod. Is there still such a rule? There is. Then why does everyone stick to a rank dungeons to the point that they even have to share them? I told you, they will give the decision over to those who are determined to be able to clear the dungeon unlike in 2020, we have sufficient upward leveling momentum. Over time, this casting vote rule slowly became ineffective as the know-how to clear the dungeons became more widespread, stronger items continuously appeared and players' abilities steadily increased. 
It's basically meaningless for dungeons lower than four floors but the rules are still in effect in fact. They are still very prominent in dungeons five floors and higher quite a few guilds can't even bid for a five floor A rank dungeon even I don't have the right. Then why isn't there any talk of a failed bid? Would you deliberately bid on a dungeon when all that you'd hear is, you are too weak to attack this dungeon, so please get a little stronger. After saying this, Oh Seichan turned to his subordinate. What's the bidding status of the hatchling dungeon right now? There are no bids. C. Oh Seichan laughed at the answer. There's no way those guys in Japan would do something just to embarrass themselves. Along with those words, Oh Seichan thought of Osaka, Japan, where the three floor A rank dungeon hatchlings nest had appeared. We are lucky in many ways with Hatchling being in the title of the dungeon, it appearing in the chaotic January period, the Dragon Slayer naming Isaac Ivanov's participation as the basic requirement to clear the dungeon. It was then. We got a call from the Japanese government. Oh Seichan looked at the subordinate who brought this news. Only. What did they say? If Isaac Ivanov is willing to clear this dungeon, they will hand the decisions over to him. Oh Seichan shouted at those words. Heh, yeah, then shall we decide on an admission fee? After he said this, Oh Seichan let out a laugh. Ha ha. I'm already excited about how much we will make this time. Chapter, 158. There are fewer applicants than I expected. As Oh Seichan's sullen words came over the phone, Kim Woojin was measuring a skeleton soldier's shoulders with a tape measure. You thought there would be a lot of applicants? The moment the Japanese government handed the decision rights over to Isaac Ivanov, Oh Seichan began working right away. After notifying the media about Isaac Ivanov's attack on the dungeon, he sent recruitment notices to all the well-known guilds in order to recruit participants to challenge the dungeon with him. Of course, he also added the clause that he would randomly select applicants if there were too many of them. This meant that if anyone wanted to pass, they would have to do well on their own. However, after the recruitment announcement was made, the number of people who applied was extremely low. In fact, this was natural in a way. It was true that it was a good thing that Isaac Ivanov's participation basically guaranteed the success of the dungeon attack. But on the other hand, this also meant that Isaac Ivanov was the only one who would get a chance to hunt the hatchling. In the end, regardless of what they do, they could only be bridesmaids, never the bride. In other words, the other players would be the bridesmaids. From the perspective of those large guilds who already had a large amount of prestige and fame, especially the five great guilds, this was not something that they were fond of doing. They'd be crazy if they paid for that. Wasn't it your idea to charge an admission fee? In the first place, it was Kim Woo Jin, not Oh Se Chan, who had brought up the idea of collecting an admission fee. I didn't say I would receive the admission fee. What? However, Kim Woo Jin's intentions weren't to collect an admission fee. Naturally I told you to set an admission fee but I never told you to accept it. What are you talking about? Set a reasonable admission fee. We still don't have many applicants. After that, contact the guilds that did not apply and ask again tell them that the participation of their players is necessary for the clearance of this dungeon and ask them if they would mind if we disclose this information to the media of course. You must emphasize the fact that they don't need to pay the admission fee. In the first place, Kim Woo Jin knew that those large guilds would not want to participate in this dungeon. In three floors, there was no one below level 100 who could beat Isaac Ivanov to hunt the hatchling. Kim Woo Jin had obviously created this method with that in mind. H. Huh. They would then choose to do one of two things either they will participate in the dungeon and be bridesmaids, or they will pay a fee higher than the entrance fee and ask to have their names removed from the list. That way, they had no choice but to pay for their absence. The hero who is risking his life to save is asking for their help, if they want to refuse that, then they will need to pay the price. After hearing this method, Oh Seichan fell silent. The silence lasted for a while. Wow! Then he broke the silence with an exclamation. You are a genius! Kim Woo Jin laughed at his praise. You can decide on the entrance fee I can't measure an amount that is just short of ridiculous you know that part better than I do, don't you? I will do my best to achieve satisfactory results by all means ah. 
Just as the conversation was coming to a close, Oh se chan let out a shout as though he had just realized something. By the way, how are you going to decide on the members after receiving the absence fee? Receiving the fee would mean that they would not receive any help from that guild at all. You won't let a bunch of crazy people join the dungeon just because they pay the admission fee, will you? However, it would not be wise to attack the dungeon with everyone who applied. This dungeon would be the perfect stage for players who did not want to be helpful but instead wanted to cause trouble. In the worst case scenario, there would be space for people aiming to interfere with Kim Woo Jin's attack as well as people who wanted to commit suicidal terrorism. Well, first we'll have to check the absence list most of the large guilds, including the big five, will be absent the guilds will stop it even if their players want to join. Right if something like Ellis Heighton happens again, then they might burst a vein. If we can confirm that there are no special guests then we will make an announcement. This was the reason that Kim Woo Jin had begun preparing for this dungeon so early. We will attack the dungeon with only Isaac Ivanov's party. He was thinking about clearing the dungeon alone with Lee Jinao. By doing this, Kim Woo Jin intended to imprint an image into the minds of everyone in the world. We can do what the Savior can't. That Isaac Ivanov wasn't just a spare part who could replace the Savior. Right, you have to come out like that. Oh Se Chan, who understood his intentions, smiled. Alright, I'll handle the planning so that you and Li Jina can enter the dungeon alone. W dash, wait. Hyung. Hyung. Then a new voice appeared over the line. I think I might have heard it incorrectly, but did you say that the two of us are going to clear the hatchling dungeon alone? Are you crazy? Hey, shut up. I'm on the phone right now. No, this is serious. It's a hatchling. The strongest boss monster that can appear in a three-floor dungeon. It's a monster that even people over level 100 would pee themselves after discovering. A monster that was only even hunted by the dragon slayer among all the players under level 100 so far. How could we possibly hunt that monster alone? So what? Do you want to bet? Whether you and Kim Woo Jin can successfully hunt the hatchling or not I'll bet all the money I have as well as this bowl of jajangmian I got for lunch that you can hunt it what do you want to bet? Do you want to bet the jampong one, you just ordered? Huh? TL, Li Jinao loses either way either he dies, or loses money. So what? Do you want to bet? Whether you and Kim Woo Jin can successfully hunt the hatchling or not I'll bet all the money I have as well as this bowl of jajangmian I got for lunch that you can hunt it what do you want to bet? Do you want to bet the jampong one, you just ordered? Huh? Hey, really? As he heard the play that was happening on the other hand, Kim Woo Jin gave a slight smile before hanging up. He only had one thought as he looked at the skeleton soldier before him. I will be able to accurately measure my strength in the Hatchling Dungeon. The Hatchling Dungeon was a dungeon that had only ever appeared once before and created a legendary player with the title Dragon Slayer with that one appearance. The Japanese government transfers the decisions for the Hatchling Dungeon to Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov holds the casting vote. In such a situation, the entire world was shocked when Isaac Ivanov was given the casting vote for the Hatchling Dungeon. Casting vote. Didn't that appear in 2020? Do you think this is the first time that a player got the casting vote instead of a guild? The Dragon Slayer said that Isaac Ivanov's participation is a necessity to clear the dungeon what else can they do? Of course, the large guilds were different. They paid little attention to this situation. Isaac Ivanov will hunt it anyway, there's no need to pay and undertake the risk just to become bridesmaids. There's no guarantee that they can succeed even if we sent parties in hopes that Isaac Ivanov fails. It's a hatchling if we create a party with the hope that Isaac Ivanov fails, we will definitely have to send legendary items and there is no guarantee that an Ellis Heighton situation would not recur. Those who knew Isaac Ivanov's history were even less interested in it. I would rather have the hatchling eat Isaac Ivanov this time. If Isaac Ivanov dies, all of his legendary items would remain in the dungeon. It's much more profitable to prepare for after Isaac Ivanov's death. Rather, there were some who wished for Isaac Ivanov's failure. If Isaac Ivanov does not get enough there will probably be forces who enter the dungeon simply to interfere with his attack. It's difficult to clear a dungeon, but it's easy to make one fail. 
Well with the hatchling, you would only need to throw a few attacks here and there whenever Isaac Ivanov starts fighting. Some even thought about sending suicidal forces into the dungeon simply to force Isaac Ivanov to fail his attack. Considering his value, it was not a bad idea. It was only the wish of the ordinary people for this game to end because most players did not want their vested interests and newfound influence to disappear. Therefore, some of them were willing to pay to prolong it. Isaac Ivanov asked me to participate and asked if he could release the list to the media what should I do. What do you mean, it's obvious that you'd get fucked if you're on the list, so of course say no ask them to take you off the list, even if you have to pay for it. Then the amount. There must be an admission fee write it based on that. But that's the problem the admission fee is quite high. Even if it's expensive huck. Even if the admission fee was higher than they anticipated, they were willing to pay. Damn, I'll pay for it. Afterward, those who paid the fee all gathered and began talking. Ha. Huh. You paid the absence fee too. I don't want to be a bridesmaid. You too. Besides being the bridesmaid, it would be insane to go in there when you don't know what might happen I heard that none of the top five guilds will be present, and all of the guilds in the United States and Europe are staying far away from this. I also heard that all of the large guilds in Asia also paid their absence fees. Of course who would want to be an extra in a movie where a terrorist hijacks a plane? Exactly. While having their conversation, they began to wonder. Then who will take part in this dungeon attack? When you pay attention to it, most guilds won't even touch this with a ten-foot pole. Only. It's natural for the top five guilds to stay away, but is it really true that not a single one of the top 100 guilds are participating? I'm sure there are some who might join. Well if it's like this, then it means that only one or two people here and there would participate, but this dungeon has a maximum capacity of 202 so even if we send 50 players collectively, it would still not be enough. Isaac Ivanov responded to that question. Isaac Ivanov to challenge the hatchling alone. TL, with Lee Jina. He intended to write a legend that had never been written before. Chapter, 159. The human race never stopped progressing. This was especially true for the players. Dungeons which needed at least 100 players to clear them in 2020, only needed half that amount by 2024. Could 10 players defeat a dungeon with 100 maximum entries? Isn't the record a 28-man party? In terms of ratio, wouldn't the best record be those 33 players who cleared a 122-man three-floor dungeon? How many players did one need to clear a dungeon? In order to break the record, there were teams of players who targeted low-ranked dungeons that had high maximum entries. Of course, there were times when they overestimated their abilities and lost their lives in a failed attempt, but there was no one who criticized or laughed at their actions. But why would you do such a crazy thing? It would increase the chances of clearing if you fill the maximum number of entries, wouldn't it? It's a great challenge. It's better to clear three to four dungeons a year with a small group than wait for people. It was natural that people paid more attention to those players who risked their lives to clear dungeons in any way possible rather than simply enjoying the rights and benefits. Therefore, most applauded these challengers. They felt that the more reckless the challenge, the more noble the challengers. However, this time was different. Look. Isaac Ivanov is attacking a dungeon alone. The world was shocked to hear that Isaac Ivanov was going to attack the dungeon on his own without the help of other guilds. No, they weren't surprised at first. What the hell are you talking about? Cut the crap. Instead, they didn't believe it. However, after the news was released repeatedly along with additional reports, their disbelief slowly morphed into shock. No way, soloing a hatchling. No, I know Isaac Ivanov is amazing, but his opponent this time is a hatchling. How can he handle that on his own? Not alone, isn't he a part of a team of two? Didn't he get a new teammate? No one expected him to challenge the infamous hatchling with nothing but his own party. Naturally, it was almost impossible for them to believe that this attack would succeed. We have to stop him from doing this. Does anybody have Isaac Ivanov's number? Wouldn't the Choco Pie Company have it? Hey, are you joking right now? 
I'm not joking considered the amount of choco pies that we send to Isaac Ivanov, the truck must deliver them to him every day wouldn't they have to contact him in advance. It actually makes sense. Because of this, the public opinion began to flow in the direction that they had to stop Isaac Ivanov from attacking the dungeon somehow. Amid such public opinion, Isaac Ivanov released a piece of news. Isaac Ivanov recruits a new teammate. His new teammate is a member of the Phoenix Guild. That was it. Isaac Ivanov enters the dungeon. And with just that piece of news, Isaac Ivanov began the dungeon attack. Survive for five days to proceed to the next floor. Ah. When Li Jina heard the appearance of the notification which announced the requirements to clear the first floor of the dungeon, he let out a sigh. It's really gonna be a two-man challenge. With another sigh, Li Jina turned to look at Kim Wu Jin who was standing beside him with an arm around his shoulder. Of course, it wasn't actually Kim Wu Jin. Rattle. And it was soon revealed that the Kim Wu Jin who was on his shoulder was actually a skeleton soldier. Li Jina had entered the dungeon together with the skeleton soldier. I didn't expect this to actually work. It was impossible for the skeleton soldier to enter the dungeon gate by itself even if it was recognized as an item. However, if the skeleton soldier belonged to a player and was carried into the dungeon gate, it would be considered an item. However, since the number of items that the skeleton soldier wore would be added to the player which meant that they couldn't wear other items. Meaning that the player couldn't use this method to carry additional items. It really looks like you. However, the fact that he could enter the dungeon with this Kim Wu Jin, who had perfectly copied everything down to his height could go without saying. Even the nose hair is the same. Kim Wu Jin called out to Li Jin Ah, who had his fingers in the nostrils of the skeleton soldier, perfectly disguised as Kim Wu Jin. Li Jin Ah. Phew. At that moment, Li Jin Ah let out a long sigh. Right, should I go lure the monsters? He moved, accepting the fact that his hardships were about to begin. However, Kim Wu Jin told him something completely unexpected. Conserve your strength till the third floor. Ha! Huh. I will handle everything until then. Along with those words, Kim Wu Jin immediately summoned the Book of the Dead and released a skeleton soldier. The headless skeleton soldier created from the Dullahan appeared before them. Blackbone has been activated. At that time, the bones of the Dullahan skeleton soldier slowly began to turn black. After that, Kim Wu Jin immediately began to release all the undead monsters from the Book of the Dead. The Golden Lion and Ogre skeleton soldiers as well as the skeleton knights and skeleton wolves all appeared. What the hell are you up to? Kim Wu Jin answered the question calmly. Make as many bodies as I can. With those words, Kim Wu Jin's eyes became blue. For players, January was the hottest year. The heat was created by the players scrambling to carry out the large projects that they planned since before the new year. However, January 2024 was different. Isaac Ivanov challenges the hatchling dungeon solo. Can Isaac Ivanov make a dream a reality? Who is Isaac Ivanov's new companion? There was no news that could be hotter than the fact that Isaac Ivanov was attacking the hatchling dungeon with just a three-person party. Isaac covers everything. He even covered the news of the top five guilds attacking six-floor dungeons. Even the news of the top five guilds attacking six-floor dungeon was buried by his news. The top five guilds are probably tired of it by now, aren't they? Isn't this the first time in history that they were treated like bridesmaids? They brought it upon themselves this wouldn't have happened if they had gone to attack their dungeons before Isaac Ivanov. MHM, all they had to do was attack first. It would be strange if the top five guilds, who were used to being the main lead, didn't feel a bit of pain after being relegated to a side character. However, the top five guilds did not ignore Isaac Ivanov's actions, even though it made them uncomfortable. Instead, the top five guilds were more interested in Isaac Ivanov's movements than anyone else at that moment and discussed it. Of course, it wasn't like they were like cheering for Isaac Ivanov or praying for his success. If Isaac Ivanov fails, what legendary items will be left? King Arthur's ring, Merlin's staff, Van Gogh's bracelet, Wilhelm Tell's crossbow and I'm sure there are at least two more. Many of Isaac Ivanov's items are equipped with at least unique items. 
what they were discussing was the plan after Isaac Ivanov's death. It's enough for us to all have at least one legendary item. Among those items are quite a few high-grade legendary items there's no reason for us to not work together to obtain these items. The Messiah Guild won't act arrogantly in this situation it was worth it for our five guilds to have this meeting. The large guilds, especially the top five guilds, began preparing to attack the Hatchling dungeon after Isaac Ivanov's death. In other words, none of them believed that Isaac Ivanov would succeed. It was a valid thought. The one thing that we can be sure of, is that Isaac Ivanov will fail. Even if it's Isaac Ivanov, it's impossible to clear an A-ranked dungeon, especially one with a hatchling as the boss, with only three people. It doesn't make sense for him to add one more teammate. It doesn't change anything no matter how hard I try, I cannot think of a way for three people to clear a hatchling dungeon. Everyone believed that there wasn't an answer. Bullshit. On the second day after entering the dungeon, Li Jina realized that there wasn't an answer. There is no answer with this guy, Kim Wu Jin. He was beginning to realize that from now on, he would entrust his fate to Kim Wu Jin who was summoning skeleton soldiers in front of him. That was all it was. Kim Wu Jin's full-fledged performance had once again shocked Li Jina, who was watching from the side. First, the number of skeleton soldiers was different. The sight of 90 black skeletons rushing towards the monster was reminiscent of the waves of a tsunami. In addition, the skeleton soldiers made from the Golden Lion, Ogre and Dullahan skeletons were all equipped with unique items and displayed a terrifying amount of power. The effect of Ruler of Battlefield stacks. And the most terrifying part was that the intensity of the tsunami created by the skeleton army increased as they fought more battles. Kyaha. And in the middle of this tsunami was the skeleton knight which acted as a general leading his army. The skeleton knight with Percival's spear in one hand and Bor's shield in the other, killed the monsters without hesitation. And it wasn't just one skeleton knight. The skeleton knights, which had increased to three after the skill rank had been increased, destroyed the monsters as though they were competing for kills. There was also a new figure that had an overwhelming aura. Hayaha. It was none other than a skeleton mage who had finally made its appearance. There were only two of them. Nevertheless, these two skeleton mages who wore robes and let out bizarre cries, revealed their presence through the basketball-sized fireballs that appeared in their hands. Fwum. Throwing these balls of flames forward, they caused the chaotic scene to become hellish. Rather, it was the golem and fire golem who failed to reveal their presence in this situation. But they weren't weak. Thud. It was just that the monsters who faced the skeleton army were too weak to keep up with the pace of the battle. This should be enough. Even after wiping out these monsters, he still had power left over. Kim Wu Jin's current best performance was so powerful and overwhelming. At this rate I should be equal or slightly superior to Hatchling. In addition, Kim Wu Jin was sure that his current power was sufficient to fight the Hatchling. He couldn't be sure of the odds, and the odds were that it would be a fierce battle where he would suffer some damage, but even that alone was amazing. Moreover, this was the judgment made by Kim Wu Jin who had hunted the second most dragons after the dragon slayer before returning to the past, so the accuracy of his estimation went without saying. Well, I guess I'll have to use that. But that was not Kim Wu Jin's idea of a good dungeon of attack. Kim Wu Jin had no intentions of taking part in a fierce battle where he could not be sure of his victory and so he decided to give himself some assurance. That was why Kim Wu Jin decided to wear something. You have equipped Van Gogh's bracelet. Increases the number of rings you can wear. You gain the achievement Van Gogh's power. Inventory increased by 5 spaces due to the effect of the achievement Van Gogh's power. Van Gogh's bracelet. The moment he equipped it, the bracelet was absorbed into Kim Wu Jin's wrist and became a tattoo. King Arthur's ring can no longer be removed. And the ring on his little finger also became a tattoo. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin took Hercules' ring from his inventory and placed it on his fourth finger. You have equipped Hercules' ring. Ability increased due to the achievements gained. All damage increased by 10%. Health and stamina increased by 150. At that moment, the skeleton soldiers seemed to react as though they were influenced by their master's increase in power. 
The skeleton knights and skeleton mages also stopped fighting for a moment and trembled at the great strength flowing into their bodies. It was as though they were intoxicated by the power flowing from their master. Not bad. Kim Wu Jin also let out a smile at the new power rising within his body. The emissary of the underworld is happy with your decision. And his halo, who also favored him greatly, also cheered at Kim Wu Jin's increase in power. The emissary of the underworld sent you a special gift. And of course it didn't forget to send him a present. When he saw that, Kim Wu Jin's smile became deeper. Black Bone Rank, E Effect, increases the skeleton's defense greatly. Chapter, 160 When a dungeon attack begins, of course, it is the players who are trying to clear the dungeon that are the most desperate. But it wasn't just the players who were desperate. The managers who managed the dungeons were sometimes desperate, even if they were not as desperate as the players. The same was true for Oh Se Chan and his subordinates. A drone has appeared within the vicinity of the dungeon looking at the frequency, it should be a new guy. They flock like a bunch of dogs who smelled meat. After Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina entered the hatchling dungeon, the team had to work harder than ordinary people could imagine to ensure the safety and security of their dungeon attack. Of course, under normal circumstances, there would not be such consistent surveillance. It would be strange if they didn't gather around after all that bait was released. Right, the bait we released was too hot. The problem was that Oh Se Chan had released the bait not just for the media, but to catch a big fish. The information that Isaac Ivanov's new teammate is from the Phoenix Guild and Kim Woo Jin has vanished, it was impossible for those two pieces of information, when mixed, to not get a lot of attention. If they were quick-witted, then they would have no choice but to think of the possibility that Kim Woo Jin was Isaac Ivanov's new teammate. And if it's the god of bows, he will definitely try to do something. It was bait aimed at one of the strongest men in Japan, the god of bows, Noda Hajiro, one of the main axes of the Messiah Guild TL, I'll just call him Bao God from now on, as odd as it sounds. Kim Woo Jin was sure that he would definitely try something after learning about such an unexpected situation. If he reacts too extremely, he might use a sniper or a terrorist. In the most extreme cases, he would attempt to use a sniper or a bomb the moment Kim Woo Jin exited the dungeon. It's incredibly dangerous. Naturally, Oh Se Chan, who was aware of all the dangers, would never even mention such a plan. Nevertheless, the plan was still implemented following Kim Woo Jin's orders. He'd spoken quite firmly. They would use this opportunity to shake the Bao God firmly. I'm sure it has its merits. In truth, this plan had just as much merit as it had risk. If it was as Kim Wu Jin and Oh Se Kin thought and the Bao God had rebelled against Li Se Jun because of the incident with Kim Wu Jin. Then that meant that, if given the chance, he would definitely use all of his power to eliminate Kim Wu Jin. Because the time that the Bao God was given could not be long. However, even if he was given the chance it was not like he had an infinite number of attempts. No matter what happens, the Messiah Guild has to attack the seven-floor dungeon in February, so he could only have a month at most. Oh Seichan calculated that the Bao God would only have a month to plan and carry out the assassination attempt on Kim Wu Jin. But then his target entered a dungeon with Isaac Ivanov? He was sure to get hurried and anxious with that news. If he gets anxious and hurries, he will leave a trace. From the Messiah Guild's perspective, this was the perfect opportunity for them to see what secret cards the Bao God had hidden. Anyway, trace it trace anything suspicious. Yes. It doesn't matter how much it costs. Ha. Huh. I told you don't save money. That was why Oh Seichan was more nervous than ever. In other words, Oh Seichan did not doubt the plan's success. But what if Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina fail? Then I'll just give up and go shopping at a luxury store with the money we have left I'll buy you a bag too for 100 million. Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina would definitely succeed in their attack on the dungeon. It was then. Is this drone from the self-defense forces? What? It's a self-defense force drone that was disguised as one for civilian use I'm sure it was made by Pandora. Why would the self-defense forces have to disguise a drone as one for civilian use in their own country? Because they don't want to get caught. Is that so? Alright, 
I'll handle this one give me the keyboard. The prey that Oh Se-chan was hunting had finally taken the bait. It's been a while since I had a good hunt. It's been a while since I had a good hunt. In a vast field with nowhere to hide. Kim Woo Jin had satisfaction in his eyes as he looked at the skeleton army standing above a pile of corpses, clearly showing the winner of the great battle. This was a special scene for Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin thought that battles where his power was overwhelming enough that he did not have to act personally, gave a different sense of accomplishment. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was still satisfied with the battle that had just occurred. It's been a long time since I had such a satisfying battle. In fact, Considering Kim Woo Jin's current situation, it was inevitable that he would experience such things. Before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin, who had joined the Messiah Guild, had had to give up on many things. Not to mention after returning to the past. The savior of mankind had become his prey and Kim Woo Jin had been racing at his fastest speed to catch his prey. So it was natural for him to be impressive. However, this time was different. It's more than I expected. The scene created by the skeleton soldiers had both exceeded his expectations and brought him satisfaction. The synergy of close to 100 troops using the berserker skill is much higher than I expected. This was thanks to the synergy created by the skeleton army and the berserker skill. The new skill I got this time is also good. There was even another unexpected harvest. I never thought I'd get speed casting. Speed casting, also known as rapid casting. It was a skill that he had gained from the catalogue his halo had given him, and like the name suggested, it was a skill that increased the casting speed of his magical summons like skeleton mages and liches. It's an extremely difficult skill to get. It was a unique skill that he had gotten from his halo's special gift. The skill rank is still low so the effect is not that noticeable. At the moment, the effect of the skill had only a slight impact. That can be solved by raising the rank. However, it would be an incredibly strong skill in the future after its rank had been raised a few times. Above all, Kim Woo Jin was feeling satisfaction with the situation itself. There are 100 monsters remaining. The emissary of the underworld is satisfied with your actions. There's only a thousand left. The task to clear the second floor was to hunt 200 monsters, and while he was fighting, he didn't realize that had already hunted 1900 of them. Of course, this was because of Kim Woo Jin's standards. This is really ridiculous. All the sights that he'd seen so far had been deeply imprinted in Li Jin Ahs mind. I'm sure the chicken factory isn't like this you're just slaughtering the monsters, slaughtering them. The sight of monsters, the vicious creatures which threatened and frightened the entire world being treated like chickens or pigs in a slaughterhouse was something that defied common sense. It wouldn't be strange for someone to throw up the contents of their stomach after witnessing such a sight. Ugh, I lost my appetite. If even Li Jin Ah could say that he lost his appetite, what more explanation was needed? As if to mock Li Jin Ah, who had lost his appetite, Kim Woo Jin began eating a chocolate bar. He was prepared to face the worst monster that could appear in a three-floor dungeon, the Hatchling. Li Jin Ah walked up to him and said. I'm just curious about one thing, do we need to hunt the hatchling now? Kim Woo Jin looked at Li Jin Ah with a strange gaze when he heard this question. He wondered why he was asking this question now. Li Jin Ah explained when he saw his gaze. What? Honestly, no one else is here to attack the dungeon anyway the entry requirement is level 95 and below there's nothing bad about reaching level 90 here, is there? However, when Kim Woo Jin kept looking at him with the same gaze, Li Jin Ah frowned before asking. It's not like I'm asking a question that I can't, is my question strange? Only then did Kim Woo Jin respond. Your question is valid. There was nothing wrong with Li Jin Ah's question. The thing that I'm curious about is the fact that you're asking the question so naturally now, instead of before we entered the dungeon. Kim Woo Jin had looked at him with a strange expression because it was weird for him to ask that question now. Only then did Li Jina understand the reason for Kim Woo Jin's look, and gave an awkward smile. Ha! Huh. Of course, it was because I wanted to be considerate to you not because I was scared or anything I'm a man after all so why can't we do it? It's because we have no time. 
Li Jina tilted his head at the immediate response. Time. What time? How would the world view us when we clear this dungeon? When asked this, Li Jina responded easily. They will see us as terrifying, amazingly awesome superheroes. What made the answer more ridiculous was the fact that Li Jina posed with his biceps flexed like a bodybuilder. However, strangely enough, Kim Wu Jin nodded instead of laughing at his response. Yes, that's why we don't have time. Huh, what does being superheroes have to do with time? When a superhero is born, the ordinary heroes that are already there are bound to have some losses. Ordinary heroes? Who? That's what the players are now. Hearing this, it was Li Jina's turn to make a strange expression. What heroes are they? They're all people who are attacking dungeons for their own benefits. Yes but from the general public's perspective, they feel grateful to the players for attacking the dungeons, even if they do it for money and fame that's why. Although the public might condemn and scold players to change, they would never tell them to stop or wish for their deaths. Li Jina sighed as he finally understood Kim Wu Jin's meaning. In such a situation, if superheroes like us appear, they will be exposed as fakes, would they want to screw us over? We didn't hurt them did we? And the more he understood, the angrier he became. It's not like we won't hurt them. However, Kim Wu Jin's thoughts were different. Even if they don't lose money now, they would in the future and it would be a huge loss. What are you talking about? For floor dungeons are the main stages for players above level 100 for the large guilds, it's where their key players are active and for the medium and small guilds, it's where their strongest players are active. When considering the total number of players, the number of players active in four floor dungeons was not small. Moreover, Reaching level 100 meant that these players had already accumulated a large amount of experience, achievements, reputation, capital and influence. If three floor dungeons are the places for normal employees, then four floor dungeons could be said to be the places for the company executives. Of course, the weight was very different from three floor dungeons. That means the competition is even fiercer at that point, it was not like three floor dungeons where only the dungeon's rank mattered, instead. Four floor dungeons had great influence on the guild's ranking and their guild rank changed everything from sponsorships to donations. So, naturally, the weight would be different. They all have their close cartels it's a structure in which every party benefits as much as possible, and avoids zero-sum games as much as possible, even if a win-win is not possible. As such, those who were active in four floor dungeons had all formed close partnerships. Even if one person wanted to be greedy, they could ignore it, and in the event that someone broke the rules they set, then everyone would attack them like a pack of dogs. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had no intention of sympathizing with their collusion. Now imagine how devastating we would be in that stage. He intended to take the best things he could get his hands on. Simply put, it's robbery and theft, so would we be able to do that slowly? Li Jina no longer had any questions, and Kim Woo Jin shut his mouth when he saw that. With his mouth shut, Kim Wu Jin swallowed the main reason why they didn't have time. The Messiah Guild is the biggest problem. What he'd told Li Jina was not a lie. However, the thing that Kim Wu Jin was paying the most attention to was in fact the Messiah Guild. From now on, it'll be a completely different future from what I remember. Before he returned to the past, the Messiah Guild was, in a sense, the most modest guild. They simply concentrated their efforts to clear dungeons and the other guilds also never considered them to be a threat to their interests. It was only when Park Yongwan sold the country did the Messiah Guild's actions begin to change. In response to Park Yongwan's actions, the Messiah Guild began judging the players instead of the monsters. Of course, there was a high possibility that it was actually the Messiah Guild's plan all along. Using Park Yongwan as their justification, the Messiah Guild began killing players in order to save the world. But now there's no Park Yongwan. However this time, there was no Park Yongwan for them to use. Then I'll create a new cause. If so, then the Messiah Guild would find another cause, and the future would become completely different from what Kim Woo Jin knew. Either way, at least the chaos would start. What wouldn't change was that when the Messiah Guild began judging things other than monsters, the world would descend into chaos. 
and the Messiah Guild which changed in such a way, would begin to do whatever it wanted. So before that, I need to secure enough power to defend myself from them. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, he needed to be as strong as he could, as soon as possible, and organize his power. That was why he didn't have much time. When we're finished eating, we'll prepare for the third floor. That was why he had no intentions of wasting time in this dungeon. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Li Jina quickly ate a chocolate bar while calling out to Kim Woo Jin TL, he got his appetite back really quickly. How are we going to hunt the hatchling? You don't just intend to fight him head on do you? You have a plan right? Of course I do. You do. Li Jin Ah let out a sigh of relief when he heard those words. What's the plan? The most troublesome part about hunting a dragon is when it starts flying. That's right. That's why it's important to stop them from flying the problem is that dragons usually have their wings folded cutting off its wings when they're like that is extremely difficult and dangerous. So what will we do? Someone has to stick to its body and the moment it spreads its wings to fly away, cut them off. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at Lee Jina. Did you have a good rest on the second floor? W dash, wait a second. Only then did Li Jina, who had finally understood his situation, let out a shout. S dash, so you want me to hold on to the dragon's body and cut off its wings after it starts flying? And fall together with it after that? Kim Wu Jin nodded with a satisfied expression at Li Jina, who'd understood his role perfectly. Hey! Why are you only saying this now? As Li Jina shouted this question, Kim Wu Jin raised an eyebrow and responded simply. If I told you in advance, would you be able to practice? T dash, that. You've grown stronger. With those words, Kim Wu Jin patted Li Jina on the shoulder. Rattle. At the same time, the army of skeletons once again moved to hunt the remaining 1-0-0 monsters. You should rest a little longer. Only. Li Jina's expression crumpled. Fuck. Kim Wu Jin smiled when he saw his expression. Li Jina's skills have already increased to a suitable level now, the only thing he needs is some more experience so he'll give Li Jina as many opportunities to get experience as possible. An hour later, a notification was heard. All the monsters have been slain. Move to the next floor. It was the notification that reminded them that they were about to face the strongest boss monster in three floor dungeons. Chapter, 161 In legends and mythical tales, dragons had always been the most valuable and most difficult prey to hunt. It was the same after the world transformed into a game. Among all the monsters that could be found in dungeons, dragons were considered the most valuable. However, it was just as hard to hunt as it was valuable. No, for the players, dragons could be considered a type of disaster. There were very few players who deliberately attacked dungeons that had dragons in them and even fewer who succeeded. This was why the dragon slayer was a legend. What's the probability that Isaac Ivanov will successfully clear the hatchling dungeon? And it was also the reason that the world turned to him to ask about Isaac Ivanov's fate. Before I tell you the odds, I will tell you the three main reasons why dragons are so difficult to hunt. The dragon slayer kindly answered their questions. One is the existence of the guardian these guardians, which dragons create from monsters to protect their lairs, are much stronger than normal monsters they're also much better equipped some of them even have unique grade items. Of course, the most troublesome thing about the guardians is the fact that they are willing to die for their masters the hatchling could have as many as 200 such guardians. First, he told them about the disaster one needed to overcome before they could even face the dragon. The second is the dragon itself it should be noted that most spells will not have an effect, and physical attacks would do almost no damage unless it's with a legendary item on the other hand. The destructive power that a dragon can unleash far exceeds your imagination just tapping the ground with its tail would be enough to cause a small earthquake and when it flies, it is enough to drive you crazy. He then told them about the fact that the dragon itself was enough to be called a walking disaster. But the biggest reason why it's extremely difficult to hunt dragons is the third reason. And he also told them something much more terrifying than both of those things. Although I am explaining all of this, 
you will still be unable to understand just how horrifying a dragon really is even if you know all of this information, when you actually come face to face with a dragon. Your mind will go blank above all, these explanations of mine are just that, explanations it's just like me telling you that a person has two hands and feet. After his explanation, he gave everyone the answer they were waiting for. To deal with a dragon, you need to preserve your troops as much as you're able in other words, you need to deal with the guardians without losing too many people however, in my opinion. No matter how amazing Isaac Ivanov's skeletons are, if you were to face a group of guardians, he would lose at least half of them and the odds of him defeating the hatchling in that stadius less than 10%. He told them Isaac Ivanov's odds of success in hunting the hatchling. The world was frightened by these words which were basically a death sentence for Isaac Ivanov. Naturally, after learning that, most of them did not pay much attention to the dragon slayer's next words. Of course, if he is able to maintain his numbers after defeating the guardians, his odds would increase greatly. The dragon slayer had also stated the possibility in which he would be able to successfully hunt the dragon. In a forest being burned by a large fire, two groups faced off against each other. One was a monster army. It consisted of a wide variety of monsters, but they all had one thing in common. They were all well armed. Roar. And they all exuded a fearsome aura as they stood in front of a large cave entrance. Rattle. The situation of the skeleton army, which faced off against the monster army, was quite similar. There were many different types of skeletons, they were all well equipped, and they all seemed to be burning with the lust for battle. There was only one difference between the two groups. A player stood in front of the army of skeletons. Who? Kim Woo Jin took a deep breath as he stood before his army. He was holding Percival's spear in his hands. He was prepared to fight more fiercely and brilliantly than he had since his return. This was Kim Woo Jin's method to reduce the number of skeletons he lost before fighting the hatchling. It's been a while since I was on the front line. There was nothing strange about it. Kim Woo Jin had taken many risks and worked hard to improve his abilities especially for a time like this. Well, I'm kinda tired of killing guardians. Above all, he had more experience hunting dragons than anyone else. Before returning to the past, there was only one person in the world who had hunted dragons more than Kim Woo Jin, the dragon slayer. In other words, that meant that at this point, the person who had the most experience hunting dragons in this world was no longer the dragon slayer, but Kim Woo Jin. Therefore it was natural for him to have a lot of experience dealing with guardians. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin showed no hesitation. Let's begin. Kim Woo Jin immediately began running toward the guardian army at full speed. The guardians also began running at Kim Woo Jin. The first enemies that Kim Woo Jin encountered were three giant orcs wearing iron armor. Not only were they large, but the three orcs in armor also approached him in a formation. This sight was enough that even a battle hardened veteran might not be able to stop their hearts from quivering. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't even pause for a second at the sight of the three. Without any hesitation, he thrust the spear in his hand three times. P.U.K. And just like that, the spear burst the heads of the three orcs like watermelons. However, instead of pausing to admire his handiwork, Kim Woo Jin immediately approached a nearby ogre guardian. Roar! The ogre guardian which had a giant presence and aura that the orcs could never compare to, approached Kim Woo Jin without hesitation. Whoosh! Instead, it quickly swung the giant axe in its hand toward the quickly approaching Kim Woo Jin. Boom! The axe hit the ground like an explosive, causing ashes, dirt and rocks to fly up into the air like an avalanche. Among the items in the air was one Kim Woo Jin. With one leap, Kim Woo Jin landed on the ogre's shoulders and thrust Percival's spear at its helmet-covered head. Clang! The spear broke through its helmet, pierced its eyebrows and came out the back of its head. Thud! And in that state, the ogre fell to the ground, causing a cloud of ashes to rise up like a fog. However, the cloud that was created did not settle. Instead, it slowly began changing color. The gray cloud had become a bloody red. Goblin Guardian has been afflicted with blood poison. Troll Guardian has been afflicted with blood poison. Poison fog. It started flowing out from Kim Woo Jin's body. 
153 left. The real battle began. Within the huge cave. K.R. The hatchling, who was laying in the cave, began to stir because of the noise coming from outside. K.R. Of course, although it opened its eyes, it did not pay much attention to the commotion. Although in human terms, the hatchling could only be considered a teenager, its 60 meters long, scale-covered body contained power that surpassed common sense. An apex predator only moved when it was upset or hungry. The hatchling closed its eyes again. It simply waited for its guardians to deal with whatever was happening outside its cave as soon as possible. However, the commotion did not stop even after a dozen minutes passed. Eventually, the hatchling opened its eyes again. However, the light in its eyes was completely different from before. The slightly narrower pupils showed that the hatchling was more annoyed than it had been before. And since it was upset, it did not hesitate any longer. After getting up, it began to head outside of the cave. The ground shook after every one of the hatchling's furious footsteps. Thuds. And when the heavy footsteps came to an end, it meant that the hatchling had finally exited its cave. This meant that it could now see its army of guardians which was close to annihilation, and the group that was slaughtering them. A weak-looking figure could be seen leading the other group. And at that moment, the hatchling's gaze met that figure's eyes. They only made eye contact for a short time, but that brief contact was already enough for the hatchling to know. This little guy with the needle in his hand was also an apex predator. And it was in a very dangerous situation right now. Chuck TL, SFXTHE bane of my existence. As soon as it realized that, it spread its wings and prepared to fly. Without any hesitation, it prepared to use the safest method with which to kill this new enemy. The hatchling's actions were very swift. Kim Woo Jin, who was far away would also not have a chance to do anything before it got into the air. Moreover, the hatchling's flight speed was astonishingly fast. Flap. The hatchling began flapping its wings a few times. Only. Fwoom. At the same time, huge gusts of wind blew everything around it away. Even if the distance between Kim Woo Jin and the hatchling was shorter, Kim Woo Jin would not have been able to do anything to stop it from flying. As expected. And of course, Kim Woo Jin knew that. So he prepared. Sheba. A card named Lee Jina. Chapter, 162. Dragons are difficult monsters to hunt. This was one fact that Kim Woo Jin would never deny. Rather, Kim Woo Jin could probably write a thesis paper on why exactly dragons were so difficult to hunt. If you let the dragon fly, the hunt has already failed. Kim Woo Jin believed that the most difficult thing about dragons was the fact that they knew how to fly. Kim Woo Jin was honestly incapable of doing anything when faced with a flying dragon unless he brought a fighter jet. This meant that cutting off the dragon's wings was the minimum requirement to hunt the dragon. However, this in itself was not easy. The problem is that dragon senses can be considered one of the most sensitive among monsters. It was not easy to approach a dragon as they were sensitive enough to be considered a radar. In fact, it was almost impossible to escape a dragon's radar-like senses. In order to get onto its body, we have to distract it somehow. This meant that the only way to do so, was to grab the complete attention of this radar. This was the reason that Kim Woo Jin had hunted the guardians so desperately. The hatchling wouldn't be able to maintain its composure when its army of guardians was annihilated in only a dozen or so minutes. At least that is what Kim Woo Jin expected to happen with his experience. And as he expected, the moment the hatchling exited its cave, it focused all of its attention onto the battlefield without caring about anything else. It then began flapping its wings with the intention of using its aerial advantage. Naturally, it was so focused that it didn't notice Li Jina who was hiding above the cave's entrance with the desert chameleon cloak covering his body. Sheba. And Li Jina, who revealed himself with that word, jumped onto the hatchling's back without hesitation. The hatchling's body began to rise higher, and Li Jina's body bucked and shook like he was riding a bull in a rodeo. However, even in such a situation, Li Jina did not lose his balance. Humph. This is nothing compared to fighting all of those skeleton bastards. 
This was because he had learned to maintain his balance in numerous situations that one could encounter in battle. Thanks to that, Li Jina was able to perfectly complete his task. Heavenly Dragon's Will After making the translucent Heavenly Dragon sword in his hand shine brightly, Li Jina shot toward the hatchling's right wing. Sick. And cut off the wing with one slash. Kara. Kara. As soon as its wing was cut off, the hatchling's body began to spin uncontrollably before spiraling to the ground. Kaboom. A huge explosion shook the ground. And as though it was a signal that they were waiting for, the skeleton army surged towards the crash site. Kyaha. At the forefront of this group was a skeleton knight. And in that skeleton knight's hands, was none other than Percival's spear. On the other hand, Kim Woo Jin who had previously been wielding Percival's spear, now held a long black spear in his hand. This spear was made with his blood weapon skill using his black blood and the corpse poison that he had extracted from numerous bodies. Kim Woo Jin began taking out multiple such spears from his inventory. One, two. Before long, ten such spears had appeared. Each one takes about 2,000 foot. These ten spears have been condensed from the corpses of twenty zero zero monsters. I wonder how long it will take. And they were also the reason that Kim Woo Jin was so confident in his success. It is the tenth day of Isaac Ivanov's dungeon attack. On the tenth day after Isaac Ivanov had started his dungeon attack, the world began to focus its attention once again. It's the tenth day. He should have cleared the second floor by now. This was because it usually didn't take more than ten days to clear the first two floors in a three-floor dungeon. Of course, if it had been just that, the interest would not have risen again. There's not much time left. It'll be over soon. Will he be able to hunt the hatchling? The reason people were interested was because Isaac Ivanov should soon be entering the third floor of the dungeon where he would face off against the hatchling. What success the dragon slayer said he has a less than percent chance. To be honest, I have already given up hope this was ridiculous from the start. And it was because Isaac Ivanov would become the hatchling's meal. In other words, no one expected Isaac Ivanov to successfully clear the dungeon. Isaac Ivanov, virtually expected to fail. The hatchling is a fearsome monster that even level 100 players would dread to encounter it. The dragon slayer, Isaac Ivanov has a less than 10% chance of success. Moreover, all the media outlets in the world were constantly spreading this gloomy expectation. The Great One Guild prepares to attack the Hatchling Dungeon. The Frontier Guild, if Isaac Ivanov fails, we will do our best to recover his remains. Sino-Japanese talks have commenced, is the Kunlun Guild planning on participating in the Hatchling Dungeon? And in such a grey solution, the various media also began to scatter bits of hope. Naturally, this was all a scheme. The atmosphere has been set. When Isaac Ivanov fails, we can begin working immediately. They made it appear as though they were preparing to enter the dungeon as soon as Isaac Ivanov failed in a bid to preserve his memory. In other words, everyone who had a hand in this scheme was without doubt. They were certain that Isaac Ivanov would fail, and that the Hatchling dungeon would become an unprecedented treasure as a result. Then they received the long-awaited news. Isaac Ivanov's spokesperson announces an emergency briefing. There had always been two reasons why an emergency briefing was made with regard to an attack on a dungeon. One, if the dungeon attack was successful, and the other when the dungeon attack had failed. However, when the news was released, only one reason was in the minds of everyone who learned of it. No way. It's here. Damn it, did he really? Failure. There was no other person who dared to think of the other word. No, it never even occurred to them. Breaking news. Isaac Ivanov fails to clear the dungeon. A disaster has happened. The world loses a great hero, Isaac Ivanov. The moment they saw the news about the emergency briefing, some media outlets began to release news articles about Isaac Ivanov's failure as though they were simply waiting for this moment. This was only possible if they had been convinced of Isaac Ivanov's failure from the start. Of course, their actions went too far and people began to protest. It hasn't even been officially announced by the spokesperson yet, what kind of news is this? They are cursing him. 
However, the backlash didn't last long. I will now start the emergency briefing. Soon, when Isaac Ivanov's spokesperson appeared before the press conference, and when they all saw the spokesperson's dismal expression, everyone was forced to believe it. I apologize for being the bearer of bad news. And as everyone expected, terrible words began flowing from the spokesperson's mouth. The atmosphere of the entire world became still. Of course, there were some who became incomparably excited by the news that was about to come. In such a tense atmosphere, Isaac Ivanov's spokesperson let out a long sigh before continuing their announcement. Isaac Ivanov is currently unconscious and receiving urgent medical treatment after receiving a fatal injury during the attack on the Hatchling Dungeon. TL, ha. Got EM. The words from the spokesperson's mouth were certainly terrible news. Fatal injuries, unconsciousness, urgent medical treatment. This was three pieces of terrible news in one. However, the expressions of the people who heard this news were far from shocked or saddened. The expressions of the gathered reporters were especially strange. Those who had urgently tried to get the best seats in order to ask their prepared questions could no longer stay silent. What's that supposed to mean? A fatal injury? What happened in the dungeon? No, how do you know that outside of the dungeon? He's getting urgent medical attention. Where? Everyone appeared to be in a state of confusion as they did not understand the spokesperson's words. However, the spokesperson simply bowed to them while saying, I would like to ask everyone to please give your support and encouragement for Isaac Ivanov to fully recover from his injuries. This concludes my emergency briefing. With those words, the spokesperson turned around and left. Only then did the world realize. Oh my god. Isaac Ivanov has become the next dragon slayer. Isaac Ivanov had once again made the impossible possible. Chapter 163 I would like to ask everyone to please give your support and encouragement for Isaac Ivanov to fully recover from his injuries. This concludes my emergency briefing. As soon as Isaac Ivanov's spokesperson's briefing ended, a new video was immediately broadcasted on TV. Hurry! Hurry! This is an emergency. Isaac isn't breathing. Come quickly. In the poor quality video, two men gently laid a blonde-haired man down while anxiously informing the surrounding personnel about the urgent situation and performing emergency measures, including CPR. Soon, a man in a white lab coat who appeared to be a doctor hurried over and assessed the situation before beckoning to the rest and shouting. Prepare for surgery immediately. That was the end of the video. Only after the video ended did a news anchor appear to begin explaining what happened in the video. As you saw, Isaac Ivanov suffered fatal injuries during the battle with the hatchling and is now receiving urgent medical care according to the official reports. They have successfully managed to save his life, however, his injuries are so serious that he has yet to regain consciousness. While watching the news report, Li Jinao let out a shout of frustration. Damn it! As he said this word, Li Jinao's facial expression turned sour. Ah, damn it! After repeatedly saying this phrase, Li Jina bowed his head in despair. I should have done better. Li Jina's voice sounded very depressed. He sounded so serious that a person who heard it would feel the need to comfort him. The man, who was sitting beside him silently this entire time, finally spoke to Li Jina. Do you have a mental illness? As Kim Wu Jin asked this, Li Jina frowned and asked back. What the hell are you talking about? Don't you think I'm the one who should be asking what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about that. As he said that, Li Jina pointed toward the report being played on the television with the caption Isaac Ivanov critically injured. Look, look how bad I am at acting. Kim Wu Jin stared at Li Jina with cold eyes. However, even when he was being stared at in such a way, Li Jina did not stop talking. Damn it, my acting skills are so bad he might need to go to acting school. I can hear Li Jina's bullshit from here what's going on. Ignoring the depressed Li Jina, Kim Wu Jin returned his attention to his call with Oh Seichan. Li Jina seems to suffer from mental illness. I knew there was something wrong with him so he has a mental illness will need to arrange for psychotherapy ah, uh, more importantly, how are you doing? There are no problems. There were no signs of fatal injury anywhere on Kim Woo Jin who was comfortably making the call. 
No, not to mention injuries, there wasn't even any sign of fatigue. So, how is the harvest from the dungeon? Dragon Slayer. Achievement rank, unique. Effect, all stats 30. Not bad. The harvest from the dungeon wasn't particularly impressive. How about you? After confirming his own harvest, Kim Woo Jin gave a small smile and returned the question to Oh Se Chan. Oh Se Chan also smiled before responding. A little salty. It had been two days since Isaac Ivanov successfully cleared the hatchling dungeon with only three people. The world was now filled with news about Isaac Ivanov. The topics of these news articles were split between two things. The first was the fact that Isaac Ivanov had exceeded everyone's expectations and become a dragon slayer. The other was that Isaac Ivanov had suffered severe injuries and was currently in a coma. What makes it tastier is the fact that it's fake consolation money. Of course, the main piece of news was actually the fact that Isaac Ivanov had been injured in the dungeon. More importantly, this was not some impulsive decision, but was instead a plan that had been developed even before they entered the dungeon. There were many reasons for this decision. Although we didn't accept any donations from the general public and only accepted those from the guilds, the amount is substantial. First of all, it was profitable. If Isaac Ivanov had cleared the dungeon without incident, no one in the world would feel sympathy for him. However, if Isaac Ivanov, who had become the world's new dragon slayer, returned from the dungeon with severe injuries and in a coma, there wouldn't just be sympathy, but instead tremendous support from the entire world. What about the top five guilds? They haven't said anything yet but can those people who cried out through the media that they would bravely hunt the hatchling to avenge Isaac Ivanov get away with just sending some juice as a gift? They will have to send something big since they care about Isaac Ivanov so much. Those who had professed their desire to avenge Isaac Ivanov in the media would have no choice in a situation where Isaac Ivanov was alive, but ill. They'd have to pay just as much as they did for their little publicity stunt. Everyone is so concerned about this situation that they've completely forgotten what you did. Under such circumstances, it was natural for the fact that Isaac Ivanov had cleared the hatchling dungeon, and the meaning of such actions to fade. This was the second reason for this act. If Isaac Ivanov had simply successfully cleared the dungeon then their vigilance towards him would have risen to its peak. But if it was a serious injury like this one, it was bound to grab everyone's complete attention. Isaac Ivanov was amazing, but he was lucky enough to even be alive. In simple terms, they would be able to conceal his power. And about God. I'm trying to track his movements right now, but I haven't been able to find anything yet I'm sure he'll use his greatest trump cards now. Of course, the biggest reason for this plan was the bow god, Noda Hijiro. Then I guess we'll have to sprinkle a little bait called Kim Woojin. That's right. The possibility that Kim Woojin might be Isaac Ivanov's new teammate was then leaked to the bow god. When he was first faced with this situation, the bow god must have had a lot of worries holding him back. It was too risky to attack Kim Woo Jin who was in a team with none other than Isaac Ivanov. Not only was it risky, but also the probability of success was incredibly low. But what about now that Isaac Ivanov was critically injured and unconscious? What if Kim Woo Jin was spotted alone in such a situation? Even if he suspects that the bait is poisoned, he will still bite it. For the Bao God, even if he suspected that the bait was a trap, he would still grab the opportunity to bite it. So are you confident? Of course, this was why they believed that the Bao God would use his most powerful trump card at the first opportunity, regardless of if there was a crowd of people around or not. Kim Woo Jin answered Oh Se Chan's concerns calmly. Fortunately, the harvest wasn't too bad this time, so there shouldn't be any problems as long as it's a three-floor dungeon. Isn't it too dangerous though? In response to Oh Se Chan's repeated questions, Kim Woo Jin turned to glance beside him for a moment before saying, Don't worry too much I'm not alone this time. At that moment, Lee Jina who was practicing his acting while looking at the TV suddenly felt a shiver go down his spine. At that, Kim Woo Jin smiled slightly and prepared to end the conversation. Then let's do this properly first, set up a workshop for me, I want to make a few pieces of dragon skin armor. Okay. And I hope you can get me some gastric juice from a golden dragon one. Golden dragon's gastric juices. 
When Oh Se-chan asked that question, Kim Woo-jin looked at an item that was laying in his inventory. Cursed Sword. Rating, Unique. Physical Attack, 10. Required Level, Level 1 or Higher. Description, A sealed sword with unknown power it seems to be of no use. The Ganjang 2, is now in my hand. Ganjang. The memory of the first time he encountered this weapon came to Kim Woo-jin's mind. It wasn't a very good memory. It was this sword that cut off my arm. The first time he encountered the Ganjang, Kim Woo-jin had the horrible experience of having his arm cut off. Of course, the one who cut off his arm also had his head cut off in exchange. After that, it was given to Lee Se-jun. Lee Se-jun then became the owner of the then ownerless weapon and the Ganjang became one of the trademarks of Lee Se-jun. At the same time, Kim Woo-jin was given an order. I wandered the world in search of the Makya 25. To find the other half of the Ganjang pair, the Makya. It's a pity that I don't know where the Makya is. However, despite utilizing their resources to search around the world, neither Kim Woo-jin nor the Messiah Guild were able to find the Makya. Of course, Kim Woo-jin wasn't too disappointed by that fact. It won't be easy to get the Dragon Slayer is probably the only one who has any right now, and he rarely sells at the fact that I was able to get some back then is amazing. It doesn't matter if you take a bit of time to get it that's not too important right now. After all, the Makya wasn't his target right now. I want you to pay attention to the stage for now. I'll keep that in mind. After the world became a game, it was obviously China who exerted the greatest influence in all of Asia. The population that could not be compared and the leadership that stemmed from the one-party dictatorship was not something that other countries could imitate. The next country that grew in influence was Korea, and the reason for that was the fact that the Messiah Guild had started there. Naturally, Japan's influence fell to third place. This caused the Japanese to feel a sense of inferiority and anger that was beyond description at the same time, Japan felt a tremendous level of crisis. They feared that if the situation continued to progress, they might end up trapped on the island and the fear began to overtake the country. This was how the Yamato Federation came into being. Under its will, Japan created a grand plan to escape its physical limitations. And at the center of this plan, were the two strongest players in Japan, the Sword Saint, and the Bao God. Of course, externally, the relationship between the two wasn't good. The Sword Saint was a player who represented Japan, while the Bao God seemed to represent the Messiah Guild. They did not meet each other often, and it was also rumored that they had a terrible relationship. Long time no see. I thought you promised not to show your face until the end of your little rebellion. But all of that was an act. The two of them were closer than any other player could imagine. I need your disciples' strength to get my revenge. You mean for that guy named Kim Woo-jin? To the extent that they had a perfect grasp of each other's situations. I've prepared some bait to lure him into a dungeon, but I don't have a good enough hunter who can definitely get him. Is a good hunter the only thing you need? And I need equipment we're going to need at least a legendary item to successfully catch him but we shouldn't use our own, because there is still a risk of failure. Therefore, the conversation between the two of them wasn't long. Sword Saint, lend me that sword you have never used before. Bao God asked and the Sword Saint agreed without even thinking about it. I'll give you the Makya. And the conversation ended just like that. Ah how I missed those days everything felt shorter sigh. 2 to 25 brief look into the horrific life of a translator Ganjang and Makya are weapons from a game called Dungeon Fighter Online, and can be considered in Makya, and Yang Ganjang. While wielding the properties of said energy, i.e. water and fire they were made by a famous blacksmith named Ganjang and were named after himself and his wife. Now the tricky thing about this is the fact that Ganjang, is soy sauce in Korean, so even when I was unsure why the author wanted Kim Woo-jin to hold soy sauce. It was not easy for me to find another translation of the word since even googling the word ganjang, would show you soy sauce so it took me a pretty long time before I managed to find what it actually was not that interesting, but I thought I'd share. Tbh I don't like how easy it is for Wu Jin to get the items he needs. Chapter, 164 The tenth day after Isaac Ivanov successfully cleared the hatchling dungeon. Isaac Ivanov is still unconscious. 
a wave of encouragement is sent from all over the world. Isaac Ivanov, who was still unconscious, received a tremendous amount of support and encouragement from the rest of the world. At the same time, as though they were competing, those who had claimed they would take revenge for Isaac Ivanov, began showing their support. The Frontier Guild promises to give Isaac Ivanov their full support. The Kunlun Guild elects Isaac Ivanov as a new hero. Lee Sejun personally delivers a letter of encouragement to Isaac Ivanov. The large guilds, including the top five guilds, began giving their support to Isaac Ivanov, who had created a miracle that no one thought possible. Why isn't the Great One Guild saying anything? Weren't they the first ones to say that if Isaac Ivanov dies, they would challenge the Hatchling Dungeon to take revenge? Did they say that just because they wanted to claim Isaac Ivanov's items? Hey, no way those bastards! Did the Great One Guild, one of the two prides of America, really say that they would take revenge just for that reason? The Great One Guild has to give a huge amount of support to show that that's not true. However, most of them were forced to do so by public opinion. Of course, there were some who weren't. What's Isaac's current condition? Park Yongwan was sincerely worried about Isaac Ivanov's situation more than anyone else. How serious is it? I don't know the details they haven't given me any information. Find out what's going on, by any means. Considering the fact that Park Yongwan was the man who invested the most in Isaac Ivanov and who had the most to gain from Isaac Ivanov, his sincere concern was expected. Yes. I'll get you anything you need. Yes, I'll find out what they need. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, he was grateful to Park Yongwan for his ever present care. Then I will stay in Japan for now. That's more like it. But I don't have any money on hand right now I'd really appreciate it if you could support my stay. Of course, he wouldn't miss the chance to make some money. Above all, Kim Woo Jin knew. There's a broker I know in Japan, so you can go through him. Of course there is. That Park Yongwan did not have an influence in Japan. In fact, Kim Woo Jin knew that Park Yongwan's Japanese contact was none other than Hayashi Kansuk, a broker. After all, selling your country didn't happen in a day. Moreover, since he was willing to sell out the government to Japan before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past, it meant that Park Yongwan's connection to Japan was not simple. It was also the biggest reason why the Messiah Guild and Yamato Federation consider Park Yongwan their enemy. This was also one of the reasons that the Messiah Guild would get rid of Park Yongwan without hesitation. Not only did they think that the information that Park Yongwan had in Japan was enough to threaten them, it was there that they'd first try to take advantage of Park Yongwan. For them, Park Yongwan was a clear risk factor. I'll give you the broker's contact information. It was truly unfair for Park Yongwan, who was unaware of this fact. If you don't have one already, it would be best to use a code of some sort. Password? You can decide it yourself. I think patriotic martyrdom would do. Patriotic martyrdom okay, I'll pass it on to the broker. Of course, that wasn't what was important to Kim Woo Jin. I'm sure this is enough information for the eavesdroppers. There were people eavesdropping on their conversation. Thank you. The conversation ended there. Park Yongwon's status and influence in Korea were quite significant. To exaggerate a bit, Park Yongwon has enough influence to arrange a meeting with the president. However, the thing that was truly surprising, was the fact that Park Yongwon's status abroad was even greater than that in Korea. Abroad, the evaluation of Park Yongwon was very high. The reason, of course, was the Messiah Guild. It would be strange if Park Yongwon, who almost single-handedly raised the status of the Phoenix Guild by following the footsteps of the Messiah Guild, was low. This was why the Japanese broker would not hold back when taking care of Park Yongwan's aid. Thanks to this, after contacting the broker, Kim Woo Jin was spending the day in a manner that was befitting to call the ultimate luxury. Damn it someone's eating a 50 yen menu at an expensive sushi bar while someone else has to eat at a convenience store. This was also the reason why Lee Jin Ah, who was also waiting in Japan, couldn't help but open his mouth. It's so damn annoying. Considering Lee Jin AHS personality, one where he would even risk his life for food, watching Kim Woo Jin enjoy such an expensive meal was no different from torture. Hey Jin Ah. 
Oh Se Chan, who could hear his complaints from over the phone, couldn't help but ask in a dumbfounded tone. Didn't you spend over 70 zero zero yen eating in the convenience store yesterday? Yes. What could you find to eat in a convenience store that added up to 70 zero zero yen ha? Huh? I can't even imagine it and it was just one meal too, not even a full day's worth. D dash, did I eat so much? I just picked out the things that looked delicious and ate them. As he said this, Lee Jina pouted a bit. Hey, Japanese prices are ridiculous I just had a few snacks and it already came up to 70 zero zero yen. Gina. If the expenses were coming out of my pocket, I would have already gotten rid of you. Ah, uh, Hyung, that joke was a bit too harsh. I meant it. As he heard those words, Lee Jina shivered slightly as he could hear the sincerity in Oh Se Chan's voice, and quickly changed the subject. How much longer do we have to stay here? We can't stay here forever, can we? Oh Se Chan replied to his question simply. It shouldn't be much longer, we've already fed them enough, so they should make an offer soon. What offer? They will make a run of the mill offer like requesting assistance in retrieving the items from a player who died in a dungeon. Li Jina clicked his tongue when he heard that. Isn't that too obvious though? It's a classic, even if it's obvious and it always works this dungeon boss is a succubus, would you like to help us clear it? Or they will ask something like this next. Are there any succubus dungeons? Oh Seichan snorted when Li Jina asked this question. Why? Are you interested? Hyung, I'm Li Jina. A man if there's a dungeon like that of course you have to let me know first. Well, the succubus would probably commit suicide immediately after seeing you anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem it'll tell you if there is one. Hey, really? It was then. At least I still have hair. Hair. You bastard, don't go anywhere. I'm going to get a barber and shave off all of your damn hair. Just as the two's conversation descended into the usual comedy. There's a signal from Kim Woo Jin. The story, which had paused for a moment, could finally continue. Chapter, 165 Dungeon Attack As he heard that question, a man with a rat-like expression nodded his head and quietly spoke to Kim Woo Jin who was putting a piece of tuna sushi into his mouth. Yes, there's a dungeon you have to attack its B-rank 3-floor dungeon with 120 maximum entries. Instead of responding, Kim Woo Jin simply chewed on his sushi. Meanwhile, the man continued to speak. The reason for the attack is an item that needs to be recovered from the dungeon. At those words, Kim Woo Jin closely looked at Maruyama, the man in front of him. It's obviously a trap. Unsurprisingly, Kim Woo Jin knew that Maruyama was doing his best to have Kim Woo Jin take the bait. Gulp. However, Kim Woo Jin just continued eating his sushi instead of responding. When he saw that, Maruyama paused for a moment before he continued talking. I know the offer is very sudden but Mr. Kim Woo Jin was the only one I could ask for this favor. This time, Kim Woo Jin, who had been calmly eating his sushi, finally responded. How much do you know about me? As I said before, I don't know Mr. Kim Woo Jin very well. At that moment, Maruyama stepped closer to Kim Woo Jin and spoke in a small voice. But I know that Mr. Kim Woo Jin is the great hero's teammate there's nothing more reliable than that. At his words, Kim Woo Jin mocked him internally. They worked hard to think of a good enough scenario. He was mocking the amount of effort Maruyama and the bow god behind him had to put in to come up with a good enough bait. Of course, he didn't show any of that. Instead, Kim Woo Jin's expression became firm. Then you should know that I can't just move when I feel like it would you behave as you please while your boss is unconscious. It was a reasonable question. And it was something that the Bao God would have expected. That's why Maruyama acted like he had prepared for such a response. That's why I came up with this proposal. With those words, Maruyama looked around carefully before he picked up the briefcase that he brought with him. Then he pulled an envelope out of it. If you accept our offer, we will give you this skill page this is in advance after you've completed the task, you will receive additional rewards. As he said this, Maruyama handed the envelope to Kim Woo Jin. However, Kim Woo Jin did not take the envelope. Instead, he spoke with a displeased expression. 
So what happened was because of my incompetence and with this offer I'll become stronger, is that it? He was bound to be displeased. Were they saying that the reason Isaac Ivanov was so heavily injured during the fight with the hatchling was because Kim Woojin was incompetent? Maruyama's words were lacking just enough for Kim Woojin to assume that that was what he meant. Of course, Maruyama was also aware that his words could be interpreted in such a way. Therefore, Maruyama continued acting in confidence while believing that everything was going as planned. Isn't it clear that if Mr. Kim Woojin was stronger than you are now, the results would have been different? Kim Woojin got up from his seat as if he could no longer tolerate the insults. Mr. Kim Woojin. At the same time, Maruyama got up and blocked Kim Woojin from leaving. Kim Woojin stared at Maruyama with his displeased expression. When he saw this, Maruyama spoke with a tense voice. I'm not trying to make fun of you, Mr. Kim Woojin I never had that intention sir in fact, I made this proposal simply because I felt that it would be incredibly helpful to you. With those words, Maruyama passed the envelope to Kim Woojin once again. At least check what is inside before you make a decision. Kim Woojin frowned harder before finally taking the envelope from Maruyama. As he did this, a thought went through his head. It seems that they prepared something more valuable than I expected. It seemed the Bao God had spent a lot of money to get rid of Kim Woojin this time. But that doesn't mean it would be a legendary skill. With that thought, Kim Woojin confirmed what was in the envelope. Inside the envelope was not a legendary or even a unique skill, just as Kim Woojin had expected. As expected. As he saw the contents, Kim Woojin laughed lightly in his head. After he saw what the skill page was, Kim Woojin spoke with a firm tone. How did you get this? He wasn't acting. This was the first time that Kim Woojin had shown a sincere expression since meeting Maruyama today. It was that surprising. It seems like my judgment that this blood golem skill would greatly enhance Mr. Kim Woojin's power. The bait that the Bao God had prepared to draw in Kim Woojin had worked. The blood golem skill could be used as a medium to hold the blood poison. Even if you had little knowledge about skills in the game-like world, you would be able to understand the synergy between these two skills. They really gave you the blood golem skill as an advance. That's why Oh Seichan was so surprised. Where did they get it? I've kept an eye out for it but it hasn't even been on sale. Oh Seichan had also believed that there was no better skill for Kim Woojin's blood poison ability, so he earnestly searched for the blood golem skill. I'll have to raise my evaluation of the Yamato Federation I knew they weren't ordinary, but I didn't expect it would be this much. That was why he was surprised when Kim Woojin so easily obtained something that even he had been unable to find. Blood Golem Condition, Emissary of the Underworld Required Level, Level 100 or Higher Effect, Summon a Golem using the Summoner's Blood as a medium The shape of the Golem will follow that of the Summoner, and the more blood it absorbs from prey, the larger it gets. Of course, his surprise could not surpass Kim Woojin's when he saw the skill page. This was because he had already experienced just how horrific those two skills could be when combined. The Secret Trump Card of the Poison King The Poison King Through him, Kim Woojin had experienced firsthand how the combination of these two skills could produce terrifying results. The Blood Golem itself is a monster. Firstly, the Blood Golem was a monster all on its own. It was incredibly hard to deal with because it was highly resistant to physical attacks due to its liquid body, combined with a considerable resistance to magic. At the same time, the blood golem could freely control all parts of its body. This meant that it could sharpen any part of its body at any time. It was a liquid killing machine like the T-100 that appeared as the antagonist in the movie Terminator 2. And when the blood that was used to create this horrific monster was extremely poisonous, the killing ability it demonstrated became overwhelming. Players who were able to hunt dragons in five-floor dungeons were completely annihilated by a blood golem. Even dragon slayers could not avoid death when faced with a blood golem. And such a thing had now been given to Kim Woojin. Of course, there was no way that Kim Woojin would be overwhelmed by that fact. The Bao God has prepared the best bait to lure me into the dungeon to kill. Rather, he realized that with this skill, the Bao God had prepared the greatest stage on which to kill him. 
it's definitely the best bait to catch you. In fact, the blood golem skill was the best bait. Only. You can't refuse it and you can't use it. From the perspective of Kim Woo Jin, who was known for using blood poison, this was a skill that he could not pass up, but because the required level was 100, it was a skill that he was unable to use. This meant that the prey would not become stronger because of their bait. So what will you do? If they're willing to do this much, then I have to give the Bao God a chance. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had to take this bait. Tell Li Jina to get ready. Chapter 166 A closed, overgrown school located in Kitaku, Kyoto City, was filled with people and exuded a gloomy atmosphere. The school grounds were currently filled with incredibly expensive vehicles, and self-defense forces personnel stood guard around them with guns. The school's gym was where the most people congregated. The ceiling had fallen, and the floor was destroyed however, there were about 90 people checking their equipment in front of the dungeon gate that was in the center of the room. Kim Woo Jin was one of the 90 people. His appearance was completely different from usual, wearing thick horn-rimmed glasses and a neat 8 colon 2 part in his hair. Black Lizard Number of Floors, 3 Difficulty, B Maximum Number of Entries, 120 Requirements, Level 95 and Lower Conditions, Subjugate the Pack of Black Lizard Reward, Catalog to the Hunter of the Boss Monster A man then approached him while he was reading the dungeon report. Mr. Wu Kim Wu Jin put down the dungeon report before reaching out his hand to the large man with tan skin. The man grabbed his outstretched hand immediately. Nice to see you again. The man's name was Arai Kazuhiko. He was also the leader of the team that the other side had requested Kim Wu Jin to join to attack the dungeon. Yes, nice to see you again. Naturally, Kim Wu Jin had met Arai Kazuhiko before. They'd met and discussed the plan for the dungeon. The preparations are completed. Therefore, there was no reason for them to have a long conversation now. This is my senior. Instead, Kim Wu Jin introduced him to Li Jina who was standing behind him, to Arai Kazuhiko. Oh. Arai Kazuhiko looked at Li Jina with a surprised expression. This sir. He will help us with the attack, as I notified you previously. Right. At Kim Wu Jin's words, Arai Kazuhiko gave a bright smile without hesitation. Thank you very much for your help I will make sure to treat you both after the dungeon attack, you won't be disappointed. You don't have to worry too much about it you paid for it after all. The people around them didn't pay much attention to them. They just prepared to attack the dungeon with their own groups. It's time. And so the dungeon attack began. They entered the dungeon. Oh Sei-chan, who was enthusiastically tapping away at his laptop did not respond as his subordinate said those words. Ninety-seven people entered with them we checked the backgrounds for everyone, but we didn't find anything unusual. After the report, the employee then asked. Did you find anything? In response to the question, Oh Sei-chan stopped tapping on his keyboard and wiped the sweat off his forehead with a napkin that seemed to be taken from a coffee shop. There was a pile of reports in front of him. These reports were the information on all the players that had entered the dungeon with Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jino. No, no matter how I look, I can't find anything out of the ordinary. As he said those words, Oh Sei-chan's expression was stiff. He was certain that there were some among the players who had entered the dungeon with Kim Woo Jin that wanted to attack him. However, Oh Sei-chan could not find who these players were. All the reports here are clean, perfect even no matter who saw them, they would think that these were just ordinary, talented players. To be precise, he was unable to find any connections to the Messiah Guild, the Bao God, or the Yamato Federation. Of course, Oh Sei-chan didn't actually believe that these players were as ordinary as they appeared. As expected, it seems that they put hidden talents that the Japanese government have been nurturing from the start. You mean it's one of those elites? Perhaps. Instead, he believed that they had implanted elite players that no one knew about for this mission. When they heard this, Oh Sei-chan's subordinate's expression stiffened. Will they be okay? At that question, Oh Sei-chan frowned. 
The Bao God's people also accepted Li Jin Ahs participation without any hesitation that means they are confident in their elites. I see. Since they know that Kim Wu Jin is proficient in poison, they will certainly have prepared to deal with poison. Oh Se Chan paused for a moment. There was silence for a long while, and when the silence started becoming tense, Oh Se Chan finally spoke. The good news is that Bao God and the Sword Saint's disciples did not participate that means that Japan's best aces were excluded. In a forest with trees that had red leaves reminiscent of autumn, a man was meditating with his eyes closed. The scene of the man meditating was very calm and soothing. Even people who watched him would feel calm. K.R.R. However, for the five orcs that were passing by, he seemed to be easy prey. Roar. Naturally, the moment they spotted this prey, the orcs rushed toward him at the same time. As they roared and rushed forward like a small wave, the orcs' momentum was stifling. However, the meditating man did not seem to notice their approach. Kahung. His expression did not change even when the orcs were one meter away from him. Just as the orcs' weapons were about to touch the man. P.U.K. The man maintained his meditation even as arrows poured in from the sides and turned the orcs into hedgehogs. Itosama. The man only ended his meditation when a group of eleven people gathered around him. The preparations are complete. The moment he heard this, the man opened his eyes. Once again, this will be our first mission out of the shadows. This man's name was Ito Shunsuke. He was one of the core players in the group secretly created by Japan and the Yamato Federation, Sun Shadow. The Sword Saint even gave us a weapon that he has never used before to ensure our success. In addition, he was one of the hidden students of the Sword Saint. He wasn't just an ordinary disciple, but a super talented individual strong enough to be considered among the top three disciples. Furthermore, despite being so talented, this person was loyal enough to choose to remain in the shadows instead of basking in the fame gained from his talent. They had been given this important task as a test, not only to benefit the Bao God, but also to prove Japan's efforts. We have been ordered to claim Kim Woo Jin's head. One of their missions was to kill none other than Kim Woo Jin. In other words, both the Sword Saint and Bao God recognized Kim Woo Jin for the threat he could become. They no longer considered him to be a lucky rat, but instead a sly beast. Nevertheless, they had expressed their determination to get rid of him this time. I will not tolerate any of you dying to that guy if you think he's going to kill you, split up and give up. Ito Shunsuke once again reinforced his orders to his men, who all nodded silently. As Ito Shunsuke said, they would rather commit seppuku one, than allow themselves to die by Kim Wujin's hands. It was then. A woman ran toward Ito Shunsuke and his men at a high speed. Who, who? She had an urgent expression on her face as she approached. In fact, her urgency was noticeable even from the distance. However, Ito Shunsuke watched the woman approach with a calm expression even after she finally arrived, his expression didn't change. He knew. There's Isaac Ivanov's partner as well as Kim Woo Jin. That their target wasn't an ordinary person and that the person beside him was none other than the legendary Isaac Ivanov's teammate. Even if there are some unexpected variables, it wouldn't be strange. So he was aware that everything might not go as planned. This was the reason why he'd calmed his mind with meditation. Even if his subordinates could get shaken by changes in the situation, Ido Shunsuke ensured that he would be able to remain calm no matter what. T- There, there's a problem. So while the woman stuttered as though she was too shocked to speak properly, Ido Shunsuke still spoke to her in a composed tone. I want you to formulate what you want to say in your head before telling me. He projected his calmness onto his subordinate. T- that. However, she was still unable to calm down. Ido Shunsuke frowned at that. Speak clearly. Eventually, she forcibly regained her composure when she noticed his displeasure, and after taking a few deep breaths, she finally managed to calm herself somewhat. What the hell is going on? Only. Ito Shunsuke could not understand what kind of situation would cause this player, who had undergone hellish training and was far from ordinary, to become so flustered. Fortunately, it did not take long for him to get an answer. Kim Woo Jin, while hunting monster she died. 
What did you say? His composure cracked. Chapter, 167 The reasons players died in dungeons were one of two things. Either a lack of ability, or a lack of luck. This wasn't a joke in fact, there were more cases of talented players having accidents because of bad luck than one would imagine. It happened when Kim Woo Jin was using his vampire skills on a group of orcs that he'd hunted. In particular, most cases were unfortunate accidents that occurred the moment they believed the hunt to be over. One of the orcs was actually still alive. While approaching a living monster that they believed was dead. The orc attacked Kim Woo Jin with a broken blade in its hand. Such a scenario was scarily common. Of course, if it was at this stage, then such a death would more likely be considered a lack of skill rather than a lack of luck. The blade passed between the chest armor and helmet and struck his neck it was such a small gap rather than good aim, it could only be called luck. The problem was when an accident managed to leave a fatal injury in the process. The bleeding was significant. It was an unlucky scenario no matter who saw it. Of course, most of the accidents just ended there. If they had the help of an item or a healer, then they would be able to recover from even a fatal injury. If he had gotten treatment, he would have been able to live. However, not everyone was lucky in that sense. The problem was blood poison. The problem was when bleeding occurred, skills like blood poison would activate which made it difficult to handle the injury. It wasn't a situation where they could properly control it because of that, Kim Woo Jin had to try to heal it on his own but a group of crocodile bears were drawn by the scent of his blood. And without luck, there were cases where the situation de-escalated rapidly. It was simply a bad situation becoming worse. Of course, no matter how twisted a situation became, that didn't mean that there were no ways to handle it. I didn't see a reason to approach them. However, if the one suffering was the one you had to kill, was it necessary to help them reverse their situation? That was the reason. So that's how Kim Woo Jin died in the dungeon. Kim Woo Jin died in the dungeon. He had no luck. It was literally a death caused by bad luck. An unlucky death that left everyone dumbfounded. What about the body? Only Ido Shunsuke was still vigilant with regards to Kim Woo Jin's death. After he died, the poison corroded his skin and organs, leaving only his bones, but from the shape, it appeared to be a human in any case, I secretly secured some of the bones for DNA testing. However, after hearing the rest of the explanation, Ido Shunsuke's expression became the same as his subordinates. Soon after, Shunsuke spoke the words that everyone was thinking at that moment. How frustrating! How frustrating! Kim Woo Jin smiled as he watched Ido Shunsuke and his men discuss his death through the eyes of a small goblin skeleton, who was hiding not far from their location. Because they never believed their prey would just die so easily. Of course, Kim Woo Jin's death was all an act. An act to shake off the people who were targeting him. Moreover, this act had more than one objective. Because I died due to my apparent lack of skill, the sense of dejection and frustration would be even stronger. Ito Shunsuke and his subordinates would have thoroughly studied Kim Woo Jin's weaknesses in order to kill him and in that process. They were bound to learn that perhaps the greatest weakness of blood poison was the fact that the user could not receive assistance from their peers if they began bleeding profusely, and they would have set up a plan in order to make use of that. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin was willing to show them just that. Their assumptions were right the weakness of blood poison is heavy bleeding. Kim showed them exactly what they wanted to see. In other words, Kim Woo Jin's death was the most ideal for them. As the feelings of frustration get higher, the doubt will reduce. Since it was the most ideal, their suspicion would drop. But they still have work to do. However, they still had a mission. They have to deal with the remaining one as well. Li Jina was still there. One of the principles of dungeon attacks was that if a player dies, the attack must still continue. The same was true for the Black Lizard dungeon. Although Kim Woo Jin died, the attack would continue. After Kim Woo Jin died and he buried him, Li Jin Ah spoke to Arai Kazuhiko in Russian. I will complete the task on behalf of my colleague. After that, Li Jin Ah began wiping out the monsters at a terrifying speed. It was incredible. Li Jin Ah did not even care about injuries. 
If there was a group of monsters, regardless of the number or type, he would throw himself into the group and destroy it at once. Moreover, the sight of him bursting monsters' heads with his bare fists was astonishing beyond surprise. Su dash, sugoi. TL, this is Japanese for amazing or other such exclamations. It was amazing. In this three floor dungeon, even the Japanese players who could be called talented could not help but admire Li Jina's power. I'll be honest, this is the first time I've seen a player fight like this. He's a monster. Even Ito Shunsuke's subordinates couldn't help but exclaim with heartfelt admiration after watching Li Jin AHS battles. On the other hand, they understood something after seeing his combat power. He's Isaac Ivanov's teammate after all. Spasaba he's pretty amazing. He was none other than Isaac Ivanov's teammate. However, not everyone was admiring Li Jina's combat ability. Ito Shunsuke's eyes when he looked at Li Jina were filled with much more determination than before. In the end, he gave the order. Kill him. He intended to kill Li Jina. His subordinates were surprised by the order. He wants to kill him. They thought their target was Kim Wu Jin. Of course, if Li Jina interfered while they were trying to get rid of Kim Wu Jin then they would kill him too, but their target had already died. Haven't we already completed our mission? There was no need to take such risks when they'd already completed their mission. Ito Shunsuke also didn't deny that it was a reasonable argument, however, he didn't plan to be reasonable. We came here to get rid of Kim Wu Jin and his teammate. It was okay if it was a bit irrational, he intended to perfectly complete their mission. That was why they were there in the first place. So we need to get rid of his teammate too. When Ito Shunsuke said that, his men no longer questioned him. Instead, with tense expressions, they recalled the battle they had just witnessed. Let's finish this before we go to the second floor. Ito Shunsuke gave his orders firmly. The operation remains the same your job is to grab the target's attention. Along with those words, Ito Shunsuke took a blade from his inventory. Except for its gleaming blade, there was nothing special about the weapon however, the moment he held it, Ito Shunsuke's eyes became filled with confidence. And with those confident eyes, he spoke. Then I'll deal with him. Slightly important message. I know I've said similar things in the past, but maybe I just have to reiterate it every now and then for everyone. I do not decide the length of the chapters if any of you ever checked the Kill the Hero novel on Kaka page, the one that says novel, rather than the one broken into episodes. You'd see that each chapter is broken up into numbered sections if I were to do full chapters for Kill the Hero without any breaks, they would be at least 5000 words each, therefore, it's much more feasible to break it into parts. I chose to do this by following the previous translator's pattern, which was two or three sections per English chapter 1 have even extended to four or five sections for the chapters with very short sections this means that the length of the chapters are not uniform. But there is still an average, standard length for example, believe it or not, this chapter is actually three sections. I by no means cut the chapters short because I feel like it though I would love to do that in all honesty, and if I did then it would be impossible for there to be chapters that are more than double the length of others. I can also safely say that most of my chapters are well beyond the length of the previous groups, however, I do not mean this as a jab toward them in any way and I feel like they did an excellent job with their translations. I'm sorry for the slight rant, but there have been many who seem to believe I'm skimping on the chapters when in fact I try to extend them as much as I feasibly and efficiently can. Chapter, 168 What was the worst case scenario when hunting a very powerful game? The answer was simple. A situation where your prey managed to flee was the same as if a domino house that you were building collapsed. In other words, when dealing with powerful game, it was extremely important to ensure all paths of retreat were blocked. So Ito Shunsuke put everything into it. All the players moved to prevent Li Jina's escape, and ensure that their plan was successful. All paths of retreat have been blocked. And immediately they began to see clear evidence of their plan's success. Begin the battle. They started their battle with a trapped prey. The battle that began in such a way, was incredibly fierce. Li Jina, who was trying to grasp the situation and escape, Ito Shunsuke, who did his best to block his every move, and his subordinates were locked in a bloody, chaotic fight. 
The most important point was that Li Jina's power was overwhelming. Even though the difference in their levels was not big, Li Jina's power far exceeded that of his peers. Crack. This was clearly felt by the person who was forced to meet his fist. Damn it this doesn't make sense. How can he be so powerful when he hasn't even reached level 100 yet? It was also evidenced by the fact that the tanks, who had to defend against Li Jina's attacks with their bodies, were clearly getting pushed around. This caused a chill to go down everyone's spine. The fact that if they did not kill him now, they would then be hunted by this monster, increased the strength of that chill. Moreover, it did not seem like Li Jina intended to escape. Retreat we have to stop this. We can't forget to push and pull. At that moment, the tanks deliberately retreated to catch their breath and rally their strength for a prolonged battle. Seeing this, Li Jina shouted at Ido Shunsuke's men who were blocking him. Spashiba. Thank you. Instead of retreating, after the cry, he grabbed a tank and rushed forward. He was risking his life. He wasn't fighting to escape, instead, it seemed that he only had it in his mind to kill his enemies. Block him. Damn it. His opponent's spines could not get colder. They realized now that Li Jina was more than just a simple beast. Unlike a beast, who could only rely on its instincts, Li Jina knew exactly when to attack and retreat. It's not just his destructive power. He's smarter than we expected. He made incredibly strategic moves that caused the mouths of Ido Shunsuke's men to dry up. Gulp. Despite the fierce battle situation, gulps could still be clearly heard. And every time Li Jina let out that shout, everyone's hearts shook. Spashiba 2. Isaac's legend is definitely because of Spashiba TL, Li Jina finally getting recognition. It was the moment they had truly come to understand the monster that Isaac Ivanov had hidden from the world, and they couldn't help but be afraid. How surprising. However, Ido Shunsuke was still able to maintain the calm tranquility that he had from before. This was something he'd learned from the Sword Saint. Not losing your composure regardless of the circumstance by doing this, you could achieve whatever it is you wanted. One is enough. Killing this monster would only require one sword slash. This was why he sharpened his focus even more. He concentrated his mind on the one sword stroke that he would unleash. It was then. Ichim. His senses, which had been honed continuously, let him know that something was approaching him. Ido Shunsuke turned his attention to whatever was approaching. Then he saw who it was. Arai Kazuhiko. The one who appeared this time was Arai Kazuhiko, who played the most important role in getting Kim Woojin into the dungeon. He was also the one who reported Kim Woojin's movements to them. Then he saw him look around it seemed that he was looking for him. What's wrong? Ido Shunsuke wondered why he was there as had been mentioned before, Arai Kazuhiko was an integral part in this mission to kill Kim Woojin. He was also a powerful man in his own right. If he was trying to find him so urgently without warning, then there must be a reason. And it was likely to be important. After thinking this, Ido Shunsuke slowly revealed himself, and only then did Arai Kazuhiko notice him and begin to approach. What is it? Ito Shunsuke asked as Arai Kazuhiko got closer. It was at that moment. Ah. The moment he asked the question, Ito Shunsuke realized that the person in front of him was not Arai Kazuhiko, but was instead someone who was using his face. The moment he realized that, Ito Shunsuke's body was already moving. He swiftly closed the distance between them and swung the makya in his hand diagonally at his opponent. All of this happened in an instant. In fact, the time it took was so short, that the opponent would not be able to defend themselves at all. Shook. The Makya made a gruesome sound as it cut through the person's armor he cut the body in two with one slash. Naturally, as he was the one who made the slash, Ido Shunsuke was able to see the damage that he'd done. However, inside the armor, there was no flesh, only bones. Skeleton. Ido Shunsuke's thoughts ended there pool. He couldn't continue to think anymore as a spear entered his head from behind. Got him. It was the moment that Kim Woojin succeeded in hunting the prey he was after. 
Of course, Kim Woo Jin immediately took the loot he earned from his kill. He approached Ido Shansuke, who died from the large hole in his head, and picked up the Makya. Makya. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 44. Required Level, Level 10 or Higher. Description A sword containing the soul of a great craftsman when combined with Gan Jang, the sword's partner, a hidden power will be revealed. Attack power increased in proportion to user's level. All stats 25%. Increased cutting power when attacking. When used together with Gang Jang, hidden abilities will be unlocked TL, nothing better than reading Gan Jang as soy sauce. Makya. It was the moment when a weapon that he intended to search for had arrived in Kim Woo Jin's hands. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't seem too pleased by this fact. Instead, a question resounded in his head. The Bao God had the weapon that Lee Se Jun went to such lengths to find. Why had the Makya appeared here? To sate his curiosity, Kim Woo Jin wanted to immediately dive into Ido Shunsuke's memories, but he was patient. I need to clean up first. Because the hunt had not yet ended. In a group battle, the most important thing to get rid of were the tanks. In most hunts, without the tanks, then the hunt would be impossible. The reason why tanks were so important was of course, their role. To attract the attention of the prey and to maintain it while creating opportunities for their teammates to attack. Without such a tank, the damage dealers would be unable to do their jobs properly. Therefore, tanks used every means and method to fulfill their roles. The tanks who were facing off against Li Jina knew this well they did everything they could against Li Jina. Block him first. Keep attacking. The tank's basic role was to use every means necessary to basically perform the tasks of a wall. Maintain control. At the same time, they did not forget to provoke Li Jina to want to kill them. TL, this is a swear that I decided not to translate for you, you can if you'd like took me by surprise. They swore at him in Russian. Even when Li Jina shouted angrily at them, the tanks did not relent. Wah! Whoa! Instead, they kept shouting to catch Li Jina's attention. All means and methods were used to hunt their prey. Great! Ishio Masato, who was commanding the battlefield on behalf of Ido Shunsuke, who was waiting and hiding for the best moment to strike, could not help but admire their effort even though the situation was urgent. Our training was not in vain. Furthermore, he felt proud even when they faced off against a monster like Li Jina. He was proud of the fact that they were able to deal with such a monster after training in the shadows for such a long time for the revival of Japan rather than fighting for fame and fortune in the open. We can kill him. Following that pride was conviction. Whenever the tanks are successful, the hunt never fails. Because it was common sense for the players that if the tank did their jobs well, then the hunt was already 99% complete. That was the reason. Ishio-san. I've lost contact with some of the teammates around us. Only. What? It wasn't until they had already lost more than half of their number that Ishio realized they were being hunted. SK- It's a skeleton soldier. Skeleton soldiers have appeared. It was only then that they noticed the skeleton soldiers that surrounded them. And it was the moment that they realized that Li Jina had played the role of tank perfectly. Chapter 169 Kyaha. Following the screech of the skeleton knight wielding Percival's spear in his hand, silence fell upon the battlefield for the first time. It was the moment when the battle with the agents of Ilyong, who were secretly raised by the Yamato Federation and sent to kill Kim Woo Jin, had come to an end. TL, I decided to not translate Ilyong Sun's shadow, as, in my opinion, it sounded better untranslated. Of course, even though the battle hand ended, the skeleton soldiers and knights did not stop moving. Rattle. They stabbed the weapons in their hands into the broken bodies of their opponents that were on the ground. P.U.K. They began confirming their kills to ensure nothing unexpected occurred. Damn it, I had to do all the work again this time. And Li Jina began spewing the complaints that he'd been withholding the whole time. However, this time, it was a reasonable complaint the biggest contributor in this battle was Li Jina, not Kim Woo Jin. I had to pretend to be troubled by the death of my teammate, hunt monsters ferociously, 
act as a tank against these bastards and hold their aggro. As Li Jina said, Kim Wu Jin would have been unable to hunt the well-trained members of Iliang so stealthily and efficiently without his help. Kim Wu Jin also admitted this fact, which was why he turned to Li Jina and said. Good work. Oh, your divine grace is without bounds just hearing your words fills me with joy ah, so full. TL, the O and ah here are actually Agu, but I found it hard to find a good English equivalent to match these sentences. He then received a sarcastic remark in return. Kim Wu Jin waved the sword in his hand at Li Jina. Then I'll give you this as a bonus. Humph. Of course, Li Jina snorted at this remark. Does it look like I'd fall for the same trick twice? I don't need stuff like that, when we leave, just treat me to a meal. When he heard what Li Jina said, Kim Wu Jin simply nodded and put the makya that he was holding into his inventory. The fact that the makya took up three inventory slots immediately drew his attention. Makya. It was an indescribable gain. Before he'd returned to the past, it was something that even the Messiah Guild had wanted to obtain yet couldn't. However, it wasn't the value of the item that caused him to have such a strange expression. Why is an item that even Li Seijun couldn't find in the hands of the Bao God? Instead, it was because he had learned something from this big harvest. It's clear that the Bao God intentionally hid it. For Kim Wu Jin, the true value of the Makya came from the fact that the Bao God had intentionally hidden it from Li Seijun. That's why he couldn't even find a single clue. It made sense now why they were unable to find any clues about the Makya in the past. If the Bao God, who was a key member of the Messiah Guild, wanted to hide it, then it was natural for the Messiah Guild to be unable to find it. There must be a reason why he hid it. In addition, he was curious about the reason for hiding it. There's no way he would reveal all his cards to a guy who was pretending to be a savior in order to rule the world. The Bao God knew that Li Seijun was not actually a savior nevertheless, he continued helping him play the role of savior. In those circumstances, would he show everything he had to Li Seijun? If he were that type of person, then he would have stuck to Li Seijun from the beginning and did his best to help him rule the world. The best thing to do would be to prepare for unforeseen situations. So he must have kept his insurance hidden, and there was a high chance that the Makya was part of that insurance. That was the important part. The Makya was one of the Bao God's weaknesses. But from Li Seijun's perspective, it would be unacceptable. Weaknesses were things that the Messiah Guild would never tolerate. How exciting! Kim Wu Jin was more delighted by the fact that he had gotten hold of one of the Bao God's weaknesses than that had obtained the Makya. So Kim Wu Jin moved immediately. He headed to the place where he'd left Ito Shunsuke's body. Then he looked into Ito Shunsuke's lifeless eyes. Anubis eye has opened. He began to earnestly search for his opponent's weaknesses with black eyes. Are you sure about this? I'm certain. After hearing the confident reply from his subordinate, Oh Seichan once again looked down at the document in his hands. Oh Seichan, who finished reviewing the contents of the document for the second time, spoke with a huff. Those Yamato Federation bastards are smart. The information in the document that was in O oh Seichan's hands was about none other than the secret organization that the Yamato Federation had created. So that's why we weren't able to find anything in the background checks. Iliong. A secret organization hidden by the Yamato Federation naturally, O oh Seichan had been looking for information about this organization for a long time. Knowing that Japan had a rather close relationship with the Messiah Guild, there was no way he wouldn't pursue information about an organization claiming to be Japan's shadow. However, Oh Seichan wasn't making much progress in his hunt for information. I was wondering where their cash flow came from. In particular, Oh Seichan, who mainly collected information through cash flow, had been unable to find the line that led to Iliang. But he had finally gotten a clue. They used oil money to fund their little shadow organization, which means the cash flow should be traceable. The source of funds for the Japanese shadow group, Iliong, was Middle Eastern oil money. That's a very unexpected combination. Oh Seichan would never have thought that a country like Japan with a dream of imperialism would use oil funds from the Middle East to support their shadow organization. He couldn't even imagine the process. 
But Oh Se-chan did not try to use his brain cells to figure out the process of such a thing. The important thing was that they'd found the connection. This is such a pain. Regardless of the process, this simply meant that Oh Se-chan now had to also take the Middle East into account when dealing with Japan. I don't know what those guys in the Middle East are planning. Moreover, with the current situation in the world, the Middle East was a very troublesome region. In a world haunted by monsters, oil prices continued to rise, and religious tensions in the Middle East, which held the most oil, also rose steeply, so it would be strange if dealing with them wasn't a headache. The SDF that were on standby have begun to move. TL, SDF is an acronym for Self-Defense Forces. While contemplating the situation with the Middle East, Oh Se-chan put down the document in his hands as he heard a report from another subordinate. Meanwhile, the subordinate continued to report. It seems they are moving toward the dungeon gate as we expected, it looks like they're prepared for the worst. What they meant by the worst case was simple. If the assassination fails, it seems they are prepared to use force. This meant that if Ilyong failed to kill Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin in the dungeon, they would try to do it after they came out. Will they really do that? Another subordinate who also heard the report, could not help but ask Oh Se Chan in surprise. It felt like an extreme measure. No matter how they tried to clean up this mess, the risk would still be enormous. If Kim Woo Jin dies, Park Yong Wan would not let it go easily that wouldn't be an easy mess to clean up, right? Moreover, the target of the armed action was none other than Kim Woo Jin. The price Japan would have to pay for killing him would not be small. They will. Nevertheless, Oh Se Chan was sure that the Yamato Federation would use such measures in the worst case scenario. It's better to kill the target they failed to assassinate than allow them to come out of the dungeon and reveal what happened can the dead speak. If the fact that there was a failed assassination was revealed by Kim Woo Jin, there would be another set of problems. And those Japanese bastards are the type to do crazy things in war to achieve their dream of imperialism, there was nothing they weren't willing to do. As Oh se -chan said, Japan would make sure to eliminate Kim Woo Jin even if they had to fire a missile. Of course, it was the role of Oh se -chan and his men to prevent that. What will we do then? So a subordinate asked the most important question. It seemed that Oh se -chan had not told his subordinates the plan that he had concocted this time. Hmm. Instead of answering, Oh se -chan just had a contemplative expression on his face. This caused his subordinates to become worried. He's worried. Well it's not like it's impossible, but... The subordinates also began devising their own ways to solve this problem in case Oh se -chan asked them. It won't be easy to stop the SDF from moving in Japan would have no chance but to stop an army with an army. In the end, the only thing we can use is military power but if we do something wrong, it could lead to actual war. The problem was the fact that any wrong move could lead to war. Ah, this is insane. Suddenly words burst from Oh se -chan's mouth. In response to Oh se -chan's words, one of his subordinates spoke with a tense expression. Are you going to utilize military power as well? What? Oh se -chan frowned when he heard the question. Military power, do you intend to start a war? No, well, we might go to war someday, but why would we do that now? Huh? The subordinates all looked surprised at Oh se -chan's words. Oh se -chan asked one thing. Wouldn't it be simpler to just send Isaac Ivanov? Ah. His subordinates gained expressions of understanding after hearing those words. That was because Oh se -chan's idea was perfect. That's right, ITLL be difficult for them to exercise force in front of Isaac Ivanov. Only. And the reason could be that he was there to see his teammates. They wouldn't be able to kill Isaac Ivanov's teammate in front of him even if they wanted to. Soon, expressions of admiration could be seen on all of the subordinates' faces. But following their admiration, they couldn't help but ask more questions. Then your worried expression. When he heard this, Oh se -chan turned to his subordinates with a serious expression. Would it be weird for someone who just woke up from a coma to want to eat tuna belly sushi and top-grade wagyu beef? Ah, uh, I want to eat sushi and beef for free. Chapter, 170 Sword Saint He was the strongest player in Japan. 
but his influence in the country was incomparably greater than his actual power. For one, he had the halo of the guardian of the holy light, which was incredibly rare and glorious. At the same time, while he was not the first player, he became one very early in January 2020. Nevertheless, the Sword Saint is the only Japanese player who's said to be on par with Lee Sejun. For the Japanese people, the Sword Saint was the only player capable of confronting Korea's Lee Sejun, so the country of Japan gave him influence that far exceeded his actual ability. He was like the Messiah of Japan. So during the war with the Messiah Guild, which started after Japan's desire for the Korean Peninsula was revealed and Park Yongwon sold out the country to Japan because of his ambition, Japan of course believed in the Sword Saint. They believed that he was the Messiah who would deliver them from the Messiah Guild and therefore gave him everything they could. That was the reason. The reason the world was shocked by the appearance of a hunting dog named Kim Woo Jin. The Sword Saint is dead. What the hell? Kim Woo Jin. The Messiah Guild's hunting dog killed the Sword Saint. It was the Messiah Guild's hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, who mauled the savior of the Japanese to death. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, even if he wanted to forget the Sword Saint's face, it would be impossible. I humbly greet the master. Thanks to this, he was able to easily find Ido Shunsuke's memories that were related to the Sword Saint. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't think too much about this information. Kim Woo Jin knew that the most important thing when acquiring and analyzing information, the most important thing was to be as objective as possible without being disturbed or influenced by emotion. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin mechanically collected the information. What truly impressed Kim Woo Jin was the moment and the sword saint showed Ido Shunsuke the armory. This is the foundation for the revival of our Yamato Federation it is a place where the effort of countless people including the Bao God and myself is stored. Inside the Sword Saint's armory which was filled with many rare and exquisite items, the Sword Saint spoke to Ido Shunsuke. There's no need to restrain yourself be greedy. Our goal is for the Yamato Federation to rule the world it is our ultimate desire to rule over Manchuria 1, and even beyond the Korean Peninsula. It should be the same for you, Ido I don't want a monk. It was the moment when the Sword Saint implanted his ambition and that of the Yamato Federation, deep into Ido Shunsuke's heart. That moment marked a turning point in Ido's life. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't pay any attention to their conversation. Instead, there were three things that caught his eyes. Nemean Lion Leather 2, Aegis Shield 3, Solomon's Ring 4. Three items that were displayed prominently in the armory. These are all items that the Messiah Guild searched long and hard for but could not find the slightest clue. A smile stretched across Kim Woo Jin's face when he saw this. At this point, the fact that there were no clues even when these items were right here means that there were many things the Bao God hid from the Messiah Guild. It was the smile of a hunting dog who had discovered a weakness in the prey they were hunting. Anything can happen in a dungeon. But regardless of what happened, there was one thing that remained unchanged. The dungeon attack could not be stopped no matter what. The same was true for Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin. After defeating the group of assassins that had been targeting them, they truly started their dungeon attack. And the attack was even fiercer than the fight that they had just had with Ido Shunsuke and his men. Fuck. Li Jina, who had been fairly relaxed against Ido Shunsuke's subordinates, was swearing constantly. I can't do it. I can't. On the third day after they entered the dungeon, on the third floor, Li Jina finally exploded. I demand a break. He declared a strike. Of course, Kim Woo Jin wouldn't simply accept his strike. If you give me a compelling reason, I'll let you take a break. As if he had been waiting for this, Li Jina shouted out the reason the moment he was asked. I've already gained three levels in this dungeon. Before they entered the dungeon, Li Jina was level 88, to increase his level by three in such a short time, could no longer be called a miracle, it was insane. You only went up three levels. However, for Kim Woo Jin, it was something he should reflect on rather than be satisfied with. There are still many monsters left. There were still many monsters on the third floor he'd be able to level up even more. It's too hard, I don't have any more strength to fight. When Li Jin changed his argument, 
Kim Woo Jin called over two skeleton knights that were waiting at the side. If you fight these two skeleton knights and lose a limb, I'll admit that you don't have the strength to fight. Kyaha. The skeleton knights looked at Li Jina with eyes filled with battle lust. Hey, really? In the end, Li Jina spoke as though he was giving up. I can't fight anymore because I feel sorry for the monsters. However, Kim Woo Jin, who had been rebutting all of Li Jina's excuses, became silent for a moment when he heard that bullshit. Was this a chance? Li Jina's eyes lit up when he saw this. You want to kill as many monsters as we can, right? And what will you do after you kill them? After they die, their blood is sucked out, their flesh is made into poison, and their bones are used to make skeletons if the UN human rights ambassador saw that, you'd be arrested in an instant. It was utter bullshit, but Kim Woo Jin was still able to see some truth in his words. You're not wrong. Eventually, Kim Woo Jin took a small step back. Li Jin Ah became excited when he saw that. You see? So let's give the monsters a break. I'm definitely not saying this because I'm the one who wants to take a break. It was then. All three skeleton knights began approaching Li Jin Ah, which caused him to cry out in surprise. WH Dash, what are you doing? Kim Woo Jin looked at Li Jin Ah, who had an expression of fear on his face. You know too much so I'll need to get rid of you thank you for all of your hard work until now. It was a scene similar to when a crime boss deals with the main character in a noir movie. Why Dash, you're joking. Kim Woo Jin smiled and said to the scared Li Jina. Of course it's a joke. The skeleton knight stopped approaching him and Li Jina laughed awkwardly when he saw that. Ha, huh, you're funnier than I thought. However, Kim Woo Jin's next words made Li Jin Ahs expression stiffen. But if you tell me bullshit like that again, it won't be a joke. For your mental state, I think it would be better for you to take an hour break. In any case, Li Jin Ah had succeeded in getting the rest that he wanted so much. During the break, Kim Woo Jin began speaking to Li Jin Ah while he was eating. There's something I need to tell you about the situation right after we leave the dungeon. Ah, uh, that? I heard about it from Brother Seichan already Isaac Ivanov will be waiting for us outside right? Li Jina also knew what would happen after they cleared the dungeon. It was to use Isaac Ivanov to prevent whatever hidden cards Japan had left. How did Seichan even come up with a plan like that? As he recalled the plan, Li Jina couldn't help but exclaim in admiration. It was a great plan Isaac Ivanov would come to see his teammates and the SDF would be unable to kill Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina with him there. Anyway, it's really amazing you and brother Seichan don't have to worry about going to hell when you guys die even hell would refuse to accept demonic guys like you. Like Li Jina said, it was a truly wicked plan that left their opponents unable to act. Before we entered the dungeon, I made some changes to the plan. However, Kim Woo Jin had revised the plan a bit. Changes? Li Jin Ah tilted his head when he heard that. Why? The answer Kim Woo Jin gave should have been expected. Only. To rip off the Japanese government a bit more. The Seal of Solomon is the signet ring attributed to King Solomon in medieval Jewish tradition and in Islamic and Western occultism. Chapter 171 it was not unusual for the army to be stationed outside a dungeon gate. In addition, it wasn't unusual for the quantity and quality of troops stationed to change as the number of floors increased. For monsters that might come out of a one-floor dungeon, normal assault rifles were enough. However, for monsters that might come out of a three-floor dungeon, sometimes a tank would be necessary. So naturally, more powerful troops were stationed outside dungeons that had higher numbers of floors. And naturally, it came with more regulations. It would be strange if the control in a place where tanks and other powerful weapons could be fired was weak. Kimura Yoshio's role as the commanding officer of the military forces in this operation was to kill Kim Woo Jin and make it look like an accident no one in the world would suspect. In fact, this wasn't too difficult to do. As had been explained earlier, the justification for such weapons was clear. All that was left to do was ensure that the soldiers they had given the task to, did their jobs properly. And in that regard, Kimura Yoshio's confidence was overflowing. 
The soldiers who had been chosen for this mission were not normal soldiers, instead, they were all people who would do crazy things like kamikaze attacks if it was for the sake of the glory of Japan. Damn it. However, all the confidence that Yoshio had, crumbled when he received a certain piece of information. Why the hell did Isaac Ivanov wake up now? Isaac Ivanov. There was breaking news that the hero had finally awoken from his coma. Of course, if that was it then Kimura Yoshio would have no reason to be so upset, but it wasn't. And why is he coming here? The problem was that Isaac Ivanov was on his way to the dungeon controlled by Kimura Yoshio and his men. In truth, there was nothing strange about his actions. From Isaac Ivanov's perspective, the two people in the dungeon right now are the two benefactors who helped save his life. Why wouldn't he go to the dungeon gate to meet them as soon as possible? It was more touching than strange. However, it was something that was hard for those who intended to kill Kim Woojin to accept. It's out of my control. First of all, it was impossible for him to stop Isaac Ivanov. I can't mobilize the troops in front of Isaac. Naturally, it was impossible for him to exercise military power in front of Isaac Ivanov. The probability of Ido failing is almost zero foot. Of course, he would only have to mobilize his men if Ido Shunsuke failed to kill Kim Woojin in the dungeon, but he felt that the probability of that occurring was lower than getting hit by lightning inside a building. Either way, it'll be a headache. But it would be troublesome regardless of that fact. What would happen if Isaac Ivanov came to congratulate his teammates and was instead met with their obituaries? Regardless of what happened, there would be a fuss. And that was what Kimura Yoshio was contemplating. How to downplay the deaths of Isaac Ivanov's two teammates. It was then. Isaac Ivanov has arrived. Kimura Yoshio raised his head when the door to his temporary container office was opened and a subordinate stepped in to give him a report. At least we should prevent Isaac Ivanov from learning of the deaths of his teammates right in front of the dungeon gate. He intended to make a more detailed plan after meeting Isaac Ivanov in person. Okay, tell them I will see them in a moment. Yes, sir. After accepting his subordinate salute, Kimura Yoshio's expression became sour. This is the worst. His expression showed that he felt this could not get any worse. S- dash, sir. At that time, another soldier rushed in to report to Yoshio. Th- dash, the dungeon has been attacked. What? A- dash, and there was a B- dash, biochemical alarm. Biochemical alarm. P- dash, poison is spreading from within the dungeon gate. Kim Woo Jin was injured a biochemical alarm was sounded around the dungeon gate it should be from the blood poison. It was an urgent report. However, while listening to it, Oh Seichan's calm expression didn't change. Ah, uh, got it. He even spoke in a rather calm tone. Don't worry, it's a pre-planned act. An act? Oh Seichan nodded when his subordinate showed their surprise. Write an act. When given this simple response, Oh Seichan's subordinate couldn't help but ask a question with an expression showing they didn't understand. Why is he acting? Wouldn't the viewership rating go up if the hero, who woke up from his coma, went to the dungeon gate to wait for the teammates who saved his life, only to find that they had been attacked. Despite the explanation, the subordinate looked like they still hadn't fully understood what he was saying. Oh Seichan didn't bother to give any more explanations after seeing this. Now then, let's call the Black Knight who will fight the Japanese government on Kim Woojin's behalf. Instead, he gave another subordinate orders. Contact Park Yomwan. Isaac Ivanov wakes up. It didn't take long for the news of the new hero, Isaac Ivanov's awakening to spread to the rest of the world. Wow. Isaac's back. Coo. Isaac is alive. Heroes never die. And it didn't take long for people to become excited by the news. Isaac Ivanov's teammate the victim of terrorism. Isaac Ivanov's teammate seriously injured. And it didn't take long for cold water to get poured on the heated atmosphere. What are they talking about? Terrorism. Terrorism. Isaac Ivanov's teammate was the victim of terrorism. In Japan of all places. Did Japanese players attack Isaac Ivanov's teammate in a dungeon? Why would they do that? 
The atmosphere after the splash of cold water was, of course, filled with confusion. Japan attacks Isaac Ivanov's team. Isaac Ivanov's new teammate is Korean. Are there tensions between Japan and Korea? Japan reveals their ugly ambitions. The media constantly poured out unproven, yet extremely stimulating articles about the situation. Those Japanese sons of bitches. They dare to touch Isaac Ivanov's teammate. It's always been like this those bastards will show a calm appearance on the surface then they will do things like this when no one expects it. Nevertheless, it's practically a war crime. And the public began venting their anger towards Japan. Those bastards. TL, the represent a word that I believe would be extremely offensive to any Japanese reader, so I took it out. Among them, it was Park Yongwan's anger that was the most intense. And it was understandable. After all, Park Yongwan had the biggest stake in Isaac Ivanov from Park Yongwan's perspective, any damage to Isaac Ivanov was damage to him. So how is Kim Woo Jin doing right now? Above all, the thing that made Park Yongwan the most upset was the fact that it was none other than Kim Woo Jin. Of course, it wasn't because he loved or cherished Kim Woo Jin. He's out of surgery, but they still have to monitor his condition. Fuck, do you know how much I invested to get him by Isaac Ivanov's side? He had already invested a fair bit into Kim Woo Jin to plant him in a good position. There's no one to replace him. And there was currently no one else under Park Yong Wan who could take Kim Woo Jin's place. This was also one of the reasons why Park Yong Wan's anger toward Japan burned so fiercely. They were the ones who attacked him without a clear reason. Bastards, this is their revenge for what happened with the Skull Guild, isn't it? After all, wasn't Park Yong Wan the one who trampled the Skull Guild? which was Japan's outpost in Korea, and forced them to return to Japan. In other words, Park Yongwon had no choice but to consider this a personal attack rather than a mistake or accident. That's why Park Yongwon could not let it go. Call the Blue House One, immediately. Only. Did you say the Blue House? A Korean player was severely injured by organized terrorism carried out by Japanese players while conducting a humanitarian dungeon attack activity in Japan, of course, the government should step forward. Park Yongwon shot an eerie glance to his surprised secretary. We must receive an apology and compensation. A war had begun. Chapter, 172. Is it okay for players to target other players? The ugly side of Japan has been revealed. The aftermath of the terrorist attack on Kim Woo Jin did not end, but instead became progressively stronger as the days passed. This was because none of Japan's neighboring countries would let such a perfect opportunity pass. The Russian government condemns the Japanese government. The Korean government demands an apology and compensation from the Japanese government. Among them, the attacks from Korea, which Kim Woo Jin belonged to and Russia, which Isaac Ivanov belonged to, were the fiercest. The Japanese government announces the emergence of a new pseudo-terrorist organization. Japan, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Japanese government. Under such circumstances, when Japan announced that the attack on Kim Woo Jin was carried out by a new radical cult group, no one could accept it. What pseudo-terrorist cult, it sounds more like the government did it. Does it make sense that some new cult group would be able to put so many players in a three-floor dungeon? Are they really trying to cut off their tails like this? Do they think we were born yesterday? Can we wake them up with a nuclear punch? On the contrary, the public opinion and the accusations against the Japanese government intensified as a result of their announcement. In the face of such circumstances, the Japanese government had two options. One was to pretend to be unaware and withstand all sorts of criticism and pressure at a state level, or to offer compensation. I got a call from the Japanese government they want to know how we want to deal with this situation. In the end, the government chose the latter. They offered to compensate Kim Woo Jin who had been injured while carrying out his mission. Of course, it will be a humanitarian compensation however, they added the condition of removing the need for an apology. But that didn't mean that they would apologize. On the contrary, the Japanese government was trying to avoid apologizing by offering compensation. They're such a bunch of bastards. Their compensation should be pretty good. It was already amazing that they were offering compensation when taking Japan's history into account. 
Nevertheless, the reason why they offered to give compensation first was quite simple. Well, what else can they do when Park Yongwan is making such a fuss? The amount of pressure that Park Yongwan was putting on them was not small. Looking at what Park Yongwan has been doing these days, he will probably never see eye to eye with Japan again. He's quite patriotic. Right, he's a great patriot. It was the same determination as though he was making a life or death decision. If Japan did not handle this properly then Park Yongwan would not be able to live under the same sky as Japan. That's why Park Yongwan's popularity in Korea these days is no joke is he more popular than the Messiah Guild yet. For the Korean people, this was something that they were incredibly enthusiastic about. In a sense, wasn't Park Yongwan doing something that even the Messiah Guild didn't dare to do? He was actually openly attacking Japan. It would be strange if the impression that the Korean people had of Park Yongwan and the Phoenix Guild did not improve as a result. And your popularity is rising rapidly too. At the same time, Kim Woo Jin's popularity in Korea also began rising at an alarming rate. This was due to the fact that Kim Woo Jin's identity as Isaac Ivanov's teammate had been exposed. No official announcement had been made, but the situation was already known to everyone. After all, there weren't many players in the Phoenix Guild who used blood poison and were active in three floor dungeons. Your fanbase has already emerged. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin fans also began appearing. Now we'll not only get Choco Pies and Bulgogi, but also Chongguk Jang 1, and Hanjio Samhap 2, as gift scheme. Oh Se Chan, who realized what he'd been about to say, suddenly coughed at the end instead of finishing his sentence. After that, he spoke in a serious tone, changing the mood. So what are you going to ask the Japanese government for? After asking this question, Oh Se Chan added something just in case. I wouldn't ask for an item. Kim Woo Jin smiled lightly at his words. It was a smile of satisfaction at Oh Se Chan, who was able to perfectly guess his thoughts. It seems you knew that I would make that decision. We can always get items later. As Oh Se Chan said, Kim Woo Jin had no intention of asking for an item at this point. We could always trade it, steal it, or take it forcefully whenever you decide what you want, like the others. There were many other ways to obtain items. It's compensation from the Japanese government, not from a guild so it should be compensation that only the Japanese government could give. After all, the ones giving the competition were much larger than even the largest guilds. This means that he would be able to get items that even the guilds wouldn't be able to give him. For example, the autonomy to attack any dungeons you want in the country without the need to register. Oh Seichan's words made Kim Woo Jin smile even brighter. You don't have to say more. To sum it up, Isaac Ivanov's request to the Japanese government as compensation for this incident is full autonomy to attack dungeons in Japan? Yes. At that response, the sword saint slowly opened his eyes. These eyes seemed to be as cold as a sinking abyss, and caused the breath of the subordinate who they locked onto, to stop. Those insignificant bastards dare. That was the extent to which the sword saint was angry about the situation. It was anger that burned fiercely. After all, the sword saint had just lost a disciple that had taken a considerable amount of effort to raise in this incident. And it wasn't just a disciple, but a disciple that he had raised in the shadows. A disciple who, without hesitation, turned away and sacrificed wealth and fame for the great revival of Japan. Moreover, wasn't there a very high possibility that the legendary great item, the Makya, one of his trump cards, had fallen into Isaac Ivanov's hands? Yet in such a situation, Isaac Ivanov still had the audacity to ask for the right to freely target dungeons in Japan as compensation for the incident. At that moment, the sword saint wanted nothing more than to slit the throats of Isaac Ivanov and his team, himself. Calm down. It was a woman who eventually calmed the sword saint's anger. When he noticed the appearance of this woman with a short, sports haircut, the sword saint took a deep breath. After seeing this, the woman bowed toward the sword saint. Given the current situation, compensation is inevitable if things get bigger than they already are and Ilyong's tail gets caught, this will become even more troublesome so just give them what they want. Are you telling me to give those bastards the right to trample upon our noble land to their heart's content? The sword saint's voice became chilly as he asked this question. 
Nevertheless, the woman did not so much as twitch when reinforcing her decision before the sword saint. This proved that this woman's status was not normal. In fact, her status was extraordinary. Sakura. She was Miyazaki Sakura, the woman who had achieved the highest level among the sword saint's current disciples as well as the one who took part in six floor dungeons together with the sword saint and was preparing to target seven floor dungeons. Explain the reason properly. It was already amazing that he was willing to listen to her words. And she was willing to make use of her position. From now on, Isaac Ivanov and his teammates will be challenging for floor dungeons. She did not hesitate to express her opinion. As you know, four floor dungeons aren't places that can be cleared with a small number of people there completely different from three floors that's why we will encourage them. Encourage them. We'll make them attack an unbeatable dungeon with just their team. The sword saint started at her words. Then he made a gesture for her to continue. I don't know what Isaac Ivanov's ambitions are, or what he plans to do. But it's clear that he has already reached a certain threshold he has the expectations of the world on his shoulders, and he has to live up to those expectations just like Lee Sejun. When her words reached that point, the coldness in the sword saint's eyes began fading bit by bit. In front of him, Miyazaki Sakura finished her speech. But Isaac Ivanov has no messiah guild I'm sure master knows the difference even better than me. As he looked at Miyazaki Sakura, who had finished speaking, the sword saint's gaze was no longer cold. Instead, he turned to another subordinate with an energized gaze. Pass it on to the prime minister will accept Isaac Ivanov's request. Yes, sir. And prepare properly make sure Isaac has no choice but to attack a dungeon he could never hope to clear. When he said these words, the sword saint's eyes seemed to burn with a fierce light. If he wants to be a savior then he's going to have to pay the price. Koreans typically enjoy hanjio with steamed pork belly and overripe kimchi, known as hanjio samhap, with samhap. Meaning gathering of three. The texture of pork and smell of kimchi hide the presence of the fermented fish, though not to complete success. Chapter, 173 in most countries, dungeons were treated as state property. Therefore, in order to attack a dungeon, one must first obtain certification from the government of that country. That was part of the reason why the guild system came into being. The Japanese government confirms their compensation for Isaac Ivanov's teammate. The Japanese government has provided Isaac Ivanov and his teammates a free pass to dungeons. The Japanese government, this is what Isaac Ivanov requested. With that in mind, the Japanese government's act of compensating Kim Woo Jin's attack by terrorists with the freedom to attack dungeons in Japan was considered a privilege. The public also didn't deny this fact. Isn't this too much? Aren't they basically giving Isaac Ivanov the opportunity to attack any dungeon he pleases? Does this mean the Japanese government has acknowledged the specialness of Isaac Ivanov's party? Kim Woo Jin is also very smart choosing something like this instead of an item. Now they are like real heroes. Furthermore, the public praised Isaac Ivanov for making such a choice and the Japanese government for agreeing to it. But that didn't last for long. The Japanese government demands a free pass qualification test for Isaac Ivanov and his party. Because the Japanese government requested a qualification test. The Japanese government has requested a qualification test. After hearing Oh Seichan's voice coming from the speakerphone, Kim Woo Jin, who was checking the seams of a piece of leather armor in his hands, spoke calmly. Then we'll have to accept it. Kim Woo Jin's reaction was quite dull. No, what do you mean exam? However, Li Jin Ah's reaction was different. Those fucking bastards still want to test us. TL, I expected better from you Jin Ah. Even Li Jin Ah stopped eating his chocolate to shout loudly in anger. In fact, Li Jina's reaction wasn't wrong. Didn't we hunt the hatchling alone? Isaac Ivanov's party had already successfully cleared the three-floor dungeon, Hatchling's Nest. Even though Isaac Ivanov had been heavily injured in the process and barely survived, didn't they still clear it? This is daylight robbery, isn't it? It was obvious that the Japanese government simply didn't want to give Isaac Ivanov, who had already completed a ridiculous achievement, what they'd promised by asking for a qualification test. However, Kim Woo Jin and Oh Se Chan saw it differently. 
That's how it should be. Three floor and four floor dungeons are different. They knew that the Japanese government's demands were justifiable. And in the first place, they have already decided to give out the pass. That's right in the end, this is all a show. In addition, the two of them could clearly read the intentions of the Japanese government. A show. It's a matter of the Japanese guilds, rather than the government think about it they bribe, lobby and pay taxes to obtain dungeons yet a free pass is given out easily how would that make them feel? They'd be pissed. That's why there needs to be a show. When he heard Oh se chans words, Lee Jina nodded as if he understood, and took a bit of the chocolate bar in his hand. Then Kim Woo-jin added some words of his own. But the real objective is to gauge our ability. Well, that's true. However, once again, Lee Jina didn't understand. What is that supposed to mean? They need to know our approximate skill level so that they can properly trap us. Trap us? Kim Woo-jin turned to glance at Lee Jina as he explained. The Yamato Federation would never let us go after what we did perhaps at the start they will make us look like heroes then, at some point, they will make us attack a dungeon that we can't clear. They will manipulate the information the difficulty of a dungeon that's been failed 20 times is different from one that's only been failed once. Lee Jina's expression became stiff when he heard that. That means it could get really dangerous, doesn't it? If Kim Woo Jin's assumptions were correct, it meant that sooner or later, the Japanese government would try to send them to their deaths. Considering the dangers of dungeons, that was something to be concerned about. As Oh Se Chan had said, if the Japanese government did a good job of distorting the information about a dungeon, the difficulty could be infinitely higher than what they assumed it was. Then, isn't it better to just leave Japan? It was reasonable for Li Jina to worry about it. Why? Are you scared? Are you getting cold feet? However, Oh Se Chan mocked Li Jina. WH Dash, who's getting cold feet? I am Li Jina Manly Li Jina, a man who is not afraid of death. Ah, uh, I bet you're scared bastard, all you have is your large size. You're just smart, you don't have any hair. TL, as childish as this is, I laughed so hard. And like that, their skit began. Say what? Hey, what's this got to do with hair? And I'm not bald, I deliberately shave my head. I bet you were born bald. You son of a bitch hey. You want a piece of me? Ugh. How can I fight someone who has no hair? Let's just take it as my loss. It was Kim Woo Jin who stopped their little play. Li Jina. By calling out for Li Jina. See if this fits. Huh. Kim Woo Jin gestured with his chin toward the leather armor that he had been inspecting before. Wa dash, wait is that mine? Li Jina, whose head was tilted, was surprised. He'd never imagined that he would get a real gift from Kim Woo Jin, who was just as cheap as Oh Se Chan, if not more. Are you really giving me hatchling leather armor? Moreover, the material that Kim Woo Jin used to make the leather armor was none other than the hatchling skin. It's armor that was made from the toughest skin from the hatchling's tail you could say it's comparable to the best among unique great items when it comes to defense. There are a lot of other ingredients in it too among all the armor that was made from hatchling leather, it definitely has the best defense. When he heard that, the eyes that Li Jina was looking at the armor with began to shine. Cook. He was so happy that his eyes became slightly moist. Li Jina hurried to put on the armor he'd received as a gift TL, he never learns. Jina, what are you doing right now? I'm putting the armor on. Really? Are you crying? I might cry if something more touching happens. You must be really moved. Oh Se Chan and Kim Woo Jin had talked about it. During that conversation, Oh Se Chan had been given a good laugh. You are so evil. Kim Woo Jin hadn't disputed his words. After all, Oh Se Chan was right. Kim Woo Jin didn't give Lee Jina the best armor he could just because he felt he deserved it. From four floor onwards, Li Jina's performance will become more important. From that point forward, the enemies that Li Jina would have to face would only get stronger, which is why Kim Wu Jin gave him the armor. But it's not enough, even with hatchling leather. Moreover, Kim Wu Jin still felt that the hatchling leather was insufficient, 
considering the enemies that they would face in the future. In order to bring out 100% of Li Jina's ability, legendary grade armor is necessary sooner or later, Li Jin AHS role will not be something I can fill with my skeletons. Oh Seichan asked Kim Wu Jin. What are you going to do about the test? If we hide our strength, they will use it as an excuse to disqualify us. But won't they just put you in a ridiculous dungeon if you reveal your full capabilities? Then we'll have to thank them. Oh Seichan laughed at Kim Wu Jin's confidence. Right, we'd have to thank them for giving you a dungeon that's hard to find of course, you'd have to get a fee for clearing such a difficult dungeon. Kim Wu Jin also laughed at those words. Ha ha ha. It's perfect. A perfect fit. You should open a tailor shop later. And Li Jin Ao laughed too. Then they received the date for the qualification test from the Japanese government. Destroy the Black Goblin Tribes. Floors, 4. Difficulty, D. Maximum number of entries, 177. Requirements, level 109 and below. Conditions, annihilate 10 Black Goblin Tribes. Reward, none. The dungeon that the Japanese government prepared for the free pass qualification test was a 4-floor D rank dungeon. The difficulty is reasonable. The Black Goblin tribes which appeared on the fourth floor were not difficult to hunt as long as one learned the strategy, and the maximum number of entries along with the clear conditions were also reasonable. It was at a level that was neither excessive nor insufficient. It's the best place to level up. Therefore, it was an extremely attractive dungeon for players aiming to level up. Usually, there would be fierce competition for spots in a dungeon like this one foot. Moreover, it was rare for empty spots to appear in such four-floor dungeons. It was the same for this one. There had already been 177 players lined up to participate in the Black Goblin dungeon. And even then the competition had been fierce. What more explanation was needed other than every player who was active in four-floor dungeons in Japan applied? Naturally, foreigners had no chance of participating. And yet, to be able to attack this kind of dungeon like this. Nevertheless, Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina were going to attack such a dungeon. It was ridiculous to imagine that they had been given this chance over two Japanese players who had already qualified despite the extremely fierce competition. Unsurprisingly, the two Japanese players did not easily accept this decision. They protested and demanded as much compensation as they were able to, and the Japanese government was once again forced to pay a price. It seems they are anxious to test our skills properly. In other words, the Japanese government was so desperate to properly gauge Isaac Ivanov's skill to the extent that, despite having to pay a heavy price, they were willing to allow foreigners to attack it. After all, a level-up dungeon is the best way to gauge someone's strength. Most dungeons that were good for leveling up were often able to reveal the strengths of those challenging them with ease. It was similar to racing. If you were to slowly increase your speed on a comfortable stretch of road, you would reach 200 kmh in no time however, it was incredibly difficult to reach 200 kmh if you were feeling pressured. More importantly, there's almost no chance of failure. On the other hand, since many of the best players in Japan who were active in four-floor dungeons would participate in the attack, it was very unlikely that Isaac Ivanov would die due to failing to complete the dungeon. But I still didn't expect them to offer such a good stage. In a sense, the dungeon itself could be considered a reward. This was also one of the aims of the Japanese government. If they gave him a dungeon like this, then it wouldn't be considered their fault if there were any incidents in the future. I'm so grateful I could cry. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, he couldn't help but feel grateful. That's why Kim Woo Jin intended to wholeheartedly repay them for their gift. Since they're giving me a gift like this, it's only right that I accept it properly. So Kim Woo Jin prepared to attack the dungeon. Chapter, 174 Survived seven days to proceed to the next floor. The moment the notification sounded out, a cold wind blew in the dungeon. It was the moment a world of ice and snow revealed itself to and greeted its 177 visitors. However, no one responded to the harsh greeting. Instead, everyone turned their eyes toward two people. In a crowd of yellow-skinned people, everyone was looking at the only two who had white skin, 
Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Oh. Isaac Ivanov. So he's here. Their eyes were those of people looking at something they found troublesome. It was natural why they wouldn't be happy. Because of him, our gains. For the Japanese players, Isaac Ivanov was like an invasive species who was harming their interests. The fact that he was here in the first place was already considered as a loss by the Japanese players. Because of these two people, two Japanese players who were supposed to have been here could not come in the end. Above all, all the players here were above level 100. They weren't just members of their respective guilds, but were each executives in their guilds. Executives who needed to consider their guild's interests before their own personal interests. And from their perspective, they could not tolerate Isaac Ivanov receiving a free pass so easily. We have to stop them somehow. We have to stop him from getting the free pass. So, naturally, they were going to do everything they could to hinder Isaac Ivanov and his teammates. And we have to make sure he doesn't die. Of course, no one actually thought about baring their fangs at Isaac Ivanov at that moment. They knew. If he dies here, we will die too. This was because of the attack on Isaac Ivanov's teammate, Kim Woo Jin, by Japanese terrorists. Under such circumstances, what kind of situation would they have to face if something happened to Isaac Ivanov in this dungeon? No, it was dangerous for Isaac Ivanov to even die of an accident in this dungeon, much less a terrorist attack. In any case, if Isaac Ivanov was to die in this dungeon, the consequences would be unimaginable. Therefore the Japanese players were intent on removing any risk factors for Isaac Ivanov. As a result, the Japanese players all had one purpose. We will destroy all the monsters before they can become a threat to Isaac Ivanov. We won't let Isaac Ivanov hunt even a single monster. They would take away Isaac Ivanov's chance to show his skills. It was a moment when the Japanese players will to hunt monsters burned hotter than ever before. Then let's start hunting right away. We have to kill all the monsters on this floor during these seven days. Even the incessantly blowing cold air could not douse the burning spirit within these Japanese players. Of course, it didn't take long for that burning will to be extinguished. Shiba. Ha. Huh. If you can't reach level 100 in this dungeon, I won't allow you to eat. Ha. Huh. Because Kim Woo Jin's fighting spirit was also burning hotter than ever. And so the dungeon attack began. The difference between three floor and four floor dungeons. There were, of course, many differences between three floor and four floor dungeons besides the floor numbers. The first is a difference of numbers. The first thing was a difference in the number of monsters than one would find in one group. In three floor dungeons, it was basically impossible to find monsters in groups of 100 or more unless it was a special case however, in four floor dungeons, the base number for each group was 100. Naturally, this means that the number of bosses also increases. And as the number of monsters increases, so does the number of bosses that appeared among them, which was one of the reasons why four floor dungeons were much more difficult than three floor dungeons. And mid sized monsters appear much more frequently. Also, a big difference was the fact that mid-sized monsters, who would usually appear as boss monsters in three-floor dungeons, could appear at any time. Of course, there's also the fact that there are many monsters that you would have never seen before including annoying monsters that aren't affected by physical attacks. At the same time, in four-floor dungeons, types of monsters that were not affected by physical attacks and could only be attacked with magic, began to appear. For example spiritual and magical monsters like wisps and salamanders, and spectral monsters like wraiths and ghosts. It made a very large difference. It's the worst. In simple terms, the difference between three-floor and four-floor dungeons was the same as the difference between heaven and earth. But the survival rate in four-floor dungeons is higher. However, an interesting fact to note was that the survival rate of four-floor dungeons was actually much higher. The reason for this was simple. That's what it means to be over level 100. They are much more mature not only in their talent, but also in their experience, and their item configurations are completely incomparable many of them even had legendary skills and items. Apart from the number of levels, the experience that they gained while accumulating those levels could not be ignored. Naturally, 
players who were active in four-floor dungeons were also quite confident in their ability. And these Japanese players who had been able to participate in this D-rank, Black Goblin Dungeon, who were talented players selected from every level 100 player in the country through fierce competition, were no different. They were all skilled and talented people who always received the best treatment, and the experience they had could not be compared to ordinary players. Oh my god! Is what I'm seeing right now real? But they all wore dumbfounded expressions at that moment. Is this what a scene created by Isaac Ivanov usually looks like? The trail that Isaac Ivanov left behind was the reason they were in such a state. It wasn't because the scene was horrible or cruel. Instead, the traces that Isaac Ivanov's team left behind were probably cleaner than any other. There were numerous monster corpses that had a few fatal injuries instead of signs of fierce battle some of them didn't even show any signs of resistance. That was the real reason they were so surprised. It was impossible for these Japanese players who surpassed level 100 to not know that the best thing was not to fight fierce battles. Rather, utilizing excellent skill and minimizing the need for prolonged battles was truly the best way to hunt. This efficiency is perfect. What kinds of tactics and strategies must we use to achieve a similar effect? In particular, since the time taken to clear four-floor dungeons was naturally more, it was very important to minimize energy consumption as much as possible. In that sense, Isaac Ivanov's combat method was the most ideal. He's not just a powerful player. It was at that moment that the Japanese players realized that Isaac Ivanov wasn't simply a player who relied on his powerful necromancy skills. And that was exactly what Kim Woojin wanted. I left those traces on purpose so that their way of thinking would change. Kyaha. The cry of a skeleton knight wearing hatchling leather armor signified the moment a group of orcs had been annihilated, and Kim Woojin took the Grim Reaper's mask off his face. Then he saw a group of kobolds eating in the distance. The distance between the two groups was not large. Sniff. Sniff. The sound of a kobold sniffing the air reached Kim Woojin's ears nevertheless, the kobolds continued eating their meal as though they had not noticed Kim Woojin's presence. This meant that Kim Woojin had perfectly erased his presence. Unsurprisingly, a commander's ability to obtain information about their target was a decisive factor that greatly influenced their victory or defeat in battle. That was the way Kim Woojin battled. It was not just ignorant use of overwhelming power, but an incredibly devastating victory obtained by combining overwhelming strategy with overwhelming power. I'm sure the traces I deliberately left behind have impacted the atmosphere quite a bit. Kim Woo Jin was intent to show himself to the Japanese players this time. I won't hide it. Through these battles that he had together with Li Jin Ah, he intended to show them, and more importantly, the world. That way, they won't make fools of themselves. To not show him broken teeth. Just like Li Sejun and Johan George did. That was the way Li Sejun and Johan George, the only one who had been able to oppose him, acted. The two of them always displayed their absolute strength without intending to hide anything. In this way, even if they were to stand in a storm, no one dared to easily touch them. And like the eye of a typhoon, the winds around them would only make them stronger. Lee Sejun, I will do what I learn from you. That was the method Kim Woo Jin intended to use this time. Your level has increased, TL, it's been so long since we saw this message. The emissary of the underworld is pleased with your methods. A notification then sounded in his ear. It seems my halo also agrees with my method. The notifications put a smile on Kim Woo Jin's face. The emissary of the underworld has bestowed some power onto you. The rank of the skeleton wizard skill has increased. And the following notifications made his smiles even brighter. Maybe I should use a skill stone A to increase the rank. At the same time, Kim Woojin remembered the skill's stones sitting in his inventory. An item that would make a B rank skill become a rank. For Kim Woojin, who had the plus ring, it was an item that made B rank skills reach the transcendent rank. I have two, so I don't have to worry about using one. More surprisingly was the fact that Kim Woojin actually had two skill stone A, S, that were extremely difficult to obtain, sitting in his inventory. They were rewards he'd received from the Forest of the Dead and Hatchling Dungeons. Anything is fine. 
this was also part of the reason why players were so eager to challenge a series dungeons. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't agonize about this decision for a long time. In fact, he did not agonize about it at all. Even while his mind had been on his rewards, Kim Woo Jin's gaze and other senses were still locked on the eating kobold group. He was looking for any flaws. After they've eaten their fill, they will stuff their mouths with food and move the rest of the food to their storage. He waited for the moment when the kobolds finished eating and moved to transfer the remaining food. He was waiting for the moment the kobolds truly let their guards down. Come come. Let's begin. When the moment he was waiting for finally came, Kim Woo Jin sent the signal without hesitation. Spashiba. Once again, the hunt had begun. Chapter, 175. Black Goblin. These black-skinned creatures boasted bodies that were smaller than the average common goblin. However, their strength, stamina and the toughness of their skin were all things that ordinary goblins could never compare to. These little creatures also had extremely sharp teeth and powerful jaws enough to chew through even decently powerful armor. Moreover, their violent and savage nature was something that could not be ignored. Black goblins were different from common goblins who would usually become scared and run away. At the sight of blood, their eyes would basically turn red. And a single red-eyed black goblin could easily deal with an orc. Proceed to the next floor. We'll finally encounter the black goblins. The players who had entered the black goblin dungeon were finally going to encounter the tribes of these small, troublesome monsters. There should be at least one thousand of them. Moreover, in the case of black goblin tribes, the number of monsters that could be found in them reached over a thousand. It's usually 2-300. Since we need to destroy 10 tribes, that means we need to hunt around 30 zero zero monsters. The clear condition given to the players this time was to destroy 10 such black goblin tribes. It wasn't a very difficult task. If it had been too difficult, then the dungeon wouldn't have been just D-rank. But that didn't mean that they could be lackadaisical either. As mentioned earlier, black goblins were deceptively strong. It won't be too hard. That's true. However, none of the players were displaying any tension in the face of an entire floor filled with such monsters. It wasn't that they were careless or anything. Was it even possible for the top players who entered this dungeon to be like that? Instead, this seemingly relaxed sensation came even after their cold and rational analysis. Because Isaac Ivanov is here. He can handle at least three tribes by himself. The results that Isaac Ivanov had displayed had caused them to make this judgment by using their great experience. It was that simple. He's a monster. He definitely didn't kill the hatchling with luck instead, it might have been bad luck that caused him to get injured. Over the course of the sixteen days that it took them to clear the first three floors of the dungeon, Isaac Ivanov's power and ability had completely gained the recognition of the Japanese players, who had intended to suppress him in this dungeon. Naturally, things went exactly as they expected. Cree. As their operation to wipe out the Black Goblin tribes commenced, Isaac Ivanov once again showcased his overwhelming power just like everyone expected. Kyaha. Following the three skeleton knights wearing hatchling leather armor, one hundred skeletons charged at the group of Black Goblins with hesitation. Their formation was like a wave heading towards a black, sandy beach. The battle line was so unilateral, that the different units could not even be differentiated. Shik. The weapons in the hands of the skeleton knights were extraordinary. One wielded Percival's spear, another had the Machia and the last was holding Wilhelm Tell's crossbow. All were legendary items, and in front of their power, the characteristic thick skin of the black goblins was as effective as paper. Cree. On the other hand, the black goblins could not even scratch the knight's armors. Hatchling leather was not something that could be damaged by mere goblins, even if they were a powerful variant. Among the group of skeletons, the most prominent presence was the skeleton soldier created from the Dullahan. Rattle. The headless skeleton soldier released an aura that was in no way lacking when compared to the skeleton knights. What made this possible was the hatchling leather armor and the unique great items equipped on the Dullahan skeleton soldier. There were eleven other skeletons that were equipped with armor similar to the Dullahan, and unsurprisingly, the power these skeletons displayed was overwhelming. 
They were like walls that could not be damaged. Kia. Key. A wall that the screeching black goblins could not overcome. However, it was only after the skeleton wizards began their attack that this wall truly began to shine. Hiaha. For the three skeleton wizards, the most troublesome thing was hitting their allies with their spells. However, there was no need for them to worry about the skeletons wearing the armor. From the perspective of the skeleton wizards, this meant that they could use their magic without restraint. Boom! And of course, the skeleton wizards wouldn't hesitate. In such a way, the skeleton army began to wipe out the black goblin tribe. The effect of ruler of the battlefield has been stacked to the maximum. Now, even if they were to kill more black goblins, the effect of ruler of the battlefield would not stack. This was surprising when considering the fact that the effect of the ruler of the battlefield skill, which was C rank due to the plus ring, could be stacked 30 times. Of course, the most surprising thing was actually the fact that such an army could even be maintained in the first place. Merlin's staff is truly amazing. Merlin's staff deserved the reputation it was given. No wonder Park Shinhai used it for so long. Even Kim Woo Jin was unable to hide his surprise and appreciation at the Merlin staff's power. On the other hand, this level of military power was the limit of what Kim Woo Jin could maintain at his current level. It's difficult to even summon a golem. This was proven by the fact that Kim Woo Jin hadn't summoned a single golem since entering the dungeon. It would be hard to recover from a loss in power. At the same time, summoning replacement skeleton soldiers was similarly hard in his current state. I can't even dream of using skills. And it was even more impossible to use a skill that would consume his magic power. Of course, if other players heard his thoughts they would curse him endlessly. It didn't make sense that that was one of his worries. I'll have to fix that. However, from Kim Woo Jin's perspective, it was a problem that he had to fix. By the time I leave this dungeon, Lee Se Jun would have challenged the seventh floor dungeon and cleared it easily. Because his prey was moving forward faster than anyone else. Before that, I need to become much stronger. So in Kim Woo Jin's eyes, he had no reason to be satisfied. Instead, he focused his eyes on the battlefield. The only way to achieve what he wanted was to level up. Sheba. This will was also displayed by none other than Li Jina. Li Jina, who had received a signal from Kim Wu Jin, rushed forward to help end the battle with the Black Goblin tribe faster. There was nothing that could stop Li Jina, who ran toward the Black Goblin chief like a tank and smashed their head with the Heavenly Dragon Sword. Key. Confusion swept through the Black Goblins, who had just lost their leader, and the skeleton army took advantage of this to push them back. Soon, the battle ended. A Black Goblin tribe has been destroyed. Number of tribes remaining, two. A notification came just as the battle ended. Your level has increased. Then he heard another notification announcing his level up. Reached level 100. Obtained achievement reach level 100 foot. Inventory spaces increased by 10. It was the moment that Kim Woo Jin had finally reached level 100 and stepped into the realm of three digits. The emissary of the underworld admires your majesty, TL, not the title. His halo also did not spare its favoritism at such a monumental moment. The emissary of the underworld has bestowed great power onto you. The rank of the ruler of the battlefield skill has increased by one. The gift they sent was quite satisfying from Kim Woo Jin's perspective. Moreover, the gift didn't end there. The rank of the skeleton knight skill has increased by one. The rank of the skeleton wizard skill has increased by one. How fortunate. Kim Woo Jin smiled at the obvious display of favoritism. What is it? Did you level up? Did you reach level 100? Meanwhile, Li Jin Ah, who noticed his expressions, came over and asked. Kim Woo Jin nodded. So you received a gift. What did you get? It was at that moment. The emissary of the underworld has sent you a special gift. You have received a catalog. The moment Li Jin Ah asked that question, he received the notification of his last gift. Catalog. When he received the notification, Kim Woo Jin opened it without hesitation and his gift appeared above his hand. Fuck, 
now I'm wondering if I need to change my halo. It was a catalog made of obsidian. The moment Isaac Ivanov wiped out the eighth black goblin tribe, a man, who was observing the battle with a skill, spoke to the woman beside him. I've confirmed it with this battle the maximum number of summonable knights is three, maximum number of wizards is three and the maximum number of soldiers is 101. TL, what a bad time to finalize their numbers. After hearing the report, the woman could not hide her shock. His power is ridiculous. They were none other than the ones the sword saint had sent to take note of Isaac Ivanov's power. Unsurprisingly, they had followed Isaac Ivanov from the first floor, monitoring his every move. More than a dozen of reports had been made in this way. I've never written so many reports for just one person. It was also evidence that Isaac Ivanov's profile was so extensive that it required them to write over a dozen reports. The analysis of Isaac Ivanov ends here now we're ready to return. This meant that the observers had successfully finished judging Isaac Ivanov's current power TL, or so they think. Retreat make sure to erase our traces. Yes, sir. Chapter, 176. There was something like this. The assumed probability of a successful dungeon clear could be gauged by looking at the number of reporters waiting outside the dungeon gate. Based on that, if we were to calculate the probability of a successful clear of the four-floor dungeon, Black Goblin tribes, that had appeared in Tokyo, Japan, without hesitation, it would be 99%. Looks like there are more reporters than yesterday. That's only because it's the 20th day now there will probably be even more tomorrow. There were so many reporters gathered in front of the dungeon that they formed a long line. This is because of Isaac Ivanov. And of course, it was Isaac Ivanov's name that made it possible. After all, it would be strange if people weren't very interested in the world's new hero. Well, it's not only because he's here, but it's also because this is his comeback. Moreover, Isaac Ivanov's attack this time was his comeback. It is certainly his comeback. It's like he returned from the brink of death. And it wasn't an ordinary comeback. It was the return of someone who had experienced a near-death experience during their previous attack. That's right because usually, they'd just give up. Well, it's not strange to give up after something like that. Despite receiving applause and suggestions to retire, Isaac Ivanov once again set out to clear a dungeon. It was even said that this dungeon is the test to give them the free pass they requested after the attack on Kim Woo-jin. That means he still wants to clear dungeons. In the end, Isaac Ivanov proved that he was not just after fame, and that he sincerely wanted to clear dungeons. Isaac is definitely different. He's a real player. Even daily gossip journalists who were used to writing untrue news reports, could not help but acknowledge Isaac Ivanov. He's not just Lee Sejun's successor. No way, the value of Isaac Ivanov's name is already becoming compared to the Messiah Guild. Furthermore, Isaac Ivanov was beginning to be treated in the same way as the Messiah Guild. Of course, no one actually considered Isaac Ivanov's value to be more than, or even equal to the Messiah Guild. However, it was clear that Isaac Ivanov was already on a level above the rest. I'm really curious about Isaac Ivanov's next move. And now, everyone's attention was on Isaac Ivanov's next actions. It was at that moment. It's a player. The dungeon has been cleared. Isaac Ivanov appeared before these reporters. Isaac Ivanov's return and debut in four-floor dungeons couldn't be more perfect than this. Isaac Ivanov finally debuts in four-floor dungeons. Japanese players admit that Isaac Ivanov is on a completely different level. Isaac Ivanov has gotten stronger. The world praised his return. The Japanese government qualifies Isaac Ivanov for the free pass. Isaac Ivanov can now attack any dungeon in Japan. Naturally, the Japanese government also had no choice but to issue the dungeon free pass to Isaac Ivanov. The world's first free pass. He's done what even the Messiah Guild couldn't do. It was a historic moment when an achievement that even the Messiah Guild had been unable to accomplish had been completed. The news was so sensational that it even suppressed the news of the Messiah Guild postponing their attack on a seven-floor dungeon. Even the Messiah Guild was surprised by this turn of events. As expected. However, from Kim Woo-jin's perspective, this is exactly what he wanted to happen. 
now I'm qualified to play in the game. It was only at that point that Kim Woo Jin had finally obtained the minimum qualification to play at the table where the true movers and shakers of the world, like the Messiah Guild, sat. Of course, the difference between them was still quite large. Also, the risk was comparatively high. Gamblers might not care what onlookers did, but gamblers at a table paid attention to each other's every action, even a cough. For now, all I need to do is attack dungeons. So he laid down his plans even more steadily. He intended to lay the groundwork to raise the stakes amidst the checks won, going on around him. Collect items, earn qualifications, and gather teammates to make Isaac Ivanov's party more solid. The only left would be to use that party to clear dungeons. The situation has changed. Or at least that was what he had intended to do. But now Kim Woo Jin felt that he would have to revise his plans. There were two reasons for this. Ruler of the battlefield. Rank, EX. Effect, whenever a summon gets a kill, it will receive a kill point and become stronger the summon with the most kills becomes the incarnation of the battlefield. All stats 10% per kill, stacks up to 50 times. The incarnation of the battlefield burns with fiery will, further doubling all stats. One was the ruler of the battlefield skill which had become his new transcendent rank skill. The moment a skill reached the transcendent rank, he knew that its power had entered an entirely new dimension. However, in the case of the ruler of the battlefield skill, its merit became even more pronounced. Double. Further double. This meant that it wasn't just becoming two times stronger, but receiving an additional twofold increase. This meant that if all of the effects of ruler of the battlefield were stacked, it would become twelve times stronger. If a skeleton knight were to receive the effect they might become stronger than me. Above all, there was one thing that surprised Kim Woo Jin greatly. If this effect was applied to a death knight. Death knight. What would happen if such a monster that was already horrific in its normal state, gained the effect of incarnation of the battlefield? TL, plus Berserker plus that golden buff that I forgot the name of. It was a horrible thing to imagine. Moreover, this was not the only thing Kim Wu Jin gained this time. Pharaoh's Treasure. Rank, none. Effect, magic power is strengthened by the number of legendary items in your possession. A newly acquired legendary skill, Pharaoh's Treasure TL, they say legendary here, but not in the skill window, oddly enough. Just like a pharaoh's power depended on the number of items buried in his grave, it was a skill that strengthened the user's magic power based on how many legendary items they were in possession of. Possessing means what you're wearing and what's stored in your inventory. However, the thing, in Kim Woo Jin's opinion, that truly made the skill powerful was that it did not only consider equipped items. Items worn by my skeletons are also counted. The fact that the items worn by Kim Woo Jin's skeletons would also be counted, meant that Kim Woo Jin could enjoy the skill's effects without limit. These were the two reasons. I became much stronger than I expected. His power had grown more than he anticipated. This wasn't bragging or narcissism either. Kim Woo Jin had never been a person who tolerated such feelings. If it's this much then I can clear for floor dungeons with just Isaac Ivanov and Lee Jin Ah without having to add Kim Woo Jin. What Kim Woo Jin was paying attention to, was the fact that he would be able to handle four floor dungeons without needing the card called Kim Woo Jin. This was in fact very important. When winning a gamble, it wasn't always necessary to win with strong cards. If you could save a card, then it would be smart to save it. Then you could use the card you saved in another situation. While his thoughts ran wild, Kim Woo Jin finished revising his plan. He immediately picked up his phone. What's up? He'd called Oh Se Chan. I have a request, is that alright? You don't want to borrow money, do you? Not that. Then anything is possible so what do you need? I'll have to kill him again. Huh? Who? Li Jin Ah. Ah. I thought you'd say something like that did you do something stupid again? There were two reasons why the Messiah Guild received special treatment. One was that they were recognized as the saviors who would save the world. The other was that they were always the first to attack high-ranked dungeons. In fact, the latter reason was the true reason why the Messiah Guild received special treatment. 
There were many who claimed to be saviors, but only the Messiah Guild consistently showed true results. On February 21, 2024, the Messiah Guild once again tried to prove that fact. The Messiah Guild begins an attack on a seven-floor dungeon. Lee Sejun is saving the world once again. The Messiah Guild's team, led by Lee Sejun, started the first ever attack on a seven-floor dungeon. Everyone in the world was paying attention to this moment. And those who were in control of the world began to feel a bit nervous. What if the Messiah Guild actually succeeds in the seven-floor dungeon? Their influence will increase again. That was because the ripple effect that would be caused by the Messiah Guild's attack was inevitable. However, the opposite was equally as bad. But what if they fail? What if the Messiah Guild failed to clear the seven-floor dungeon? No one knew what would happen then. It would be extremely chaotic. However, it was clear that it would cause unspeakable chaos and confusion, which was why all the leaders of the world focused on the result of this seven-floor dungeon. Is that the end of your report? Yes, sir. However, the Sword Saint was different. While everyone was paying attention to the Messiah Guild, he was only paying attention to one person. Isaac Ivanov this guy is pretty amazing. All of his attention was focused on Isaac Ivanov. Of course, it was not because he actually thought he was amazing in fact, the sword saint had never looked at him in a positive way. So, do you think you can kill him? If one was to use an analogy, it was the same gaze that one would give to a cockroach that you felt deserved to die. Miyazaki Sakura answered his question calmly. I don't think it would be easy. It wasn't the answer he wanted, but the sword saint didn't blame her. He could see it for himself. The report on Isaac Ivanov had been surprising honestly, the sword saint had never expected Isaac Ivanov to be that strong. Therefore the sword saint asked one more question. Do you think it would be possible with the sealed dungeon? The sealed dungeon. It was an A-rank four-floor dungeon located near Mount Fuji that had appeared in 2021. It had been attempted eleven times before, and failed every time. That dungeon should be enough to deal with Isaac Ivanov after all, even Master gave up at that time. And the Sword Saint was among them. The Sword Saint, called Japan's Messiah, had personally led a team to attack the dungeon. Furthermore, he had even stood in front of the dungeon gate. However, he didn't attack it in the end. There was only one reason. He wasn't confident he could clear it. That was because it wasn't a simple A-rank dungeon. Like the skilled players in the Messiah Guild, the Sword Saint usually only searched for a series dungeons. Nevertheless, the reason he'd given up was because of the dungeon's title. I'm sure even Isaac Ivanov can't handle a hellhound. Hellhound. To face one of the worst monsters that could be found in a four-floor dungeon in an A-rank dungeon was something that even the Sword Saint was not confident he could do. And of course, Miyazaki Sakura did not think that Isaac Ivanov was so amazing that he could surpass even the Sword Saint. The problem is Isaac Ivanov's teammates. But when his teammates were also added then the story would change. Among them, Kim Woojin's existence is probably the trickiest. Miyazaki Sakura closed her eyes as she said these words. It was as she'd said. No matter how powerful Isaac Ivanov was, it was impossible to clear a dungeon alone. It didn't matter even if the number of players increased after all, the success of a dungeon attack wasn't dependent on the number of players. Quality was definitely better than quantity, especially when dealing with boss monsters like the Hellhound. And in that regard, Kim Woojin's value was quite high. Moreover, the Blood Golem skill is now in Kim Woojin's hands if you add Kim Woojin's power to Isaac Ivanov's then it's hard to determine the result. And it was actually none other than the Yamato Federation who gave Kim Woojin such a weapon. Ah, uh, one moment please. Suddenly, Miyazaki Sakura stopped speaking and focused her attention on what she was hearing from an earphone in her ear. Her expression changed. Master, we have a problem. What is it? That it seems Kim Woojin died. TL, whoa. In truth, the sword saint was not surprised by these words instead, he spoke in a cold, subdued tone. If that's true, then I'll have to speak to Isaac Ivanov personally. Chapter, 177. In an era where the world had been transformed into a game, 
players were given elevated status simply because they were players. Unsurprisingly, countless normal people were dissatisfied with this fact and constantly criticized the players for being treated beyond their actual ability. The public's opinion toward players only got worse as time passed. Nevertheless, the treatment the players received continued to improve, with no signs of worsening. The reason was simple. Kim Woo Jin of the Phoenix Guild has died. And whenever they heard the news of a player's death, the public had no choice but to admit it. Wasn't Kim Woo Jin okay? News kept coming saying that he was in a bad condition. But isn't this too sudden? Players are like that they all just die suddenly. He wouldn't have died if he wasn't Isaac Ivanov's teammate. He was a great player. While it wasn't true for all players, people still had to admit to the fact that the players risked their lives to clear dungeons and therefore deserved the treatment. So people paid tribute to the hero's death. Of course, not everyone celebrated. What about Park Yong Wan? Some began calculating the profits or loss caused by the death. It is said that Park Yong Wan is currently in a six floor dungeon, but even then his side is quieter than usual. It seems Park Yong Wan basically concealed Kim Woo Jin's presence within the Phoenix Guild. Even Park Yong Wan's people are unable to move because they are unsure of what to do. Oh Se Chan was, of course, the latter. Because Park Yong Wan is a greedy guy, he absolutely can't tolerate one of his trump cards getting burned. I would love to see Park Yong Wan's face when he hears the news after leaving the dungeon. No, in the first place, it could only be the latter. And I wonder how he'd feel after if he found out that Kim Woo Jin was actually still alive. After all, it was Oh Se Chan himself who killed Kim Woo Jin. I'm really curious as to how much he will pay for Kim Woo Jin's funeral. There's no way that Park Yong Wan would just pay 30,001 for some Yucca Jang one, right? Well, are you planning to hold a funeral too? Naturally, it was a joke. Are you sure it'll be a real funeral? Ha! Huh. What's with that look? Wouldn't it be holding three funerals for one person? It wasn't just about the killing, but also a way to profit from it. It would be strange if Oh Se Chan didn't try to do so. No, what do you think, I am a, that just forget about it? How are things on the Sword Saint's side? There haven't been any movements, but boss, was this how it was supposed to be? At that time, the subordinate couldn't help but ask Oh Se Chan how it was supposed to be. Wasn't the one who was supposed to be killed by the Sword Saints people Isaac Ivanov instead of Kim Woo Jin? It was a valid question. As they said, it was the Bao God's desire to get rid of Kim Woo Jin, and the Sword Saint was acting in his absence. That was it. Wouldn't it be big news if they tried to kill Kim Woo Jin but ended up killing Isaac Ivanov instead? They tried to kill Kim Woo Jin but Isaac Ivanov got in the way, although Isaac Ivanov wasn't the target. Moreover, the death of Kim Woo Jin might cause some problems, but Japan just finished handing out the compensation didn't they? What's more, Kim Woo Jin's death would not cause any significant losses to Japan or the Yamato Federation. They had already given humane compensation for the previous terrorist incident, and Isaac Ivanov had received it on behalf of Kim Woo Jin. In such a situation, they could no longer ask Japan for anything, and even if they did, there was no guarantee that Japan would respond. Is it possible for Park Yong Wan's side to do something? Additionally, since Kim Woo Jin's biggest and most powerful sponsor, Park Yong Wan, was not there to do anything, the probability was near zero. While his subordinate was talking, Oh Se Chan nodded. Right, that's it. Ha! Huh. The subordinate tilted his head at Oh Se Chan's words. That was because he hadn't expected Oh Se Chan to give an affirmation so easily. Oh Se Chan continued. Like you said, from the perspective of the Sword Saint or the Bao God, there's no reason to target Isaac Ivanov, so what will the Sword Saint side do? Would he go to Izakaya and get sake with some skewers? A smile stretched across Oh Se Chan's face. Or would he meet with Isaac Ivanov to improve relations after the obstacle, Kim Woo Jin, had been removed? Ah. When asked that question, the subordinate no longer looked confused, instead, they shot Oh Se Chan a look of understanding. Oh Se Chan's smile deepened at the gaze. No matter how you look at it, the Sword Saint is definitely wealthier than Park Yong Wan. It was a smile that was happier than ever. Did Kim Woo Jin kill himself? 
Kim Woo Jin's death is Japan's responsibility. After his death, many people were angered, and they blamed Japan for Kim Woo Jin's demise. Of course, Japan's reaction to the public's opinion was to be expected. Japan, this was only an unforeseen accident. Japan, we already gave our humanitarian compensation to Kim Woo Jin. The Japanese government held that it was an unfortunate accident that the government couldn't take responsibility for, and that they had already given the requested compensation. Those damn bastards. Those bastards should get hit with a nuclear missile does it make sense that it's not their responsibility when their players attack foreign players? This caused the public opinion to explode, especially the anti-Japanese sentiment of the Korean populace. Naturally, the public opinion only continued to worsen. The Sword Saint made his move when this opinion reached its peak. The Sword Saint offers to meet Isaac Ivanov. The Sword Saint wants to offer compensation for the death of Kim Woo Jin. Rumors began circulating that the Sword Saint was going to personally compensate them on behalf of the Japanese government. This makes it impossible to refuse the meeting. This tactic caused Isaac Ivanov to be unable to refuse the meeting with the Sword Saint. After all, the meeting wasn't for him but in the name of his colleague who died because of him, Kim Woo Jin. If he refused to attend, it would be like him giving up his free pass qualification, which he obtained at that very teammate's expense. Are you really going to meet the Sword Saint? Kim Woo Jin was surprised by the enthusiasm Lee Jina was currently displaying. Are you interested in meeting the Sword Saint? Of course I am. Lee Jina answered immediately, his excitement was palpable. It's the Sword Saint. Japan's strongest player. Kim was a little shocked by his reaction. After all, it was the first time he'd seen Lee Jina react in this way because of another player. Moreover, Lee Jina's actions weren't because of anger or frustration. Rather it was clear that he held the Sword Saint in high regard. Is the Sword Saint his role model? Just from looking at his reaction, it was clear that the Sword Saint was someone that Li Jina respected greatly. When Kim Woo Jin made a gesture for him to continue talking, Li Jina immediately spoke with excitement covering his face. Isn't it normal to act in such a way when you're going to meet one of the most exceptional human beings? I see. Are you going to meet at a fancy restaurant? TL, shouldn't have expected anything less from Li Jina. That's also a possibility. Then make sure to bring back delicious food. At those words, Kim Woo Jin turned his cold eyes to Li Jina. From his face, Kim Woo Jin knew that Li Jina was not joking, and was instead actually filled with anticipation. There's no need for me to do that since you'll be coming with me. Me too. Because you are in the position that suffers the most damage naturally, it's important for you to also meet the Sword Saint. When he heard that, Li Jina lifted his arms and shouted. Wow! I'm finally going to be treated to an expensive Japanese meal. Kim Woo Jin smiled slightly. You seem happy. Naturally. Do you know how hungry I was when I saw you eating alone the other day? At that time I had to eat convenience store food and even after that I was starving. If Oh Se Chan heard this, he would definitely have had something to say, but Kim Woo Jin didn't pay attention to it. I'm glad you're excited about it. It was then. Woo Woo. Kim Woo Jin's feature phone vibrated, and after a short conversation, he spoke again. The venue has been decided. Where are we going? It's the best sushi restaurant in Japan. Our dash, really? Li Jina covered his mouth with both hands as if he was truly excited. I'm so happy I think I'll get dizzy. Kim Woo Jin then spoke to him. Then you definitely want to go to the meeting. I'd be an idiot if I said no. Even if you chop off both my legs, I'd find a way to attend. Kim Woo Jin nodded, satisfied by Lee Jina's burning will. All right, then I'll explain the plan to you now. Yeah, tell me what the plan is. I'll do anything. The plan is. Kim Woo Jin slowly explained the plan to Lee Jina, who was more excited than ever. Chapter 178 the best sushi restaurant in Japan had a price of 50 00 yen per person for a normal meal and at least 100 00 for an expensive one. Nevertheless, this place where reservations were always filled and one had to make one at least half a year in advance, was now completely silent. 
It wasn't closed. Instead, there were three guests sitting in a private room, and the owner of the restaurant, called a craftsman, was making sushi with all his heart in the kitchen. This proved that these three people had booked the entire venue. It's an honor to finally meet you. It was also evidence that the influence of the sword saint, who had chosen this place, exceeded common sense. Miyazaki Sakura Miyazaki Sakura, who came to meet them on behalf of the sword saint, greeted him in English while looking at the front. Isaac Ivanov Isaac Ivanov and his teammate were the other two. I'm sorry about the incident with Kim Woojin. Miyazaki Sakura then bowed toward them, and Kim Woojin, who was dressed as Isaac Ivanov, simply nodded. I'm truly sorry for your loss. After her repeated consolation, Kim Woojin finally spoke. It is a big loss but bigger than that is the fact that someone, who no one else can replace, is now gone. His poison was indeed special. And that means we will need to make big changes to our future plans. Miyazaki Sakura narrowed her eyes a bit at Kim Woojin who kept talking without caring about cutting off her words. What are your future plans? She directly asked this question without trying to mask it. It has always been my goal to clear dungeons that no one else has been able to. It was a pretty stereotypical goal that one could hear from any hot-blooded male. However, the words seemed to carry more weight when they were said by Isaac Ivanov. He's insane. Miyazaki Sakura was also able to catch a glimpse of madness that could not be easily interpreted, from Isaac Ivanov. Faced with that madness, she said. How fortunate I think this meeting was truly worthwhile. Worthwhile. Isaac Ivanov, we would like to help you achieve that goal. When he heard the proposal, Kim Woojin asked. Like Park Yongwon. Miyazaki Sakura laughed at the question. Park Yongwon is the Phoenix Guild's greatest player but he still cannot hope to compare to the Sword Saint. It was a straightforward statement. In normal situations, such straightforwardness might be considered offensive, or lead to problems. But at that moment, Miyazaki Sakura was sure. Isaac Ivanov is the type who is only interested in attacking dungeons I'm sure he will choose whatever is most advantageous to clear a dungeon. She knew that against types like Isaac Ivanov, this kind of straightforwardness was the best strategy. Pardon my intrusion. Then the door opened and the food was brought out. A huge amount of sushi was artfully lined on a large platter. It was a sight that was almost impossible to see in such an upscale sushi restaurant which served more for the taste. Of course, it wasn't because the chef decided to make so much sushi on their own. You said your teammate is a big eater, so I ordered a lot. It was only made after forcing the sushi chef to put aside his pride in an effort to fill a large stomach. It was a result that could never be bought with money. I can proudly say that this is the best sushi that you would ever taste in this world. As the meal was brought to the table, Miyazaki Sakura proudly began to introduce the dishes. It's not something that Korea could ever hope to compare to. It was at that moment. Bang! Lee Jin Ah, who was beside Kim Woo Jin, struck the sushi platter with his fist TL, I bet he was crying inside as he did that. The sushi as well as the table were shattered. At the same time, Lee Jin Ah shouted loudly to Kim Woo Jin in Russian. Ivanov. Wu Jin didn't die for this. If this is what you want to do, I'd rather go to the Messiah Guild. After saying that, Li Jina walked out of the wrecked room. Miyazaki Sakura's expression froze a bit. On the other side, Kim Woojin spoke. He feels that Kim Woojin's death was his fault at the same time, he still has some hostility towards Japan that's why I can't accept your offer. As he said those words, Kim Woojin stood up. I apologize for the inconvenience. A sound came from the earphone in Miyazaki Sakura's ear as he bowed his head slightly and left the room. I heard everything. It was the voice of the sword saint who had been listening to the conversation through eavesdropping equipment. Yes. I think it's better to recruit the teammate first and then Isaac Ivanov. Is it possible? We'll have to figure it out but do you really want to recruit them? What do you think? Miyazaki Sakura answered this question without hesitation. There are people who are willing to attack dungeons that no one managed to clear before I think their utility value is endless that must be why a person like Park Yongwon was willing to invest so much in them. 
There was a moment of silence. What do you need? After the silence, the sword saint's voice was heard once again. I think I'll need at least a legendary item to win them over however. They are already among the best when it comes to items it is believed that they have at least four legendary items their armor is made from hatchling leather the only thing that we could use to negotiate with them is. Is the Nemean lion's leather, that's what you want to say, right? After a moment of hesitation, Miyazaki Sakura replied. The conditions are too expensive to consider. It was impossible. With that statement, the conversation with the sword saint ended. After the conversation, Miyazaki Sakura also came back to her senses the messy scene appeared in her eyes once again. If it's left as it is, Isaac Ivanov and his party will become hostile toward Japan and if he continues growing at this rate it will surely become a headache. As she looked at the messy floor, one thought remained in her head. We have to get them to join us somehow or kill them now, while we still can. An abandoned house outside of Tokyo. Virum. A small light car drove into the garage of this abandoned house with a small hum. After a while, the humming of the car stopped. Fuck. And a curse sounded out instead. The voice behind the curse was none other than Li Jino. Fuck. Now disguised as a third person, he stepped out of the car and walked into the abandoned house, unable to hold back his anger. Kim Woo Jin, who was dressed as a middle-aged man, couldn't help but laugh at his appearance. It's pretty unfortunate that you didn't get to eat any sushi. Li Jina's expression crumpled when he heard that. What do you think I am? Do you think I am someone who just gets made because of something like sushi? Aren't you? At Kim Woo Jin's question, Li Jina crumpled even more. No, I'm not it's not just that. Kim Woo Jin nodded at that. Even if it was planned, it wasn't a pleasant situation. Of course, Li Jina's angry outburst was planned in advance. However, even though he was just supposed to be acting, Li Jina was in a situation where he really became upset. Wasn't it still a situation where he was cozying up to the ones who tried to kill him before? It would be strange if he hadn't been upset. I understand. Because of that, Kim Wu Jin was able to understand Li Jina's words. You see. Isn't it too bad that we didn't even have appetizers? Damn it, the tofu they served as an appetizer looked really good. When he heard that, Kim Woo Jin finally shot a ridiculous gaze at Li Jina. However, Li Jina, who was completely unaware of this, spoke with a calmer expression. Everything went according to play, but will they still try to get us? Don't you think their pride will stop them? This is the sword saint and his people after all. At Li Jina's question, Kim Woo Jin explained briefly. If it was just the sword saint, then it would be impossible. Inside the abandoned house, there was some food and communication equipment. Kim Woo Jin stood in front of a radio after checking the time. There are four minutes left. As he thought this, Kim Woo Jin threw a bag of bread and what appeared to be disaster relief food at Li Jina. But the story is different because of the Miyazaki Sakura that we met today. Do you know each other? Was all of that an act? We were in a dungeon together, but the situation that time was different. Miyazaki Sakura Naturally, Kim Woo Jin, who killed the sword saint, had fought with Miyazaki Sakura. And since he might have had to fight her, Kim Woo Jin made sure to get detailed information. Thanks to this, Kim Woo Jin knew the woman named Miyazaki Sakura. Because her role is to clean up the area to ensure that the Sword Saint's actions are uninhibited. She was basically the Sword Saint's janitor. A very good janitor who moved to clean up an area before the Sword Saint could even point it out. So she'll clean us up. Won't she just cut us off? She can't do that. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin could already estimate the moves that Miyazaki Sakura would make. If the Sword Saint's side decides to not take us in, then there's only one other place we would go. Park Yon Wan. That's right. If Japan was to let Isaac Ivanov slip through their fingers at this point, the next person that Isaac Ivanov would partner with was without a doubt, Park Yon Wan. Kim Woo Jin had died, but that didn't mean that Park Yon Wan's reason for supporting Isaac Ivanov had disappeared. Instead, since Kim Woo Jin was no longer in the picture, it was highly likely that Park Yon Wan would support him even more. 
It's obvious how Park Yong-wan, who lost a good card like Kim Woo-jin, would view Japan. Moreover, it was a foregone conclusion that Park Yong-wan would hold very high hostility to Japan for Kim Woo-jin's death. To be precise, it would be hostility toward a group trying to lay their hands on his interests. Wasn't Isaac Ivanov one of Park Yong-wan's greatest cards? So what would happen when he already didn't have good feelings toward Japan? There's no way the janitor would leave a situation that would only become worse if it was left alone. From Miyazaki Sakura's perspective, she could not leave this situation to progress as it was. And if the situation goes south, she will be the one who will get blamed and take responsibility the sword saint would not have to bear any responsibility. Then what will she do? Will she call us to the restaurant for sushi again? Kim Woo Jin didn't answer Lee Jina who was practically brimming with anticipation, instead, he simply checked his watch and spoke while looking at the radio. It's one of two things. Two things. Either they'll try to win you over or they'll offer me a card that's even more attractive than you. What? Kim Woo Jin put his index finger to his lips before picking up the radio in front of him. Immediately after. Oh Sei Chan, find a bar for me a good place for a big guy who likes to drink and don't forget to pass it on to the Sword Saint's side. Chapter 179. In a tatami room one, filled with the deep fragrance of tea, the sword saint was calmly cleaning a katana. This was the sword saint's only hobby. Master. And it was Miyazaki Sakura who interrupted him as he did this. As she entered the room, she called out to the sword saint. Either we grasp it in our hands or handle it before it gets into someone else it can only be one of these options. As she said this, the sword saint's expression was even sharper than the blade in his hands. What do you think? It would be good if we can hold it in our hands. So what do you need? The Nemean lion's leather. As she said this, the sword saint stared at her. The Nemean lion's leather was not something that could be given out easily, so when she had asked the first time, he told her it was impossible. But Miyazaki Sakura had once again requested it. Had it been anyone else, the sword saint would not have tolerated it the first time. You've never pressed for something so much. However, the one standing in front of him was the disciple who had never let the sword saint down. Tell me what you're planning. Miyazaki Sakura nodded and said. We don't actually need to give them the item per se we can give them a player to use the item. The sword saint gestured with his chin for her to continue. It's the same method that Park yong won used just like he strengthened his relationship with Isaac Ivanov by making Kim Woo-jin his teammate, we can also do the same Isaac Ivanov would also take it as increasing his own power. It was a reasonable offer rather than giving the item to him directly. What if Isaac Ivanov's teammate refuses? The problem was that it wasn't Isaac Ivanov who was against the possibility of partnership, but his teammate. After all, wasn't it Isaac Ivanov's teammate who ruined their previous meeting? Would he be able to accept a new teammate from the Sword Saint's side? There's a high chance that Hell refuse. Of course, there was almost no doubt about that. So we should use this opportunity to get rid of him. Get rid of him. That's why Miyazaki Sakura made a new plan. I'll show Isaac Ivanov that there are better talents out there than his teammate. To change Isaac Ivanov's team. Those words made the Sword Saint's eyes narrow. Is it possible? Recently, it has been confirmed that Isaac Ivanov's teammate has been frequenting a new bar it seems their relationship isn't as close as it used to be. The Sword Saint's narrowed eyes became cold when she said that. Was that all? When she saw this, Miyazaki Sakura hurried to explain. First of all, I clearly saw the madness in Isaac Ivanov's eyes he would do whatever it took to attack dungeons. Only then did the Sword Saint close his narrowed eyes. What do you need? Give the Nemean lion's leather to the three Ishikawa siblings they would be much better than Isaac Ivanov's current teammate. How would you show that? Make Isaac Ivanov challenge the Hellhound dungeon with the Ishikawa siblings together, their chances of clearing it are incredibly high after that, Isaac Ivanov would surely want the Ishikawa siblings to become his teammates. And what will Isaac Ivanov's teammate do? Miyazaki Sakura laughed at that question. If he has his own pride then he will leave on his own and if he doesn't have pride then we can simply force him out. The sword saint didn't ask any more questions. This was a sign of approval. 
just as expected. Oh Se-chan, who was looking at a monitor, immediately called out to one of his subordinates. Do you know the three Ishikawa siblings? When asked this question, the subordinate nodded as though it was natural. Of course I know aren't they one of the hottest groups of talents in four-floor dungeons in Japan currently? The three Ishikawa siblings. They consisted of twin brothers and a younger sister, as one could tell from their name, and they were among the most famous players active in four-floor dungeons in Japan. There were many reasons for their fame. Since they were players under the Sword Saint, they received active support from the Japanese media as well as support on a national level, so it would be strange if they weren't well known. Their skill as tanks are top-notch. However, the biggest reason for their fame was the fact that all three siblings were capable of taking on the role of tank to face monsters. And there were no shortcomings in their ability. There's even a saying that whenever an A-rank dungeon appears, three spots are always reserved for the three siblings. This was evidenced by the fact that they had already successfully cleared 9A rank or higher dungeons. It seems the Sword Saint side is trying to attach the three Ishikawa siblings to Isaac Ivanov. The Sword Saint's people had offered to have this celebrity group support Isaac Ivanov. Huh. But doesn't he have Li Jina? They want to give him a better tank than Li Jina. Is there a reason for that? Because they are reluctant to just hand the item over they'd rather give someone the item instead after all, if they just give the item then that's it, but if they manage to attach their people, then the relationship could continue. It wasn't difficult to grasp the Sword Saint's intentions. That's why Oh Seichan burst out laughing. They're really looking down on Jina. The reason why the Sword Saint's people, who had definitely investigated Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina, were able to make such a decision was because they were confident that they could replace Lee Jina. In other words, it meant that they were sure the three Ishikawa siblings were better than Lee Jina. Anyway, the scenario will probably go like this the Sword Saint seems to have an undisclosed A-rank dungeon they will ask Isaac Ivanov to attack this dungeon, and attach a helper while they're at it. And that helper will be the three Ishikawa siblings. But do you know what's needed to attack an A-dungeon? Verification is necessary to attack dungeons above B-rank. Right, they need to be verified. The risk of failure was so great that even if the players were asked to attack, they still needed to verify through a B rank or higher dungeon that they were qualified to attack. Of course, this was only the case for publicly disclosed dungeons. There was no need to do so for a dungeon that had been hidden away. The Sword Saint side would reveal one of their hidden cards. Well, the odds of Isaac Ivanov failing to verify are practically zero he would naturally attack the A rank dungeon and the moment they clear the dungeon, the Japanese media would wrap it up like this. Naturally, there was a reason to reveal this card. Isaac Ivanov and the three Ishikawa siblings saved the world. Through that card, they would paint the image that Isaac Ivanov and the three Ishikawa siblings were now teammates. So will you accept it? That's not for me to decide. Only then did Oh Se-chan explain his reason for calling his subordinate. I want you to summarize everything I just told you and tell it to Kim Woo Jin. Chapter 180 this is the conversation we had with the Sword Saints team they would like us to clear an A-rank dungeon, and they said that they would send three talented players to assist us naturally, I accepted their offer. After saying this, Kim Woo Jin raised his head to look at Lee Jina and found that his entire body was shaking. Kim Woo Jin smiled at this scene. He must be angry. It must have been the first time that Lee Jina was disregarded to such an extent. With his personality, was it even possible for him to be calm after something like this? Ku. Eventually, as though he could no longer control his anger, a harsh sound popped out of Li Jina's mouth. Then he shouted. I'll finally be free. Kim Wu Jin tilted his head slightly when he heard that. However, immersed in his excitement, Li Jina got up from his seat and began doing a slight dance. Ha ha ha. Finally, there are bastards coming to take my place. Kim Woo Jin's gaze turned cold. What's that supposed to mean? However, instead of flinching at his harsh gaze like usual, Li Jina instead gave him a dazzling smile. Aren't you saying that the Sword Saint is sending a team to replace me? I'll finally be able to escape this hellish time. As he said this, Li Jina looked up at the sky. 
It was worth it to pray to God for salvation from this hell every day before I ate I prayed over ten times a day so he had no choice but to listen. When he saw this, Kim Woo-jin pressed his hand to his temple for the first time. Only then did Kim Woo-jin remember. Right, this is the immortal, Lee Jina. The person in front of him had been the only person who'd managed to survive him when he was a hunting dog. He was a true monster. Of course, Kim Woo-jin had no intention of letting Lee Jina continue his little shoulder dance. Their plan is like this they will surely provoke you since they believe that our relationship is currently getting worse then they will make you respond with something like the losing side has to leave Isaac Ivanov's team this condition. Li Jina interrupted without stopping his dance. Do you hate it? When he said that, Kim Woo Jin's eyes went past the level of cold and instead seemed to shine blue. However, Li Jina still didn't back down. That I'm holding the reins now. There was no way Li Jina didn't understand the situation. How long did you think I'd let you beat me down? I, Li Jina, am a man who will not be satisfied until I have repaid you ten times for what you have done to me. As he'd said, Li Jina was the one holding the reins, the one who had to make the decision. Now, let's talk slowly while filling our stomachs order ten servings of sushi to be delivered of course, you will be paying with your own money ah, you know that I can't have sushi without having tuna belly, sea urchin and salmon roe, right? So make sure to order those. And this Li Jina was now arrogantly ordering Kim Woo Jin to buy food for him. After a moment, Kim Woo Jin nodded, his cold gaze fixed upon Li Jina's face. Fine. He accepted the request. Ha. Huh. Fine. Instead, it was Li Jina who was surprised by his acceptance. But I won't order delivery sushi, instead, I will personally go to a fancy sushi restaurant and bring the sushi to you directly. Kim Woo Jin continued to speak in the same flat tone. I will also pay for it with my own money. When he heard this, Li Jin Ah subconsciously stopped doing his jig. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't stop talking. I'll buy enough so that you can eat till you even sweat wasabi. His cold gaze shook Li Jin Ah's soul. So I hope you don't disappoint me. Only then did Li Jina realize. I'm fucked. Getting free food from a cheapskate like Kim Woo Jin was like making a deal with the devil. One of the peculiarities of Japanese politics was that they were very exclusive. To put it more bluntly, it was backwards, and because of how backwards it was, some groups appeared to have full control of the political scene. This fact only intensified following the world's transformation. The Japanese political scene became controlled by one group, the Yamato Federation. The supreme authority that the leader of the Yamato Federation, the Sword Saint, had, was in no way different to a dictatorship. The Sword Saint supports Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov challenges a rank dungeon with the support of the Sword Saint. The three Ishikawa siblings known as the Iron Wall, will become Isaac Ivanov's new teammates. It only took three days to create the stage he wanted. It was a great show of strength. After all, it was a stage created to publicize the targeting of none other than an A-rank four-floor dungeon. Money was one thing, but didn't it also mean that they had to gather hundreds of players at or above level 100 to participate? This was something that was impossible to accomplish in three days without utilizing the entire country's ability and influence. In other words, this was evidence that the Sword Saint could do as he pleased in the country of Japan. He's really influential. Kim Woo Jin, who was on the receiving end of this preferential treatment, couldn't help but be surprised. Furthermore, if Kim Woo Jin, who had an inkling of the Sword Saint's influence could be this surprised, what of those who had been given a mission by him? It must be terrifying to receive a mission like this. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that they were overwhelmed. Ishikawa Yohei. Nevertheless, there was not even a shake in the eyes of the eldest of the Ishikawa siblings, Yohei Ishikawa, despite his fear. Faced with a mission from the Sword Saint, which would be completely horrifying for others, he simply felt that it was an opportunity for them to show off. It was an expression that didn't quite suit his slightly dull appearance. Ishikawa Yohei. Kim Woo Jin briefly recalled something in his head while shaking hands with the Japanese tank. In Kim Woo Jin's mind, there was a lot of information about the three Ishikawa siblings. 
They were ambitious enough to team up with Johann George after the Sword Saint died instead of being weighed down by the Sword Saint's mission, he seems to be quite excited. This was because the three Ishikawa siblings had been subordinates of his greatest enemy, the King of Undead, Johann George. Thanks to that, he knew more about the Ishikawa siblings than probably anyone else in the world. After all, it's not like they're not skilled. In addition, Kim Woo Jin would be among the first to admit that they were very talented. This was evidenced by the fact that the King of Undead had been willing to work together with them. If they were not skilled enough, the King of Undead would not even care to use them as cannon fodder because it would be impossible for them to play an important role if they weren't skilled. Of course, their fate was the same as the rest of Kim Woo Jin's enemies. No one could survive the hunting dog's pursuit. I look forward to our cooperation in this dungeon. While Kim Woo Jin was briefly recalling these things, Ishika Yohei spoke to him in a confident tone. When he heard that, Kim Woo Jin glanced at Lee Jin Ah, who was beside him, for a moment before speaking in a cold tone. I haven't yet recognized you as teammates. Ishikawa Yohei also glanced at Lee Jin Ah before speaking in English with a firm tone. It doesn't matter. He then continued in Russian. After we complete this dungeon, you will admit that we are the best shields for you. His Russian was a bit awkward, showing that he didn't actually know the language, and the words had been practiced beforehand. There was no doubt. We will definitely show you. That Ishikawa Yohei was making an obvious provocation toward Li Jina. If not, would he have bothered to practice a difficult language like Russian for this? Li Jina shot him a fierce look while Ishikawa Yohei simply smiled and continued. Then let's clear the dungeon together. Thus the attack on AB rank dungeon as verification to challenge the A rank dungeon, began. Before attacking an A rank dungeon, the B rank dungeon that was used as a method of verification was usually one of two types. A hunting type which required the players to hunt a specific amount of monsters, or a survival type which required them to survive a certain number of days. In the case for this B rank dungeon, it was the latter. Survive 10 days on the last floor. TL, I feel like the author ran out of dungeon names. Floors, 4. Difficulty, B. Maximum number of entries, 231. Requirements, level 115 and below. Conditions, survive for 10 days on the 4th floor of the dungeon. Reward, none. Survive for 10 days on the last floor. It was not an easy dungeon. It would be strange if it was easy to endure 10 days on the last floor of a dungeon after the players were already mentally and physically tired. Moreover, the difference in the monsters that could appear on the first, second, third and fourth floors could not be neglected. There was also the possibility of a medium or higher difficulty boss appearing. It's perfect for verification. This was why it was perfect. It would be suicidal for players who could not even clear a dungeon like this, to challenge an A-ranked dungeon. In addition, choosing such a dungeon wasn't just about the ability to clear it. After clearing this dungeon, the players who would be participating in the A-ranked dungeon attack would develop a good understanding of each other. This was an opportunity for the players who were normally scattered to come together to become organized. In addition, the best thing to keep the organized players in control was to appoint a leader. That's the plan. The leader of this dungeon attack was Ishikawa Yohei. They set a good stage. Naturally, this was done intentionally. They intended to highlight the value of the three Ishikawa siblings to Isaac Ivanov. We'll follow whatever you plan to do. On the other hand, it was also a message from the Sword Saint. A message that Japan would support him to the best of its ability as long as he took the Ishikawa siblings as his teammates. In other words, the message was for him to get rid of the one he was using on his side, and join their side. Only. Of course, Kim Woo Jin wasn't interested in their message. There was only one thing he was interested in. I'm sure they gave them a lot of items. The fact that the Sword Saint side had invested a lot into the Ishikawa siblings for this mission. If they gave them the Nemean Lion's leather, then I wouldn't need anything else. That was what Kim Woo Jin was aiming for this time. Then let's get started. Chapter, 181 The role of the three Ishikawa siblings was simple. 
they just had to perfectly defend against the monsters. Although it was simple in theory, this task was not something that was easy to accomplish. This was what made them so powerful. The simpler something was, the less room there was for complications, and the easier it was for them to adapt based on the situation. The Ishikawa siblings displayed this perfectly. Isaac. It was the thirteenth day since they'd entered the dungeon, and while searching for a spiny lizard on the third floor, Isaac Ivanov and his party encountered a group of lizardmen. There were as many as thirty-seven of them. Considering the strength of the lizard men, this number was not one they could afford to take lightly. Moreover, since the number was so high, it was a situation where they had to properly defend the front line first before deciding on a tactic. Under such circumstances, the Ishikawa siblings had to withstand the attacks of the 37 lizard men with just the three of them. From a distance, it looked like they were being besieged, but they were, in fact, perfectly resisting the attacks that were pouring in from every direction. Like this, they were able to perfectly grab the monster's aggro. Attack. Because of this, the skeletons were able to comfortably surround a group of lizardmen warriors without any hassle. The result was obvious. The skeleton soldiers, who had gained a tactical advantage, were able to easily overwhelm the group of lizardmen. Bang! Keep going. Understood, brother. Even in such a situation, the Ishikawa siblings maintained their control over the lizard men, creating a stage for the skeleton soldiers to perform to the best of their ability. It was great teamwork. In fact, their teamwork was nothing short of perfect. Let's continue. In other words, there was nothing for Li Jina to do. That was why Li Jina was watching the battlefield from the side with a cold gaze. Ishikawa Yohei smiled when he saw this. Just as planned. After entering the dungeon, Ishikawa Yohei took care of almost everything. In addition to his role as tank, he was also the first to go search for monsters, study terrain, and even set up camp and cook. By doing so, he completely removed any need for Isaac Ivanov's teammate to do anything. He should be in a bad mood. It was something that would make anyone upset. After all, something like this would be difficult to bear. That was why Ishikawa Yohei was certain that Isaac Ivanov's teammate would be feeling particularly upset at that moment, and he would be doing his utmost to not reveal the feelings he was bottling inside. Kim Woojin felt the same way. It'll be hard to bear. He also knew that Lee Jina was trying hard to conceal his feelings at that moment. Of course, it was a little different from the idea that Ishikawa Yohei had. In Kim Woojin's eyes, Lee Jina was trying his very best to not smile happily at this moment. In fact, Lee Jina couldn't feel more satisfied than at that very moment. I've never encountered players who would be this willing to suck up to someone. It was natural that he felt satisfied. After all, this was a situation where his level increased even when he did nothing but stand at the side and breathe. Moreover, at that moment, Li Jina felt like he knew why Kim Wu Jin constantly pushed him so hard. Ah, I wish it could just continue like this. It was natural that he'd find this situation to be quite sweet. However, the sweetness didn't last very long for Li Jina. They found the spiny lizard. Ishikawa Yohei, who learned of the information from another player, quickly passed it on to Kim Wu Jin. It said that they found the spiny lizard which is the condition to clear the third floor of the dungeon I think we can start preparing to move on to the next floor. When he heard this, Kim Woo Jin turned his cold gaze to stare at Li Jina. He was delivering an unspoken message with his eyes. It was now time to pay back for his meal. Gulp. Li Jina subconsciously gulped when he saw the gaze. The memory of the time Kim Woo Jin bought the food for him came to mind. At that time, I almost had to pretend to eat. Kim Woo Jin's eerie gaze throughout the entire meal had almost caused Li Jina to pretend to eat food for the first time in his life. I will never let him fool me again, TL Boha. Li Jina shuddered at the memory and rose to his feet. After getting to his feet, he approached Kim Woo Jin and said, Ivanov, this time I. It was at that moment. Ah, it's okay, you don't need to strain yourself. Ishikawa Yohei interrupted the conversation between Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina and continued speaking in English. You can leave the hard work to me. 
It was a sincere offer that Li Jina would have considered quite heartwarming. However, he was forced to act by Kim Wu Jin. Li Jina swung his fist with all his power at a nearby skeleton. Pak. The skeleton soldier's head shattered, and so did the atmosphere. And in the cold atmosphere, Li Jina was looking fiercely at Ishikawa Yohei. Ishikawa Yohei didn't avoid his gaze. He finally snapped. Rather, he welcomed this turn of events. Now he only has two choices. In Ishikawa Yohei's opinion, there were only two things that Li Jina could do. Leave Isaac Ivanov just like this. One was to leave Isaac Ivanov's team. For Ishikawa Yohei, that was the easiest route. Or prove his worth. If not, and he wanted to stay at Isaac Ivanov's side, he would have to prove that he was better than the Ishikawa siblings. Naturally, this meant that he would pick a fight with Ishikawa Yohei. There's no reason to back down. Ishikawa Yohei never had the intention of backing down from a fight. Because I have the Nemean Lion's Leather. This was because the treasure the Sword Saint gave to him filled him with unending confidence. Li Jina, who stared at Ishikawa Yohei for a long time, finally turned back to look at Kim Wu Jin before speaking in Russian TL, probably apologizing to his benefactor. Isaac, I will prove that I am better than these three fools. When Li Jina chose the second option, Ishikawa Yohei smiled triumphantly. Right, his pride wouldn't tolerate it. It was then. And after proving that, let's disband the team. Li Jina proposed a third option. Is it the twentieth day today? In response to Oh Se Chan's question, one of the subordinates nodded. Yes, it's the twentieth day since Kim Wu Jin entered the dungeon. Oh Se Chan stretched and got up from his seat. He clearly expressed his will to do something in earnest. A subordinate, who noticed this fact, responded quickly. I will prepare it right away. Even though they had not been given a specific order, the subordinate hurriedly brought out a cell phone and a laptop. Afterward, the subordinate handed the cell phone to Oh Se Chan while running an application on the laptop. You can call now. Oh Se Chan nodded at the subordinate who completed the preparations perfectly before calling someone with the phone in his hand. Da da do. The dial tone sounded in his ear. Petrov. The moment a voice was heard from the other side, the conversation began. Oh, Sorokin. You finally got in touch. The conversation was completely in Russian. I'm sorry for taking so long many things happened so I could only call you now. No no, I'm grateful that you contacted me now so what do you think about my proposal? When he heard the word proposal, Oh Se Chan's expression became firm. I'm sorry Isaac Ivanov's mind is not something I can change. How unfortunate. A voice filled with disappointment could be heard from the phone. Then Oh Se Chan spoke. But there might be a chance with his teammate. Teammate? Recently, there seems to be a division in Isaac Ivanov's team. I heard the rumors about Japan. It's not good news, of course, but as it's my job to support Isaac Ivanov, I can't let a rift like that stay it would be the worst if it burst open in a dungeon. Certainly it's a problem that you need to handle as quickly as possible. On the other hand, I can't just force him to help Isaac Ivanov isn't he a hero too after all. He is like a superstar in Russia. Therefore, it's also my job to find a suitable place for him if the relationship between them truly gets bad. Please contact me at that time I will not mistreat him. Understood. After finishing the call, Oh Se Chan turned to his subordinate. Now, let's raise Li Jin AHS value a bit more. Yes, then where should we bet this time? Let's take a tour around the five great guilds contact Kunlun. Yes, sir. Oh Se Chan smiled as his subordinate began tapping away at the laptop's keyboard. Their plan was obvious. The Sword Saint's plan was simple. After removing Li Jina, they would fill his spot with the three Ishikawa siblings. They're going to try to provoke Li Jina. For that, the siblings would have to find a way to provoke Li Jina. Afterwards, either he would leave on his own, or he'd complain and try to fix it. Then they'll try to crush Li Jina with their skill after provoking him. Of course, the Sword Saint's side would have prepared sufficiently to handle either situation. If he decided to leave on his own, 
then they simply had to watch him leave on his own two feet, and if Li Jina decided to compete, then they would just have to crush him with their ability. They seemed confident in their ability to do so, so they must have a plan. Although it's a bit of a stretch. However, such an attempt from the Sword Saint's side was bound to fail. Because Li Jina was stronger than the three Ishikawa siblings. But it wouldn't be fun if it just ended there. The problem was that even if Li Jina proved himself, Kim Wu Jin would have nothing to gain, and Oh Se Chan couldn't stomach the idea of going through so much trouble for no profit. Kim Wu Jin also had the same idea. Therefore, they came up with a third option. However, if Li Jina thrashes the three Ishikawa siblings right there and then leaves Kim Wu Jin anyway, Li Jina would trample on the Ishikawa siblings and then disband his team with Isaac Ivanov. If that happened, what would the Sword Saint do? It could only be one of two things. Pay the price for giving Isaac Ivanov a new team. Only. Since they used a shield with a weaker performance to replace Isaac Ivanov's previous one, they would need to pay a price. Or pay more to keep the previous team. Or pay a higher price to let things stay the way they were. Whatever they choose, the higher Li Jina's value, the more they would have to pay. So what Oh Seichan was doing now, was increasing his value. And naturally, Oh Seichan had no intention of simply raising the price to a moderate level. I'll make them deeply feel how expensive it is to try to take somebody else's man. Chapter, 182 There were two ways that players could increase their chances of survival in dungeons. One was to obtain better items. The other was to get better companions. The most important thing, however, was the ability to tell what was better. In the case of items, this distinction was not difficult. Because the world had been transformed into a game, it was not hard to see the differences between them. The problem was the teammates. In the case of players, simply having better items or higher levels didn't mean that they were better. In other words, it was impossible to compare them without visible differences. That said, it was impossible to judge who was better just by doing a rough comparison. After all, wasn't this a matter of life and death? That's why the players had come up with their own ways to compare their abilities. I heard that there's going to be a match between the Ishakawa siblings and Isaac Ivanov's teammate. Really? Tanks going against each other huh so which method are they using? Zone. Zone was one of the methods that tanks used to compare their abilities. The method was simple. Endure as long as possible without asking for help. That was zone. Zone that's dangerous. It was a simple, but bloody method. Staying within the designated area meant that they couldn't escape. This meant that regardless of how many monsters appeared, how bloody the battle got, or how injured they became, they would have to stay and fight the monsters as long as they possibly could. Are they really going to do that on the fourth floor of the dungeon? Well, people are already attacking the spiny lizard which is the condition to clear the third floor, aren't they? So the fourth floor is the only one left. Moreover, the stage for the challenge between Li Jina and the Ishikawa siblings was the fourth floor of the dungeon. It's a survival quest, so the number of monsters will be no joke. In a survival quest floor which was bound to have more monsters than normal floors, they had decided to play zone. The dangers of such actions were quite clear to these players who were all above level 100. It would be difficult for a normal tank to hold out for more than an hour. What do you mean an hour? A normal tank would probably run after the second wave. It was a confrontation that normal tanks would never try to win. Of course, at the same time, they knew. But the Ishikawa siblings could never be described as ordinary. Spashiba is Isaac Ivanov's teammate. The two parties who were participating in this even were far from ordinary. But the Ishikawa siblings have an advantage since their levels are higher. But while the Ishikawa siblings were tanking on the third floor, Spashiba did nothing right. Because of this, no one is certain who has the advantage, and could only make speculations. A notification came to them as they were wondering what the outcome of the challenge would be. The spiny lizard has been slain. Proceed to the next floor. The third floor had been cleared. Survive for ten days. It was giant's reeds that stretched to the sky that greeted the players together with the notification as they entered the fourth floor of the dungeon. 
The moment the players saw this, however, their expression stiffened considerably. Aren't these giants' reeds? How troublesome. Giants' reeds. As the name suggested, they were large reeds. They usually grew to around a height of 6 meters while the larger ones could grow as tall as 10 meters. Other than that, there were no significant differences between them and normal reeds. So it was quite troublesome. It's hell for tanks. Reeds, which collapsed easily, could not function as proper cover, unlike trees or boulders. On the other hand, the amount of obstruction they gave was much higher than trees and rocks even calling them an obstruction was an under-exaggeration. SSS. In addition, the sound that the reed forest made was much more distracting when compared to the sounds in a normal forest. However, the worst part was the fact that trails remained and were hard to miss. Normally in a forest, the only trail one could leave would be their footprints. However, in this reed forest, the path you took would remain. From the monsters' perspectives, it was like their prey was creating a highway which led them right to their delicious food. How long will they last? No matter how strong the Ishikawa siblings are, it'll be difficult for them to last more than three hours. What about Spashiba? It should be the same or less. Because of this, it would be hard for the confrontation to last more than a few hours at best. Ishikawa Yohei called his younger siblings over before saying. The situation will change depending on our luck, but the way things are now, our limit will be about three hours. They too were able to clearly gauge their own levels. This was evidence of their capability. Not being overly confident, overestimating oneself, misjudging the situation, and being able to properly and calmly calculate regardless of the circumstance, were the most essential factors for a truly skilled player. But with the Nemean Lion Leather, we should be able to last for more than a day. Which meant that this judgment was made after cold calculation and was not just a pretense made out of fake confidence. In addition, there was someone who calculated even more coldly than they did. Kim Woo Jin was able to judge the situation more calmly and accurately than anyone else. If it's the Ishikawa siblings, they should be able to last for four hours. First of all, he'd completely grasped the abilities of the Ishikawa siblings. But they should have received a legendary item from the Sword Saint. In addition, he also grasped the fact that they would have never provoked Li Jina without making preparations. If it's the Nemean lion's leather, or an equivalent armor then it wouldn't be a problem for them to endure more than a day. Even in that case, Kim Wu Jin was able to estimate how long they could withstand the challenge. As for Li Jina. Next was Li Jina's turn. Kim Wu Jin had already calculated that the three Ishikawa siblings would be able to endure for more than a day there. So how long would Li Jina be able to endure when placed under the same conditions? To answer that question, Kim Wu Jin once again calculated calmly and the answer he got afterward was as expected. He could wipe out all the monsters in his zone within a day. In the first place, this result was surprising for him. That was the conclusion Kim Wu Jin reached. The showdown began and everything was silent for about 20 minutes. The reason for this was that most of the monsters were cautious about the sudden appearance of the players. In such a situation, it was a herd of striped chickens who signaled the start of the battle TL, lol chickens. Cluck. The chicken cry, which was made by over 101 meter tall striped chickens turned the tranquil reed forest into a mess. It started. The other players watched on nervously. When a request for help comes, we have to be prepared to go immediately. The reason they were nervous was because they would need to go and offer assistance as soon as it was requested. Because of this, many of the players were paying close attention to the scene in front of them. Don't let your guards down, just in case. Be prepared so that you can enter the battle at any time. At that moment, everyone sharpened their senses because they didn't know when the battles would commence. Don't relax, we're also targets for the monsters. Above all, they couldn't forget the fact that in the monsters' eyes, they were also prey. It was an hour after the battle began that the players began noticing something strange. Roar. The screams of the red orcs, who'd taken over after the striped chickens had been defeated, rang out from the battlefield. Do you feel like something is wrong? You think so too? Some players began recognizing that the sounds the red orcs on both sides were making were different. Are they screaming? 
Right, they're screaming. They found that the cries from one side weren't roars, they were screams. And they were immediately able to figure out why. Sheba. Li Jina was killing the orcs. Everyone had ridiculous expressions at this sight. Oh my god, how is this possible? The tank's job was to control the monsters. However, Li Jina was killing the monsters instead of enduring their attacks. A small exaggeration would be that he was sweeping the monsters away. The combat power that Li Jina was showing at that moment did not fall short of world-renowned damage dealers. A tank has such destructive power. Spashiba was this strong. This was a very shocking sight for those who, until now, had thought that Li Jina was only good at blocking monsters with his body. On the other hand, this was a natural sight for Kim Wu Jin. Now this is what I remember. Before he'd returned to the past, the Li Jina that Kim Wu Jin knew wasn't a tank who defended his teammates with a shield. Instead, he was a terrifying beast with teeth sharp enough to threaten even the best hunting dogs. It was worth pushing him. Moreover, such a beast had been trained to the limit by none other than the strongest hunting dog. Skeleton Soldiers He had repeatedly fought for his life against these summons who were like slightly weakened versions of Kim Wujin. His sword skill isn't good enough. For Li Jina, neither the striped chickens nor red orcs were opponents who could give him pause. Of course, at this moment, Kim Wujin wasn't interested in winning or losing this challenge. He'd also lost interest in Li Jina as well. At that moment, there was only one thing that Kim Wu Jin was interested in. And that was the golden lion skin being worn by Ishikawa Yohei at that moment TL, the author put Shoei Yohei, rather than Yohei. So it could have been a typo or it could be the twin brother for now, I left it at Yohei, but it is subject to change in the future. Nemian Lion Leather Rating, Legendary Required Level Level 100 or higher. Description, leather armor worn by the great hero Hercules normal attacks can't hurt you. 100% physical defense. Only. 100% magical defense. Activates hero's dignity. Cannot be destroyed. They really gave them the Nemean lion leather. After confirming the item with Horus eyes, a smile formed at the corner of Kim Wujin's lips. I like it. It was the smile of a predator who had found their prey. Chapter, 183 There were times when the atmosphere was not good even when a dungeon had been cleared successfully. This was what was occurring at that moment. The players began returning from the dungeon that was used for the verification to attack the A-rank dungeon. Players began leaving the dungeon in a steady trickle. It's the players. The attack was successful. Yua. Those who were waiting for this naturally cheered and welcomed their return. Ha! Huh. Why are their faces like that? They all have serious expressions did something happen? However, some people noticed that the expressions of these returning players were not good. Was there an accident in the dungeon? And they knew that this was an expression that was usually only accompanied by unexpected situations occurring in the dungeon. Those who noticed this immediately began paying attention to the players' movements. The officials' expressions are also bad. There was definitely an accident. As more people noticed this, the screams naturally decreased. It's the three Ishikawa siblings. The heroes have returned. Isaac Ivanov's new teammates. When the Ishikawa siblings appeared, cheers erupted again before they quickly subsided. Why are their faces like that? They appeared as though they had seen a ghost and suffered a great loss as a result. This isn't good. It was at that moment that everyone realized just how serious the matter was, and the atmosphere cooled to the point that the earlier cheers and screams felt like a mere illusion. At this time, the officials who were broadcasting this situation live had their complexions change as they hurriedly wrote subtitles, changing what they had to breaking news. Reporters also began writing new articles, leaving the ones they had already prepared at the side. The atmosphere peaked when Isaac Ivanov and his teammate appeared. They both had no facial expressions as though they were wearing emotionless masks, and as soon as they left the dungeon gate, they headed in different directions. What's going on? Why are they heading in two different directions? Something happened between the two of them. It was then. 
A scoop. At that time, a reporter, who had managed to grasp the situation from a player, shouted out the reason Isaac Ivanov and his teammate left in different directions. Isaac Ivanov's party is disbanding. At that moment, the reporters who grasped the situation rushed to ask Isaac Ivanov and his teammate questions. Is that true? Is it true that the party is being disbanded? What the hell happened in the dungeon? However, neither of them said a single word in the face of those questions. No one was disappointed though. It's true. Isaac Ivanov's party really disbanded. After all, there was no answer more definitive than silence. Shocking. Isaac Ivanov's team is disbanding. It was breaking news that no one expected. What are they talking about? What do they mean disbanding? Wasn't Isaac Ivanov preparing to attack an A-ranked dungeon? What do they mean his team is disbanding? No, what are they talking about? Disbanding? Isaac's team is disbanding. At the same time, it was incredibly shocking breaking news. It doesn't make sense that they would just disband like this aren't they the only team to hunt a hatchling alone? I can't take this Isaac Ivanov's team is the strongest team in history. What kind of team did Isaac Ivanov have? It was a party that had continuously done what no one else had ever done before, starting with the first needle snake hunt to hunting the hatchling alone. The dissolution of this party was completely different from the dissolution of a famous idol group. Damn, Kim Woo Jin dies and the Spashiba leaves what the hell is going on. This doesn't make sense you would usually only ever hear about a party this popular being wiped out, never them disbanding like this. Why did this happen? So naturally, people started looking at the cause. And of course, the cause was simple. Why did it have to be those damn Japanese bastards? Right Japan was also the one who killed Kim Woo Jin. It's the same with Spashiba there are rumors that their relationship was broken by the Ishikawa siblings. There were rumors that Spashiba might transfer to another guild before they even entered the dungeon. After all, Kim Woo Jin had already died because of terrorism by a pseudo-cult from Japan. Naturally, the accusations against Japan began to flood once again. Is the Sword Saint's greed towards the hero the reason for this? The Sword Saint destroys Isaac Ivanov's team. It was to the extent that accusations were even being pointed toward the Sword Saint, who was sacred in Japan. It was none other than Isaac Ivanov's first official announcement that truly drove the situation to its peak. Breaking news. Isaac Ivanov has given up attacking the A-rank dungeon. Isaac Ivanov has temporarily suspended all activities. Does he intend to retire? The hero stops. Isaac Ivanov announced that he would temporarily halt all activities. I'm sorry. Miyazaki Sakura apologized to the Sword Saint while kneeling on the floor. The Sword Saint responded simply to her apology. What is the situation? We have approached both sides, but it doesn't look too good I haven't spoken to Isaac Ivanov yet, but... What is it? That. Seeing Miyazaki Sakura hesitating, the Sword Saint spoke with an eerie look in his eyes. Tell me what you learned. It is said that Isaac Ivanov's teammate is in possession of the Makya. When he heard that, the blood vessels visible at the Sword Saint's temples wriggled. He was furious to learn that the Makya, which belonged to him, was in the possession of someone else. But the more frustrating thing was the seriousness of this matter. Didn't it mean that the cost to change the teammate's mind would be even higher since he was already in possession of such an item? What about the press? The media in Japan is under control but if it stays like this, this matter will eventually spread. Miyazaki Sakura swallowed slightly before continuing. However, we can't conceal the fact that the Ishikawa siblings suffered a devastating defeat at the hands of Isaac Ivanov's teammate. Damn it. When he heard that, the sword saint couldn't help but let out a swear. That was how serious the situation was. I didn't expect it to be this bad. While the world was shocked by the disbandment of Isaac Ivanov's team, Japan and the Sword Saint were being held accountable. In such a situation, what would happen if it spread that the three Ishikawa siblings were not as skilled as Isaac Ivanov's teammate? Furthermore, what if it was revealed that the Ishikawa siblings were the cause of this whole incident? The accusations that would come would be completely incomparable to what they were receiving currently. The criticism is fine. 
Of course, the sword saint wouldn't mind the criticism. After all, criticism would never be able to reduce his influence or pose a threat to him. The problem was that this was only the beginning, not the end. If we don't fix this now, we will be troubled for a while. In the future, if there were ever any issues with Isaac Ivanov, it would, in some way, be tied back to the sword saint, even if they had to stretch it. The Messiah might try to make this problem larger. It might reach the point where even the Messiah Guild might use it as an excuse to penalize the Sword Saint's side. In fact, that was the most troublesome possibility for the Sword Saint. Currently, the Sword Saint and the Messiah Guild had a symbiotic relationship where they helped each other whenever possible. However, if he was to reveal a flaw in this relationship, the Messiah Guild would take advantage of it immediately. This was also part of the reason why he tried to get Isaac Ivanov on his side. The Sword Saint had intended to use Isaac Ivanov to keep the Messiah Guild in check. I was too greedy. But now, the situation had changed. He tried to grab the sword, but had ended up grabbing the blade instead of the hilt. I'll have to fix this. In other words, this meant he would have to deal with this situation somehow. If he let it stay as it was, it was possible that it would become something that might pull him down at an important moment. We have to deal with Isaac Ivanov's teammate before he transfers to another guild. Besides, if he wanted to fix this problem, he would have to do so before Isaac Ivanov's teammate transferred to another guild or group. After all, if he transferred it would be impossible to restore the relationship no matter what the Sword Saint tried. After hearing her report, the Sword Saint spoke slowly. Sakura, I'll give you two options. At those words, Sakura looked up at the Sword Saint with a slightly tense expression. Then she saw it. Either hold it in your hand, or remove it. The Sword Saint's gaze had become sharp and deep. Chapter, 184 Isaac Ivanov's party disbands. The situation caused by the typhoon known as Isaac Ivanov was dizzying. However, even in such a sensitive situation, there were some who were making it worse for their own benefit. Have Isaac Ivanov and his teammate entered the freelance market? Isaac Ivanov's teammate is already communicating with multiple guilds. Isaac Ivanov's teammate's value has risen sharply. Articles encouraging the disbandment of Isaac Ivanov's party began appearing all over the world. Particularly, the articles about the steep rise in Li Jina's value were especially prominent. It was a standard media tactic that exaggerated the value before the person in question officially entered the market. Of course, even when excluding that, Li Jina's value was bound to rise. Unlike Isaac Ivanov, who had announced a temporary suspension of any activities, Li Jina had simply declared the disbandment of the team without saying that he would halt his activities. He's just as talented as Isaac Ivanov. He's a tank that crushes everything. Moreover, the challenge against the Ishikawa siblings in the dungeon showed that he had become Isaac Ivanov's teammate not just because of his abilities as a tank. They finally understood the value of the man called Li Jina. And of course, Li Jina was happy to be in the spotlight for the first time. My annual salary would be 100 million. How much sushi can I buy with that? Moreover, Li Jina's value had risen so dramatically that the term astronomical fitted perfectly. Then Li Jina turned to Kim Woo Jin who was fiddling with something. Should I leave? Kim Woo Jin didn't even look at him as he said. If you want to go, I wouldn't stop you. Ha! Huh. Li Jina was surprised that Kim Woo Jin had given him permission so easily, and couldn't help but ask. Can I really go? There's nothing more meaningless than forcing someone to stay when they want to go if you really want to go, then you can go. Re dash, really? Li Jina was so surprised that his mouth fell open. Since he had the opportunity, should he really take the chance to get out of there? However, Kim Woo Jin threw a few more words at him. However, if you really do leave, then you and I would be enemies from then on, so it would be better for us to not meet in any dungeons, or something bad might happen to you. It was the most terrifying threat in the world. Ha ha ha. In front of that threat, Li Jina could only laugh nervously. Hey, it was a joke okay? A joke the man before you is one who would not leave his precious teammates even if he had to die. Kim Woo Jin didn't react to his words. He simply waited. Woo Woo. 
this was exactly what he was waiting for. We got a call from the Sword Saints they say they'd done it in good faith, and that they were sorry for ruining the relationship between you and Li Jina, so they would try to improve the relationship between you two. What were their conditions? If the two of you work together to clear the A-rank dungeon, they will reward you the Nemean Lion skin. The Sword Saint had come to a conclusion. The first priority was to fix the relationship with Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin. Improving our relationship while also getting us to clear the dungeon, are they combining these two objectives? At the same time, they were getting them to clear the dungeon. In the drama, the remarried couple would need to get a child so that viewers would be convinced that their relationship really improved who knew when they would get divorced again if they simply remarried? The public would demand the most convincing conclusion. So what do you think? It's our business to have the baby, they still have to pay the price for trying to have an affair as for the condition to improve the relationship. I told them that the Nemean lion skin and the reward for clearing the A-rank dungeon need to be separated. When he heard this, Kim Woo Jin asked. And their answer? They said okay. As he got that answer, Kim Woo Jin was convinced. The sword saint has made a decision. Yeah, just as we expected. At that time, Li Jina who was listening to their conversation, finally spoke up. Hey, can't you two tell me what the hell's going on? Kim Wu Jin answered the question while setting the timer on the camera that he had been fiddling with. The sword saint will give us an item in hopes that we'll continue being a party in the future. Soon after Kim Wu Jin finished setting the timer, he walked up to Li Jina and stretched out his hand. What are you doing? We have to show them some evidence that our relationship has improved a handshake is enough. It was only then that Li Jina realized what was happening and grabbed Kim Wu Jin's hand. I'm one of the parties involved, so I don't have anything to say, but if the sword saint learned the truth, he would definitely hunt us to the ends of the earth. Kim Wu Jin laughed at those words. It doesn't matter the sword saint intends to kill us anyway. They will attempt it during the attack on the A-rank dungeon. Click. Then the picture was taken. Will Isaac Ivanov really retire? It didn't take long before many rumors about Isaac Ivanov's possible retirement began to spread around the world. However, it didn't take long before those rumors were ruthlessly shut down. The rumors about Isaac Ivanov retiring are all false, and as promised, he will attack the A-rank dungeon. The moment the Sword Saints said these words during a press conference, announcing the plans they'd made with Isaac Ivanov, those rumors evaporated like snow in the sun. Instead, new rumors appeared. There are rumors that the Sword Saint prevented Isaac Ivanov's retirement and brought his team back together by giving them a legendary item. No, it was rumored that they'll get the item after they clear the A-rank dungeon. I heard rumors that the Sword Saint intends to make him his successor. They were rumors that the Sword Saint had paid an unimaginable price to fix the situation. Of course, they weren't rumors. To call it a rumor was to say that it wasn't true. What price did you pay? I used the Nemean lion's skin to reunite them. Because the sword saint had genuinely paid an astronomical price to reconnect the two players. So expensive. The Arabic man, Khalid bin Al-Sad, clicked his tongue when he heard this. When I hear someone like you say it's expensive, it makes the loss feel all the more painful. Khalid bin Al-Sad. Otherwise known as Prince Khalid, was, as his name suggested, a prince of the Saudi Arabian royal family. Of course, although there were thousands of princes one, in the royal family, the fact that he could meet with the sword saint in person was proof of his status. The sword saint had only been able to reach his current state after the world changed in 2020, but the Saudi Arabian royal family was a group that had a lot of power and wealth since long before then. Even the top figures on the Forbes list might not have as much wealth as this great family. When normal people saw a light car and thought this is nice and cheap, a rich man would look at a yacht that could carry about 200 people and think the same thing. This was why the sword saint said he hadn't expected the prince to use the word expensive. Nemean lion skin is expensive. Of course, Nemean lion skin was an expensive item. But it doesn't feel that expensive when compared to the price of Isaac Ivanov's life. However, it couldn't be compared to the price of the world's hero's life. After hearing those words, Prince Khalid stood up. Here's the plan. 
He then handed a bunch of documents over to the sword saint. It's really simple after Isaac Ivanov and his teammate enter the dungeon gate, we will cause an accident this will cause the dungeon entry to end at that moment. After explaining the plan, he gave a smile. If you had used this method before, you wouldn't have lost the Nemean lion skin. When he heard those words mixed with a mocking undertone, the sword saint shot a cold look at Prince Khalid who had turned around. Ah! Suddenly, Prince Khalid, who was about to leave, turned around and asked something he'd just thought of. By the way, what was the reward you promised if they cleared the dungeon? It doesn't matter anyway. I'm still curious I wonder how much Mr. Sword Saint was willing to risk. The Sword Saint gave him a simple answer. I told them I'd give them the Aegis Shield. Prince Khalid was surprised by that response. Isn't that the item that Mr. Sword Saint uses when you attack dungeons? A secret item that not even the Messiah Guild knows about, you're willing to risk that. Faced with that surprise, the Sword Saint simply responded in his normal, cold tone. I have nothing to lose anyway. It was normally very difficult to clear a dungeon. Therefore, it was even more difficult to prepare for a dungeon attack. This was because it was necessary to prepare as much as possible, especially because attacking dungeons came with the risk of death. Moreover, convincing others to also take part in such dangerous dungeon attacks was also difficult. All of these reasons were why it was harder to prepare to attack for floor dungeons. It would be strange if it was easy to persuade players above level 100, who were considered national assets and high-ranking members of their respective guilds, to risk their lives as well as their political and economical influence. Prepare to enter the dungeon. However, all of these difficulties became nothing when faced with the Sword Saint's influence. I will repeat it one more time in a while, we will enter the A-rank 4-floor dungeon, Hellhound's Hunting Grounds. The 249 participating players, please get ready for your turns. After Isaac Ivanov's party got back together, the Sword Saint immediately began preparations to attack the A-rank dungeon. And it only took two days to complete the preparations. I can't believe they set up this play in such a short time. Over 200 players over level 100 were gathered for this attack. Their control over these players is absolute. During the process, none of the gathered made any unnecessary sounds. It was quite amazing. Most players tended to be reluctant to attempt dungeons that had been failed before. And this dungeon had an especially ominous aura. Nevertheless, these Japanese players over level 100 had gathered in front of the dungeon gate without a word of complaint. Their control over the media is also perfect. In addition, the entire process was given full media coverage. The political and business sectors also didn't hold back in their support. Japan is completely in the Sword Saint's hands. This was evidence that the Sword Saint's influence had already grown to the point where he dominated Japan. Then it won't take very long. This was why Kim Woo-jin was convinced. The war will start much sooner than it did in the past. Now the Sword Saint's next target would be outside of Japan. And the world would once again fall into a war after 19452. Then Isaac Ivanov's party will enter first. Listening to the official in charge, Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina entered the dungeon gate first. Kaboom! And the very next moment, an enormous explosion happened at the dungeon gate. Chapter 185 In a closed school playground where hundreds of officials, players who were about to challenge the dungeon, and reporters who were going to film them. Boom! A loud explosion thundered. At the same time, a dust cloud erupted as a result of the blast. A bomb had exploded. But for a moment, no one reacted to the bombing. However, about 20 seconds after it happened, people began responding to it. Kook! Whack! All sorts of screams began erupting from the dust cloud. It was a mess. However, most of the players were fine. After all, at level 100, most players had physiques that far surpassed the human limit, as well as different items they intended to use against the monsters. Some of them might have been injured, but absolutely no one died. However, those players still reacted to the situation. Get back. Retreat. The players hurried to leave the messy playground. This was natural. Someone attacked. It's dangerous. 
there might be more explosives. After their experiences with dungeons, they instinctively knew that in the face of an unknown threat, the best action was to retreat without looking back. Naturally, after a short time, they realized something. What about Isaac? What? Didn't the two of them enter the dungeon? Isaac's party had entered the dungeon. Can we still enter the dungeon? And the dungeon was no longer accepting players. Is it just the two of them? Oh my god. The worst possible thing had happened. Hunt 20,002 monsters to move on to the next floor. It was the notification of the conditions to clear the first floor of the dungeon. It really happened. At the same time, it was a reminder that no one else could enter or leave the dungeon until it was cleared or they died. Only the two of us came in. Li Jina let out a dejected laugh when he saw that it was just him and Kim Wu Jin TL, he knows what's gonna happen. Ho ho ho. It was a laugh that came out after the situation he was told to expect came to pass. Now I've really seen everything. As Li Jina let out that strange laugh, he turned towards Kim Wu Jin. How the hell did you predict something like this? Kim Wu Jin gave him a simple reply. It's not easy to blow us up or kill us outside of the dungeon, and the risk of failure is very high. Li Jina clicked his tongue. So that's all it took for you to predict this. Normal people would never be able to think of something like this. Kim Wu Jin didn't bother with his question. After all, that wasn't the full reason. I'm used to things like this. It was impossible for him to explain that facing terror threats from hostile forces both inside and outside the dungeons was an everyday occurrence for him in the past. So instead of answering, Kim Wu Jin moved on to the next action. For now, let's just focus on hunting. Getting ready for battle. Because we need to hunt the 20 monsters quickly. Along with those words, Kim Wu Jin used a skill. The Book of the Dead has been opened. The Book of the Dead was opened, and a slab on the first page was taken out and smashed. The slab became dust and the dust gradually took on a new shape. Skeleton Knight has been summoned. A fully armored Skeleton Knight was the thing to appear. Boar's shield, Percival's spear and armor made from hatchling leather. It was an equipment set that would frighten even the famous players. Black Bone Effect has been activated. Ruler of the Battlefield has been activated. And the Skeleton Knight was made even stronger. The Skeleton Knight has become the incarnation of the battlefield. A red aura then erupted from the Skeleton Knight. Kyaha. It was the moment when it had truly become a monster befitting the name incarnation of the battlefield. However, Kim Wu Jin didn't stop there. He summoned the remaining Skeleton Knights from the Book of the Dead as well as Skeleton Soldiers to ensure the effect of Ruler of the Battlefield would be stacked to the max. Three Skeleton Knights and seven Skeleton Soldiers all equipped with Hatchling Armor appeared within an instant. Gulp. Seeing this, Li Jina gulped subconsciously. He can summon an elite monster unit without even needing sacrifices. Kim Wu Jin was able to summon a group that could annihilate large amounts of monsters without any cost. In front of Li Jina, Kim Wu Jin then took off his glove and cut his palm with the Makya. The sharp blade easily cut into his palm and the blood poured like a fountain onto the ground. Blood Golem. And soon after, Kim Wu Jin summoned a new monster addition. Summoned a Blood Golem. Blood Golem. It was at the moment when the worst nightmare produced by the deadly poison king had been recreated by Kim Wu Jin. Breaking news. There was a bombing. The Japanese government has yet to figure out what exactly happened. Everything is currently a mess. The bombing that occurred in Tokyo, Japan, was quickly spread to the rest of the world through various channels. Naturally, the world was shocked by the news. There was a bombing in Japan. It wasn't just terrorism, it was terrorism against players. But what was their purpose? Japan, which was considered to be in a state of peace, was shocked by the fact that the players were targeted. But even more, shocking news was soon released. Isaac Ivanov's party trapped in a dungeon. The fact that Isaac Ivanov's party had entered the dungeon before the bomb had gone off and were thus trapped in the dungeon soon came to light. The world was truly astonished by the news. 
So you're saying that Isaac Ivanov's party are the only ones in an A rank 4 floor dungeon? Oh my god, this doesn't make sense. The dungeon had a maximum number of entries of 249. Still, they cleared the hatchling dungeon alone, didn't they? This might not be impossible for them, right? That was three floors. This is four floors. The difference between three floors and four floors is like the difference between middle and high schoolers. That's right. And at that time there were three people, including Kim Woo Jin. They're doomed. There was no one who had a hopeful opinion about two people clearing a four-floor dungeon that had a maximum capacity of 249 and was meant for players above level 100. The possibility of Isaac Ivanov's party clearing the dungeon and surviving are practically 0%. The worst disaster possible has happened. It seems God has turned his eyes away from Isaac Ivanov. The media also rushed to convey this news and portrayed it as a horrible disaster. I'm satisfied. It was the most satisfying result for the Sword Saint. Prince Khalid smiled when he heard those words. I'm glad you liked it. But I would have let five or six assassins go with Isaac Ivanov. Prince Khalid shrugged. Is that really necessary? It would be better if those five or six people interfere with Isaac Ivanov's attack on the dungeon. Prince Khalid shook his head. Even if we don't do that, those two are probably experiencing hell right now. As if to reinforce his words, he spoke again. It'll only take them a few days to really understand their situation, and at that point, I doubt they'd even want to continue hunting monsters. Roar. About 400 one-eyed orcs roared as they charged across a meadow. The scene was like a giant wave heading towards a beach. A ruthless wave that no one would dare face. Rattle. However, the 100 or so skeletons that were standing opposite this wave did not retreat. Instead, under the command of a skeleton knight, the skeleton army began charging at the one-eyed orcs. And the battle that ensued was incredibly brutal. The sound of weapons clashing, as well as the sounds the orcs made as they fell and the skeletons made as they crumbled, could be heard all at once. It wasn't a battle where it was easy to tell which side was winning or losing. Of course, that fact alone was amazing in itself as it was a battle with 100 against 400. A difference of 300 soldiers was not something that could be easily overcome in a frontal battle. Nevertheless, the fact that they were not being pushed back clearly showed the strength of the skeleton army. Then something amazing happened. The battle that had originally looked even, began to get pushed to one side. And the side that was being pushed back was none other than the 400 one-eyed orcs. The one-eyed orcs, who refused to retreat after they were bloodied by the skeleton soldiers' weapons began falling one after the other. There was a certain reason for that. And that was a blood-red figure that was moving freely in the front line. Blood Golem The blood golem that had been created with Kim Woo Jin's blood poison, was undoubtedly breaking down the front line. The method was quite simple. For the blood golem, these orcs that were already covered in scars and wounds didn't even need to be attacked properly. In the crowded battlefield, the blood golem only needed simple contact to break the balance. It was a sight that would astonish any viewer. As expected. However, Kim Woo Jin, who was controlling the golem, was not surprised by this scene. After all, there was no way he would be surprised when he had experience going against the deadly poison king. Of course, that was just for Kim Woo Jin. Phew. Lee Jin Ah, on the other hand, even stopped mid-fight to watch the blood golem wade through the battlefield. Then, as he watched Kim Woo Jin's monsters trample their enemies with ease, he couldn't help but mutter to himself. I don't even have the will to fight anymore. Chapter, 186 One of the secrets to humanity's prosperity over the years was the fact that it didn't stop progressing, even in the face of despair. It was the same when the world turned into a game overnight. Everyone despaired, but they nevertheless continued advancing in some way. The same was true with Isaac Ivanov and the so-called Hellhound disaster. But it wasn't just despair. The act of terrorism was carried out by the same group that killed Kim Woo Jin. The Japanese government declares war on terrorism. People move to find and deal with the cause of the disaster. What kind of dungeon is the Hellhound dungeon? 
The Hellhound, the Demon of Four Floors. They also began researching ways to clear the Hellhound dungeon. However, this wasn't to predict the probability of Isaac Ivanov's team clearing the dungeon. Can't Isaac Ivanov's party clear the Hellhound dungeon? It's a similar situation to the Hatchling, isn't it? This is different from the time with the Hatchling dungeon at that time, Isaac Ivanov intended to hunt it alone. Right, Isaac Ivanov chose to attack that dungeon because he was confident on the other hand, this time was an accident. The worst possible accident. Because even the average person understood that the difference between three-floor and four-floor dungeons wasn't just the addition of one floor. Nevertheless, the reason for the research and discussion on how to clear the Hellhound dungeon was simple. The world vows to avenge Isaac Ivanov. TL, again. The most valuable dungeon in the world appears. The moment Isaac Ivanov died, the Hellhound dungeon would become the most valuable dungeon in the world. That was why everyone in the world became interested in the Hellhound dungeon, and asked many questions to the Japanese government. How many times had the Hellhound dungeon been challenged? What was the number and level of the players who attacked the dungeon? The Japanese government answered these questions easily. At the time of the discovery, another party had already been attacking the dungeon, after that attack failed, we tried to attack the dungeon once more, but that failed as well there were no other attacks after that. They said that there were only two attacks and those who participated weren't particularly special. This was definitely a positive factor. Rather than them trying to clear the dungeon ten times and failing every time. The problem was that the Japanese government's announcement wasn't true. Even when the nuclear plant exploded, those guys weren't so forthcoming with the information, were they? Of course, Oh Seichan would not believe the Japanese government's announcement so easily. He had already investigated the Hellhound dungeon beforehand. And it didn't take him long to figure out. That's right otherwise, they wouldn't have hidden the dungeon away for three years. The fact that the dungeon had appeared in 2021, three years before. There's nothing strange about hiding it. Of course, it wasn't unusual for them to hide the Hellhound dungeon away. After all, the value of an A-rank dungeon was quite high after all. But to hide something like that in Tokyo is quite hard. The problem was the price they would have had to pay to keep it hidden. Hiding a dungeon wasn't as simple as building a tent to hide the dungeon gate. In that case who would take care of the monsters that might escape from the dungeon? Right, and since it's a four-floor dungeon there might be monsters that cannot be dealt with by normal weapons. And as Oh Seichan's subordinate had pointed out, there was a high probability of the appearance of monsters that couldn't be dealt with by ordinary guns. This meant that they would need to at least prepare more powerful weapons like artillery and tanks. And they have to hide that too. The cost of hiding it would be much higher than just managing it in the open. And to do that for three years rather than a day or two far exceeded the scope of common sense. We know that well don't we? How much that would cost? We know that very well. The price of that was something that Oh Se Chan and his men, who went by the name Dungeon Brokers, would know better than anyone. But they did it anyway so there must be a reason. In other words, Oh Se Chan couldn't understand why the Japanese government would pay such a price for an A dungeon. And there was one more person who shared his thoughts. Kim Woo Jin also feels the same way. Players who attacked four floor dungeons usually failed on the fourth floor. But that wasn't always the case. There were also situations where players failed four floor dungeons on the third floor. Because everyone tried to save as much of their strength as possible for the final floor. In preparation for the hard challenge, everyone would want to conserve their strength and hide their trump cards unless absolutely necessary. It wasn't strange that they'd feel that way. Especially for four-floor dungeons where the boss monster is named in the dungeon's title. If they knew what monster they would have to face on the fourth floor, they couldn't help but feel that way. It was the same for the Hellhound dungeon. Players who entered the Hellhound dungeon would have their minds filled with the Hellhound as soon as they arrived on the third floor. It's important to conserve strength. Of course, this wasn't a foolish decision. In fact, it was a very logical and rational decision. But in this case, it's the problem. But as always, there were exceptions for everything. Because the damage can be minimized as long as you're willing to make sacrifices and endure some of it. 
But what if they felt it was possible to conserve more power by using a situation where the majority would live at the expense of a few? What if they could be saved by sacrificing a few? Then the accidents would begin to happen. It's suicide to make such a decision against the boss monster of the third floor, an ogre. Moreover, when dealing with monsters like ogres, such decisions were bound to have many accidents. Excuse me. Then Li Jina's voice was heard in the ear of Kim Wu Jin who was wearing the Grim Reaper's mask. The voice had been delivered through the skeleton that Kim Wu Jin was connected to. Why are you doing that while I'm fighting against the ogre? Ha. Huh. In addition, Li Jina was currently locked in combat with the ogre boss. Also when will I be getting reinforcements? In fact, he was fighting alone. He was going against the ogre without the support of any skeleton soldiers except for the small goblin skeleton that Kim Wu Jin was using to watch over the situation. In such a situation, Kim Wu Jin's mention of sacrifice made Li Jina incredibly dissatisfied. Hearing Li Jina's words, Kim Wu Jin spoke through the skeleton soldier's mouth. Ogres are monsters that are hard to find but they were also difficult to handle when you do encounter them battle experience can't be bought with money so you should take this opportunity to learn everything you can. What? Endure it. Kim Wu Jin's words scared Li Jina greatly. What the hell are you saying? I thought you said you would launch an attack after I grabbed the ogre's aggro. Kim Wu Jin shrugged slightly. That was a lie. A lie. Because you need to gain experience fighting against ogres and you never would have faced the ogre alone if I didn't tell you that. Fuck, of course, I wouldn't. It's an ogre. An ogre. It was then. Ugh, fuck fuck. Li Jina stopped talking since he had to focus completely on the fight. Roar. Soon after, the ogre's roar was heard. It seemed the ogre had learned Li Jina's expression because of his swearing. Kim Wu Jin, who was watching the situation through the skeleton, gave Li Jina some brief assurance. You won't die, you're wearing the Nemean lion's skin. Of course, there was no answer to his assurance. But Kim Wu Jin didn't really care about that anymore. I finally found it. Because he had finally found what he was looking for. Anubis' eyes have opened. The ogre's nest and the remains of the players who had come before that was what Kim Wu Jin had been looking for. Chapter, 187 A taxi quietly drove to Tokyo International Airport. There was nothing that stood out about this taxi, except for the fact that the passengers in it were Prince Khalid, who had enough wealth to shake the world, and Miyazaki Sakura, the Sword Saint's first disciple. I never expected you to take a normal taxi instead of a limousine. When Miyazaki Sakura asked this question, Prince Khalid looked at her and smiled. A man who's moving around secretively can't drive around in a golden Rolls Royce or charter a flight can he? Then the plane. Naturally, I'll be flying economy class. No one would ever believe that a man with the money to buy enough stocks to get management rights of an airline company would travel to the airport in a normal taxi and sit in an economy seat. Miyazaki Sakura admired that fact. You are really prepared. Well, it's not exactly pleasant, so let's not do this again. Of course, this didn't mean that the prince enjoyed doing such things. Even if all he had done was handle a mess, Prince Khalid was still forced to do everything secretively. Moreover, it wasn't even because of his own problems. Prince Khalid's sudden visit to Tokyo this time was due to the request from the Sword Saint. I'm sorry. This was the reason Sakura Miyazaki had come to see him off, as well as the reason she apologized. When she said that, Prince Khalid shook his hand. I don't need an apology I'm happy as long as the work is done well. Prince Khalid then closed his eyes. So I'll pray and hope that I hear the news about two obituaries soon. Miyazaki Sakura smiled at those words. Prince Khalid on the other hand, opened his eyes and looked at her with a serious expression. It's no laughing matter if Isaac Ivanov succeeds in attacking the dungeon, you will have to give him the Aegis shield. After a moment of silence, Prince Khalid finally asked a question that had been bothering him for a while. Why the hell did he offer such an item as the reward? Surely he had other legendary items that he could have used instead. Instead of answering, Miyazaki Sakura's lips curled up into a slightly mocking smile. Prince Khalid understood immediately. 
Really? Yes, that's right. The reason the Sword Saint offered the Aegis Shield as a reward for Isaac Ivanov's team clearing the dungeon. Anubis' eyes have closed. Kim Wu Jin's eyes, which had been tinted black, slowly shifted back to their original color. Meanwhile, Kim Wu Jin placed the skull he was holding back on the ground. In Kim Wu Jin's mind, the memories of the bone's owner, which he had just witnessed through the eyes of Anubis, flashed by. Sorry we couldn't stay together till the end. An ogre. Does it make sense that a monster like that would appear on this goddamn third floor? Hellhound, no wonder that thing is in the captain's hands. That memory ended there. Aegis shield. Oh my god captain, where did you get this? Huh. The sword saint gave it to you. The Aegis shield. Among the numerous weapons that existed in Greek mythology, a shield was considered to be one of the strongest. Those who had gathered around the captain were all ogling the shield with excitement flashing in their eyes. It was the same for Kim Woo Jin. So that's the reason. Kim Woo Jin, who had witnessed the scene in the memories of the corpse, was bound to be excited after finding the truth. That's why they set the Aegis shield as the clear reward. The sword saint had set the Aegis shield as the clear reward, but the shield was already stuck in the dungeon. And this was the reason why the sword saint had hidden this place for such a long time, despite having to pay a heavy price. Of course, that wasn't the reason why Kim Woo Jin was excited. On the contrary, it made him a bit angry. If this is the case, then the reason why he offered the Aegis shield as a reward was to screw us over. In a sense, it was like the sword saint was mocking Kim Woo Jin. Nevertheless, the reason Kim Woo Jin was excited was simple. After I leave the dungeon with the Aegis shield already in my possession, the reward will have to change. The sword saint could not give Isaac Ivanov the Aegis shield as a reward for clearing the dungeon. I'm curious what hell give instead. So he would have to prepare something else. This was why Kim Woo Jin was very excited. On the seventeenth day after Isaac Ivanov's party had been trapped in the dungeon. Players are still unable to enter the Hellhound dungeon. Isaac Ivanov's party is still alive. Isaac Ivanov's party was still surviving in the dungeon. That was it. The media called it survival and did not use the term attack. The public opinion was the same. No one thought that Isaac Ivanov was attacking the dungeon. They believed that they were simply burning day by day till they melted completely, like a candle. In other words, the time of opportunity was slowly approaching for those who sought to gain Isaac Ivanov's legacy. Everyone, including the five great guilds, are interested in the Hellhound dungeon. Will there be an all-star lineup for Isaac Ivanov's revenge? The media was more focused on what would happen after Isaac Ivanov's death rather than Isaac Ivanov himself TL, Deja Vu. No guild has officially declared an attack on the Hellhound dungeon yet. The Japanese government, so far, no guilds have proposed any plans to attack the dungeon. However, despite expressing their will, there was not a single group that announced a dungeon attack. As the competition rate wasn't very high, it was advantageous to take the lead in situations like this. Nevertheless, the reason the guilds didn't hurry to announce their attack was simple. Is the Hellhound really such a horrific monster? Not just horrific it's much more terrifying than a hatchling isn't it ranked 7th amongst all the boss monsters in 4 floors. Because the floors are on different levels. The Hellhound was extremely strong. No, the sheer horror of the Hellhound could not be expressed with the word strong. First of all, its skin was so thick that it could not be cut by an item lower than the unique rank, and even then, its resilience was very high. It was almost impossible to leave a scar after cutting it. Its physical capabilities were also terrifying. With a body length of around 8 meters, including its tail, it was much faster than a cheetah, and the amount of strength it had is frighteningly high. But the truly terrifying part is its special abilities. But the thing that truly made the Hellhound stand out was the special abilities it possessed. First of all, its blood is highly corrosive, so it would melt anything you injure it with unless they are unique grade or higher. Even if you stab it with your weapon, its blood would melt the weapon and the wound would heal. Physical attacks basically don't work. The fact that the Hellhound's blood was corrosive enough to dissolve even weapons, 
combined with the Hellhound's high resilience created a synergy that almost completely negated physical attacks. In fact, none of the players who successfully hunted a Hellhound had done so with physical attacks. What was worse was the fact that they also had abilities that could amplify those advantages. The worst is when he spits Hellfire. Hellfire. It was a powerful flame that could melt even unique grade items, and once it became attached to something, it couldn't be put out by ordinary means. The Hellhound spat such terrifying flames from its mouth TL, talk about bad breath. This was why the guilds hesitated before declaring an attack on the Hellhound dungeon. Legendary armor was a necessity to attack the Hellhound. It's not possible without legendary armor. It's meaningless if it's not really strong Hellfire can't be put out so easily after it attaches. Moreover, just a legendary item would not be able to cut it they would need legendary armor that was powerful even among legendary items. As expected, the top 5 guilds are talking a lot, but they aren't doing much acting well, there aren't many guilds that have items on par with Aegis Shield after all. Without an item of that caliber, it was almost impossible to plan an attack. Although, we are the same. This was also the reason why the Aegis Shield was in the Hellhound dungeon in the first place. After all, the Sword Saint wasn't stupid, would he really send players into the dungeon without some kind of assurance? The moment he created an elite team he considered capable enough, he gave them the Aegis Shield and instructed them to clear the dungeon. However, the attack failed and the Aegis Shield was left in the dungeon. Anyway, Prince Khalid was surprised to learn that. Surprised? He said he didn't know Master could make such jokes. Promising Isaac Ivanov to give him the Aegis Shield was indeed a joke. A joke. However, there was no sign of humor on the Sword Saint's face when he heard those words. Do I look like someone who'd make jokes? Miyazaki Sakura was surprised by the question he asked. It wasn't a joke. The Sword Saint explained. If I offered the Aegis Shield to Isaac Ivanov as a clearance reward, then he would naturally tell those around him about it. The reason he had mentioned the Aegis Shield to Isaac Ivanov. And no one would guess that the Hellhound dungeon that has appeared is something that was failed even with the Aegis Shield. Ah! Only then did Miyazaki Sakura understand the Sword Saint's intentions. The Sword Saint hadn't informed Isaac Ivanov about the Aegis Shield in order to trick him, he had done it to keep the other players off guard. It will be a tomb that stays for eternity. By doing so, he would turn the Hellhound dungeon into a graveyard for their competitors. The Sword Saint firmly believed this, which is why he spoke in a confident tone. No one would be able to find what they're looking for there. Chapter 188 PSH In a hellish scene where the ground was riddled with cracks from which yellow sulfuric smoke spewed, a hole could be found. And in this hole which appeared to have been dug artificially, was a man with a skull mask covering his face. Before long, the man climbed out of the hole carrying a square-shaped shield in his hands. Then the item status window appeared before the man's eyes. Aegis Shield Rating, Legendary Required Level, Level 1 or Higher Description, The strongest shield made by Hephaestus when magic power or stamina is injected into it, God's protection will be activated. Magic power or stamina can be used to activate God's protection TL, yes the same sentence with some variations. Cannot be destroyed. Aegis Shield Kim Woo Jin was currently looking at an item that he'd only heard rumors of in his past life. He hit it well. The moment the shield's previous wielder realized that they would fail the dungeon, he proceeded to use all kinds of means to hide the Aegis shield. If it wasn't for Anubis' eyes, I never would have found it. Kim Woo Jin also admitted that he would have never found it if he hadn't used Anubis' eyes, which showed just how well the previous wielder hid the item. He risked his life just to hide this item he was incredibly loyal to the Sword Saint. For him to be so willing to give his life for the Sword Saint, the amount of loyalty he had couldn't be small. Of course, his efforts had been futile in the end. The Aegis Shield, which he had worked so hard to hide, had fallen into Kim Woo Jin's hands. However, nothing in Kim Woo Jin's expression showed joy at obtaining such a remarkable treasure. It was then. Was there supposed to be two hellhounds? Li Jin Ah, who was on Hellhound reconnaissance with a linked skeleton soldier, 
asked Kim Woo Jin a question. Ha! Huh. Or am I just seeing things? To that question, Kim Woo Jin gave a simple answer. Two is right. The reason that Kim Woo Jin did not show any joy was the fact that there were two hellhounds instead of one. This was the reason the previous team failed the dungeon even though they had an amazing item like the Aegis Shield. No matter how amazing the Aegis Shield was, there was no way that it could defend against two hellhounds at the same time. Damn it, I would have preferred if you'd said I was seeing things at such a scam to have two monsters like that. It was terrible news. Who could imagine fighting two hellhounds when even one was considered a nightmare? What will we do? Li Jina asked this question with a tense expression on his face. Instead of answering, Kim Wu Jin contemplated silently. He grew more worried as the silence stretched on, but Li Jina did not rush Kim Wu Jin. Take your time, even I could not have imagined such a situation. Even Li Jina, who had experienced all kinds of ridiculous situations with Kim Wu Jin, knew that this situation wasn't normal. It's not a situation that I couldn't imagine. Ha! Huh. This is within the range of my expectations. What? Kim Wu Jin didn't bother to explain to the surprised Li Jino. As Kim Wu Jin said, although the current situation was not the best, it was still within his estimated range. If they failed even with the Aegis Shield, then there must be a reason. To be precise, he had come to this conclusion after learning on the third floor that the Aegis Shield was in the dungeon. D Dash, do you have a plan? The strategy is the same first remove the hellhounds minions, the hell dogs afterwards, you'll hold the hellhounds aggro while the skeleton soldiers attack it. The hellhounds couldn't only be hunted using magic attacks, they could also be hunted with physical attacks. As long as they used weapons that were strong enough to not dissolve because of the corrosive blood, then, no matter how resilient the hellhounds were, would they still be able to demonstrate their full abilities when there were weapons stuck all over their bodies? Of course, something like that would require at least 100 unique grade weapons. The material used will be the hatchling's bones, as I mentioned before. So he'd prepared the hatchling skeleton for this specific reason. There was very little value in creating a hatchling skeleton soldier. The hatchling skeleton soldier, which could not fly, would merely be a large skeleton soldier which required an enormous amount of man to maintain because of its tremendous size. This was why Kim Wu Jin used the term material. If it's a weapon made from the hatchling's bones then it wouldn't be corroded by the hellhound's blood. Kim Wu Jin had used the hatchling skeleton to create dragon bone swords. This was the preparation he had made to hunt the hellhound, and it was also the plan he had made with Li Jina before. I know that that's why you made me fight the ogre, wasn't it? Kim Wu Jin had used the boss of the third floor, the ogre, to train Li Jina's senses and combat ability to the limit. But what about the other one? The problem was that there would still be another hellhound that they had to deal with. Kim Wu Jin gave a simple answer. I'll kill the other one. So you're going to stall the off. Li Jina realized that Kim Wu Jin's words didn't match what he had been expecting, so he asked again. Kill it? Instead of answering, Kim Wu Jin equipped the Aegis shield to his left hand. Gained achievement the one blessed by God. Gained achievement the legendary collector. The Ring of Hercules has unlocked a new ability. All recoveries increased by 100%. You can use God's protection. Following the notification, Kim Wu Jin unsheathed the Machia that he had at his waist. A day in the life of a predator was usually quite peaceful. The same was true for the hellhounds and their minions. The hellhounds and their minions simply lay around their lair filled with the smell of sulfur, some of them were yawning while some were already asleep with their stomachs in the air. Rattle. It was two skeletons, who appeared from the sulfuric smoke, that broke the ambience and tranquility of this scene. The skeletons didn't try to hide their presence at all as they began to move toward the group of helldogs. Gur. Instead of being surprised at their appearance, however, the hell dogs immediately prepared for battle. A woo. A woo. The reason they showed such a reaction was because they had experienced this situation numerous times before. Unsurprisingly, one of the hellhounds, the leader of the hell dogs, also made its move. Gur. While its minion let out loud cries and made a fuss, the hellhound simply let out a low growl as it appeared in front of them. 
It was eight or so meters long, and its body was so black that it was difficult to fully distinguish its shape nevertheless, its presence was overwhelming. Moreover, globules of black fire would drip from its mouth with every breath that it took. TSS The flames that fell to the floor burned mercilessly even though they had nothing to fuel them. Hellfire Fire that never went out after it appeared. What a bullshit dog. Then Li Jina also showed up. Dressed in the Nemean lion's leather, Li Jina looked at the giant beast in front of him and muttered. After I kill it, I'll specifically ask him to make it into my own skeleton dog and name it Ferrari. That was the end of his muttering. Kyaha. The battle began immediately following the charge of a skeleton knight atop a skeletal wolf. The battle was quite simple. The skeletons fought against the hell dogs, and at the same time, Li Jina faced off against the hellhound. Draw. A wool. Li Jina stalled the hellhound by constantly provoking it to gain its attention. It was at that time that the other hellhound, who had remained silent this entire time, began making its move. As soon as the battle became chaotic, it lifted its body off the ground and carefully began moving through the sulfur fumes. Its movement was very reminiscent of an assassin. It was clear that this monster intended to use the cover of the chaos to eliminate what it perceived to be the head of the opposing group. Naturally, this couldn't be seen as a predatory act. Instead, this was evidence that it had already experienced similar situations numerous times before and had developed its own way of handling it. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was also aiming for this point. Poot. Kim Woo Jin, who had been hiding nearby with the desert chameleon cloak, used the makya to cut a piece of the hellhound's flesh off. Guhu. Surprised, the hellhound shot a fireball towards Kim Woo Jin's direction. Pot. However, the fireball hit an invisible wall before it quickly began to disappear. The moment the hellhound shut its mouth in surprise at what happened, another piece of flesh was cut from its side. Tuck. Tuck. Its corrosive blood flowed from the wounds and melted the ground. Of course, the injury healed almost immediately. The problem was that the wound did not recover to its original shape. To put it simply, its body's volume had decreased. This was considered the best method to deal with monsters who had high resilience. This reminds me of when I hunted the Cerberus in the 8th floor dungeon. Naturally, it was a method that had already been confirmed to work exceptionally against hellhounds. At that, I had to hunt 23 hellhounds. And the confirmation was very reliable. Chapter 189. There was one thing that you had to keep in mind when fighting hellhounds. Never touch the hellfire. It didn't matter if you had a legendary item with very special abilities. But if you didn't, hell would begin the moment you touched the hellfire. If hellfire came into contact with your skin, the most common and effective measure was to cut off the part that had touched the hellfire. Was more explanation still needed? Of course, if you were to say these words to a tank, they would all give you the same response. Fuck, if it's as easy as you're making it sound, why don't you tank instead? It was virtually impossible. First of all, there were no rules to a hellhound's usage of hellfire. There were some signs when the hellhound was about to use it, but no sign could be used as a clear indicator. Moreover, the hellhound itself was an incredibly large monster. Would it be possible to completely avoid the hellfire when faced with a monster like that? However, that was exactly what Li Jina was doing at that moment. Roar. He perfectly evaded the hellfire that the hellhound spewed with a well-timed roll. Moreover, this was the nineteenth time this had happened. During his confrontation with the hellhound, he had avoided nineteen surprise hellfire attacks as well as body slams, scratches, and bites. It was quite surprising. Is this really happening? In fact, Li Jina was surprising even himself at the moment. Of course, Li Jina's surprise was only half serious. Because he knew. This is why he pushes me so hard. That this was only possible because of none other than the intense training he received from Kim Wu Jin. In that training that seemed to go beyond simple life and death, Li Jina had learned how to instinctively read monsters' behavior. This was one of the most important skills that a player could possess. And the result was quite clear. A wool. 
The hellhound that could even defeat experts wearing equipment worth billions of dollars, now looked like a hedgehog with numerous swords sticking from its body. This monster, which would give most players nightmares, was now in a very miserable state. Koo, I can't believe I've gotten this strong and pretty amazing after all. Lee Jin Ah admired his power. He felt like he deserved to feel drunk on his power. Today's battle would surely hold an important place in his future biography, with an entire page being dedicated to it. But it wasn't something he could do while the hellhound was still alive. Ah! In the short moment that Li Jin Ah had lowered his guard, the hellhound spat out a black fireball with amazing accuracy. Is it possible? Li Jin Ah, who had avoided the Hellhound's Hellfire 19 times before, was experiencing this situation for the first time. Moreover, the Hellfire that the Hellhound had spat out before completely surrounded him like a minefield. It was impossible to avoid it. Fuck. Of course, even at this moment, Li Jin Ah was not frozen in shock. Instead, he quickly realized what he would have to do. I'll give up an arm. Block it with one arm before cutting off the affected area. I use my right hand to eat, so I'll give up my left. Li Jin Ah raised his left hand without hesitation. It was then. Clang. The hellfire that had been flying toward Li Jin Ah hit an invisible wall and disappeared. Ha. Huh. Li Jin Ah was caught off guard. Standing in front of him was Kim Wu Jin with the Aegis shield. He had arrived. Li Jin Ah couldn't help but feel some admiration for Kim Wu Jin who appeared like a savior while wondering if had already taken care of his hellhound. However, he didn't ask the question. Kyaha. The moment the hellhound's fire had been blocked, the two skeleton knights that had been waiting, rushed forward and stabbed their swords into the hellhound's body. P.U.K. Meanwhile, Kim Wu Jin also approached the hellhound. The climax of the battle immediately began. With one last cry, the hellhound fell to the ground. Its appearance was quite horrifying to look at. Dozens of swords had been stuck into its body, and there were parts that appeared sunken as though they were cut away and healed. Kehu. Nevertheless, the hellhound forced itself back up again, a black fireball visible in its mouth. A woo, a woo. It seemed that it was burning the last of its energy to give its all in this fight. We don't need to fight any more. However, Kim Wu Jin had no intention of giving the Hellhound such an honorable ending. He wasn't here to shoot a movie or a drama after all. Rat tell. At Kim Wu Jin's command, all the skeleton soldiers immediately began to retreat. The skeleton knights also distanced themselves from the dying Hellhound. He was simply waiting for it to die. Kung. When it noticed this, the Hellhound cried out in anger, but it changed nothing. The skeletons all retreated to a distance the hellhound couldn't reach, waiting for their prey to die. Kim Wu Jin also observed the hellhound from a distance. Horus' eyes have opened. Kim Wu Jin's eyes suddenly began emitting golden light. Then a bunch of information appeared in front of him. One of the things that stood out was an item that was in the hellhound's stomach. Seventh Tale of the Nine Tailed Fox. Rating, Legendary. Required Level. Level 1 or higher. Description The seventh tail of the nine tailed fox, it has the ability to create an alter ego. Chance to create an alter ego when equipped. The seventh tail of the nine tailed fox. So, this is the reason. This tail, which had the chance to create an alter ego, was the reason there were two hellhounds. This is the first time I've seen the seventh tail. In addition, it was the first time that Kim Wu Jin had encountered the item. How fortunate. Of course, it was a wonderful gift that he had no intention to refuse. Is it over now? Then Li Jin Ah approached him while asking a question. His voice was hoarse, showing just how exhausted he was. This also showed that the tension and pressure that he had felt for the first time had finally eased. It was worth it. Ugh, when I saw that there were two of them, I instantly got dizzy. No one in the world would have dared to imagine that there would be two hellhounds in the dungeon. From Li Jina's perspective, learning that information was like being told to make preparations for his death. Don't relax. Kim Wu Jin looked at Li Jina before saying. The most important part has yet to come. Ha. Huh. 
Kim Wu Jin began to explain to the confused Li Jino. Things have changed in many ways that's why we have to modify our plan for when we leave the dungeon. Before entering the dungeon, Kim Wu Jin didn't know about the Aegis Shield, two hellhounds and the seventh tail of the nine-tailed fox. This meant that they would have to revise the plan they'd made in advance since the situation had changed. Firstly, we'll hide the Aegis Shield. The most important thing for them was the deal with the Aegis Shield. Hide it. If we ask the Sword Saint for the Aegis Shield that we already collected and hid, he will surely feel miserable. Ha! Yeah, we have to torment that bastard. Li Jina nodded. And we'll need to add a few injuries. Injuries? The Sword Saint would doubt it if the two of us cleared a dungeon his elite team couldn't even with the Aegis Shield, without any injuries. When he heard that, Li Jina nodded again. I'll have to cut off at least an arm. However, Li Jina shouted in fright when he heard the next words Kim Wu Jin said. Why an arm? It will have more of an impact it's fine, I can always reattach it after we leave, can't I? Our dash, right, but cutting off an arm. Li Jina, in your case, you will need to have injuries all over your body. No, wait. Why should I do that? Huh? Why am I the one who has to suffer the most? Kim Wu Jin gave a simple reply to the unconvinced Li Jino. I almost died twice already, now it's your turn. Li Jina only had one thought at that moment. You really are the spawn of Satan. You have slain the Hellhound. Your level has increased. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your capabilities. The Emissary of the Underworld has bestowed some power onto you. Only. The rank of the Skeleton Knight skill has increased by one. The rank of the Bone Sword skill has increased by one. The notifications announcing the end of the dungeon attack sounded out. However, Kim Wu Jin didn't pay much attention to it. Now that I've truly gone against the Sword Saint, there will no longer be any clumsy jokes. This was just the beginning. Now, the real war starts. Chapter, 190 it was the twenty-first day since Isaac Ivanov had been trapped in the Hellhound dungeon, and the world had already gotten over what happened. There's probably not much time left. I wonder if we'll be able to recover their remains. Most people had already come to accept Isaac Ivanov's death. Of course, not everyone thought that way. In particular, O Seichan and his subordinates thought differently. Still no news. However, Although they were not convinced of Isaac Ivanov's imminent demise, they still felt anxious. Yes sir, nothing yet. Do you think something happened? It wasn't that they were beginning to lose faith. After all, they wouldn't have let the two of them enter the dungeon in the first place if they didn't believe in them. I don't know. But wasn't it common for strange situations to occur during dungeon attacks? In face of this situation, even O Seichan began to feel a little nervous. Ah, uh, I don't know let's eat something first we hadn't had Chinese in a long time, have we? How about Tang Suyuk? His subordinates could tell that he was changing the subject to food to hide his nervousness. He looks really anxious. It's not even Christmas and he's mentioning Tang Suyuk, should we take him to a hospital? Oh Seichan was very nervous. As Oh Seichan began thinking about what dishes he wanted to order, a subordinate suddenly shouted. They're out. At those words, O oh Seichan shot to his feet and shouted, his excitement almost exploding from his body. They're finally out. That's right. I had complete faith in them. I knew they would beat it. They are amazing guys after all. Ah, I'm getting the sudden urge to kiss them. Park Yongwan's team has cleared the sixth floor dungeon. When the subordinate continued speaking, O oh Seichan shut his mouth and turned to look at them. When he saw the eerie glint in O oh Seichan's eyes, the subordinate couldn't help but ask while having a did I do something wrong? Expression on their face. I dash, is there a problem? You're asking that now? We don't care about Park Yongwan, you don't have to announce it so readily when he leaves the dungeon. In response to O oh Seichan's cold words, the subordinate could only nod dumbly without saying anything. It was then. Another subordinate entered the room and shouted in the same manner as the previous subordinate. 
Didn't someone already come to announce that that shit came out? Ha! Huh. Oh Seichan simply gestured with his chin toward the subordinate who had tilted their head in confusion. No, I was just talking to myself so, who came out? Kim Woo Jin is out. At that moment, the expression on Oh Seichan's face changed. They're finally out. That's right. I had complete faith in them. Absolutely. If I were there ah, really. However, the excitement could not burst out at this time because he had already expended it previously. So Oh Seichan gave up being excited and asked instead. So what's the situation on Isaac Ivanov's side? Kim Woo Jin's right arm was cut off, and as for Lee Jin ah, he's currently in a coma they have already begun treatment. It was a very disturbing situation. However, neither Oh Seichan nor his subordinates appeared to be surprised by this information. Instead, Oh Seichan spoke in a calm tone. So Li Jin Ah is the one pretending to be in a coma this time? I think so. This was because they had already agreed to such a result beforehand. Okay, then let's move on to the next step. After being briefed on the situation, Oh Seichan turned to a subordinate standing beside him. Prepare the press conference. Yes, sir. Then he turned to another subordination. Arrange a protection detail for Kim Woo Jin I'm sure the sword saint will try something funny don't forget to backtrace it too. Understood. Oh Se Chan then pointed to a third subordinate. Seeing this, the subordinate nodded, showing that he was ready to receive the orders. Oh Se Chan told him. Tell Park Yong Wan that Kim Woo Jin is still alive. However, the orders that Oh Se Chan gave him caught the subordinate by surprise. Tell him that he faked his death because of the threat of terrorism he had already been targeted twice, so such a justification would be considered acceptable. A smile spread across Oh Seichan's lips. Of course, don't forget to charge for the cost involved in the process ah, hell need to continue to hide in the future, so include the cost for that as well it's not easy to hide from the Japanese government for so long, is it? A very, very large smile. After the terrorist incident against Isaac Ivanov, the Japanese government took control of the situation and strengthened the security around the dungeon gate. This was because the dungeon gate to the Hellhound dungeon had become a symbolic place as a result of the terrorist incident, and there was a chance that similar activities might occur again. Still no news today. They're really lasting a long time. They might be hiding in the dungeon because they don't want to die. Maybe, but if you think about it, as soon as the dungeon attack is over, the Japanese government will definitely face criticisms again. Damn, they might withhold the information. This also meant that the news reporters gathered would only be able to acquire information after the Japanese government released a statement, which made them incredibly displeased. Of course, not everyone was complaining. Some still showed the spirit of a reporter. You don't have to stay in that position. Some people had managed to find loopholes through which to monitor the dungeon gate despite the strict control. No way, scoops only come to those who are prepared. This was the case for two foreign reporters who were sitting in ways that allowed them to keep watch on the dungeon gate. Their bodies, which were forced to maintain a strange position for a long time, cried in pain. Nevertheless, none of this was visible on their faces. Instead, their eyes shined brightly as though they truly expected to catch a scoop. Ha! Huh. I think something is happening. Another reporter approached the reporter who'd said this, looking at them as they stared at the dungeon gate through their camera. Really? What's going on? However, the reporter didn't respond to them and kept looking through the camera as though they had been frozen in time. What is it? Did Isaac come out of the dungeon? Of course, he was just making a joke. These few reporters were sure that Isaac Ivanov would not be able to return alive. However, the reporter with the camera did not laugh at the joke. Instead, when he heard the word Isaac, he shouted out subconsciously. Isaac came back alive. Chapter, 191 Players who were considered to have transcended the human race would sometimes have frivolous legends about them. Players active in six-floor dungeons usually had one or two legendary tales about them. However, none of them had returned from death. But it had happened now. Isaac Ivanov's party comes back alive. Isaac Ivanov returns from death. 
Isaac Ivanov, who virtually everyone in the world had believed to be dead, had returned with his life intact. The world's response to this fact was simple. Is this true? This doesn't make sense how did they clear an A-rank 4-floor dungeon with just the two of them? Are the Japanese dungeon using actors to avoid criticism? This is 100% false news. No one in the world believed the news. Isaac Ivanov lost an arm. A serious injury. Isaac Ivanov's teammate currently in a coma. Isaac Ivanov's party currently receiving urgent treatment. However, they gradually began to believe it as more and more news articles began appearing. Exclusive. Reporter manages to capture image of Isaac Ivanov as he left the dungeon. People could no longer doubt the news when pictures and videos of Isaac Ivanov after he left the dungeon began appearing. Isaac is back from hell. Savior. He's the real savior. This is a miracle. Instead, the world became filled with cheers as Isaac Ivanov once again created a miracle that no one else had managed to do before. At the same time, another man was seeing another miracle with his own eyes. Congratulations on clearing the dungeon. In a dark room, Kim Woo Jin sent Park Yong Wan congratulations for his successful dungeon attack through a video call. Park Yong Wan smiled and said, This is the first time I've seen a dead person come back to life. After saying that, Park Yongwon pressed his fingers to his temple. Then he recalled the memory of last night when he had stepped out of the dungeon gate after finishing the attack on the dungeon. The situation had been pretty tense at that time. The attack on the sixth floor dungeon was much more difficult than he had expected as an accident had occurred during the battle with the boss monster of the sixth floor, the Sword Weasel. In order to reduce the damage caused by the accident, Park Yongwon had needed to do even more work, and as a result, by the end of the dungeon attack, he sported new, serious injuries. However, it was only after he arrived outside the dungeon that Park Yongwon believed he received the truly deadly damage. It was at that moment that he had been notified about Kim Woo Jin's death at the same time, he had also learned the news about Isaac Ivanov's situation. Park Yongwon had felt his mind go blank. That was how shocking these two pieces of news were. I never thought I'd experience a day when two dead men would come back to life. But now he had learned that the dead had come back to life at the same time. I'm sorry. You don't need to apologize from my perspective, you being alive is already good enough. Of course, this news made him happy. It was much better to get a little shock instead of actually having his investments simply collapse. The only thing I'm curious about is why you faked your death in the first place, so explain that I don't really like surprises. However, he still needed to hear the reason for their deception. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin explained it to him. After I was attacked by the Japanese players, I had a discussion with Isaac Ivanov, and we both came to the same conclusion. What conclusion? We believe it is likely that someone in the Japanese government, or even the Japanese government itself is targeting Isaac Ivanov. Park Yongwan nodded slightly at those words. This was a sign for Kim Woo Jin to continue talking. Naturally, we were sure they would attack Isaac Ivanov another time, so we deliberately faked my death this way someone would be in the shadows, monitoring their actions and like we expected, there was another attack. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin let out a long sigh. It was only through God's grace that Isaac made it back this time. That long sigh showed a deep sincerity that no one would doubt. Even Park Yong Wan was the same. I heard the report of the situation. It was absolutely impossible to clear an A-ranked dungeon that had hellhounds without sufficient preparation. The heavens truly helped him that would not have been possible without a heavy dose of luck. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that he had been helped by the heavens. Even an elite player like Park Yongwan was willing to bet his entire fortune on that. Anyway, it's good that he survived although there were injuries. Are the injuries serious? Isaac's aren't that serious head managed to recover his severed arm so he was able to get it reattached instead, it's the other one's injury that was more severe. What a pity. Although he said this, Park Yongwan wasn't actually disappointed. As long as Isaac is alive. In his opinion, it was fine as long as Isaac Ivanov survived. Anyway, Isaac has made up his mind. Then Kim Woo Jin continued speaking. 
He will end all activities in Japan after getting what Japan owes him. Park Yongwan nodded at those words. There's no reason to keep hanging round those sneaky. So we'd like to know if Mr. Park Yongwan would help us deal with the Japanese government you are the only supporter that Isaac has with any influence in Japan. They wanted him to go against the Japanese government. Park Yongwan responded to the request without hesitation. No problem I'll even confront the sword saint if I have to. Kim Woo-jin smiled at Park Yongwan's confidence. Thank you. This is what I should do as a sponsor. After saying this, Park Yongwan changed the subject once again. So what does Isaac Ivanov intend to do in the future? I don't know the detailed plan and it's possible that he might change his mind but from what he said it seems she intends to target all the dungeons the Messiah Guild abandoned. Really? Park Yongwan was surprised by that answer. Targeting the dungeons abandoned by the Messiah Guild? Yes. To attack the dungeons abandoned by the Messiah Guild meant to attack basically the worst dungeons. It took tremendous willpower for Isaac Ivanov, who had already faced the possibility of dying in a dungeon, to say that. Of course, there was another reason why Park Yongwan was so surprised. I picked the right guy. He clearly knew exactly what it meant to attack dungeons the Messiah Guild had left behind, and the value they had. Clearing dungeons that the Messiah Guild gave up was basically challenging the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov intended to challenge the Messiah Guild in a way that no one had dared to before. Moreover, there was a high chance that he would be able to do it. He'll definitely do it. At that moment, Isaac Ivanov's appeal rose once more. Then Kim Woo-jin made an even more attractive offer to him. But now he'll never move without protection after experiencing this twice, it's natural that he'd be wary. Park Yongwan nodded. From four floor dungeons nup, you need more support and assistance. As he said this, Park Yongwan drew a picture in his head. This is the chance to ensure that he completely comes under me. The main reason players join strong guilds was to block external variables as much as possible during dungeon attacks. Especially with four and five floor dungeons, because the number of these dungeons wasn't high, attacks would often happen in foreign countries. This meant that the same thing could happen again unless Isaac Ivanov was supported by that country's government. Isaac Ivanov is finally coming into my hand how exciting. From Park Yongwan's perspective, this was the perfect opportunity to truly become more than Isaac Ivanov's sponsor. Tell Isaac Ivanov if he comes under me, I will support him in every possible way. He showed his willingness to pay the price. Kim Woo-jin checked once again. Should I tell him those exact words? That's right. Understood. Okay, then that should be all the important matters do you have anything else to report? I don't. Park Yong-won nodded at that. It was then. Ah. Kim Woo-jin suddenly stopped Park Yong-won, who was about to end the call. I need funding. Funds? Park Yongwan's expression crumpled as he said this, and Kim Woo-jin nodded as he explained. Since I'm officially dead, I can't use the funds that were left in my name so please support me and since I'm in this kind of situation, I would need twice as much as usual. Park Yongwan's heart quivered slightly at those words. I'll support you. Thank you of course, please use money that is clean. Don't worry. He'll provide you with enough laundered money to even bribe the president. The call ended there. The moment the video call ended, Park Yongwan took out his smartphone and called his secretary. I need laundered money to send to Kim Woo Jin. Is it possible to do it right now? Oh, Sei Chan. Okay, then do that. After the phone call, Park Yongwan lay on his bed while thinking. I'm glad Kim Woo Jin is alive. Chapter 192 the best sushi restaurant in Japan was not an easy place to even make a reservation. Nevertheless, for the second time, three people had reserved the restaurant that was always filled with customers. It was an unspeakable luxury. I'm glad I got another chance to treat you properly. Kim Woo Jin, who was wearing the Isaac Ivanov mask, did not immediately respond to Miyazaki Sakura's words. In addition, his expression was not good. His face was stiff and his eyes were cold. The same was true for Lee Jina who sat beside him. Both of them looked at Miyazaki Sakura with cold expressions. 
it was clear that they didn't want to be there. Honestly, I don't want to enjoy this kind of relaxation. And if that still wasn't enough to express his displeasure, Kim Woo Jin spoke in English. The only reason I'm here is to confirm the deal there was an accident, but I cleared the dungeon as promised and now it's the Sword Saint's turn to keep his promise. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin immediately addressed the main subject. I would like to receive the Aegis Shield. At those words, Miyazaki Sakura took a sip of the tea in front of her, as if she was trying to avoid giving an immediate answer. Tension filled the room. Of course, Kim Woo Jin's inner thoughts weren't tense. There wasn't even a sliver of tension anywhere in his body. I'm in control. The situation was clear. The Sword Saint had promised to give them the Aegis Shield, but he didn't actually have the Aegis Shield. In the end, the only thing he could do was pay a price that was equivalent to that. And since they can't avoid it, it's better to finish the calculations quickly. Moreover, the price wasn't something that they could avoid just because they wanted to. In other words, they would have to negotiate, and Kim Woo Jin was the one who held the reins in this negotiation. That was why he had no need to be nervous. First, I'll start with an apology the reward that was promised at that time, the Aegis Shield, could not be provided due to unforeseen circumstances. The situation went exactly as Kim Woo Jin predicted. Then I'd like to receive an item of equivalent value. Miyazaki Sakura directly started the negotiation with a clear request rather than idle remarks. What item would you like to have instead? What items do you have? I can't reveal that information if there is any item you desire, we will see if we can adapt accordingly. Of course, she still intended to reduce the losses as much as possible during these negotiations. This also meant that she was preparing for a long negotiation. Shall we discuss while eating? As soon as she gave the signal, the door opened and a platter of sushi that was clearly crafted by an artisan appeared. At that moment, Li Jina's eyes shook. It was then. As the staff member stepped forward to place the platter on the table. As Li Jina's mouth became filled with saliva. And as Miyazaki Sakura began simulating a scenario in which she would be able to give their least valued legendary item to Isaac Ivanov. Kim Woo Jin spoke. I want Solomon's ring. Solomon's ring. Kim Woo Jin first learned of its existence about a year after the war with Japan had ended, and the Messiah Guild had become a transnational organization. Kim Woo Jin, these are items you need to look out for. Park Shinhai had come to visit him and she had brought a list of items with her. I don't think I need to explain the Aegis Shield, but do you know about Solomon's ring? This is my first time hearing about it. It has the ability to control monsters below the user's level it doesn't matter if they are a boss monster or not even dragons could be controlled as long as they are a lower level than the user. TL, whoa. It's an amazing item. That's exactly why I'm asking you to look out for it it would be very dangerous if an item like that were to fall into the king of undead's hands. That was the first time he'd heard about Solomon's ring. And that was also the last memory he had concerning Solomon's ring. Regardless of what Kim Woo Jin tried, he hadn't been able to find Solomon's ring, he couldn't even find a trace of it. The Sword Saint has Solomon's ring. It would be strange if he didn't choose that item after learning that the Sword Saint had it. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin didn't just ask for Solomon's ring because he coveted its ability. He definitely wanted it for its ability, but there was another reason that was just as important as that one. And that fact is only known to those close to the Sword Saint. Only a few people, including the Sword Saint and Bao God, knew who had Solomon's ring. No one else knew. Not even the Messiah Guild. In such a situation, just by bringing Solomon's ring up. What would he think if the name of this item came from Kim Woo Jin's mouth? The answer was obvious. It might cause some internal strife. Who the hell gave him the information? He would definitely pale at that question, and all sorts of suspicions and doubts would form in his mind. Just like Miyazaki Sakura in front of him. For a moment after hearing Kim Woo Jin's request, Miyazaki Sakura didn't react. It was a very sudden situation that left her stunned and speechless as if she had been hit by some random stranger as they passed by. That was how confused she was at that moment. What should I do? Should she tell him she would give it to him? Should she deny that they had it? 
Of course, it had already passed the point of no return. Ah. No matter which she had chosen, she shouldn't have hesitated. Realizing that fact, Kim Woo Jin continued speaking as her expression changed. Solomon's ring would be sufficient naturally, I know that the sword saint has it. At Kim Woo Jin's resolute words, Miyazaki Sakura only had one option. That's not something I can decide. With that, she gestured at the employee who had just placed down the sushi platter, to pick it up once more. Surprised by that fact, they turned to make eye contact with Miyazaki Sakura. It was only after receiving Sakura's eerie glare did the employee understand the seriousness of the situation and move forward to pick up the platter. I'll have to arrange another meeting I'm deeply sorry for the poor hospitality. Kim Woo-jin kept his thoughts to himself as he watched Miyazaki Sakura leave after saying those words. Lee jin -ah watched the sushi be carried out with dead eyes. It was clear that the meal had ended. I, I bet it went well. When he heard Oh se chans words, Li jin ahs facial expression crumpled. No, it didn't go well at all. Oh se chan was slightly surprised by Li jin -ah's words. Well, that's the beauty of negotiations, it's a push and pull but what happened? Why do you say that? However, he hadn't expected Li Jina to talk about the negotiations in this way. Of course, his surprise didn't last very long. Damn it, in the end, I still didn't get to eat any sushi. Damn it. Shit. Oh Seichan clicked his tongue as he heard Li Jina's absurd complaint. Hey, man how come you like free stuff so much now? Huh. Grow up you'd probably even drink lye if it was free. What did you just say? This time, it was Li Jina who made the strange expression. Was the person talking to him on the phone about receiving free stuff really Oh Se Chan? What about Kim Woo Jin? At those words, Li Jina turned to look at Kim Woo Jin who was beside him staring blankly at the air. I think he's looking at his status window. It was true. Kim Woo Jin was currently checking his stats. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 108. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats, HP 326755, Stamina 2319, Magic Power 3632. Achievements, 91. Extra Points, 0. As he looked at his stat window and ran simulations in his head, Kim Woo Jin's expression was not good. I'll be difficult. Lee Jin Ah approached him and handed the cell phone to him. The bald guy wants to talk to you. As Kim Woo Jin accepted the phone. Hey, you bastard. Just wait till you get back to Korea, I'll shave all your damn hair off. Bastard. He heard Oh Se Chan's angry shout. Kim Woo Jin frowned. That's an ominous threat. Huh. Ah, uh, sorry I wasn't talking to you. Get to the point. I heard the news did you really ask for Solomon's ring? Will they give it to you? What do you think? Of course, they won't they'll arrange for a negotiation somehow but there's something I want to ask you how did you know the sword saint had Solomon's ring? Even I didn't have that information. I can read the memories of the dead. Ha. Huh. Li Jina must have told you that I talked to corpses that is when I'm using Anubis eyes. This was the first time that Kim Woo Jin was revealing the effect of Anubis eyes to anyone. What did you say? What did you say? Of course, both Li Jina and Oh Se Chan were surprised. Then Oh Se Chan once again shouted over the phone. Hey, Li Jina. Why didn't you report such important information to me? Th dash, that I just thought Kim Woo Jin was a pervert who likes to play with corpses. I really can't believe I trusted such an idiot to help me fight the Messiah Guild. Silence fell after their short skit ended. I have a rough understanding now. Then, it was Oh Se Chan who broke the silence. So that's how you made your plans then you must have confirmed that the Sword Saint has Solomon's ring this time which is why you requested it. Exactly. If so, then there is a high chance that the Sword Saint will really give you the ring it would be more important to deal with the problems. Thanks to Oh Se Chan, who was able to grasp the situation immediately, Kim Woo Jin didn't need to explain it in detail. In return, the Sword Saint will sincerely try to kill you from now on. The moment Solomon's ring was mentioned, 
Kim Woo Jin and the Sword Saint's relationship could never be reconciled. As Oh Se Chan said, the Sword Saint would put Isaac Ivanov at the top of his hit list. Isaac Ivanov's strong supporter will serve as a shield. Of course, before he could get to Isaac Ivanov, the Sword Saint would have to deal with his strongest supporter, Park Yong Wan. Absolutely, and that strong supporter will probably even give you Osiris Ring as a welcoming gift. The moment Osiris Ring was mentioned, Kim Woo Jin smiled. Did they make an offer? At the moment Park Yong Wan is meeting with government officials among them is the chief secretary of the Blue House given the circumstances, I strongly believe that they will give Isaac Ivanov a free pass and more. In other words, they are making preparations to recruit Isaac Ivanov into the Phoenix Guild and as you know, they usually give a down payment, don't they? They need to pay a transfer fee. This is why I like you. So what did you request as the transfer fee? Golden Dragon's gastric juices I looked for it and found that Park Yongwan had purchased some from the Dragon Hunter not long ago. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin sent his status window away and instead opened his inventory window. There were now well over 100 squares in the inventory, yet Kim Woo Jin's eyes were drawn to one item. The Cursed Sword. Now I can get soy sauce, TL, slightly childish, but I promised a reader the next Ganjang would be soy sauce idol return back to Ganjang from now on. The moment when Ganjang and Makya, the two legendary swords that no one in the world had managed to acquire at the same time, would finally be able to reveal their true power. This should be enough. Kim Woo Jin no longer needed to run simulations in his head. Ha, huh, give me a second. Oh Se Chan, who had just been excitedly talking on the phone, suddenly stopped talking. The silence lasted a long time. What's going on, Se Chan? Li Jina, who was listening to the phone call, couldn't help but ask. Did you go take a shit? Why did you suddenly go silent? I'm back. When Oh Se Chan, who had been silent for a while, came back, Li Jinao let out a laugh. Hyung, let's keep some manners when we talk on the phone do I need to listen to you take a dump? Li Jina started a quarrel, but this time there was no skit. The Messiah Guild came out of the seventh floor dungeon. It was a moment when the world order had been shifted yet again. Chapter, 193 The Messiah has reached seven floors. The world, which had been frozen by the news of the Messiah Guild clearing the seventh floor dungeon, began to shake violently. The powerful people in the world were the first to begin showing courtesy to the Messiah Guild. The US President congratulates the Messiah Guild. The German Prime Minister sends an invitation to the Messiah Guild. The Chinese President personally writes a letter to the Messiah Guild. The best way for them to hide their ambitions that had awoken with the possibility of the Messiah Guild's failure was to passionately flatter them. At the same time, deals were being made. The Frontier Guild meets with the Messiah Guild. The Messiah Guild and Kunlun Guild sign an agreement. Many people were visiting the Messiah Guild to purchase information on the next monster they encountered in the Seven Floor Dungeon. Of course, these transactions weren't financial. Instead, the things that were being traded were those that couldn't be bought with money. This was, in fact, the secret to the rapid increase of the Messiah Guild's influence over the years. Of course, the Messiah Guild's biggest gain was not these material items. As expected, the Messiah Guild is the only one that can save the world. Without a doubt the only players in this world are Lee Sejun and his Messiah Guild. I only have faith in the Messiah Guild. The world's faith and devotion towards the Messiah Guild has further increased. Thus, the world once again became covered by the Messiah Guild's name to the point where it seemed that people were even breathing the majesty of the Messiah Guild. Nothing dared to stand in front of the Messiah Guild at that moment. This was the biggest harvest that the Messiah Guild had gained from their attack on the Seven Floor Dungeon. However, someone, who imposed on the Messiah Guild's harvest, finally appeared. Isaac Ivanov joins the Phoenix Guild. Isaac Ivanov's name began to appear in the world covered by the Messiah Guild. Park Yongwan was definitely a great player. In 2020, even when he was confused and terrified together with the rest of the world, he still threw himself into the dungeons without any hesitation. He entered a more dangerous dungeon than others, grew faster than others, and subsequently entered more difficult dungeons. 
As a result, he gained wealth and fame that were incomparable to others. Nevertheless, he hadn't stayed satisfied with that result and instead threw himself into even more dangerous dungeons while risking everything he had. It's been five years now. He had done that for five years so far. It was certainly an amazing thing. Even if it cost him a great deal, he deserved a lot of respect and commendation for that fact. However, Park yong wans reputation in South Korea was not very good. To the public, he was a pig or a dog. No matter what he said, they couldn't hear it, and even if they heard, they wouldn't understand, nor did they intend to understand. If it weren't for them, Korea would have been in my hands already. What truly made Park yong wan angry was the fact that he couldn't enjoy what he deserved. Without the Messiah Guild, Korea would have already fallen under Park yong wans control. Rather than having to request a meeting with the president, he would have been an unelected figure who could treat him as a subordinate. At least, that's what Park yong wan thought. That damn Messiah Guild. Unsurprisingly, Park yong wan didn't intend to forgive those who had taken away what he deserved. He was waiting for the opportunity to pay them back for what they'd done. And the opportunity had finally come. The press conference has been prepared. Good. At his secretary's words, Park yong wan adjusted the suit he was wearing and rose to his feet. In response to Isaac Ivanov joining the Phoenix Guild, the guild master of the Phoenix Guild, Park yong wan held a press conference. On the spot, Park yong wan said. The details of the contract with Isaac Ivanov is simple the Phoenix Guild will support him in anything he wants to do that is all I will not make any demands of him however, if there are any forces who pose a threat to him, I will bet my all to destroy that force. Just what the terms of the contract between the Phoenix Guild and Isaac Ivanov were. Isaac Ivanov's next moves remain the same he will continue to target dungeons that only he can clear, and that no one else has been able to clear. And what Isaac Ivanov's next moves were. Including dungeons that the Messiah Guild has given up. Kim Woo Jin, who was watching Park yong wans conference live, sneered lightly. Actually, the situation wasn't that good right now. He finally picked a fight. Because what Park yong wan was doing at that moment was challenging the majesty of the Messiah Guild. They would do what the Messiah Guild couldn't. The Messiah Guild won't let that go. Naturally, the Messiah Guild would not allow such a thing to happen smoothly. After all, there could be many stars in the sky, but there could never be two suns. The more Isaac Ivanov's influence increased, the more severe the moves by the Messiah Guild would be. It'll only get worse if their weaknesses are targeted. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin knew better than anyone what kind of messes and blemishes the Messiah Guild hid to become the saviors of the world. After all, he had been responsible for a lot of it. Especially if the attack is perfect. In other words, Kim Woo Jin intended to perfectly clear the dungeons that the Messiah Guild gave up, just like he did in the past. After all, he had all the information he needed. The only question left was if he was capable of perfectly clearing these dungeons. The answer came to him. Woo Woo. At that moment, his phone began vibrating, and after pressing the call button, he heard Oh Se Chan's voice. Are you watching the live broadcast? I am. Park yong wan is so determined is he running for president? Anyway, he's pretty amazing I honestly thought Park yong wan would sell the country out and go to Japan or China, but now he has become a hero trying to save the world. Why did you call? Solomon's ring has arrived. When he heard that, Kim Woo Jin looked down at the Osiris ring that he was wearing on his left hand. This was a clear answer to that question. And the Golden Dragon's gastric juices have also arrived they'll wrap them up nicely and send them to you. At such a clear answer, Kim Woo Jin no longer hesitated. The next dungeon will be Forest of Giants. Kim Woo Jin had decided that the next stage would be the worst four-floor dungeon he had ever experienced. The Phoenix Guild soars with Isaac Ivanov. Park yong wan is ready to push past all the criticism and save the world. When did Park yong wan become a hero? The world became interested in Isaac Ivanov's joining the Phoenix Guild and Park yong wans press conference. Isaac Ivanov is amazing. Right, Lee Sejun isn't the only one. Isaac Ivanov is only at four-floor dungeons, isn't he? Lee Sejun cleared a seven-floor. 
he's just a good rookie he can't compare to the Messiah Guild. Of course, the world was also still filled with news reports about the Messiah Guild's dungeon attack. Out of ten newspapers, eight would be about the Messiah Guild and two would be about Isaac Ivanov and the Phoenix Guild. But isn't it special that he's attacking dungeons the Messiah Guild couldn't clear? Absolutely, it's not something we can ignore. I have to look at Park yong speech again. However, it was clear that such a situation had never happened to the Messiah Guild before. Naturally, the Messiah Guild would not feel good about something like this. A headache has appeared. In particular, Park Shinhai was in a bad mood. This was natural. After her dungeon attack with Lee Sejun, she now had no choice but to deal with the Isaac Ivanov situation. It really is a headache. That was the reason the Bao God was sitting in front of her at that moment with a similar expression. What does the Bao God think about this situation? The Bao God didn't answer Park Shinhai's question right away. He had heard the situation from the Sword Saint already and knew that they'd suffered a massive blow. The damage is severe. They lost three precious legendary items. The good news is that the Messiah Guild didn't find out about the items. The only thing that he could use to comfort himself was the fact that the Messiah Guild didn't know about it, so there was no need to tell them about the loss. Of course, that wasn't very pleasant comfort. After all, wasn't it still the disappearance of precious items that they'd specifically hidden from the Messiah Guild? In any case, it was natural for the Bao God to not want to talk after all that had happened. Would you like to say anything? However, Park Shinhai didn't intend to let him off. At her words, the Sword Saint closed his eyes and said what she wanted to hear. I have nothing to say about this nor do I have any intentions my revenge was successful so from now on I will wholeheartedly work with the guild. Only then did Park Shinhai nod. However, her expression didn't change. This was because the Bao God finally submitting didn't do anything to help their current situation. Because of this, Park Shinhai couldn't help but whine slightly. Park Yongwan, you've become such an annoying guy. She expressed her dissatisfaction at Park Yongwan instead of Isaac Ivanov. That was the way Park Shinhai saw the situation. I knew Park Yongwan had problems with us but. She believed that Isaac Ivanov's appearance was not a coincidence and that the biggest reason he was able to become so big was because of Park Yongwan's ability and support, nothing else. After all, when Isaac Ivanov's movements had been blocked, Park Yongwan used all his power to break through it. I didn't think he would go against us so openly. In the end, Park Yongwan had openly challenged the Messiah Guild. He spoke out at a press conference and said that they would do what even the Messiah Guild couldn't. Then the Bao God asked a question. What does Li Seijun think about this? Since the situation had reached this point, Li Seijun would have surely given his thoughts by now. Park Shinhai gave a simple response. It's not something he cares about. The answer in other words meant that Li Seijun was not paying attention to the situation. This year is more important than ever he can't pay attention to something like that. After saying this, Park Shinhai frowned. The Messiah Guild intended to make the year 2024 as chaotic as possible. In doing so, they would make the world's faith and expectations in them become more intense. The Messiah Guild didn't just want to become a transnational religion, but instead wanted to become something that the people of the world would use to keep their peace of mind, making it the de facto spiritual leader of the world. And their preparations were almost complete. When the time came, the world would descend into all over the world, and Li Seijun would appear to clean up the chaos. The true savior would descend. We can't modify and supplement such a plan just because of Park Yongwan. If such an important plan could be shaken by Park Yongwan, it would mean a crisis for the Messiah Guild. So we have to get rid of Park Yongwan as soon as possible. Of course, although she thought this, she never had any intention of letting Park Yongwan off. While Park Shinhai was wondering how to deal with Park Yongwan, a knock was heard on the door. Come in. Her secretary came in after receiving her permission. However, her secretary's expression was not good this showed that she came with bad news, and Park Shinhai's frown grew deeper. What more bad news is it this time? Park Yongwan's side has asked for our cooperation in a dungeon. Asked for cooperation. For which dungeon? 
The Forest of Giants, the A rank 4 floor dungeon that appeared in China. Park Xinhai grit her teeth the moment she heard those words. Park Yongwan, you really deserve to die. Chapter 194 The Five Great Guilds It was natural that these groups who transcended their countries to represent the world didn't get to their positions by luck. They proved their qualifications by accomplishing achievements that other guilds wouldn't dare replicate, and by doing so, gained the right to enjoy such a position. However, they didn't always succeed. Of course that doesn't mean they don't fail in fact, they have a higher chance than anyone to fail because the challenges they take on are much more difficult. The five great guilds had experienced numerous failures and suffered significant losses numerous times. There were even some failures that could have badly damaged their reputations. But the five great guilds either hid these failures well, or they wrapped them up so nicely that they didn't look as bad. They did what you'd call career management. It was the secret to how the five great guilds became the five great guilds, because one could not be king just by being strong. They hid their flaws. And of course, the ones who were best at career management were the Messiah Guild. The same was true for the Messiah Guild. They had many flaws. Among them, was the Forest of Giants dungeon that appeared in Shanghai, China. The Forest of Giants, that appeared in China in 2021, was hidden by the Chinese government the moment it appeared. The dungeon itself was nothing special. The Messiah Guild was given the chance to attack the dungeon but before the attack, they backed out well, it isn't weird to give up in fact, it would have been foolish of them to force something that couldn't be done. It wasn't strange for the Messiah Guild to give up on a dungeon either. But the problem was that it was none other than Lee Se Jun, who had given up the attack. The problem was that it was the savior, Lee Se Jun, who had given up the attack on the dungeon. It's one of Lee Se Jun's weaknesses. It was one of the few flaws on Lee Se Jun's otherwise perfect record. Of course, no one poked at it. However, there had never been anyone brave enough to openly poke at the Messiah Guild's weaknesses or undermine Lee Se Jun. After all, no human wanted to anger a dragon by touching its reverse scale one. To go against Lee Se Jun was to go against the world. First of all, if you dared to point out this flaw, you would be hit with one question then will you attack the dungeon? After all, if one was to point out Lee Se Jun's flaws, it would be like pointing out everyone's flaws. The option of attacking the dungeon was completely out of the question, after all. How many dungeons has Lee Se Jun given up? Entering a dungeon that even Lee Se Jun gave up was no better than suicide. So no one attacked the dungeon they didn't even try. So after Lee Se Jun gave up the attack, the Forest of Giants dungeon became buried in the hands of the Chinese government, and the world practically forgot about it. That is why this is so shocking for the Messiah Guild because he is poking at none other than Lee Sejun. Kim Woo Jin borrowed Isaac Ivanov's name and stabbed one of Lee Sejun's flaws. We've crossed the Rubicon now too. When Oh Sechan finished his story, Lee Jin Ah, who had been listening this whole time, finally said something. Burp. He put down the washbasin sized bowl that he had been holding to his head and let out a loud burp that even the listeners could feel. Ah, it's been a while since I ate kimchi jjigae 3, so I had to enjoy it. Kimchi jjigae is truly the best for Koreans and among all the kimchi I've had, Seichan's kimchi is the best. It was perfectly fermented till it was almost melting, so it was delicious. Oh Seichan grit his teeth and said. Hey, were you listening to me? When he saw the expression on Oh Seichan's face, Lee Jina looked left and right a few times before answering. Yes. Ah, I mean yes well. Basically. You damn pig bastard. Oh Seichan shouted out in anger. Li Jina grumbled slightly when he saw that. Ah, you're acting like I'm not allowed to eat I came back to Korea after a long time, can't I enjoy the food? At that moment, a vein on Oh Seichan's shiny bald head began to twitch like the countdown timer on a bomb. See this, Li Jina hurriedly changed the subject. So what does that guy, Kim Woo Jin, plan to do. Are you attacking this dungeon alone too? Oh Seichan's expression became a bit subdued when he heard that question. No, you won't be clearing this dungeon alone. How many are we letting in? As many as possible. Ha! Huh. When he heard that there would be a lot of people, Li Jina couldn't help but tilt his head in surprise. 
is it going to be that difficult? After all, Kim Woo Jin wasn't the type of person who would include other players without a good reason. The fact that he was going to accept a large number of players meant that they would be necessary to clear the dungeon. Is it really bad enough that he would say that? The problem was that Kim Woo Jin was not a simple player. At least from Lee Jin Ah's perspective, it was almost impossible for him to need any help in a four floor dungeon. Well, it may be difficult, but that's not the reason. Oh Seichan shook his head as he answered Li Jina's questions. He's basically holding an investment presentation. Isaac Ivanov to attack the Forest of Giants dungeon. The Chinese government approves of Isaac Ivanov's attack on the dungeon. Isaac Ivanov's request to attack the Forest of Giants dungeon went smoothly. This was natural. The Chinese government will spare no effort to help Isaac Ivanov clear the dungeon. Firstly, the Chinese government had no reason to refuse an attack on a dungeon that no one else could clear. The public also had no reason to reject this. As expected of Isaac Ivanov. He's not like the others. He's on a completely different level than the other players. I think I'm getting high on Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov was exactly the type of player the public wanted. The Messiah Guild supports Isaac Ivanov's challenge. Even the final hurdle, the Messiah Guild, had no choice but to cheer on Isaac Ivanov's attack. Regardless of whether this was a jab at Lee Sejun or not, could they possibly refuse while carrying the name of the Messiah Guild? All that remained was for Isaac Ivanov to actually begin his attack. In such an atmosphere, new news was released. Isaac Ivanov is recruiting players for his dungeon attack. It was news that Isaac Ivanov was gathering people to assist him in the attack on the Forest of Giants dungeon. In fact, this in itself was nothing strange. Instead, it was smart and logical for a player or group who gained the right to attack a dungeon, to recruit other players. Huh. What was that? Recruiting volunteers. There are more than 200 spots does he intend to fill them up. However, Isaac Ivanov wasn't the right person to use the word logic within the same sentence. After all, who was he? He was the player who had cleared a hellhound dungeon with a party of two. Therefore, the world was shocked by the fact that he was recruiting more players. Is this dungeon really so difficult that even Isaac has to recruit more players? The Messiah Guild was like that too, what the hell is with this dungeon? What kind of dungeon was this that not only Lee Sejun, but even Isaac Ivanov would be so cautious of it. Of course, unlike the public, the players were quite moved. After all, the possibility of clearing the dungeon rose significantly since Isaac Ivanov would also be participating. It would be great even if you just survive. Even if most of the profits were gained by Isaac Ivanov, just the record of having survived the dungeon attack was already incredibly valuable for the players. The only thing left was the Messiah Guild's decision. Would the Messiah Guild be in a good mood with Isaac Ivanov openly poking at Lee Sejun's flaws? But this too was nothing to worry about. The Messiah Guild supports with 60 players. The Messiah Guild gives its full cooperation. Instead, it seemed that the Messiah Guild was the most active when responding to Isaac Ivanov's request for support. Rather than attacking Isaac Ivanov and the Phoenix Guild for targeting a dungeon they gave up, this showed that the Messiah Guild had judged that the outcome would be much better if they wholeheartedly participated in this dungeon attack. Of course, the other guilds fought to show their support. Fifty players from the Kunlun Guild will participate. Thirty players from the Frontier Guild will participate. And so, the preparations for the dungeon attack were completed in no time. The attack on the Forest of Giants dungeon has begun. And the attack began immediately. Kimchi jjigae or kimchi stew is a jjigae, or stew-like Korean dish, made with kimchi and other ingredients, such as pork or seafood, scallions, onions, and diced tofu it is one of the most common stews in Korean cuisine. Chapter, 195 Pudong International Airport, Shanghai The island in front of the crowded international airport, was now filled with people. This was the island where the Forest of Giants, the dungeon that made even the Messiah back down, was located. The dungeon attack is in 12 hours. Make sure you secure the perimeter. There must be no accidents like what happened in Japan. 
This place that had been sealed for a very long time was now busily preparing for its first challengers. The same was true for the challengers. That's the end of the briefing. 289 players received a briefing 12 hours before the commencement of the dungeon attack. It was actually the last briefing. The expressions of all the players receiving the briefing were firm. Of course, everyone there had already received the dungeon report in advance. Forest of Giants Floors, 4 Difficulty, A Maximum number of entries, 303 Requirements, level 134 or lower Conditions, survive for 5 days against the two-headed, one-eyed monster Reward, achievements for the survivors the contents of the dungeon report were also the reason for the player's firm expressions. Firstly, the boss monster for the fourth floor, the two-headed, one-eyed monster, referred to a twin-headed cyclops. A variant no one has ever hunted before. It was a monster that had never been hunted before. Moreover, the quest to clear the dungeon was not to hunt this monster, but to simply survive for five days. This meant that this a ranked dungeon could be cleared just by surviving. How powerful is that monster to cause the clear conditions to be survival? It won't be easy. This was proof that the twin-headed Cyclops was not a simple monster. However, the thing that truly made the players feel solemn was the information about the monsters that had stormed out of this dungeon. For dungeons, if they weren't attacked after a certain period of time, monsters would begin to pour out of them. This was part of the reason why dungeon gates had become the world's nightmare. On the other hand, it was also an opportunity because the players could use this to gauge the strength of the dungeon. This didn't mean much for one and two floor dungeons, but this information tended to be extremely valuable for four floor dungeons and above. The case was similar this time. The briefing is over but I will warn you once again there are queen spiders and striped ants in this dungeon. During the time that the forest of giants dungeon was not being attacked, monsters had come out of the dungeon gate. Among them were queen spiders and striped ants. This combination. A combination that's really the worst. Queen spiders were boss monsters that appeared in three floor dungeons and above who had the ability to release pheromones which made other monsters their slaves. Striped ants on the other hand were ants with bodies around one meter long that were proficient at digging tunnels and lived in large groups. Separately, these two monsters weren't that intimidating. If a queen spider enslaved a colony of striped ants and then forced them to make a nest, the difficulty of the hunt goes beyond common sense. The problem was when these two monsters were combined. They were among the worst opponents the players could face. They could be separated but. Of course, there was the possibility that these monsters were actually on different floors in the dungeon. However, it would be foolish of them to attempt it without preparing for the worst possible scenario. This is the reason the Messiah Guild gave up right before the attack. No wonder Lee Sejun gave up anyone would have given up. This was enough reason for Lee Sejun and his team, who had cleared dungeons that no one else dared try, had given up on this dungeon. This is also the reason why Isaac Ivanov requested help. It's not easy. At the same time, it was also the reason why Isaac Ivanov, who had successfully cleared the Hellhound dungeon with just a party of two, had recruited as many willing players as possible. Of course, not everyone had the same thought. This doesn't seem really difficult though. By Li Jina's standards, this Forest of Giants dungeon was still not as difficult as the Hellhound dungeon. Isn't this still better than two Hellhounds? The combination of the Queen Spider and Striped Ant were still nothing in comparison to dealing with two Hellhounds simultaneously. It's a four-floor dungeon with a five-day survival quest I feel like it would be better with less people. Moreover, clearing a four-floor dungeon that only required survival was quite easy for Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina. To be honest, Lee Jina's thoughts weren't wrong. Kim Woo Jin thought the same. Lee Jina could clear this dungeon on his own. Kim Woo Jin didn't need the additional 280 people to clear this dungeon. In fact, for Kim Woo Jin's standards, they were nothing more than a hindrance. Nevertheless, there was one reason why Kim Woo Jin accepted them. But in that way, he would just be an amazing player, he would never be considered a match for the Messiah Guild. He wanted to wage a proper war against the Messiah Guild. 
And in the end, Johann George's method is the best. For this war, Kim Woo Jin intended to use the methods of none other than the King of Undead, Johann George. The King of Undead would allow players to join him in dungeons just to unleash the might of his Undead Legion in front of them and to show that he alone was enough to clear the dungeon in the first place. Kim Woo Jin intended to do the same. Because after a while, that fear became faith. That only the King of Undead was worthy to rival the ridiculous being known as Lee Se Jun who stood at the top of the world. In other words, Kim Woo Jin didn't simply intend to attack this dungeon. No, it couldn't be called an attack. I never expected to follow in his footsteps. It would just be a brutal massacre that bordered on abuse. The higher the number of floors a dungeon had, the more diverse and mysterious the things they encountered became. Not only the monsters, but even the worlds they found themselves in felt like completely new dimensions. This case was the same. The world that players encountered and they entered the dungeon truly suited the name Forest of Giants. The size of the boulders on the ground were reminiscent of a country house while the trees were similar in size to large high-rise apartment buildings. Each leaf was large enough to completely cover an adult. The players who entered such an environment resembled Lilliputians 1, from the novel Gulliver's Travels. It was quite the amazing sight. Damn it. However, the first words out of the player's lips weren't admiration at the amazing sight, but a heavy sigh. Defeat the Queen Spider to move on to the next floor. The reason for this sigh was the notification they got upon entering the dungeon. The Queen Spider is the very first floor. There's no way the striped ants are here too right? I have a bad feeling. After the sigh, they began to worry if the worst case scenario that they had envisioned would really come true. Hey! It's a tunnel. Doesn't that look like an ant nest? And that concern soon became a reality. Is it really the combination of a queen spider and striped ants? It's the worst combination. It was at the moment when they realized that they would have to encounter the combination of the queen spider and the spider ants on the very first floor of the dungeon. Of course, the situation still wasn't the worst it could be. Then what will we meet on the second floor? Still, it's best to face it on the first or second floor. It's best to fight them in our top condition if your condition isn't good, you might get affected by the queen spider's pheromones. The only positive factor was the fact that the players would be able to face this challenge while in their best conditions. Above all, the players knew. Well, it doesn't change the fact that we have to fight them anyway. Right we can't stop on the first floor can we? Regardless of whether it was the worst combination or not, it didn't change the fact that the dungeon attack couldn't be stopped after they entered the dungeon. The Messiah Guild is making its move. Faced with this fact, the first ones to make their move was the Messiah Guild. As expected, the Messiah Guild's team was the first to move. This was something that everyone expected. After all, it's the Savior's pride that's on the line, they don't want Isaac Ivanov to be the one to clear this dungeon. Those guys from the Messiah Guild won't just sit and watch, they'll fight back. The moment Isaac Ivanov challenged the Forest of Giants dungeon, he became the only person who dared to challenge a dungeon Lee Sejun had given up. This was completely unacceptable in the eyes of the Messiah Guild, and they had only one way to stop it. The Messiah Guild would need to clear the dungeon first. When Lee Sejun gave up on the attack in 2021, the average level of players was very different from that of the players in 2024. Compared to that time, the players were much higher leveled and were equipped with more experience and better items. More importantly, their mindsets were different. It's for the Savior's honor, not anyone else. All sixty of them are prepared to die. At that time, Lee Sejun was the only pillar of the Messiah Guild. His death would have led to the death of the Messiah Guild, which is why he was unable to take certain risks. On the other hand, the players who had entered the dungeon without hesitation were those who held Lee Sejun as their god. In other words, they were fanatics who were willing to sacrifice their lives if it meant their deaths could wipe away the blemish for their idol. Therefore the players didn't question the Messiah Guild's actions. Then how will Isaac Ivanov move? Instead, they turned their gazes to Isaac Ivanov. Since Isaac Ivanov also put forward his confidence, he can't back down now. The two of them will be going head to head. Isaac, give us your orders. 
Thinking this, the players who the Phoenix Guild sent to assist him, came forward for instructions. However, they were surprised by his words. Get some rest. Ha. Huh. You just need to rest for three days. WH dash, what's that? Isaac Ivanov's incomprehensible orders completely shocked the players from the Phoenix Guild. He simply fidgeted with a ring on his right hand. And that's how the dungeon attack began. Chapter, 196 The reason why the combination of the Queen Spider and the Striped Ants was so troublesome was because of their characteristics. The Queen Spider could use their pheromones to enslave monsters, and the Striped Ants were proficient at making tunnels. There was no place the queen spider's pheromones would be more effective than an ant nest, which was, in essence, a large maze. Moreover, there was something that set the striped ants apart from other ant species. Striped ants had a habit of paralyzing their prey with the paralyzing venom they had, and then bringing them alive to their queen. This didn't mean that they wouldn't occasionally kill their prey to eat, it was just that stockpiling food was something that they generally did. This was why Lee Sejun gave up the attack on the dungeon. Monsters that entered the striped ant's nest would get paralyzed by the ants then taken to the queen's chamber where they would then be enslaved by the spider queen. So they weren't stockpiling food, they were instead increasing the spider queen's army. Moreover, as the size of the army increased, the striped ants would also increase the size of the lair. The size of the ant nest would get progressively bigger and as it grew in size, the number of monsters it attracted would also grow, creating a vicious cycle. This was what everyone expected. Including the 60 players from the Messiah Guild. The inside of the ant nest must be quite complicated. They can't move too hastily. They had predicted how dangerous the queen spider and striped ant combination would be and prepared accordingly. The problem was that the situation they encountered far exceeded their expectations. You are being influenced by the queen spider's pheromones. Your mind is becoming confused. You have become intoxicated by the sweet scent. Damn it, the wizard has fallen. Healer. Healer. The situation within the striped ant nest was much more severe than the messiah guild members anticipated. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Retreat. Naturally, this meant that they struggled during their attack. On the third day after they had entered the dungeon, the Messiah Guild's team retreated from the ant nest for the seventeenth time. It's practically over at this point, it's clear that the Messiah Guild can't clear the ant nest on their own. At that moment, everyone knew that the Messiah Guild would be unable to defeat the Queen Spider with their own power. Not sticking to the same strategy for more than three days had become of the unspoken rules among players. Of course, the reason this rule came to being in the first place was because of self-righteous people who stubbornly stuck to the same strategy even after it failed numerous times. And if you attacked a dungeon with stubbornness and self-righteousness, you would only be met with failure and death. Because it's not worth it to risk their lives on the first floor. They have to be smart. No matter how willing the Messiah Guild's team members were to risk their lives for their savior, they could not recklessly sacrifice themselves on the first floor. In fact, after their seventeenth failure, the Messiah Guild's team finally decided to take a break. Well, it went as we expected. Right. This was a sight that most of them had already expected to see. If it was something that could be beaten by just sixty people, Lee Sejun would have already done it three years ago. After all, this was the dungeon that the Messiah Guild, including Lee Sejun, had given up on. Even if the world had progressed by a great deal since that time, they could only succeed if all of the players united. This wouldn't change even if the sixty members of the Messiah Guild were willing to risk their lives. Is it just Isaac that's left? In this situation, the players moved their focus over to Isaac Ivanov. Or more precisely, the other guilds present were waiting for Isaac Ivanov's offer. Unlike the Messiah Guild, they had no intention of fighting against Isaac Ivanov. Their goal was to agree to any cooperation that he requested so that in the future, he would request their help whenever he decided to attack a dungeon. Everyone thought this way. After all, didn't Isaac Ivanov recruit players to join the dungeon attack to get as much support as possible? So why hasn't he made any requests? However, Isaac Ivanov had yet to make any requests for support to the other guilds since they had entered the dungeon. 
it wasn't just that he wasn't asking for cooperation or support. No, more than that, why didn't he go into the ant nest even once over the past three days? Until now, Isaac Ivanov and the other members of the Phoenix Guild had not taken a single step into the ant nest. It was almost as if he didn't intend to attack. It's like he's only focused on hunting. All he's done is hunt the ones on the outskirts. He had simply attacked the monsters that were wandering around the ant nest, and even that number was insignificant. I thought Isaac Ivanov would sweep through the ant nest with his army of skeletons that wouldn't be affected by the pheromones. This wasn't like Isaac Ivanov, who usually wiped out the monsters with his overwhelming combat power. This fact made everyone begin to question what was happening. However, these questions didn't last very long. The queen spider has been slain. Proceed to the next floor. Huh. What? The first floor was cleared on the third day after the dungeon attack began. Kim Woo Jin could vividly remember when he had attacked the Forest of Giants in the past. In January 2025, the Messiah Guild had finally decided to get rid of the Forest of the Giants, which was one of the few flaws on Lee Sejun's otherwise perfect record, and they chose Kim Woo Jin to complete the task. That dungeon attack was a nightmare. On the first floor, over 60 people died killing the Queen Spider, a process that took almost 11 days to complete. The damage was quite painful, which is why everything he had experienced in that dungeon had been practically imprinted on Kim Woo Jin's bones. The strategy he was using currently was in fact based on those imprints. The first method was simple. Kim Woo Jin simply used a corpse to create a bomb. Used corpse poison. Corpse explosion has been engraved onto the corpse. The corpse poison skill was used to poison the monster's corpse, then he engraved the imprint for corpse explosion on it. Afterwards, he simply needed to find carriers for the bombs. This was also not difficult. Solomon's Ring Required Level, 100 Description, The Ring of King Solomon It has the amazing ability to communicate with and control all living things. Magic Power 100 All Attack Power 10% when equipped, the skill Solomon's command can be used. All he needed to do was use Solomon's command, the skill that allowed him to perfectly control monsters that were lower in level than him. And so the bombs he made were carried by the striped ants and piled up into Queen Spider's chamber. All that was left was for him to detonate them. Pack. And all that took was a single clap. The Queen Spider has been afflicted by blood poison. The queen spider has been afflicted by black poison. Furthermore, black blood poison was also included. Kim Woo Jin's poison filled the queen spider's room in an instant and killed the queen spider within moments. Gained the achievement Queen Spider Hunter. The emissary of the underworld admires your skills. The emissary of the underworld bestows some power to you. The rank of the corpse explosion skill has increased by one. This was the secret to how Kim Woo Jin had killed the Spider Queen on the third day. Of course, only Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina knew this. H- -dash, How did you do that? Not only the other players, but even the players from the Phoenix Guild were shocked by the sudden situation. Moreover, a bit of fear could be seen in their astonished expressions. For humans, sometimes the unknown was much more fearsome to them than unparalleled violence. Kim Woo Jin simply looked at those players with a smile. This is just the beginning. With that thought, Kim Woo Jin changed the ring that he was wearing on his right hand. You have equipped Osiris ring. You can now use the skill resurrection. When he saw this notification, an image came to Kim Woo Jin's mind. I'll resurrect the hellhound on the second floor. An image of a reborn hellhound slaughtering other monsters.